You were African tether baby, tether bush baby from the UK, Playboy. Um, what do you know about the interracial dating experience when, when y'all do that by default in the UK? You you move to the white man's kingdom. Of course, you're over there with the stiff back Beckys. But um, why are are you cosplaying us? You you couldn't have a breakout role pretending to be an African, huh? You couldn't have a breakout role pretending to be a, well, not pretending, I, I, I guess they call themselves over there a black Brit, uh, air quotes, black Brit. All right. His claim to fame is cosplaying us. And then he did that so well, he said, you know what? I'm going to double down. So he didn't just do the get out. He didn't just do the get out. No, 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 no. He also played. Red Hampton? I told y'all this shit was going to make you mad. Why is this a running theme of these Bush Baby Tethers, these fucking immigrants coming over here and portraying not just us, but the greatest of us, our leaders, our activists, when they have no spirit of activism? They flee from their homeland. They, they, they are a, a, a buck-broken, cowardice people. I mean, Fred Hampton, y'all? I, I make it make sense. And I guess this is like some reverse blackface. I mean, this is a cool example right after Nina. This is kind of a reverse blackface because let me find a, um, a color photo of Fred Hampton. Fred Hampton was a bit more light skinned than that. Fred Hampton was, you know, maybe a slight shade darker than me. I mean, Fred Hampton wasn't the darkest of the darkest. So, once again, we got some weird cosplaying, some kind of weird reverse blackface now where um, we got this dark skin African tether bush baby cosplaying as Fred Hampton. All right. All right. I'm just up here talking shit, though, right? I don't know what I'm talking about. We haven't seen a running theme of these xenophobic, tribalistic, scroll like Heathers invading our homeland and pretending to be us. What the fuck is going on, y'all? What is going on? Don't go see the movie. Don't don't go support the movie. Y'all couldn't get an FBA brother to play Fred Hampton. We just gonna pretend like Fred Hampton was as dark as Wesley Snipes. <laughs> we gonna pretend that Fred Hampton was the same complexion as Wesley Snipes. Oh Lord, what is going on? Come on. And yes, that's why I say Fred was like a little bit darker than me, but he wasn't no Wesley. He wasn't no Nigerian. Fred Hampton looked 
distinguished little he looked different from a nigerian what are we really talking about up here they got fred hampton one of our greatest revolutionaries being cosplayed by a fucking nigerian but i guess i'm just up here chatting shit as they say i guess i'm just up here just you know conspiracy theories right conspiracy theories mike's talking about invasions and tether wars and scrolls and marvel movies and what what the fuck they're talking about come on Come on, this is wild, y'all. This is wild. We got to laugh to get through the pain. But wait, there's more. There's more. You see, in actuality, Samuel L. Jackson weighed in on this. And let's hear what Samuel had to say about this. A few thoughts about British actors playing American and African-American roles. Samuel L. Jackson made the news for something other than his acting two weeks ago when in a radio interview on Hot 97, he talked about Jordan Peele's movie Get Out and its star, the British actor Daniel Kaluuya. God damn it, we got a motherfucking tether bush baby with the last name Kaluuya pretending to be Fred Hampton. Oh, hell must have froze over. Samuel says, uh, Mr. Jackson, Mr. Motherfucker himself, he says, I tend to wonder what would that movie have been with an American brother who really understands that in a way because Daniel grew up in a country where they've been interracial dating for like a hundred years. Very valid point, Mr. Samuel L. Jackson. What would a brother from America have made of that role? I'm sure the director helped, but some things are universal. Some things ain't. Jackson went on to mention that Ava DuVry Selma, oh, we gonna get into that, another African pretending to be one of us. We got another dark-skinned ass Nigerian looking bush baby pretending to be Martin Luther King Jr. I told y'all this broadcast would upset you a bit. Jackson went on to mention that Ava DuVernay's Selma and wondered how the role of Martin Luther King Jr. might have been interpreted differently by an American actor rather than David Owe Lowo. MLK is rolling in his grave. Did he know when the civil rights struggle paved the way for the immigrants that, that, that one day there would be a movie about MLK and a Mr. Owe Lowo would be playing Martin Luther King Jr.? Oh, man. This is crazy, y'all. What's going on? Is this not orchestrated? Is this not preordained? What's happening here? I said a Nigerian bush baby, right? He grew up in England and Nigeria. They flee to the oppressor's kingdom, adopt a mindset of white supremacy, and they go and do the master's bidding, y'all. They are our opposition and they can pass for us. They are actively trying to pass for us. Oh my God, this is wild. Yes, he's African. Nigerian to be exact. Come on, I told y'all this would upset you. Put some black fists in the chat if you're upset. I warned you about this. Disrespectful as fuck. We got a Nigerian from England playing Martin Luther King Jr. God damn it, I didn't know MLK was Nigerian, nor did I know he was from England. All righty then. All righty. And Belize Gal says, why import British Blacks when there are plenty of Black American actors? We're going to get to it. Us foundational Black Americans have always known our worth. We don't do things for the low low. We don't do things for near free. Come on, y'all. Come on. Let's get into it. There are some brothers from America who could have been in that movie, Jackson said. I greatly admire Selma, yet I too found Owe Lowell's British mannerisms to affect the performance. Damn, they saying even though he's cosplaying MLK, he was still doing British mannerisms and shit. He didn't even do a good job cosplaying. When asked why British black actors get so much work in Hollywood, he said, they're cheaper than us. Look at Samuel L. Jackson just keeping it real. Belize girl, that answers your question, Belize girl. Belize girl said, well, Mike, there's plenty of black Americans who can, the, why are they doing this? Why import the British blacks? Because they're cheap. Why does America import any immigrants? Because they're cheap. So when they come over here with a superiority complex, which we're going to get to later, when they come over here with, with a kind of, I'm um, better than you and us immigrants work so hard and blase, 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 y'all come over here to be fucking Uber drivers while acting like you the CEO of some conglomerate. 
they're cheap, ladies and gentlemen. They're cheap. And they're working to revitalize and erase and Africanize our history. Come on. Shame, shame, shame all the way around. Here goes the superiority complex. Samuel Jackson says they're cheaper than us. And after the ensuing laughter, he added, and they think they're better trained for some reason than we are because they're classically trained. Look, even Samuel Jackson is saying, I peep these British, these black Brit actors that come over here, they think they're better than us. Come on. Let's get into the content, y'all. Hit the like button, hit the cash app, hit the PayPal. It's up and it's stuck. I'll roast a tether any day of the week. If you get tired of me exposing these Africans, shitting on our community, watch something else for some time and then come back. And I'm sure you'll see that they've done even more damage than when you left. Let's get on with the content. Mr. Nigerian, English Nigerian Owelelo, Owoweyo, whatever the fuck, is playing Martin Luther King Jr. You know what? There's a striking resemblance. MLK was was that dark skinned for one and MLK totally looks like a Nigerian. Yeah. Like he's MLK's doppelganger. Like, you know, billions of dollars spent on Hollywood and casting decisions and, you know, making sure somebody fits the character and, you know, they, they try to get Nipsey Hussle to play Snoop Dogg, but at least they, they kind of look similar, but, uh, MLK and, Mr. Nigerian, uh, I'm not seeing it. God, I'm not seeing it. Oh, wait. God damn it, y'all. I ain't never going to be able to go take my smoke break. Lord, oh, Lord, it's noon Pacific Standard Time, and I still ain't been able to take my smoke break because, for one, for one, this content, damn it, this content is so damn engaging. For two, we got a bush baby in the chat wow <laughs> you we got a bush baby in the chat wow and Rosaman says this is disrespectful to african sir this is disrespectful to us is disrespectful to your own culture that you're so ashamed of your country you're so ashamed of the behavior of your fellow africans that you want to cosplay as a foundational black american that is what's disrespectful Y'all got to get a bag off pretending to be us. Don't come to me and talk about no disrespect, Bush baby. But, hey, I urge you to click the link and call in. Maybe I'm misreading where the, the disrespect is coming. Maybe you have a valid point, Rossum. Maybe we're just up here being disrespectful to Africans while we highlight the fact that they're making millions of dollars cosplaying us, rewriting our history, Africanizing our history. He shaved his beard and kept the mustache, y'all. He's M-OK because he shaved the beard and kept the mustache. <laughs> y'all, they could have had my freckle face as playing Martin Luther King Jr. And I guess it would have been just as accurate as a representation, right? Since it's not important that, that the skin tone complexion is accurate. You know, that doesn't matter at all. I mean, um, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, uh, OGs in the chat. I'm, I'm, I'm sure we got some OGs in the chat or watching the replay who who uh, marched with, with Malcolm um, and, and Martin and them. Um, was Martin Luther King Jr. that dark skinned? It was... Was MLK that dark skinned it or was he he more light skinned it? I thought MLK was more like Fred Hampton's color and less like Wesley Snipes' color. I mean, I'm I'm confused. I'm perplexed. Yeah. Come on, y'all. Come on. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, I thought MLK was lighter. But wait, there's more. We gonna get into this bitch. We gonna get into this broad right here. I don't know if y'all know, but Joy Reid is not a foundational black American. Joy Reid is an immigrant for people from Africa. And let's see how Joy Reid is trying to insert herself into our legacy, insert herself into our culture. Be a, a black person in you know 2024 in America is to be in a state of complete perplexed confusion about what is wrong with a country that hates your history, to this day can't admit even the basics of what was done to your ancestors.
Bitch, what do you, if you, mm, I never hit a girl, but I shake the shit out of you. I never hit a woman, but I snatch that blonde wig off your head. What? She said, our ancestors? Our ancestors? Our? Look at how they cosplay. We're under invasion. Tether scroll secret invasion attack. You see this bitch right here? She seems to be talking some good shit. You say, yeah, black sister, go. Let's see if anybody can guess. Let's play the guessing game. What country is her mother and father from? Let's say if let's see if anybody can guess the country. Okay, let, let's take a quick intermission and see if anybody can guess the country. Because just based off how she looks and how she's acting and how she's talking and her accent or lack thereof. Some would say she, she's a black American. Some would say she's even a foundational black American. She's talking about her ancestors and blase, blase, blase. I'm going to play some more of the video and y'all put in the chat where y'all think her people are from and we'll see if anybody guesses it right. We'll see. Next confusion about what is wrong with a country that hates your history to this day can't admit even the basics of what was done to your ancestors can't accept any responsibility for the lack that has carried through the entirety of the existence of you in this country and think 60. The existence of you in this country, mm, but, ooh, you better watch your motherfucker. Mm. Cameron, you got it. You got it, Cameron. You got it. Her daddy is from the Congo. Her daddy is from the Congo bush. And her mama's from Guyana. So this is a Congo, a Congolese, Guyanese, African. Bitch. She's African on both sides. She's African on both fronts. Raised in an asylum city, Brooklyn. Y'all know them Africans be out there on the East Coast heavy, right? Her mama is from Guyana. Her daddy is from the Congo. And she's talking about we and our ancestors and what we went through. Bitch, you just got here. Yo, people just got here. Can't accept any responsibility for the lack that has carried through the entirety of the existence of you in this country and think 60 years of relative freedom is enough. Now, Blacks, please get out of Harvard. Now, Blacks, you can't get any more loans. You can't even give each other loans of $20,000 unless you give white men who get 99% of funding for their businesses. We want 100 and to find out that literally Barack Obama's two terms in pre as president are your reparations and Juneteenth, which you. What is this tether up here talking about reparations for? What is this tether whose people is from the Congo and Guyana? What is she talking about reparations for? Y'all see where I'm going with this. They're pretending to be us. They'll go to great lengths. Cosmetics, fake nose, dark skin. She up here talking about our reparations check. You ain't getting no check, girl. You ain't getting no check, girl. Your people wasn't slaves in America. Miss me with that shit. You already celebrated anyway. Is your reparations pre as president are your reparations? And Juneteenth, which you already celebrated anyway, is your reparations? And yet, you built this country. You literally physically built this country. And yet, the attitude toward you from a lot of your peers and your fellow citizens is just shut up and be grateful. has a curious claim about American history. And her curious claim is that she built the country. I mean, to be a, a black person in, you know, 2024 in America is to be in a state of complete perplexed confusion about what is wrong with a country that hates your history, to this day can't admit even the basics of what was done to your ancestors. And to I told you guys earlier in the broadcast, they think if they do enough research on our culture, you see how she knows all the buzzwords, reparations, Juneteenth, Barack Obama. Come on, do enough reconnaissance. Get rid of the accent. And now she thinks she's one of us. She getting her reparations, y'all. Don't you know her family built this country? Find out that literally 
Barack Obama's two terms in pre as president are your reparations. And Juneteenth, which you already celebrated anyway, is your reparations. And yet you built this country. You literally physically built this country. And yet the attitude toward you from a lot of your peers and your fellow citizens is just shut up and be grateful. That is certainly my attitude to Joy Reid. That's true. It's not my attitude to all people or to all black people, but it is certainly my attitude to, to Joy Reid. Joy Reid's parents are immigrants. Joy Reid's father came from Congo. Joy Reid's mother came from Guyana. Joy Reid is a first generation American. Not one single person in her family tree had any connection to slavery. Not one single person in her family tree was here more than one generation ago. Let me let me say let me say one thing because I thought every time I see your YouTube uh, live streams and your videos and whatnot when it comes to Africans, it's very provoking. Like I'll see it and it evokes anger because the way the way how you portray them it makes them look primitive. Like the, you like you give them like monkey like features or whatnot to make them look primitive. Which is, I damn, I don't give a monkey like damn, nigga. I don't AI morph them into monkeys. Nigga. Damn, I, I make some some triggering thumbnails, but I don't make a monkey. <laughs> and, and, nah, and you, you you make me look like the savages. Like you make like they're all savage. Like I'm literally looking at them right now. I can just see angry face, angry face, angry face. Obviously, it didn't be nasty, but anyways, I can just see angry, 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 angry. Like it makes them like monkeys to me. But if I look at that, I think, oh shit, these monkey savages. Look at what they do now. If you understand, that as as a person looking at that, that's what I think. So obviously, I feel like you could be more gentle with your pro with your in profiles and images. Obviously, your titles are very provoking as well. You have provoking titles, provoking images. So you want us to conform? No, I'm not saying conform, but obviously, you're if you if you're black as well, does that not invoke a sense of racism towards you? Sir, I'm not African. African. Stop that. Stop that. I ain't African. Okay, well, let's let's whatever. forget the politics. Let me just say whatever, whatever it is a fellow black person. Whatever. If you were like a, a, I would think there's a white racist doing this kind of stuff. And then I get on, I just see a, a whole bunch of black people just doing. But this. you yourself say you see us on TV all the time in bad performations, doing riots, bad rap. That's what you do with the way we're doing. Hold on, hold on, hold on, y'all, hold on, y'all, hold on, y'all. Watch how how crazy my receipt game is. Watch how fucking crazy my receipt game is, right? Watch how crazy this shit is. Peep game, FBA family. Receipts are crazy. Receipts are crazy. Sir, I know my thumbnails are triggering. I'm triggering you motherfuckers into a discussion. But guess what? My thumbnails ain't clickbait. Yes, I put in a prompt to an AI algorithm that generated this image that I wanted. But is this not an image? that I could fly to Africa and take right now with my fucking smartphone? Is this an exaggerated image? Can I not find footage of the current condition of Africans that it's even worse than that image, i.e. children swimming in sewer water in the fucking floating shanty town? What's worse, guys? What's worse? Mike's image of the guy running and fleeing or this shit of these motherfuckers living in a floating shanty town on sewage water. Sir, you say that I make the Africans look so aggressive. Mike, you make the Africans look so aggressive and crazy like aggressive monkeys. Let's take a look at African media produced by Africans. Netflix gave you tethers a fucking bag to make a TV show and y'all made a TV show called Shanty Town and this is what image you put out about your goddamn self. So are my thumbnails salacious when I show you guys looking angry or is this more egregious? Your own media you produce. <laughs> Don't do freedom, Nana. You even talk and say, Sir, are they free to go? Hey, man, I'm free. For my hand. Sir, but you're going to be free now. Family now forever. You don't know. Family now forever. You don't know. I get a bit for you, Sigi. See ya. Where we is. Let me give you some context. This is an African self-produced 
series called Shantytown. It's on Netflix. This girl was a prostitute. She was a prostitute all her life to this dude called Scar. And Scar said, you know what, you hoes? If you bust open enough pussy for me, you can save up some money and you can buy your freedom. So guess what? She was a good hoe. She was the top hoe. Instead of top boy, she was top hoe. And she got papered up and she paid for her freedom. And when she was going to flee to a different neighboring African country, Scar got her. And Scar said, no, no, you know free. Scar pimped her for her whole fucking life, made her pay for her freedom, and then does this to her. And this is Africa media that they produce. But this African motherfucker gonna tell me I'm acting like white people, painting Africans in a bad light. This is the light you Africans paint yourselves in. This is your entertainment. <laughs> Only thing we feed separate family are dead. Oh yeah, this is so artistic. She's getting her head chopped off while her friend takes back shots in a car. Her friend's getting fucked in the whip while her other friend's getting her head chopped off. And we gonna do some weird murder porn and go from head getting chopped off to back shots to head getting chopped off to back shots to head getting chopped off to back shots. And this is Africa self-produced media, but I'm painting y'all in a bad light. So I ask you, am I painting y'all in a bad light or do you do that your damn self? Am I acting like white supremacists and, and creating salacious thumbnails and imagery, to, uh, taking things out of context, or is the truth even stranger? Is reality even more dire? Raza, man, what do you have to say for yourself since you had the nerve to fix your mush mouth to compare me to some fucking white supremacists? What you got to say, Raza, man? I'm doing y'all so dirty, right? I do, I do understand where you're coming from, but at the same time, if I say say I was also sitting here making thumbnails of obviously black Americans or actually uh, African Americans stealing from uh, shops or committing crimes and murders, how would you feel about it? Like, obviously, you have your American series of BMF. You've got your uh, what do you call it? The Chi. You've got. He didn't hear a single part of my monologue he didn't see none of the the evidence but he seen none of the receipts he, he, see, he, he said but 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 big meech but 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 crack pandemic but 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 are you gonna compare y'all creating films of decapitating prostitutes and shit are you gonna compare to oh lord raza man go ahead i'm sorry sir i'm sorry i interrupted you because obviously it's with disgusting crimes that obviously happen this is this isn't a widespread thing that happens People don't go around Africa just killing prostitutes, do they? As a, as like a whole, do they? Do we chop off each other's heads? Oh, they do do that. Obviously, there are savages who do do who do do that. But in America, there's obviously black criminals as well, committing crimes as well. Obviously, they, they make it. They make they ain't, they ain't well. doing shit like that. They ain't doing shit. Power. Like there's power. Mm -hmm. There's all the the fifty cent series. Do y'all see why I had to say do nay? You this nigga talking. Do Do you see why I had to say nay? Because he, he still has tethered media. talking points. He still has tethered talking points. Sir, you just said, oh, but but them cutting off heads and uh, prostitutes, that's like that's like not happening in Africa as like as like a whole or anything. Sir, it is. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, any mine. of you guys, any of you guys can go to Instagram right now. And look up a page called Women for Change SA. SA stands for South Africa. And these women, they post daily women that are butchered, raped, missing kids, everything in Africa. Daily, daily, daily. So when he says, oh, but this is just a movie. Oh, but like it's not happening all the time. You know what I think of? I think of poor Audrey. I think of Audrey, and I think of the first time we pulled up Audrey's story. 
Audrey was 39 and she was raped and killed in her home in January 2024, just a couple months ago. She was found by her son. Once the son arrived from school, he noticed the front door unlocked, blood splatters in the lounge, and the TV no longer mounted on the wall. He then found his mother, Audrey, still alive with a broken broomstick pushed into her vagina and part of her tongue removed in his parents' bedroom. After the gruesome discovery, the son ran out of the house and alerted his neighbors who called the police. Audrey died shortly after due to her injuries. Sir, I do the research. I can pull up the receipts on the witch doctors that abduct children and drag them in the bush to chop on their dicks and their balls and shit. I can, I can pull up the receipts, but I ain't going to indulge you like that. I think you know what's what. And I think you're trying to paint false equivalencies between Africans and Black Americans because you're insecure about what we're shedding light on. But what do you have to say, Rosa? You are telling the truth. You are telling the truth. What you're saying about obviously the tribal the cannibalism and what we are talking about. Y'all it's have true. cannibal tribes over there. Y'all eat yeah, each it's, other, it's, it's true. It's true. It's in some places. Not everywhere, though. But not, it's not like a widely practiced thing, but obviously, oh, we're going to have a, a human... Is there any tonight. cannibalism here in America? You see? Do you see us eating each other and cutting and, 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 and chopping off our vagina parts and stuff over here? No. I don't, no, I don't see right? it. But... Uh, what, what I'll say is, if they left black people their own devices, they probably would be doing the same thing as well. Point mate, go on, Mike. Repeat like, what you just said. Oh, whoa, 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 repeat what you just said, Raza man. I said, if they left black people to their own devices, they would do the same things. Black people like who? Black Americans? Bullshit. Whoa, 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 whoa. Let me say oh, Haiti. No, 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 no. Black who? I Are you talking about people. black Americans? Are you talking about black Americans? To the extent. So you're saying if black Americans... Wait, 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 you're saying if black Americans were left to our own devices, we would do what? We would do the fuck shit that y'all do? Probably. Oh, Prove my it. God. Hey, she Probably hey, what? Hey, hey, They're also let, Caribbean, let, stupid. Let me, let me, let me, let me, about black Americans, man. Those let me see. Let me see one thing. In Haiti, in Haiti after they... For anybody who's new to Mike TV, for anybody who'd be like, damn, is Mike just high? Like, why is he always like he's always on a level thousand? Like he he never has any chill with like Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays. I mean, Mike's pretty chill doing his streams, but on the weekends, on the what is it on the weekends about Lord, y'all hear the fuck shit I gotta listen to? We spend all this time educating this Bush baby who's been already indoctrinated by white supremacists in the UK. We show the receipts on their backwards, savage ways, and his response, his retort is, but you guys would do the same thing if you were left to your own devices. Guess what, fuck nigga? We did the same thing, and we built Black Wall Street, i.e. Wakanda. Y'all left to your own devices, and you butcher your women and shove knives up their vagina because you don't want them to experience pleasures during sex. God damn it, y'all. The only way I can stay off these fucking tethers next is if I'm smoking, so let me just pack a bowl. Let me just namaste and pack a bowl. And panel members, y'all can get your pound of flesh. I'm going to drop the stream yard link again. If anybody wants to call in, you can come get your pound of flesh because they say, they say, Mike just too heated. Mike, Mike just too savage. Why you got to do me like that, Mike? Why you got to do me like that? 12 years. Why you do me like that? Why you do me like that, bro? Oh, man. I'm going to take a back seat. Go ahead, y'all. Chop it up. Well, he not said everything. Mm -hmm. I'm tired of talking to this dude. I, I, I'm I'm busy eating now. <laughs> I, I don't. Whole, I, I said let me let me, let me just, let me just say something. My whole point is what I'm saying is obviously you know Haiti. Obviously they they went were slaves who were sent to obviously Haiti. And obviously they overthrew the, uh, sir, the French. Sir, are you comparing us the FBA Those are Caribbean. to the Haitians? Because it, they said you went to, you were in, enslaved in the same way, weren't you? Do you see what Eric those are Johnson two different groups, man? What are you talking yeah, about, man? Oh, so let me let me let me let me just make one thing clear. Haitians are also a victim of the transatlantic right? Oh, exactly. God, I can't. I can't. Haitians, Haitians are also a Razaman. 
you are going to meet the second in command. You are going to meet the vice president. You are going to meet someone who is just as deadly as Mike TV. I mean, God damn it. God damn it. You about to get this work, Raza, man. Go ahead, New Era. Have at him. Appreciate you, brother, man. I heard you called me up. So you said, um, I've been up all night. Pardon me. I'm trying to figure out all this babble you was talking about. You said we kill people, right? If we was left to our own devices, we will kill our own and eat each other, right? Brother, man. Okay, yeah. Yeah, okay, no worries, yeah. All right, um... I don't think that's true because do you want to know the only um part of the human I like and I do eat often? I know you're gonna say already. Do Do you know what it is? I don't. I don't do that kind of stuff. Sir. Yeah, oh, it's pussy. The only thing we eat around here is pussy. We don't fucking kill our women around here. We love our fucking women. The only thing we're gonna touch when we eat is they fucking cooking at me. We're not gonna fucking kill them. And I don't know why the fuck you up here talking all this bullshit like you motherfucking old poetry black black and shit, bro. I've been up. I ain't even been up. I didn't even go to sleep, but you got me fucked up, bro. So um, I just want to have a conversation. I'm, I want to, um, because I'm getting dressed right now. I want to hear your thoughts for a second. Try to collect my thoughts on your bullshit that I was here for like past 10 minutes. Okay. Can you repeat what you were saying, please, sir? I was basically shedding light on their backward savage ways, and his defense was, yeah, but you guys would do the same thing if left to your own devices. You would chop people's heads off, and you would rape, and you would mutilate. You'd do the same thing as us if you were left to your own devices. So please, Razaman, enlighten us. So let me just say, Haitians, Jamaicans, Black Brazilians, everyone who's been a victim of the transatlantic slave trade. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Did you, did you hear what you said in that? What was missing in that statement that you just made? Americans. All right, motherfucker, get it right now. Continue. Okay, let me let me say. Apart, I'm talking. About, so, excluding Americans, they've all practiced some sort of cannibalism. I can type. Let me. I can type up on right now. It says, "Do black Brazilians have cannibals?" It says, "Cannibalism is rare today, but it still exists." Okay, let's type in Haiti as well. Yeah, obviously, we already know Haitians are cannibals. We are I not Brazilians, fuck nigga. <laughs> yeah, find that, that, find something that says Black Americans are cannibals. Okay. And the only thing we beat up is bitch on kids. But um, anyway, I was hearing you talking about Mike on um, thumbnails, right? It was triggering. And how would we like it if y'all would do it, right? Okay, let me see. You said that part, right? Or was that somebody else? Wait, hold on. I found, I found, I found an Oscar. Hey, 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 hey! And fuck Mike's thumbnails being triggering. What y'all be doing is triggering what Mike's thumbnail says y'all be doing to one another is what's triggering. Oh, Lord, I'm going to let this one sit on the screen for a moment. But go ahead, Raza. And so thumbnails like that is triggering, right? And you say, Africans, how will we feel um, if y'all do that shit? Brother, man, I'm going to pitch you on one simple game real quick because I got to get right but um the difference between africans and black americans you see how you sit here and talk all that shit like we were the ones that started that shit you know damn well that you was probably one of them fucking 700 africans on fucking twitter talking about fucking selling us so don't you dare fucking fix them out like we fucking start shit the whole world shit on us and i'm fucking sick and tired of that shit if you don't act right get smacked the fuck up we don't give a fuck about your fucking feelings bro we and shit y'all learn from history yet Every time the world fucks with us, we fucks y'all up. You don't understand that shit? Okay. It was 700 fucking Africans talking about putting us into slavery. So I don't want to hear about no fucking thumbnails. Like we starting shit. Quick, real quick, a uh, little bit of housekeeping, y'all. Hit the like button. Hit the cash up or the PayPal if you want us to dip into an encore. Last call for an encore. Throw five on it. Throw hey, we fresh your shit, bro. But, um... Oh, okay, okay, I got you. Yeah, my notifications be fucked up. Uh, Razaman, were you trying to allude to finding information that speaks of black americans indulging in cannibalism well obviously yeah i found and you better not say nothing about the donner party because that wasn't black americans i'm right by donner let me just say let me just say that i found articles obviously that um white people white people from early days of slavery that was cannibalism but right now it's not it's not a thing 
Obviously, but if you look at the What he's trying to say is no, I found no evidence supporting my claim that foundational black Americans participated in slavery. I can easily Google and do research about um, cannibalism, uh, cannibal cultures in South America, in the Caribbean, but he can't find shit on the internet about black Americans doing that. I wonder why, I wonder why. And you know what, real quick, um, we have some more people that want their pound of flesh. New era. Um, uh, pay me back, new please. Era? I know. Okay, I got you. I got you. Uh, we also got Kev C in the building. Uh, Kev C, let us know where you calling in from and what do you have to say to Raza, man? Yeah. Hey, uh, Mike. Uh, first of all, can you can can you guys hear me pretty well? Yep, loud and clear, brother. Okay, outstanding. Thanks, and uh, thanks for letting me up coming and calling in from uh, Florida. Uh, you know, uh, and uh, my family's from uh, Georgia. Um, and the origin story, that's where it starts. And then, of course, it extends out to Florida, then, then uh, North Carolina, et cetera, at all. But everything starts with me in, in Georgia. That's where I traced my, uh, my, lim- my lineage to. Uh, all of that being said, so, look, I- I'm not necessarily, well, I, I don't want to say people are ignorant, but at this point, they're choosing to be. And, and because, look, the information is out there. Um, I can almost understand if you were in the, like the 19, I don't know, 60s or 70s, possibly going into the 80s, where you know a lot of information wasn't as available as much. You know, you, mostly it was researchers and historians, sociologists, psychologists doing kind of the work and then kind of passing the information to people. But uh, white people did a really good job of trying to what do you call it? Uh, propagandize uh, Africa and then Black Americans and trying to criminalize and villainize us. And basically, it's a way for them to justify, you know, mistreatment and abusing black people and black Americans in the United States. Right. So at this point, the information is available. Right. So anything that you hear that black Americans have done or what you think they've done or something that doesn't sound right. At this point, you can actually study it, find the research and then, you know, go, you know what, that's not true. Or, you know, because I've learned so much about Africa just on my own. I don't think if, if, if a white person tells me something about Africa, I'm like, oh, you know, I got to look that up. Right. I don't even I don't even believe, them. you know, because I remember when they tried to actually remember. I don't know if you remember those videos in the 19 was it 80s or so going into the 90s. They had the the Sally Struthers and the commercials and they tried to depict Africa and then the whole um, that concert, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, Live Aid, like Africa was, this, you know, j- just just in peril and it was just getting ready to fall off the planet. And we and they needed to be helped. And I'm like, that's not really what was happening. What was happening was basically you had, you know, Europeans, Asians, you know, all these other countries, even though colonization officially ended, quote unquote, they still had their their teeth sunk into these um, these African countries. So, you know, I've read, uh, you know, dozens of books at this point. So in a lot of ways, you can't I'm not going to sit here and let now uh, we can sit here and talk about Africans and what they got going on and all this other stuff. But I would not let some other person who's non-black tell me what's going on in Africa. You know, I'm either going to listen directly to an African and even then I'm going to check it out. Uh, And then uh, if a white person tells me something or an Asian or any other person tells me something, I'm going to check all of that out because I can't trust these people. That being said, what I challenge these Africans to do is you got to learn the history once you get here. It's almost like, you know, you get to the United States and then uh, there was some guy just a couple. He, he's only been here a couple of years. And he there he was sitting in front of a white man, basically dumping and crapping on black Americans. I'm like, dude, you just showed up yesterday. You don't know anything about the history. You don't know anything about the culture. You didn't study anything. You don't know anything about all the great and amazing things that black people have done, despite the fact of hardcore stomp down segregation, domestic terrorism, you know, uh, cities being burned to the ground, black men being lynched, black men, women and children being lynched, by the way, primarily men. Uh, you know, um, you know, uh, black leaders being targeted for political assassination. Like it's like I hate having to go through the history every time I talk to somebody who's either not black or of African and Caribbean descent. It's actually exhausting. So you guys got to start doing the work, man. You guys got to start doing your own work. Hold One on, of the things hold I on, did. Brother. Hold on, brother. Uh-huh. Hold on, brother. Not only is it exhausting, but it is. It's totally in fucking vain because you'll watch me real time go out of my way to get fucking 
PhD level dissertations on black American history and motherfuckers like Razaman will respond with, well, but if you guys were left to your own devices, you do the same thing. Okay, but check it out, Mike. Black people were left to their own devices. Honestly, segregation was a good thing. Segregation actually showed that when black people were left alone, we can actually build cities and towns and run them on our own without any interference or problems. The only problems that we actually had was when, you know, some white person showed up and said, you know what, y'all are doing a little bit too well over here. I got to burn this to the ground. Like literally, you know how many times that happened? That happened almost 50 recorded times that we know of. 50 recorded times in history, black cities were either burned to the ground or, par or, or, or damn near destroyed to the point where uh, they were, uh, they were uh, difficult to recover or unrecoverable. You know, so, you know, when, when somebody d goes out of their way to do that, they'll sit here and then he'll, they'll sit there and talk about in present day, well, you guys don't build anything. Yeah, yes, we do. And then when we do it and we ask you to leave us alone, then you destroy it. And then you want to then you, then you sit here in 2024 and go, well, why don't you guys have your own city? Well, every time we built you know one, what, every time we built dozens of them, everybody came through and just destroyed them. And now everybody's running around here looking like, you're like, gee, what happened? Like the history doesn't hey, count I'm and curious. it doesn't matter. Uh, and then on top quick. of that, what was the other thing too? Razaman. When black people were oh, trying oh, to mind oh, their oh. business. Uh huh. Razaman, what do you have to say to this? I already know this in the last live stream. Like I said, now I know about how black people, they actually had their own land, how they were building on it, and it got destroyed. Like I mentioned, the Tulsa massacre. Which is something I looked into. I watched a video. Then why would you make the asinine statement that if we were left to our own devices, we would be backward savages like you guys are? I'm talking about obviously if you're left at an early stage, because obviously you had a lot of more westernization. You were taught Western ideals, which is what you were made to strive for, which is why you built your own towns and cities and whatnot. But in Haiti, no, so black people came up with their own ideals, it, their own you know set of morals so and values, that and they did our, our own. success. You think we owe our success to white proximity? Let me just say one thing. Obviously, no, no, no. That's a yes or a no. Yes, yes. Absolutely not. He's wrong as fuck. Okay, well, you know what? Real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick. We got somebody else coming from the back to the front. It's Curtis. Curtis, let us know where you're calling in from and what do you think of his new claim that we owe everything we got to white proximity? Uh, what's up, man? It's Curtis Collin from Louisville. Uh, he thinks that we got to Could you repeat that question, Mike? He thinks that we got everything based on white to, uh, proximity. So, of so um, I basically highlighted how they act like backward savages. He says, right. "Well, Mike, your thumbnails are so triggering. You paint us in a bad light. You act just like white people do, trying to like paint us in a bad light." So I showed uh -huh. evidence that no, your actual state is bad. You guys even produce your own media that paints you in a bad light. So his right. response to that was. Well, but you guys would do the same thing if you were left to your own devices. And then he lies and say that we participated in cannibalism in the past. And right. then when he can't find any receipts on that, we get down to the crux of it. And, you know, Kev C is talking about how we invented things. You know, when we were left to our own devices, we invented Black Wall Street. And his response to that is, well, um, but, you know, it's all because you guys were around like European culture and like white people. Like that's how you guys were able to do those things. So I said, hold on. Are you saying we owe all of our success to white proximity? And he said yes. Okay, I think I think like I was listening to it in the beginning. He was making a couple of good points, but then when he said that if we were left to our own devices, we would be doing the same as the Africans, and that gets me to thinking: Does the do you think, Mike, that or just generally in the, the conversation, do you think that these people have this deep this kind of animosity and hatred? towards us that they even themselves don't even like realize that they have because all the information that he was giving us for the reason why that we left our own devices we would be killing each other or we would be uh uh raping and, and cutting off genitals of women and stuff like that that what context is he basing that off of when have we ever been noted for doing anything like that in american history hey brother what? brother um the thumbnail speaks volumes the title of the stream yeah speaks volumes i call them jealous for a reason i mean how else can we come on uh, other than jealousy and envy if we really get down to the root of it if i just watch guys hold on guys hold on i'm going to I'm going to lay back and recline in my brand new very nice bougie gaming chair that has a foot rest and everything L let me get all the way back like i'm on a first class seat okay i reclined all the way back okay now i'm closing my eyes and i'm pretending that Trinity is plugging me into the matrix and my avatar is a tether. Okay. I'm, I'm being downloaded right now with all 
the talking points, the experiences, the rhetoric, the vitriol, the tribalism, the xenophobia. Hold on, guys. Hold on, guys. Let me just let me just become a tether for a moment. Let me become a tether for a moment. They feel that Black Americans are equivalent to a dog, that we are like a privileged pet, just how white people have obsessions with their animals and their dogs live a large, a large, uh, a large quality of living compared to their their contemporaries that that are alley dogs that that live in uh, feeding off of scraps. Hold on, guys. Hold on, guys. I'm, I'm I'm being filled with I'm being swallowed up with the spirit of a tether right now. They feel that globally, Africans really aren't worthy of anything and that white people brought the new world and civilization to them and only through cozying up next to and assimilating and protecting and being promoted within the white power structure can you find success and they feel that we won the game by default they feel that that we had a cheat code and that cheat code was our ancestors being slaves. Hold on, I'm getting images. I'm, I'm, I'm downloading some more. They feel that that we just cheated the system by our ancestors being slaves and us being born and raised in America, that that somehow we we are just, just a privileged pet and they wish that they had our spot. They, they see us from their view in the alley and, and they see that we're inside and we're cozy and they don't understand that we've built our own home. They don't understand that we were subjugated. They don't understand that PETA had to say, hold up, you mistreating this motherfucker, hold up. They have rights. They don't get it. They're envious, they're jealous. That's all I can surmise. Well, Mike, I'll just, I'll leave you, with, uh, I'll say this. I think just like with the whites and then a lot of these immigrants, if once, just like the last call I said, if we're left to own the devices, once we once slavery ended and they were just like, well, do your thing, nigga, whatever, just stay the hell away from us. They come back a couple years later and we have the Black Wall Street and all these towns built up. And I'm like, how do these niggas do all this? We thought that they would just die off because. Hey, Rosa, man, I'm going to let you know a little a little bit of game here. All right. See, while you're thinking all blacks came on the ship, chained up and balled up. Some of us was already here in America from the get go, you know. I, that, I that, knew over that little piece of land, you know, the Native American Indians. You know who they are, right? You do know. Yeah, I, would, I, would, I, would, I, would, I would knew about it. But obviously, I don't know they're classified as black. You do you do know the Native wait, American on, Indians, no. right? Oh, oh, hold on. Um, wait, wait, hold on, 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 hold on. do you not realize that there were black Aboriginal tribes in America? I didn't know that. And you're talking they, to two of them right hey, now. Hey, 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 hey. And that's what happens when you go to the colonizers to get your education. Boom. He, he got you. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on, hold on. He got you, African boy in the UK. He got you thinking that every black person in America came off a slave ship. Okay. okay I heard programming. I heard stories. I heard stories about how obviously, obviously Africans traveled to America years ago, but there's no I can't believe they actually survived. That's what I was thinking. So I don't know whether that actually was true or not. Yeah, we've been here since the beginning. We didn't come on slave ships. We're the ones that got the, the chicken pot blankets and stuff. And, you know, the, the Thanksgiving call. You know, we've been here since the whole time. We got we got pushed into slavery because they came over and took our land. We had this land first. Rosamond, Rosamond, yeah. do, do you not know that the United States government reclassified Native American tribes as Negro and Black and colored? I, I, I don't know that. This is what happens when you're educated, when you pay to be educated by the colonizer. When you flee to the colonizer's kingdom and pay him to educate you, is he really going to teach you the real? Or is he going to have you acting like a tether out here in these streets? All right. Native American Indian right. Lesson 101. All right. Millie, go ahead and unmute yourself. Let us know where you're calling in from and what do you think about the topic at hand? Oh, what's up? Um, well gone, people. Uh, I just heard a brother from the UK, so I'm, I'm quite chuffed to hear that. But I think I only recently, well, I remember when I was a child, I read this book on the history of Black America and it said that, um, what was it, that 
um, black American runaway slaves. They used to run away into, um, and, and the Native Americans would take them in and probably even marry them. And I also read that, you know, the, for a black American, the most African blood they can have at that actual peak highest is 81%. And we know that the Red Indians, they were the red in the red ones, they were like in in, in cahoots with them, the Confederate slave masters. So I think, okay, it probably definitely weren't them. So I just thought, okay, usually when I hear black Americans say I'm part Native American, they're not talking about they're, they're not trying to say that they're like with the red man. They're that they're, they were black Native Americans. And I think Tariq Nasheed had a thing called about the 1492 thing where they actually said that when they arrived in America, there were black people there. So it's like, yeah, they, it, like they're not going to teach you this stuff. And I've always been one to to um, to to look beyond what, they, especially in this country, because they 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 they, they, they pervert the truth, like like it's their culture to do so. So I've always said, okay, let me go and look for it alternatively. So yeah, that's all I really wanted to say. What you got to say about that, Reza? And and Millie, um, this is a um, man who uh, has Ghana. You know, lineage from Ghana, born and raised in the UK, um, because his family wanted him to be a UK citizen. He went back from Ghana, uh, went back to Ghana for a couple of years, just long enough to get citizenship in Ghana. And now he's back in UK to get educated. He says after the UK, he's going to go to Dubai. Um, he says that uh, Black Americans don't deserve reparations, that in fact, we don't deserve reparations because we should just be happy that we're in America. We'd be much worse off in Africa. And he also feels that we're trying to profit from the suffrage of our ancestors. Um, that was what he said three days ago during our first conversation, three, four days ago. Now, after he's seen the, uh, the backlash he's got, now he's come back today talking about, okay, well, actually, since the last four days, I've done research on YouTube, and I think Black Americans do deserve reparations after all. But when we initially asked him, he said, we don't deserve it. We should just be happy just to be in America, and we're trying to pro profit from our ancestors. And when I asked him what he thinks about Africans deserving reparations, he said Africans deserve it, though. So n knowing that with its full context, what do you think, Millie? I think every, unfortunately, such as the system we live in, the society we live in, I think every black person is entitled to go through their phase of ignorance. I've been through it enough times. So um, it, it's just like he's coming to the knowledge. And I, I actually second that. I mean, obviously, straight after like um, descendants of slavery, I, I believe that Africans deserve reparations in, to, in the way that Europeans have completely embellished our, our homeland. But like I said, I will wait gladly after like descendants of slavery and get their payday because they deserve it a whole lot more than we do because especially Caribbeans because they've had to deal with slavery and colonialism so I would gladly wait behind them to get their for them to get their payday and then we'll wait for hours but yeah we're definitely entitled to it especially in the UK they said that how if they pay Britain owes reparations to the court because you've got to understand like three quarters of the time that America had slavery going on they were a British colony and the whole war was about that we want to be able to profit from slavery without having to give anything to to them um, to Britain because you know you're dealing with taxation without representation which is something that Britain still practices to this day in areas where people who look like me is that they that they tax them to the moon without actually investing anything that's just a, a core British principle so, um, but anyway, it's going, it's going on the straight and narrow, like, um, yeah, I, I think Britain, that even when, like, um, when America pays back reparations to black Americans, they could, they'd probably be entitled to go back to Britain and say, hey, we were uh, colonized by you for, mo for a large portion of that time, so we want that money back. But obviously, they'd have to get that money after us, after, well, every one of us gets our, rep gets our payday. They said that, hey, Britain paid back reparations for all the countries they've done over, that they would literally be bankrupt. And to me, I, I, I wouldn't be, I'm not going to lose sleep over that. In fact, I probably would want that to be the case. But yeah, I'm allowing my plane there. It's just something that's always been frustrating me and I've always wanted to just like release it into the atmosphere. So yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm glad you give me the opportunity to do so. Millie, I've got to ask you, if you now know that he was against us, not even getting reparations, but deserving it, if he said we didn't deserve it, but Africans deserved it, Four days later, now he's coming back saying, oh, no, we deserve it. And I say, oh, is that genuine? Is it just because you, you've heard the backlash you've gotten? 
He says, oh, no, it's because I watch some YouTube videos and I'm educated now. And I used to watch a lot of Jesse Lee Peterson. And, and you know, but, but over the last four days, I watched some new YouTube videos. And, and, and you're right, Mike, you guys deserve reparations. Um, do you think that's genuine, Millie? I mean, do you think it's crazy for us to doubt his well, authenticity? I've as a fellow uh, as a fellow compatriot and being educated in, in the UK that they could just tell you all kinds of lies and just like pervert the truth that you could think something and then obviously going alternative outlets like I, I'm going to trust him because he you know he's a compatriot man I'm going to trust what he says so I mean I, I'd understand if you didn't want to but I'm going to trust and say that yes he's finally come into the knowledge that hold seems... on I thought you Africans knew not to trust your fellow African come on y'all come on I've gone out of my I way smell, to... I can see hey. I smell the flies man I I, I've flies. gone I've gone on out of my way to produce hold content on, hold on, hold on, hold on, I've gone out of hold on, hold on. I've gone out of my way to produce... look at the screen y'all I've gone out of my way to produce content that highlights Perhaps you Africans should not be so entrusting of one another. But, next but, next me, thing you me. know, your face down ass up and Babu's in your booty and a 12-year-old's <laughs> next. <laughs> let, me, let me say one thing. In the UK. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let me get some fists in the chat if you can hear me loud, crisp, and clear. I am glad you enjoyed the replay while we waited for some live callers. We are now live. But you know what? In being equipped with that new information. Let me drop the StreamYard link one more time for you all. We'll go ahead and give you a few minutes to click the link and call on in. We are opening up the airwaves. Click the link, call in, let us know what you think about the topic at hand. We already have a couple people backstage who've been patiently waiting. So we'll start by bringing them up. But we will be live in five. You bitch South Africa. Like, you can even speak to, or what's it called? You can speak to uh, the other person on the call who's from the UK. Once they move to the UK, they all become friends. It's not a thing where all oh, Nigerians against Ghanaians, Ghanaians against Jamaicans. Obviously, for like dancers and whatnot, they do have, have like some type of fun. But it's generally they're all together. If you know what I mean, they mix, they mix cultures together, don't they? Yeah. We we're it's literally. Not a thing to... where... Yeah, it's definitely like he's gone there, and, I, and I'm Nigerian. Like at the end of the day, just because of our treatment in this country, we we that all goes out the window. So we're both black, we're unified by our skin color and and our experiences. So therefore. I support him, and I like think he supports me too in anything he wants to do. And I've got—I don't even know this brother, but I've got nothing but love for him, as I'd have for all you FBI, because I still—he could say that I'm crazy about the the Pan African thing, but I've got love for everybody, for all my melanated people. I, I've got love for all of us, so it's just like a deep love in my heart that I support them in everything they do, and I always defend them. I don't care, even if they've apparently done wrong, I'll always—I'll always I'll always come jump to their defense. That's just me. That's just my convictions. Yeah, like I said, I'll, I'll support, I also support, support what you're saying because I've got friends in the UK who are black from all over Africa, from Kenya, South Africa, Nigeria, everywhere. And I don't, I don't like, it doesn't matter to me where they're from. I'm just friends with them because, because obviously, because they're black and whatnot. I really can relate on that experience in this country, if you know what I'm saying. So there's no division in that sense. Like, I support Idris Elba. He's half um, Ghanaian, half Sierra Union. Uh, it doesn't matter where, what country his background is. It's the fact that he's from this he's from the UK. He's he's black, and that's all I need to know. And that's why I'll support him. And that's exactly the same goes for any black person from the UK or even America, but especially in the UK. Like I'm always, if they make it in Hollywood, I'm gonna be. I'm totally chuffed a bit. So I, I don't care what what their background is. And I think I said this. Like that's why I call up a black brick. It's not because I'm trying to win acceptance from the indigents. It's because I'm trying to network to other pimelinated people from the UK that I want to like build camaraderie amongst them. So that 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 that's my thing. Because I Wait, feel hold like on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So Millie says there's kind of like a sense of pan Africanism in the UK. Like UK blacks kind of stick together. Um, yeah. Do you share that same sentiment, Raza man? Yeah, I, like my friends, even my best friend is even from South Africa, South Africa. and I, that doesn't really bother me whatsoever. I don't really care. We have different cultures and whatnot. It was like one day I'll cook some food for the next day I'll cook some food for me. It's 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 like a sense of love wherever we're from. If you know what I'm saying, I've got an See, idea it's interesting friends. that you say that, but I talk to other UK blacks and they say that there's still those same tribal xenophobic beefs in the uk they say that there's even certain kind of african immigrants in the uk that go around beating up and killing other kind of african immigrants in the uk so were they lying or are there uk gangs that are african that bang on fellow africans 
there's, oh, I'm there's, just there's, the there's a difference between immigrants who have just arrived and ones who are born in the UK. Those of us who are born in the UK don't have that mentality at all whatsoever. Because even if we start to think a bit stupid like that, this country will definitely set us straight. Meghan Markle said, I'm not black, I'm mixed race. She comes into the royal family and they let her know you are black. <laughs> and she had to leave the they had to leave the country. Britain is just that kind of country. So it's just like that we we know who we are. These these people, because they outnumber us, they they, they have no bones about reminding us of, of, of who the heck we are. So so yeah, that's just my thing. Anyway, can carry to interrupt Yezzy, sorry. In the UK, there's obviously that debate sort of, oh, Nigerian Jollof Rice is better than the Ghanaian Jollof Rice. Obviously, have these kind of playful ones. But it's not, it's not a sense of violence, if you know what I'm saying. It's not a sense of like, oh, I'm going to go kill him because he's Nigerian. It's, it's not like that. Obviously, there's gang violence. Well, involved. you know, speaking of Jollof, um, I put together a thumbnail the other day. Let me know, did I get my visual representation of Jollof correct? Uh, yeah, it looks, it looks about right. I don't, yeah, I mean, that's the thing where he mean. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. There's a, there's a psychology experiment, and I would like you guys to entertain me for a moment and participate in it, okay? Let's start with Razaman. Razaman, when you see this image on the screen, what thoughts come to mind? What emotions does it make you feel? I don't know what the hell it is. It's obviously a man holding to a fast run, so I don't know what's going on. Confused. Come on, come on, think, let it sink in. Look at it, look at its surroundings. Just just allow yourself to, to be engulfed, okay? Just just allow yourself to be swallowed up in the imagery for a moment. Could have been swallowed up. Have you ever been swallowed up? Have you gone through a time of swallowing where everything was overwhelmed? Have you ever been swallowed, swallowed, swallowed up? Have you ever been swallowed, swallowed? I would have been. Have you ever been swallowed, swallowed, swallowed up? 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 I would. What? Do you think? What do you feel when you see this image, Razaman? Art is subjective. Art tells you something. Allow the art to speak to you. I could just see a man running, holding food. That's it. It's not hard. I don't. I don't get emotions like that. Listen, listen. Art, art is something where it's multifaceted. There's multiple layers to it. Yes, technically. There is a man running in sandals with Jolof Rice in front of him, kind of like a carrot dangling, dangling right in front of him. But but look beyond that. What, what is the artist really trying to convey? What message does the artist want to implant in your psyche? Chasing food. Really? And no, 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 no. He's onto something. He's onto something. Chasing food. And and what is food a nickname for in the UK? Drugs. That's right. That's right. FBA brothers and sisters, if you don't know, if you haven't watched Top Boy like I have, uh, in the UK, they call drugs food. We say peas, pounds, packs, drugs, whatever, dope. They call it food. So so if he's looking at this and and if he sees, yeah, see, Top Boy, well, one man, big up, you're done now. Um, so if he sees this <laughs> and if he sees food, and if we know that really, if we peel back that layer in the UK, food is drugs. And if we peel back another layer and we think, man, what is that? What is that drug he's chasing? What is that high he is chasing? What is he fleeing towards? You know what I think that high is that he's chasing, y'all? You know what that high is that he's going after? I mean, I can wait a moment. I can wait a moment and I can see if there's somebody in the chat that can accurately guess what that high is. 
I can filibuster for just a second to see if there's anybody out there, or I can just show you rather than tell you that high that they're searching for, that gratification is white acceptance. It's white adulation. They just want to be accepted by their oppressor. It's a form of Stockholm syndrome, if you will. They get down on their knees praying to be accepted by the oppressor. Do you have your passport? Did you get your shots? Girl, would you like to come back with Rob to America? America, America, America. Do you have your passport? Did you get your shots? Who wants to come Yes, ladies and gentlemen, yes. And the artist formerly known as Mike TV is displaying that through this portrait, partially developed by artificial intelligence, but either way, I at least named it, okay? And I name it the art of the flea. Millie, it's your turn. When you see the art of the flea by Mike TV, what does it make you think? What what emotions do you feel? What what do you taste on your palate? Well, the first initial reaction is that if a white person had posted that video, I'd want to punch him through his face because that's that's quite hateful. But yeah, someone chasing after jello fries. Yeah, that, that's the thing. But thing between me and Yezzy is like that's like friendly back and forth because we argue over who makes the, the best jello fries, even though it weren't invented by either of us, it was invented by the Senegalese, and that's why it was appropriated by the Spanish and turned into paya, paya, which is the, virtually the same thing as jello fries. But I'll uh, ask just a little bit of trivia for you. Hold on, hold on. I'm going to slow you down for just a second. Um, Eric, Marco, Desmond, unmute yourselves for just a moment if you can. Unmute yourself. What's, what's up? Fellas, is it just me? Is it just me? Or are they able to rapidly disseminate the history of Jolof Rice, but when you ask them the history about their fucking countries, they don't know nothing. <laughs> These right. niggas talking about Rice with the quickness, but can't tell us about the history. That, that's kind they of know more about the country that they live in now than their actual origin. They be warring about the rice they are scholars over the rice. It was just crazy, Millie. I'm sorry. It was just crazy to hear you break down the history of Jolof rice. But when I be asking these tethers about, you know, the tribe they come from, the, the land, the country, uh, who colonized them, they don't be knowing nothing. But y'all know about some Jolof. Well, me, because I, I, I have a keen interest in African history anyway. So I don't think I know everything. But it's just like, and you got to know, these African countries aren't, these are artificial borders. They weren't drawn up by us, they were drawn up by European colonizers. So um, even like Yezi's country was formerly known as the Gold Coast, because that was literally like a hotspot that they would just come and looting for their gold and stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, it, it's just like, it's very difficult. You have to know the, the history of your tribe and ethnicity. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are now live. Click the link, call in, chop it up. If you aren't familiar, if this is your first time watching, if you're watching the replay and you missed this live, um, this is what I refer to as my weekend FBA powwows, y'all. The, these are weekend FBA powwows hosted by your man, Mike TV. And I put on this powwow so that we can learn something new each weekend, so we can connect the diaspora as we simultaneously burn the bridges and sever ties where where those ties are undeserving. I mean, guys, um, the way that I run the stream is it's Roman Coliseum style. I mean, this is directly influenced by the audience. Every hour and a half, two hours, we ask you guys if you want us to wrap up or if you want an encore. If you want an encore, you hit the Cash App, you hit the PayPal, you throw five on it, and that's what keeps the show alive. That's what keeps the show going. The shortest broadcast, the shortest weekend FBA powwow that I've held has been three hours in length. <laughs> That's a short one, guys. Uh, you'll see why in a moment. The shortest one, the shortest one was three hours in length. The longest one we have done has been 12 hours straight of nonstop live broadcast programming standing on lineage. 
So again, you guys vote with your dollars. Periodically, we check in. We see if you guys want an encore. And if you deem it so, then we keep the show going. Now is the time to click the link and call in. Um, we already had somebody hit the cash app earlier. Monica, thank you so much for the contribution, darling. I appreciate the support. Already got a couple people who've been waiting oh so patiently backstage. Let's bring them up in order of appearance. The first one coming from the back to the front is Curtis. Curtis, how you doing, brother? I'm good, man. What's up with you? Hey, too blessed to be stressed. I can't right, complain. Right, right. Hey, um, was that your first time watching the replay? I, I know that, that you were live on the panel and everything, but mm -hmm. was that your first time seeing the replay? Uh, yeah, it was my first time seeing the replay. Mm, so hindsight being 2020, um, what were some things you noticed? What were some things you may not have realized the first time around? Um, how do you rate your own performance? I mean, I give you an A plus, of course. <laughs> <laughs> You're standing on business with us, brother. But what do you think hindsight being 2020? Well, in hindsight, I think that uh, we could have got more in depth with uh, Raza about the whole cannibalism thing, about him saying that we came over here and uh, because of the white man and not being civilized, that we were cannibalisms or cannibals over in America. I just wanted to get more into uh, Reza and his, uh, Raza and his opinion on that. Cause he's saying that we're the Native Americans were cannibals. First, he was saying that the slaves were cannibals. Now he's saying that the Native Americans are cannibals because we're identifying ourselves as Native yeah, Americans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on real quick, brother. Let, let's yeah. go ahead and catch people up to speed. Let's go ahead and catch them up to speed. So um, for anybody who's not understanding, um, there's a guy from the UK by way of Ghana called Raza. He claims to be like of a, a chief of a tribe or some shit. And I had a two and a half hour long conversation with Raza. I titled it uh, Foundational Black American versus Princess Amumba or something like that. Um, and we had a two and a half hour long discussion. And I learned that he doesn't really feel we should get reparations. Um, I learned that he held a lot of contempt and vitriol and misinformation when it comes towards uh, us as foundational black Americans. And after that two and a half hour long conversation, some days passed and I was doing another broadcast and he called in again. And he didn't necessarily seem to have any remorse, but I think he realized the backlash that was garnered after the first time he joined the show. So now he changes up his tune. He says, well, guys, it's been four days. I've done more research. I think you guys deserve reparations after all. Blase, blase, blase. But at the same time, he's still saying slick shit about us Black Americans. Well, as time has gone on, we've been seeing Raza pop up more and more. And it's interesting. You know, one minute he wants to act like an ally. The next minute he wants to act like an op. Um, I've done a few streams earlier in the week about our true Black Indian heritage. He's left comments talking about we're not really native, blase, blase, blase. Um, Curtis, I think personally, when we brought up the cannibalism in Africa, I think that really uh, triggered him. Right. Because, you know, not only is he trying to discredit our claims of um, being aboriginals here in America, but he's also trying to say that even if we are native, natives were cannibals and we black Americans would be cannibals if it wasn't for the white man. I mean, I'm, I'm just very confused by his rhetoric, but I just wanted to give people a little more context, but go on, Curtis, go on. Also, you're forgetting when he was actually slurping up that white dude that we brought into the room. I was following him. Oh, and it's, shit. It's, yeah, you, I was waiting for you to put that yeah. live on. He was really in there, Uncle Tommy, for this white dude. Because I was kind of capable yeah. for him in the beginning. And then that's when he kind of, that's when I flip flopped. I'm like, oh, and this dude, he obviously has a serious problem with black Americans for some reason. And mm -hmm. I think that he has a problem with himself. I think it's his own insecurities. Because he's in there talking shit on his private chat. I'm just waiting for him to get on, honestly. Oh, yeah. No, no, he, he's backstage. We are yeah, definitely going to bring him up in just a moment. Um, thank you for refreshing my memory. When I was curating the uh, the clips to put together for the initial replay, um, for some reason, I totally forgot how he was deep throating that white man. Yeah. And um, I wonder if I can find it real right. quick. Hold on and a, a white man's dick okay. in your ass. Come on. Let me just Oh, yeah. Well, we're close. We're close. <laughs> oh, shit, we're close. Damn, Mike. <laughs> you said he got a what, Mike? Hold on. So I think that sailor icon is the white dude. Yeah, that's Let's him. See when the white dude first comes up. Let's see when Raza and the white dude are up. Raza's up. No, okay. Yeah, a little more forward. Raza's panicking. Okay, here's now. the white dude. Here's the white dude. Yeah, Ross is probably backstage like, oh, no, no, no. I thought these niggas don't forgot play, to play the white man dick. Don't Negro. play, don't play. You are the captain now. You are the captain now, Philip. Oh, shit. Let me, let me see. Let me see. I think it's like right around here. You can't even yeah. acknowledge that Europeans have a history of cannibalism. You can't even acknowledge it. 
oh, that's how the cannibalism came up too, because the white boy was talking slick shit, and I was like, sir, doesn't your culture like? aren't you guys cannibals, like, historically? And he wouldn't even acknowledge it. And yeah. then I think that triggered Raza, you know. Raza said, oh, my gosh, I, I have never seen a, a black man talk to a white man like that. Oh, say, oh, <laughs> Baba Yega, no. Please, please come. <laughs> I must protect these white men. I must protect these white men. It is my rightful duty. <laughs> Enslaved by people that are actively participating in cannibalism. I don't get it. Well, cannibalism has obviously been part of human history for quite a long time. All right, so, we've got of Air and C back. Of Air and C, um, do you acknowledge that Europeans have participated in cannibalism historically? I'm guessing like every group would have at some point. Oh boy, I we ain't talking about every group, dude. I said Europeans specifically. Well, why would I feel like a sense of shame or guilt for something when every other culture did the same shit? Obviously, you feel a sense of game or shield, uh, guilt because you can't even say yes. You can't even acknowledge that Europeans have a history of cannibalism. You can't even acknowledge it. I well, just never looked into it. it. Before you start projecting shame. I have never looked into that. I never... Uh, you You've know. never heard stories of Europeans throughout history eating fellow Europeans, really. I can't say I have, no. And you're born and raised in America. I won't deny that they did it. I honestly just don't know. I mean, you know. And and you're born and raised in America. Yeah. And you've never heard of the Donner Party. The Donner Party? Do y'all know what the Donner Party is? Yeah, I don't know what the fuck, no. Well, hey, hey, maybe it's because I live on the West Coast, so I know of the Donner Party. But um, that was a very, very, very famous case where um, some European settlers were trapped in a storm system, so they chose to eat one another. The Donner Party. Go ahead and look it up, ladies and gentlemen. The Donner Party. I don't know if man's is playing stupid or if uh, the crystal meth is playing with his mind like Eric Johnson says. Matter of fact, we got Eric Johnson up here. <laughs> Eric Johnson, you, you said he's playing stupid, huh? I mean, he said he's from Nevada, so maybe he don't know. I don't know. I don't yeah, know. This, this is no. this is one of the side effects from that breaking back Heisenberg blue method. So I don't know what this dude is really talking about. Europeans are definitely known for their history of cannibalism. So I don't know if it's just the crystal meth or the crack cocaine that is clogging his mind, but he know what he's talking about. Why would I? I mean, why would I care if they were cannibal? That sounds I mean, that sounds kind of gangster to me. And booty toes and feet. Eating people is gangster. <laughs> of course, of course, our resident white he, mayo he, ambassador. He, he must know from experience. Eating people is gangster. Know. Oh shit! But you would so admit there's like, isn't there? Gangster. Is, Mike, is, oh, isn't there Lord. currently? There's currently cannibals like uh, in Africa, isn't there? We not African. <laughs> oh, I know. I'm not saying y'all hey, are. I'm not hey, saying hey, that. Hey, 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 There's hey, another hey, group, though, is what I'm saying. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Guess what? You're right. And look how easily I can agree <laughs> and acknowledge that. But, oh, it was pulling teeth for you to acknowledge that Europeans have a history of cannibalism. Oh, Lord. I don't know why you're so insecure about it. <laughs> what the fuck, man? We got a history of cannibalism. What is your point? Um... Now, what is your point in bringing up um, Africans participating in cannibalism? I didn't even hop up here to talk about cannibalism. I had two other points. Um, oh, Lord. Yeah, yeah. He wants to shy away from that European history. Yeah, Curtis. What, what, white boy was up here doing a whole bunch of uh, explaining. And I got to I gotta skip through and find the part where um, Rosamond starts swallowing him up. Let me see. Let me go forward just a minute. About how... The African man was trying to say that black Americans would participate in cannibalism if not for white European settlers. And I was pointing out that white European settlers have a history of cannibalism. And since you're the only white person on the panel, I asked you whether or not you would acknowledge that history. And the answer was no. Your first response was, oh, well, everybody's done cannibalism. And then your next response was, oh, well, cannibalism is kind of gangster if you ask me. But I never heard of the Donner Party. Uh, that's where... The Europeans' track record with cannibalism comes in, sir. I just had to bring you up to it's speed like an, again. I don't know. Oh, yeah, Mike. Like, I'm on the know. East Coast. And I heard oh, shit, Curtis. I'm just now yeah. seeing this. Thank you so much for the message. Yeah, you're right. It was when they were... Yeah, I left them both up there together. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Let me go ahead. Here we go. Here we go. I see it. Yeah. I see it. There you yeah, go. thank you for saving us some time. We got Uncle no Ruckus backstage. We're going to bring him up in a second. We got Hazardis backstage. We're going to bring you up in just shot. a minute. We got Tyrone backstage. Nice icon photo, by the way, Tyrone. 
Nice icon photo. We're going to bring Tyrone up in just a moment. But yeah, watch how this African man starts getting real giddy when he's on the line with Zaddy. It's just him alone with Zaddy, y'all. Just him alone with Zaddy. Let's see what an African talks about when an African's alone with a white man, y'all. <laughs> Only on my TV, goddammit. I love to read this content, the but I don't see this on the Twitter spaces. I've seen Hell some other no. good historians on YouTube, but, but I don't see such social experiments where I can put together a goddamn tether with the suspected white supremacists and let y'all hear what they talk about when they think it's just them listening. Let's go ahead and get into it. Damn. Let me, let me, let me. I remember that. I'm, I'm talking about physical violence. Because obviously, when white people do racism, they usually just. Use you well. But when no, it comes no, to no, no, people, no, 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 no. Tell this white man about the racism you've experienced in the UK at the hands of white people. I'd love to see it. Obviously, it's just, it's just sparking comments. You just come, they don't really, they don't physically come and abuse you most of the time. I have that. Or if they even try to do that, I can easily defend myself. When it comes let to me, black people, I just get mobbed. Let me tell you this. If you're white and you walk through like an all-black hood here, I mean, you're going to be straight up terrorized, bro. So I, I know the feeling, man. Trust me. And pe people call me like a cocoon or whatnot, but me personally, I've, I've experienced more physical violence from black people than even white people. Obviously, white, ra black, white racism is different to, obviously, how of discrimination from blacks. Because when it comes to black people, they, they're more physical view. When it comes to white people, they just make snarky comments, or say certain things, but they yeah, we're, we're more reserved. We're more reserved. We more keep things to ourselves. Well, yeah, that's uh, I, I agree with that. Um, but your your statement that you made um, that I do agree with, by the way, a few minutes ago was um, that you know American blacks do owe. Um, I'm not saying a hundred percent, but I would say some level of um, I guess comfort, achievement, etc. I would say is because, like you said their proximity to western the western man yeah no, I, I do agree with that i still stand by it. yeah it has made a difference yeah and um I, I guess one of the main points that i disagree with the i guess quote fba people on here is they claim that we they treat nasheed and i don't I, mike at least to a degree We'll try to talk as if um, like white people just can't do jack shit. We can't do anything without uh, the help of uh, foundational black Americans. Um, they're saying that, you know, they created like the country from scratch, um, even though the system seems to be derived from our previous economic, uh, social uh, and governmental models from Europe. Um, so again, their claim that they built this country from scratch is something I'm still pretty confused about. Um, but yeah. But what's it called? I see, I see like a lot, a lot of unnecessary hate from black people towards all white people. But when it comes to stuff like crime or whatnot, they say, oh, you should judge by the consciousness of the character, not the color of the skin. But when it comes to white people as well, they don't reciprocate the same things. They just all, all pick them up as bad. But in my life, obviously, I've met some people, obviously, who were initially, like, racist. When I got to know them, they become some of my good friends, you know what I mean? And they actually, and they actually flip past my skin color. Listen to how he's deep-throating zaddy, y'all. Yeah, I mean, I've experienced racism from white people in the UK, but, like, after they were done being racist, like, sometimes we became really good friends, and those black people are actually way worse than the white people. Like, the right. white people just, just say some snarky comments, but the black people will get physical. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> this shit is crazy. Only on my TV, y'all. Only on my TV. Mm-hmm. We know we got some more people we're going to bring from the back to the front. Uh, first one joining us in is Hazadis. Um, Hazadis, let us know where you're calling in from. Yeah, uh, yeah it's, uh, it's Hazardous, bro. Hazardous. Okay, I got you. I got you. Shit, yeah, I thought yeah, you were yeah. free uh, for, uh, uh, for a minute. <laughs> nah, negative. Yeah, nah, negative. Yeah, absolutely not. Uh, yeah, no, nah, I'm from Long Beach, bro. I'm from California. All right, for sure. Well, um, what do you think about uh, the the content you've seen so far this afternoon? Hey, uh, yo, boy is a coon with a capital C. I, this look, man, he like, yeah, they don't, they've never done nothing. They just say words like, 
Man, look, bro, that's what I'm saying. The delineation is real because I don't even know where you do that at. Like he said, they don't beat you all the time. You know, you sound like a, like a like a, a kid of an alcoholic father or something. Like, they, they don't beat me all the time. I just be like running into the place. Well, you know what I mean? Sometimes, like, sometimes <laughs> after daddy got drunk and beat my ass, he took me to Toys R Us <laughs> and I could think about a toy. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, right, bro. Like he like yeah, yeah. He hit me sometimes, but you know, he overrides a good dad. You know what I mean? Like this boy, man. Man, 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 talking about he deserved reparation. We deserve reparation just for hearing that stupid shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if there was ever, if there was ever a black American saying the same thing, if there was ever a black American talking about, well, yeah, you know, white people can be racist, but it's a good kind of racism. And I've been friends with some white people after they've been racist towards me, but those black people are even worse. Like, we'd be like, nigga, you are a sellout. You are a runner. You are a runner. You are a track star. Uh, yeah, like he he like um like I think he likes them to pet him and stuff. You feel me? Like you know, like they brush, they pet my hair. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> that's where he at. When he's lost, bro, and you can't say I don't even want him on the team. So uh, you know, he can he can kick rocks, do something else, yeah, playing track. Hey, he's um, serving to white people. Imagine the um the type of dynamic between his type and the white. Slave drivers on the plantation. Well, you know, Massa, he does beat the shit out of us, but you know, we get Sundays off to go to church at least. Like, bro, what are you talking about, son? No, hey, bro, you ain't lying. Hey, that's real. Like, yeah, he let um, but he gave us good food. Like, when slavery was over, he's like, where are we gonna go? Like, where's we gonna go? <laughs> Massa, listen, Massa, listen. I know, I know we are supposed to be emisip, uh, emancipate, uh, emancipated now, but honestly, Massa, um, I wouldn't know what to do without you. Can I stay, Massa? Can I please stay? <laughs> Face ass boy. Hey, for real. Hey, this hey, bro, this the same, this the same little that's that little boy, the little bastard in total uh Nat Turner. Right there, there yeah. you go, right there. <laughs> mm -hmm. He's he's Cujo. He's Cujo who uh, sells out his fellow Maroons into captivity. I mean, come on now, these buck broken Africans. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, but hey, ask him is his people uh, the homie. Ask, ask him is that's who his people is. Are they the homie tribe? Right. They, that's <laughs> he's from Ghana. Damn. <laughs> Damn, I think he's he said, he said Ghana. Iguana. <laughs> Iguana. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. And with that said, we got another guest coming from the back to the front. We got Tyron in the building. Uh, Tyron, where are you calling in from? What's going on? What's going on? This is Ty from Charlotte, North Carolina. All right. And let us know, what do you think about the content you've witnessed thus far? Yeah, it's straight coonery, buffoonery. Yeah, like Africans been involved in close proximity with Europeans for like thousands of years. Like you had the Ethiopians. You had the uh, Moors, all those type people mixing with these people and creating mulattoes, uh, uh, such as in North Africa. So I don't know what the hell he's talking about. Like, we get our shit from close proximity to European mix. I think you're on to say, hey, brother, uh, I, I don't know if this is your first time on the show, but you uh, you coming up here dropping some gems early on, guys. He said that we owe all of our credit, all of our achievements to our proximity to white people, and they've had proximity to white people for hundreds of years now and don't have the same level of accomplishment. Say it ain't so. Yeah, another thing is we invented all these things, but Africans, since they say that we're the spawns of them, they should be building like Wakanda already. They should already have that because we have Black Wall Street. We got all these um, inventions such as hair conking. That wasn't invented in Africa if we were like self-hating against ourselves because we Wait, don't find Africans doing that. Hair what? Hair conking. Hair caulking? Which is... Which is the uh, the perm, the relaxer that people had back in the day, like Garrett Morgan. He was an American oh. Indian. Do we want to brag about that? Was that was something developed. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm not sure if that's a flex, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> we we that wasn't developed perm, like um, out of self-hatred. People assume it was, but it wasn't. Because many of tribes were experimenting with hairstyles back then. 
But oh, some okay. of our people that are into this Pan African thing, they claim a theory like, "Oh, we braid seeds in our hair." When really you have indigenous people like braiding sweet grass within their hair, but they we don't find anything like that in Africa. Hmm. Hmm? Yeah. yeah, very Agreed. interesting indeed. I feel you. Yeah, definitely agreed. And you know what? Uh, we've got another guest coming from the back to the front. Uh, we've got Yankee Boy in the building. Yankee Boy, where are you calling in from? Yankee Boy going once. Yankee Boy going twice. And Yankee Boy's up out of here. All right. Well, guys, back by popular demand, if you want to say that. Jesus, back by popular demand. Uh, first off, before I bring up our next infamous guest, um, Big Hank, thank you for throwing five on it, brother. Appreciate the support. Yeah, y'all hit the like button, hit the cash app, hit the PayPal. I do all the streaming that I do for y'all through the week, and then I come on the weekends to give y'all some extra. I come on the weekends to put in that overtime. Come on, y'all. Come on. And um, you know what? We'll attempt to give Yankee Boy another chance. Yankee Boy, is your microphone connected now? All right, Yankee Boy. We will see you later. We got Seduction Doll in the building, though. What's going on, Seduction Doll? How you doing? Good, man. Um, I'm good. Hey, can you tell me how to get rid of this echo I got going on in my mic? <laughs> um, you know what? what? Let me Let's... try to help you out. So I can go in the settings. Uh, your background noise selection is already selected. We don't hear an echo on our end, so I think you're good. When I when I get up, uh, well, like I try to practice, you know, because I do my own broadcasting. So I started. I finally got it. It's MacGyver, all y'all, MacGyver. But the echo wait, wait, is... um, wait. Are, are are you saying that when you're attempting to do your own broadcasting, yeah. you hear an audio echo through your headphones? Yeah, so no, no, I don't even have the headphones on. I just got the the mic and everything. The, it's plugged into a speaker because if I put my headphones on, I can't use the mic that I bought. You know what I mean? So I wanted to try to play, uh, try to play around with it. So I've been practicing with it on everything I do. But you could hear it when uh, you get up. But your microphone doesn't have an aux port on the bottom where you can plug yeah. headphones directly into your <laughs> microphone. <laughs> Hey, don't laugh. Come on. Not oh, everybody sorry, knows. I, I <laughs> it took know. me a damn near year to learn this. Come on. I was no, struggling to give a coffee shop for my first time. I'm a girl. I had called to ask for a man's help. Yeah, I could admit that. Stop laughing at me. Mm -hmm. huh? But um, if, if there's an aux port on the bottom of your mic, then typically what you do is you plug your headphones directly <laughs> into your microphone. Nope. It's, a, um, it's one of those three prong things. Oh, yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Well, either way, you're good to go for now. We don't hear any echo um, on our yeah, end, at least. So go ahead and let us know. Where from and I, I don't what do you like think the topic at end. I think the cooning, uh, when I when I first jumped on, they was talking about um, cannibalism and all that extra shit. But I think the white, <laughs> the white guy disturbed me, period. Um, he disturbed my soul. I think there's a lot of cooning going on um, everywhere, and especially over there. Um, when my dude was trying to give me a little history lesson the other day, but I had my own encounter with a with a, a white cat on my broadcast the other night, and I just have to say that it is not a rip when they get on and try to uh, flash you something, and then I hit them with the old old prison mirror tactic because <laughs> you know you see me backstage, you know you see me backstage. Um, ooh, somebody talking shit. <laughs> I see you guys in the chat. All right, wait, I'm confused. I'm confused. Let's get the thoughts together. Let's get the thoughts together. Where are you calling it from? I cannot explain myself to you. Of you lurking through my mind. Is it the love of for the time? I've given my heart and my joy and my soul. It's real, I sure can't see Gotta start looking out for me Had enough, my heart won't take no more I know it seems that I don't care Sometimes my ways are less than fair I feel it's time for me to take a game See you have given me no choice I feel my mistakes inside my 
Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let me get some fists in the chat if you can hear me loud, crisp, and clear. I realize with great power comes great responsibility. Um, I've only been on YouTube a couple years now. Uh, six months, six or seven out of those months, my channel was wrongfully terminated. So you can really say I've been on these streets for about a year and a half producing content. And um, God damn it, y'all, we just hit 15,000 subscribers. Yes, I do a live stream celebration whenever I reach uh, certain milestones with the growth of my, of my channel. Basically, every 10,000 subscriber mile mark, I do a live stream party. I get a nice red bottle of wine, and um, we, we have a little fun on stream, you know? We have a little fun. We celebrate. So we're about halfway to the next celebration. You know, if you want to see the 10,000 uh, subscriber celebration, it's still on my channel. I mean, I'm not like these frauds out here that delete their videos and shit. All my shit's still up, right? So um, once we get 5,000 more subscribers, once we hit 20K, we're going to do a uh, a bit of a fiesta. A bit of a fiesta, indeed. Um, speaking of which, I actually kind of, sort of, am uh, gaming the YouTube algorithm right now. <clears throat> I'm not sure if you guys have noticed or, or we're not, but um, I gained like damn near 400 new subscribers just over the last uh, day, day and a half. And um, that's thanks to a nice, a very, very, very nice way that I've been um, gaming the algorithm in my favor. Um, if any of you are interested in starting a YouTube channel or um, have ever you know, thought of live streaming, dipping into content creation, but never knew where to begin. I actually host a monthly mastermind. Um, if you want to be a part of that, just send me an email, mike at keymediapro.com. Um, I think we have a couple members of the audience that are active members in the mastermind group. And, you know, I give you guys the game and show you uh, how lucrative being a YouTuber can be. I mean, this is a full-time job for me. Um, only got 15,000 subscribers and it's able to net me a pretty decent living if I don't say so myself. So um, guys, you know, whether it's a little hobby, little thing on the side, um, you have a story to tell, you have a unique perspective, and there's thousands of people that would love to hear from you, just like people tune in to Mike TV. But um, what I was saying that to say was, with great power comes great responsibility. You know, we just hit 15,000 subscribers. I realized that a lot of the content that I do, you know, exposing charlatans, scammers, fraudsters, grifters, I mean, I understand uh, it garners a lot of negative emotion. I understand a lot of times we're engaging in vigorous debates and standing on lineage while dispelling stereotypes and 
you know, uh, conditioning that colonizers have given our our distant relatives over in in Africa, and and it's just so tiresome, it's so burdensome, and it really weighs heavy on the spirit. And I know that I do tend to make things jovial. You know, we throw in the jokes and the humor and the entertainment, but you know, I I think from now on when we when we transition from the replay to going live on these weekend FBA powwows. And really, y'all, um, God damn it, Tariq been doing too much dirt. I, I got to separate. I got to separate. I'm, I'm just going to start identifying as a black native, okay? <laughs> I can just say black native. I got my citizenship after all, <laughs> but that's for another stream. But when we do these weekend black native powwows, you know, I think when we transition from replay into live content, we got to play a nice little, a little slow tune, you know, so something nice, soft and mellow, some, some classical R&B, if you will. Um, because God damn it, when, when we go live and we have these people call in and we start engaging in discourse across the diaspora, oh, y'all know it gets very, very contentious. <laughs> It's very, very, very contentious indeed. So, you know, I just want to start, you know, balancing things out on my Libra scale. So don't be surprised if if we take a little little bit of R&B breaks now and then. But you know what? We've we've got a few people backstage. Um, <clears throat> the first person I have to bring up. Uh, yeah, the the first person I have to bring up. Uh, boy, 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 boy. I got to be calm. I got to be civil. I don't want to raise my, my blood pressure. Let's try to remain chill as we dissect this. Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. The first person I'm going to have to bring up is our um, resident tether from the UK. While he is a tether, this tether has been sent to a black native re-education camp, y'all. He, he is actively being deprogrammed, so Lord, uh, if we can successfully deprogram this tether, then you know Mike TV is doing the Lord's work. If we can successfully deprogram this tether, you know that there is hope for the diaspora. So I'm trying to hold out some hope for this guy, but Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, if he hasn't acted quite tetherish in the past. But um, Razaman, Razaman, we, we have to bring Razaman up first. Because as I was watching the replay, smoking my J, I saw that um, Rosaman made a comment in the chat. He said, let me see. Let me see if I can find it. I thought I had it here. Where'd, where'd it go? Where'd it go? You guys are being so active in the chat, y'all. I appreciate it. Shout out to everybody tuning in on this uh, fine Saturday. I know you guys could be doing many things with your weekend. I'm glad you're tuned into Mike TV. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Yeah. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. So I saw a comment from Razaman. Razaman said, um, no one is trying to look like a white man in Africa. When I saw that comment, I said, hmm, well, let me ask him this question. And guys, I'm, I'm playing chess, 3D chess at times metaphorically speaking, while they are playing checkers, maybe Chinese checkers. Um, so I asked this question not to actually ask this question. I asked this question to elicit a certain response because I already knew the answer to said question. You see, I asked, if y'all not trying to look like the white man, what's the skin bleaching for? Guys, I know the skin bleaching isn't to look like white people. Guess what? Did you know when they're rubbing on the skin bleach and the cake soap? It's not to look like white folks. It's to look like you and me. Yeah, they think that they can go from that dark skin on the left, that African boy crying. They think they can go from that to a Beyonce if they rub on enough cake soap, say, oh. Oh, bambakla, chichi man, bati boy things. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. They are obsessed not only with the white folks, but with us, that's why they use the bleaching. So, oh, Lord, calm down, Mike, calm down. You you said you were going to be chill. You know, you listen to some of the replays and you're hooting and hollering like a madman. You, you're scaring off the tethers, okay? You're, you're scaring off the tethers. God damn it. Um, 
the next time a mush mouth bush baby bitch made fleeing african and guess what y'all if you really want to piss off the haitian and the jamaican and the caribbean black folk call them motherfuckers african because that's what they really are anyways right they just think they can be slick and delineate no 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 99 percent of the slaves in the transatlantic slave trade went to brazil and the caribbeans guess what they are got, they got a sick fucking obsession with us they know that we are the modicum of black success globally and their alleged kinship to us is the only thing they have going for themselves so they try to tether themselves to us and tether us to africa oh remember you're african you're african you're not native you're african you're african motherfucker four percent of the slaves in the transatlantic slave trade went to north america 90 whoa whoa hold on 96 percent went elsewhere so if you want to make one of these Jamaicans or Caribbean folks mad, call them African when they are. But as I was saying, the next time one of these mush mouth, bush baby, tether fling ass Africans has something slick to say to you, remind them, motherfucker, you're bleaching your skin to look like me. Stop the cat. So when I asked Rosamond the question, if y'all not trying to look like the white man, what's the skin bleaching for? I knew it's to look like us, but I wanted to see what his response would be. And Rosamond shocked me more than he's ever shocked me in the three weeks he's been consistently showing up to these black native powwows I host on the weekends. Rosamond said, I used to bleach my skin. Damn, I had to do a double take. I had to blink a few times. I said, what am I? Am I reading the right thing? Rosamond said, I used to bleach my skin. Mm -mm -mm. So, you know, this really speaks to the work that we're doing here on Mike TV, because I think we are successfully re-educating this tether known as Raza. We also nicknamed him Uncle Ruckus because he was such a good tether, right? But now the tether's confessing that he was in so deep, he was as alt-right with the tether bullshit as can be, he actually bleached his skin. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. But... Maybe there's hope for him. He says that he stopped. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let's hear from Razaman and see what caused him to start bleaching his skin. Was he trying to look like white folks or was he trying to look like black Americans? Razaman, please tell us the story. Okay, well, first of all, when I was a child, I had to suffer from self hatred. So, I hated the fact that I was black and I wanted to be white. That's the truth. It's simple as that. You hated the fact that you were black and you wanted to be white. And do you think that the environment that you grew up in in the UK is what motivated these thoughts? Most likely. So when you think back to your mother who specifically went to the UK to birth you so that you can be a UK citizen, an anchor baby of a literal definition, um, when you look back on that, do you wish that you were born and raised in Africa or are you still grateful to be in the UK because of how destabilized Africa is? Yes, second option. Speak up a little bit, sir. It sounds like you're a bit far from the microphone. Second, second option. The second option. All right, well, well, sir, you have the floor. Let us know at what age did these thoughts develop? Did you deal with uh, media? that you saw on TV that told you that white was the modicum of greatness and attractiveness? Did you deal with uh, bullying or racism from, from white peers? Is it something within the UK black African community where just in general, you guys have this self-hatred that you have to rid yourself of? You have the floor, sir. Give us this candid confession, if you will. Uh, so when I was younger, I used to watch a lot of TV shows. So you start when I was like a small child, I was like four years old and whatnot. Because I was watching TV programs, which had lots of white people in it. And it didn't have no black people inside it. So I felt like I couldn't relate to it. So I always wanted to be white for that reason. Keep going, sir. You have the floor. Pretend that you have came to a holy temple, a church, 
of, of black natives who welcome you and accept you with open arms if you are willing to confess your previous tether ways and atone for your tetherish sins. And now you're stepping into the confessional with Sir Reverend Pastor, the Honorable Mike TV. And I just say, tell me what's on your heart. I'm sure that this may be the first time you've ever told somebody this. I'm not sure if there's people that you can confide in. I'm not sure if you're in front of, uh, if you've ever had the chance to be in front of a 70 plus black folks from America who are willing to accept you if you just come clean and let us know how deep the programming was and what did it take for you to rid yourself of it. You have the floor, sir. Like I said, obviously, when I was going around the world, seeing, obviously, uh, in a black community, there was like a lot of violence and whatnot. And the way how white farmers are portrayed as like perfect, peaceful people as, as such. And how they're portrayed in the media, obviously, I was looking at that and thinking, why can I be that? And I wanted to be that. And then when I got, obviously, at a certain age, when I got older, uh, I suffered from eczema. So obviously, I went online and obviously, I found some like uh, remedies and whatnot. And I'd overuse the medication, which would end up bleaching my skin. And on top of that, I would take bleach balls as well. Mm, okay. when, I, when, I, when I got older, so when I got to like secondary school, around I'd say 13, 14 is when uh, my mindset switched because I saw a lot of the injustices happening in Africa through the media when I was watching YouTube channels, stories from my parents and whatnot. And then it made me change my mind totally. And then I had like a full 360 degree. Mm, I see, I see. And sir, I've got to ask, um, are you on speakerphone right now? Uh, I, sh I, sh I should be on my headphones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, and, and and a lot of people call in and they don't really have a lot of media training or, or know better or anything. But, but yes, guys, when you call in, if you can have headphones, that would be preferential so we can hear you the best. So, sir, um, go ahead and grab some headphones real quick. When you come back. Um, oh, can you hear me now? Yep. Um, are the headphones plugged in? Yeah, I'll switch the headphones right now. Damn, you sound the exact same. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Um, either way, you're saying that you watched a lot of media. You saw that white people's community seemed to be successful, peaceful. Um, you didn't really have that. But, um, sir, this is the first time that I've heard that you can overdose on medication to bleach your skin. I thought you have to, like, physically rub skin bleaching ointment on you. But yeah, you're saying I, I did. You, I did. You, I did. Okay, so, so so when you say overdose, you're saying you rubbed a lot of the bleach on you. Yeah, yeah. And what was this bleaching routine like? Did you like bleach in the morning, bleach in the afternoon? Was it multiple times per day? So I had cream, which I'd use in the morning, and then I go and take a bleach bath, and then I take a normal bath, and then I put the cream on again. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is is that is that all in the morning? No, bit no. So obviously throughout the day, obviously I'll go to before in the morning, then I'll come back from school and have another bath. And okay, wait, wait, hold on, hold on, it's time, it's time. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to understand um, the program or the regimen, if you will. So it sounds like you said in the morning, you rub the bleach on your skin. Then when you come back from school, you take a bleach bath, was it? Yeah. And when you say a beach, bla a beach bath, are you like literally just pouring in chemical bleach into your bath? Yeah. Oh, my God, sir. Oh, my God. You know what? This is wild. We appreciate the confession. I'm sure you have more to tell us. We accept you with open arms. We understand that this is literally the work of the colonizer. It is the work of the white devil that destabilized your homeland, programmed you guys to want to move to theirs and then while you're in their kingdom boosting their nation's gdp they're further conditioning you to hate your blackness and idolize whiteness to the point where you're in the uk bleaching multiple times per day sir before we continue we just have to make sure that um lord we we have to make sure that this is sanctified we're going to take a quick commercial break we'll be right back
y'all. Oh, Lord, Father God, are you with us, Lord? You said two or more present, you are there. If two or more are gathered, you are here. We, we got damn near a hundred, sir. God, Lord, Lord, oh, Lord, sweet little white, bleached skin, blonde hair, blue eyed baby Jesus. Lord, sweet little white, blue eyed baby Jesus. Oh, God, oh, God. He said he bleached in the morning. He came back home. He poured bleach in the bathtub. Then he took a regular bath. Then at the end of the day, he did more bleach. Oh, Lord. Everything that I felt, praise the Lord. Worship Christ with the best of your portions. I know I won't forget all he's done. He's the strength in this face that I run Every time I look up, I see God's faithfulness And it shows just how much He is miraculous I can't keep it to myself I can't sit here and be still Everybody I will tell Till the whole world is healed King of kings, Lord of lords All the things He has in store From the rich to the poor All are welcome through the door you won't ever be the same when you call on jesus name hold on y'all hold on um the spirit of a father god is whispering into my ear he's he's calling out a name um ladies and gentlemen make yourself known make your presence known is there an errand in the chat Lord, uh, uh, someone has whispered in my ear, and the name that comes to mind is Aaron. Aaron, are you in the chat? Aaron, are you here? Is there an Aaron present? Lord, hey, listen to the words I'm saying. Jesus, save me now. I'm saying, and I know, I know God is the force that picked me up. I know Christ is the fountain that filled my cup. I know God is alive, yeah. He is open of my vision, giving me a revelation. This ain't about a dead religion. Jesus brought a revolution. All the captives are forgiven. Time to break down all the prisons. Every man, every woman, there is freedom from addiction. Jesus, you have my soul. Sunday service on a road. Oh, Lord, is there an Aaron present? Is there an Aaron? Freedman's Network says me. Is that the same Aaron? Aaron Black, right? Aaron Black? Is this Aaron Black? Lord, we may have found him. Lord, we may have found him, Lord. Freedman's Network is your name. Aaron, Aaron Black, sir. It is that you step to the front of the pew, sir. Step to the front of the congregation. Sir. All my idols, let them go. All the demons, let them know. This is a mission, not a show. This is my eternal soul. This my kids, this the crib, this my wife, this my life, this my God, I give him right. Thank you, Jesus, won the fight. That's what God is. That's what God is. That's what God is. have Aaron in the building. Aaron, Mr. Friedman's network, step to the front of the congregation, sir. I've got to humbly thank you for the donation you have blessed the church with, okay? I'm not sure if you've noticed. I, I, I don't know how many of these powwows you've showed up to, Aaron, but you see, the church has had a hole in the ceiling over there in the corner for quite some time. I know we have it wrapped up in the tarp. You can't really see the beam of light shining in from the ceiling, but but we've had a hole in the roof of the church for oh so long, and we've we've needed some work done. So we, we've needed to hire some contractors to get out here. Sometimes it'd be raining and it'd be Lincoln. Uh, so, sir, I just have to humbly thank you for the gracious donation that you have given the church of the black natives, because, you know, we're, we're going to use this money's right here and we're going to fill that hole in the roof, that hole that, that we've been 
crowdfunding for for oh so long. We can finally now fix the ceiling. Oh boy, oh boy. Uh, uh, Pastor ain't going to be riding around in the Lambo. We're we going to get this church built up proper, Lord, that this is going to be a foundation built on a rock that cannot be shaken. And we got people like Aaron supporting the program. We've been demonetized. We've been shadow banned. Y'all don't even get the notifications. YouTube be unsubscribing you and shit. But because of people like Aaron, we can keep on keeping on. I appreciate you. But no, um, <laughs> let me break character for a moment. In all honesty, um, Aaron, I'm not sure if you heard, but I actually broke my camera uh, like two, three weeks ago. And, uh, you know, the way my checking and my savings have been working and whatnot, I just haven't really had the um, extra few hundred to, to go get a new camera. So thanks to you, the folks can see Mike TV's light skin edited freckle face ass once again. And also, sir, I know I've shouted out your podcast that you have. Um, if you actually want to email me, um, I'll put my email in the chat if it isn't already in there. But I actually have a couple sponsors to the channel um, where they actually, you know, pay a nominal monthly rate to actually um, have a ad spot in all of my different broadcasts that I do. Um, there's only one active sponsor that I have right now. You probably see him in the chat from time to time. His name is Prince of Paraphernalia, and he's always dropping those links to his eBay store and whatnot. And we've got a couple more sponsors in the works getting their things together. But um, email me if you'd like to see about some sponsorship opportunities, because um, I'd love to to shout you out. And, you know, we, we all black folks. We got to support one another, right? Let's get into it. But... Um, Guys, I think we took enough of a break to let this sink in. A uh, man said that he rubbed the cake soak on in the morning. He took a bleach bath in the afternoon, took a regular bath, and then he put some more bleach on. Razaman, continue your candid confession. We we thank you so much. Yes, it's not, so that was it, like I said. So from there, obviously, when I got older... I started to hear more stories. I watched more content on Africa and whatnot. I learned a bit more about the Africa as a whole and what they've been going through and what's happened in the past. So then I realized that I've been totally ridiculous and that is not right. And then I just stopped doing it. And then obviously since then I've had a 360 degree switch and I've basically changed my mindset. That's it. And and you said what caused the switch was you saw the mistreatment of black folks in Africa or in the UK or both? In, in Africa. Mm, and, and, and you realized that it wasn't just black people were being mistreated in Africa, um, but that these Africans were being mistreated by the countrymen whose country you were born and raised in. Yes. And also, what's it called? Because at first, when I was young, I used to think, oh, Black people, they just, they bring it upon themselves. They're just violent. They just, they start because my cousin got killed in the UK by another black person for no reason whatsoever. Mm. So obviously that, 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 that put a lot of hate in my heart. So I was thinking, obviously these black people just going around killing each other for no reason. So when you've been a part of our podcast in the past and you've said negative things about black people talking about how they're criminals, they're violent. It wasn't just that. You know, you got beat up by some black Africans in the UK, but you've also had family members uh, fall victim to gang violence. Yes. Mm, okay. Okay. And and you see, sir, all the jokes, all the verbal lashings that we've given you, it could have been avoided or at least minimized um, if we had empathy for you. And the only reason why we didn't have empathy for you is because we did not know any of these things. I mean, how dare us to call you a tether, bush baby, buck broken fleer when we know that you were born and raised in your colonizer's kingdom while undergoing programming and, and a mental psyops on so many different fronts simultaneously. I mean, I've got to ask you, sir, when you say that you developed a vitriol towards black folks, did that bleed over to black Americans and how you felt about us as well? Yes. Because in what ways? Gang, because obviously the same gang violence is going on in America. Like, if you look at rappers who are being, being killed all the time, like even my favorite rapper now, being killed was was killed. If you know what I'm saying, due to that gang violence. So obviously, like, I thought that it's the same reflection of what's happening in the UK. So that's what I thought it's the same thing that's going on there. Obviously, if you look at statistics, it's the same thing. So 
that's how I was thinking that oh it applies to all blacks in in the west as such I see and and when did you first start learning that a lot of the things you learned about black Americans was false was it was it solely when you start coming around Mike TV or did you watch some media early on that made you think differently or, or did you literally have contempt and disdain for us until you clicked the link called in with us spent many of hours many of weekends with us and we educated you well first of all I had a, I had a business partner who was American black American so obviously from here, for me, he's an intelligent person. I had no issues with him. And obviously, he he had a similar mindset to me. So I was thinking, oh, right. So obviously, it's probably, probably, probably what I'm thinking. It's probably the correct thing that's going on, if you know what I'm saying. And also, I also watched some YouTube videos on documentaries about what happened in Black America, such as the Tulsa Massacre, Black Wall Street, how it was built. Because that, that has, there's like an American YouTube you have to watch all the time. It was Black. It used to make stories about Black people. So I learned what I knew from about black American from there, but in terms of speaking to actual black Americans. Well, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. So you're saying you had a black American friend who was basically a coon and was anti-black. Um, you did learn a little bit about our achievements, but sir, when you first called onto my show weeks ago, you said that we did not deserve reparations. And then four days after that encounter, you came back and said we did, because after the conversation with us, you watched some new information and you felt that we deserved reparations. So it's weird how even though you knew about Black Wall Street and these certain select token achievements, you still didn't believe that we were worthy of reparations. Because I was thinking it ha that happened in the past, but as a reflection of Black Americans now, that's what I'm talking about. I got you. I got you. Well, we're going to take a quick commercial break to chop it up with my man, Aaron. I saw he was driving earlier. I said, hold on. Wait a minute. Is he parked now? Is he parked? <laughs> Appreciate it. What's good, Aaron? Where are you calling in from? Um, Brooklyn, New York. Uh oh, New York in the building. You got all them tethers you're dealing with, huh? No. All the migrants. What? Damn. Man, it's crazy out here, man. It's crazy out here. You know, um, they just they just now getting on Mayor Eric Adams about the 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 debit cards they just giving these people, and I think they're getting like for a family of four they're getting like three fifty a week. So that that equals about to about maybe fifteen hundred a month. Fifteen hundred, yeah, yeah, you know, approximately. And people are so upset because these th now it's ironic that you're talking about to this uh, brother about the reparations things because here it is, we're citizens here. We have done everything in this country. We've participated in, in building the country. And when it comes to us, he tells us, well, we don't have it. We, we don't, you know, we can't do it. We can't do it. Can't do it. Now you get these people coming here. They haven't contributed anything to this nation. And you're giving... Uh, the, all this help you know yes. uh i think the budget for the for those cards is like 53 uh, billion dollars or something like some crazy number like that damn so this well, is well, why well, you um, know, we, we, we don't real quick real quick if i may um a little bit of information i learned mm -hmm. that i want to throw in there and this really speaks to how um slimy and grimy that mayor is out of New York. I've heard of Adams for quite a while and people have been telling me I should do exposés, but I haven't really learned too much. But then when I did my research on the Diddy situation, I learned he gave Diddy a key to the city. When I do my investigations on the migrant uh, crisis, I learned that the way that the debit card thing played off is he gave that contract to a company who's literally going to profit billions of dollars from giving these migrants these cards. And he didn't even um, go through the formal bidding process. So this was straight up some what uh, out on the East Coast, y'all know all about insider trading, right? I mean, this was yeah. some insider trade and some shit where the mayor's like, I choose you specifically. You're going to give these migrants the cards. You're also going to make billions. So tell me there wasn't a lobbyist that lined Mayor Adams pockets in order for him to do that. Well, you you are absolutely right about that. Um, but here's the thing with with Adams, Brandon Johnson, and and the other guy up in I think it's Denver, that mayor or that city or whatever. Th these orders are coming from the top. They're getting their marching orders from the top with this stuff. Uh, 
Eric Adams is in a is in a bit of a quagmire because he has fell out with the administration. So he's pretty much a lame duck mayor at this point. He knows that. Um, I've done um, several podcasts about him. I've tried to stay off of him because I know people that know him personally. So I tried to stay off of him, but it, it got to a point I, I just couldn't anymore. So I had to speak on it. And then everything that's going on, I can't just stay quiet about it. I have to put, you know, put him on blast on, on, and call him out. Now, the thing with this stuff is it's starting to piss off the, the white population in New York City. Because there's, to be honest with you, um, Mike, there's not a whole lot of FBA left in New York City. There's a lot of us here. There, there's enough of us here, but we're spread out. It's not like we have enclaves anymore. 85% of the time that you see a black person, they're either going to be from from the diaspora Mm-hmm. Or the Caribbean, you know, they're gonna they're gonna be from either Africa or the Caribbean, one or the other. Yeah. Uh, ten, maybe ten percent of us are here, or, or foundational people, and and you know, and I've been trying to galvanize us. Uh, there's a there's a thing called um the Freedmen's Project here in New York, and it's some people based out of Brooklyn. Um, my man Divine, good brother. And they they have this project going on. It's it's you know it's to push reparations and everything like that. Uh, and you know I've been trying to work with them to 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 galvan you know to try to get a hold on a, 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 a some maybe a count a head count of the people here foundational people here in in the five boroughs. And you know you have upstate New York. You got uh, Long Island. There's you know foundational people out there, but mostly foundationals have left. Uh, the New York area, and they went back to the South and 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 Texas and places like that. But it's it's really bad here. It's bad, and it's going to get worse. Hey, um, unfortunately, unfortunately, with a lot of the things I cover, um, a saying of mine is it's going to get worse, and it's not going to get better. Because <laughs> that's just that, the way it that, is. That, yes, yes, that is the truth. It's unfortunate. Um. My right now, myself and my family, we're pretty good. You know, uh, we've made out pretty good, so we'll be here. But you know, my lady wants to; she's retiring in another four years. I'm about to retire in another forty-eight months, and we may be talking about getting out of here. You know, because I think I think our power is going to be in the red states, as far as foundational people. In the states, in the southern states, and and out west, you know, in Texas and places like that, that's where we're where our power bases are going to be going forward. This is just my conjecture, you know. You know that's um, how I. See. I do have a background in real estate, and I can say, if you look at the market conditions and future market projections, and if you also look into the wave of immigration, I mean, it's damn near a. Uh, 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 CIA black ops to have all these black migrants come over here to literally drown us out to where we have no power base. We we have no, I mean, they're talking about not just giving them free hotel visits, uh, free money, but they're also trying to change the laws in New York City to allow them to vote. And that's what it's always been about in America from day one. They get off the boat at Ellis Island and there's politicians waiting at the docks saying, hey, we helped you get here. Now vote for yes. us. And while you speak and you talk about possibly relocating, a thought forms in the back of my mind. And I think that's something that we must do en masse collectively um, to really fight this invasion is we most likely have to go and reclaim the South. And what I mean by reclaim the South is there's a lot of cheap land. We can buy properties. We can build up communities. And God damn it, a lot of our folks got ran out the South because the white power structure and the KKK and God damn it, yeah, it's a new day. We got a bunch of liberals in the South. We got people from Cali moving to the South. We got everybody taking advantage of the cheap market conditions in the South. So I think that that would be a good base for us to actually acquire property, build up those enclaves and, um, and, and start fighting this invasion. Because if we don't do something like that collectively, then 
what's happening in New York is going to happen in every major city. I usually live in Portland, Oregon. Same thing. Most of the black folks are from Africa. They're not actually like black Americans. And the white power structures in these cities and these states, they love to bus in these black Africans because they're so much more docile. They get on with the program. They already have a spirit of white supremacy within them. So I don't know. I think over time, we may have to look into um, going back to the South because it is a new day and, and and we need to have a power structure somewhere, some kind of base. I agree a hundred percent with you a, a thousand percent. Um, it's just that in the South, because I have my youngest sisters there. I have a home in the South. Me, it's, it's her and I, you know, we shared a home. Uh, our parents left us that home is, you know, paid for and everything. She's, she lives in the home, uh, big, big spacious house. Uh, the thing is, um, we're going to in the south we're going to have to get the get back to our roots in the south because what's hap what ha has happened is the behavior down there is is off the is the it's just madness down there it's worse than the city uh as far as the behavior and the and the proclivities of of uh the people um the mindset we we have to we have to get that you know this why does this work that we're doing is so important to um bring awareness you know and and, and um wait, wait, so so are you, are you are you maybe alluding to us needing to be a bit militarized because in the south they do have a history of doing some grimy things and you know the the laws being real loose and whatnot is is that what you're alluding to or um no i was actually alluding to the the culture we've gotten away from our culture and and it's a lot of I don't want to offend nobody, but I got to be truthful and, and you about the truth and I'm about the truth. Mm -hmm. In the South right now, it's so much ignorance, man. Everybody's carrying. Everybody's carrying down there. And oh, it's, I got the, you, yeah. The, the, the violence is, is crazy. St. Louis. Road um, rage. They'll start shooting you up. You got white boys yeah. running around with the AR, with a drum mag, full auto. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, our people, it's, it's just that. Um, And it used to not be like that in the South. The South, you know, they, they was like, um, you know, people had, you know, a little, that Southern hospitality thing, that's gone. That is gone. You know, those, those cats down there, man, you you know, I got cousins when I go down there to visit, you know, I got to be kind of standoffish with them because they done got so crazy and, and you know, everybody's high and, you know, but we we got to get our behavior together and, and when when people from this big city start migrating back to the south because just like with my parents when they first came here uh you know it wasn't a thing they were ran out of the south so much it was that um w when my father came here to brook you know new york city came to brooklyn and he stayed with my aunt and he didn't he hated it because he said they the lights they never turned the lights out and he was a country boy off the farm you know and um once he got back down there, he stayed here like a week or two and went back on the train. When he got back down there, he realized that that was going to be the life for him. Was going He going to spend the rest of his life on the farm. He didn't want to do that. So he came back to New York and subsequently, you know, him and my mother hooked up. And married. they were both from the same town. They didn't know each other. They met here and got married and, and had started having children. And, and um, yeah, you know, the first thing he said, you know, when he went to go see Minister Malcolm up in Harlem, they would go every Sunday. He said he never heard a black man talk like that. And he, it scared him to where he he never wanted, he didn't want to go back to the South, you know. And that's what happened with a lot of our people. But, you know, I agree 100% with you. We're going to have to get, you know, back those strongholds in the South because it's over for us in these big liberal cities for, yeah. for foundational people, it's pretty much over. I mean, wait, wait. Um, if we think about it, if we think about it, hold on, hold on, hold on. So mm -hmm. we're, we're we're thriving in the inner cities. So through the interstate projects, they build freeways through us, destabilizing us. Then through white flight, the white folks flee to the suburbs, and they cut off real, you know, access to social services and stuff in the inner city. So now the inner city is basically just, just, just synonymous with poverty, right? And now on top of it, the the new rendition is they're busting in the migrants 
So now the migrants are filling up the cities and taking shit over. So, I mean, ladies and gentlemen, look at what's been going on through history. We were black and yeah. successful. They built three freeways through us, eminent domain, right? Then through white flight, the, the, we get white folks leftovers and they move to the burbs. Now we're trying to make a way in the city and we got immigrants riding around on illegal mopeds committing crime and taking a free bus ride to the next town over. I mean, it's wild. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, Mike, uh, I, 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 yo, listen, man, right here in Brooklyn, there's so many historical sites. And when I start the YouTube channel, when I start putting video up, that's what I'm going to be doing, the historical sites, you know, about. Because right here in Brooklyn was the first uh, uh, the first uh, freedmen's community that were free. They, they were the first uh, black community that was actually free. It's, mm -hmm. it's over there in uh, Weeks, Weeksville, over here in Weeksville, Brooklyn, over there by Bed-Stuy. You know, um... Is that I'm, also I'm, the same community that started the Freedmen's Bank, or is that not related? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I gotta research that, but I know they were the first free uh, black community here, and and it started right here in Brooklyn, where I'm at. You know, and of course, subsequently they had Seneca Village and and those different. They had different pockets around, you know, between Brooklyn and Manhattan. But at that time, Manhattan was pretty much. Uh, woods there wasn't no big buildings and all that stuff like that they were pretty much wood, wooded areas and fields and stuff like that same here in brooklyn but there were thriving little enclaves they had and um you know that uh that place played a a, a pivotal part of the underground railroad uh weeksville you know that was a that was one of the major stops for the underground railroad coming to the north so you know uh yeah, man, I'm a, I'm a, you know, that's why I got to get with you, man. I got to get with you. Um, I'm getting ready to, uh, actually this week will be my, be, I'm going to take a little hiatus from the podcast because I'm, I'm getting ready to go in for surgery for, I got to have a shoulder surgery. So I'm going to take a couple of weeks off from the podcast and tend to that and also focus on the YouTube stuff. So I'm, I need to hook up with you so, you know, you, you can walk me through this stuff and help me out with it and I, I can get ready because I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a take off running this summer, man. I'm going to take off running. Oh, yeah. It's it's a great time to start producing content. Um, I, I'm actually earlier in the stream. I was talking about the monthly YouTube mastermind group I do. Uh, we actually meet up uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays. And to be a part of that group, it's only $50 per month. And and I basically teach you guys all of my little secrets and, and show you my YouTube studio and, and how I go about producing my content so that you guys can can get started on your channel sooner than later. So yeah, yeah. Make sure to, to shoot me an email and, and lock in and we'll definitely stay in touch. No doubt, Mike. No doubt. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you. Yep. Drive safe, brother. Wish you the best with your surgery. And okay. uh, ho ho hopefully you click the link and call in either tomorrow or next weekend. <laughs> we'll talk to you I, soon. I'll, I'll come back tomorrow, man. Whatever you're talking about. I don't know what the subject's going to be, but whatever you talk. I wish I'd have called in yesterday because I really wanted to talk about that yes, that um, stream yesterday, man. Oh, that man. Was... I done lost so many subscribers. People in my comment section talk about I'm an agent. The Tariq wasn't defending him. Tariq wasn't defending I said, motherfuckers, I, I counted. <laughs> Listed and recited eleven different eleven, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like, like people just blind. I'm just like, all right, all right. Let, let me say, I love Tariq. I love Tariq. That's my brother. I rock with him. Now, with that, there, there was. I felt there was a little defending there, and I understand it. I understand it to a degree. I just can't rock with that. Let me tell you, my cousin. I got a cousin that worked in Bad Boy Records. Are oh, you from Brooklyn? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Tell us, Nick. Tell us. Let's go. Well, you know, she she was um she was um she was in with them. I went to Big's funeral and all of that. You understand? I w I was there, front row. I was there. Um, Puff. I didn't. I don't know him like that. I just know, you know, because I'm not a. I've never been a groupie or into that. You know, I never went to the parties. I've been invited to go to the parties and stuff like that when he was having the white parties out here in the Hamptons. Um, I never went. I'm just not, that stuff don't impress me. Like, I'm not, I'm not, bewil you know, beguiled by that stuff. So I never went. But I've heard things, I've heard close-up stuff over the years. Yeah. Uh, I never had 
I, I, was, I liked him when he had the clothing line. I spent so much money because that's his clothing line was sick. I mean, that's John, John right? Yes, it was fly, especially his the dress clothes. I used to buy, man, I spent so much money on that stuff because I didn't like Rockaway. Rockaway to me was kind of whack. But, you know, I was glad that they it was black on company or whatever like that. But I spent a lot of money on Sean John. Where Puff lost me at, you know, he's been in and out of things for, for decades. He's been uh, associated with a lot of toxic things over the decades. But here, here's the thing with Puff. When uh, the last general election, when he was uh, talking about starting the, the new black party and, you know, the black voters for sale and, you know, we ain't just voting no more for Wait, nothing. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. You left a comment about this, right? Yeah, I, I emailed it to you earlier. Oh, right? okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, I couldn't remember if it was an email or whether it was a comment on the video, but I appreciated that comment. I, for some reason, I didn't realize that was coming from you at the time, but your comment was the most like insightful, educational, and nuanced because, again, I'll, I'll, I'll let you finish, but, but, but basically where you were coming from was you really didn't like that slick political trickery that he was trying, right? It wasn't so much the sex and the gay allegations. It was that political hoodwinking he did. And and, and I'm young. I, I just turned 29 last October. So, and I haven't always been, you know, involved on politics on the national level, but I remember Puffy was all about the get out the vote and black vote, black power vote, blah, 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 blah. But that was the main issue that you had with him, right? Man, that's, that turned me off like that because you play. Now, what it was, the higher, whoever your paymasters were, they told you, yo, look, knock it off. We ain't doing that. And he, the closer it got to the election, he switched the whole game up. The black party never materialized. You understand? And I, I when he first started out with it, I was like, yeah, we finally getting some traction and, you know, and then he just switched the whole game up and, and was like, yo, it'll be irresponsible for us not to vote and blah, da 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 Now, the, all the gay, sh the gay shit and the allegations about that, it, it's messed up. And if he did that stuff, man, he, he has to deal with that. So I don't, you know, I'm not going to. That's right, want... New Era. Wait, wait, New Era, told it was vote or die. That's what Puffy was right. saying, vote or die. Yeah. Right, right, right. You just go back. It's there. It's there. You can just look it up. And he switched the game up. And I was like, yo, well, where did that come from? So after that, I said, you know what, man, this cat is, he, he's, he's, um, he for himself, man. He, and he ain't got, you know, uh, when you're not independent and you don't have the backing of the grassroots, this is the things that happen. There's a big lesson in a lot of this stuff for our community with all this stuff that's going on. Not with just him, with Kanye, with all these guys. See, them, them guys, they got around their white, them white people, and they, they was into partying and this, this, and that. You, y all, y all, why y'all not putting no money into, into the, like, that Weeksville project over there where these people need money to keep our history going and, and keep uh, uh, passing the baton? Uh, I, don't, I don't pocket watch nobody. But y'all doing all this partying and partying and big, you know, you're letting all this shit go to your head. And this is why these dudes start getting in trouble because, the, you know, they make so much money. I believe these dudes get bored because how many women can you sleep with? I mean, you sleeping with dime pieces, you know, these model chicks, you we know. All two three three. the Lamborghini. And if we got right. one tomorrow, 48 hours later is whatever. All right. I need a Bugatti now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so these guys get bored and, and God, you know. Hopefully they they haven't done this, you know, with these children and stuff. I hope that's not the case, but it's everything is pointing to that. Everything is pointing to that. Now my Him thing and is Usher I, in bed fighting over cornflakes, flavor camp. Well, oh, well, whoa. yeah, you know, I, you know, like, you know, and back to uh, and on I think some was, R. Kelly shit, he had Usher's mother sign over legal guardianship to him while Usher was with him in New York City. That's some wild shit, too. That's some all right. Well, you know, um, I blame that on the parents. I blame that on the parents because I'm not signing my kid over to nobody. I don't care what kind of deal or bag you're trying to get. I ain't letting you spend the night at this nigga's house for one night let alone sign him to be your legal guardian and you spend the, a month or year. Of, oh, come on. Come on. Yeah, Mama yeah. Big Fat Usher. Yeah, well, you know, that's the same thing those those parents that, that 
the girls with R. Kelly, they did the same yep. thing. Aaliyah's now, parents, same thing, yeah. Right. I um R. Kelly technique now he did some foul stuff. He did some foul stuff. But under the law, R. Kelly should not be in prison right now. And I think he's gonna win that he's gonna turn overturn that appeal. You know, um yeah. my thing is if you're gonna go after him, go after him fair and square. You know, that whole thing with, with Puff with the uh the searches the other day on his homes, because everybody's calling it a raid. They weren't raids. They were searches and it was done uh, for the for the co- for the uh, uh, optics and the and the uh, aesthetics, they 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 went and got tapes. Coincidentally, the news was waiting on standby with a helicopter and so, And see, while right. I acknowledge that, if Tariq would have just left it at that and said, "Let's wait until he's actually charged with something," I could have rocked with that. But when you start being condescending and saying these are weird, trumped up allegations, and if we believe this, we believe anything, and how dare we say his artist got the short end of the stick? Oh, we're talking from an employee mindset, and like it was just, it was very, very condescending. Yeah, I, I heard, I heard, the, I, I listened to the broadcast. Um, where I, 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 I want to hope that brother was coming from. I understand, like, see, uh. White supremacy, not that we following their their blueprint, but I understand the the thinking. White supremacy uh stay on code and they, they take up for their own even when their own is wrong. Um maybe he was coming from that angle. Do I necessarily agree with that? Because we have to hold ours accountable. See, when you're wrong, you I have think to that's hold it. Them. I think that's exactly where he was coming from. And just like you, I don't agree with it, but it would have at least been more honorable of him to just say that, hey, listen, white folks, we rock with their own. If there's a white mass murderer, he's getting a bunch of love letters, support and money on his books. And look, look, the one dude just choked out old boy on the subway and he got a million dollars overnight on a GoFundMe. Uh, I can at least respect him a bit more if he just flat out said, listen, I think we should support black people no matter what, just like how white people support white people no matter what. And then we could have agreed or disagreed. But for all the splaining and the tap dancing, that that was a part that was just too disingenuous for me. Yeah, I feel you. You know, um, y'all are grown, man. I love both of y'all. I listen to both of y'all. So hopefully it don't, you know, y'all, you know, because we can agree to disagree. And that's fine. Um, the brother has done amazing work in the community. Yeah, that's um, undeniable. Right. Uh, I'm going on um, May 25th. They they having the uh, premiere or the microphone check here in New York. Me and my whole family's going. I'm the wife, kids, yeah. everybody's going. He's the and, only person within our community actually putting forth major projects like that, standing on our lineage and stuff. And then that's why I vigorously defended him when people call him a scammer or he's a grifter or this and that. So the, the only thing I take issue with is when I do critique an individual like him, so many people out there in our community lack critical thoughts. So it's immediately you're an agent, you know, it's this weird cult like mentality. And, you know, at the end of the day, we're all humans, we're all people. And, and nobody's above reproach. Right. Well, that's why I respect your, your platform, Mike, because you keep it a buck. When I saw you call that dude a, a, a scammer to his face, I don't even like mentioning his name, but you know who I'm talking about. Yeah. When I see you do that, I'm like, no, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah exactly. Names you make. <laughs> exactly. Right, right, right. When hey. I saw that, when I saw that, I was like, okay, I can rock with brother. He, he. He ain't. He, he said it with his chest, and he ain't got no fear about it. Well, the only and reason I like why that. I mentioned people's actions is because you yourself exclusively date black, yet you're one of the biggest scammers in our community. It's been 12 years. Oh, you oh, like, oh, 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 why you do me like that? Why you do me like that, bro? Oh, man. Oh. I'm going to stay out of that one. And like I said, I I, 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 I stated my, my position on that. I, fu- I, I fucked with Brother Heavy. But on that one, I, I can't. I can't because I know, I know, like I said, my cousin worked for Bad Boy. So I know shit that went on. Mm. Yeah, no, I feel it. And, and, and see, um, unfortunately, I think it's this weird, like, OJ-like effect where motherfuckers get away with the dirt they really do do 
And then years later, when someone wants to get at you or retaliate or destroy you, they might get you on some trumped up shit. But we all know you really did some shit in the past. So, so it's just really, really, really weird. Just like the R. Kelly thing. I never watched the surviving R. Kelly. But the whole time I was contrary. And I was like, I mean, none of these people as little girls, they grown ass women. I mean, if your nigga got you in the room telling you you got to ask him permission to go pee and you staying and sticking it out and not leaving. I mean, that's your choice. You were a cult groupie. Um, but... When I hear back in the day, he got a tape of him peeing on a little girl. Okay, no, he should be beneath the jail for that. But he gets away with it. Just like OJ gets away with the murder. But then when he Mike, goes to take back Mike, his own shit. I saw, yeah. I saw the tapes. I saw the tapes. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. OG yeah. doesn't seen the tape. Oh, no. I saw the tapes, bro. And people was going as far as to saying, yo, they, they setting him up. They, got, they went and got somebody that looked like him and all that. I was like, man, yo, listen. Listen. But. Here's the thing. He paid those. He paid those families off. He paid them a bag of money to, for that shit to go away. That's why I say now when they came back and they finally charged him, they hit him with the Man Act, and that that built that thing been in place a hundred years ago. And they did that for the heavyweight champion Jack Johnson. They put you know because he was going back and forth across state lines with white women at the time. Mm, okay. okay. And um, they, 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 even Dr. Cosby said that they railroaded R. Kelly. So look for him to overturn that appeal. I, I'm, you know, now if they go at him the right way and get him, fine. But what he's yeah. in jail yeah. for now, he should not be in jail for. You know, yeah. now with yeah. Puff, Puff yeah. has not been cha charged with anything. They're tearing Puff down in the public eye. Uh -huh. That whole that whole search thing uh, with the Homeland Security, it's not the feds, it's the Homeland Security, That whole, which I don't understand why they're involved in it because they're supposed to be handling things like the border crisis, natural disasters, and stuff like that, man-made well, disasters. Apparently, from my research, speaking to some government agents myself, um, apparently Homeland Security, I don't know if this is a recent thing, but anything that deals with trafficking, they're supposed to have a hand in. So, you know, gotcha. that's where Homeland Security comes into play. But I still think it's a tricky situation because, for one, Diddy did the same thing. He did fuck shit and he paid people off. But the issue was he stopped paying people off. The word on the street is... Cassie was trying to settle with him for years before yeah, she ever yeah. yeah. So then he, right. now it comes public, he settles overnight. Now they changed the, the law in New York, the New York Survivors Act or whatever, where a statute of limitations is removed for one year only. Come on, y'all. One year only. You've got a window to file any civil complaint due to sexual misconduct going back time immemorial. So now all these people coming at Diddy for the fuck shit that he didn't pay them off for. But now yeah. when the feds see this, all it takes for the feds to charge him with a criminal act is to get a few of these people to testify against him and say, yes, he did blase blase. He flew me out and brought me here. And then we went to Kirk's and Ted Caicos and he rummaged in my booty over here. And technically under the color of the law, sex trafficking, even though we think of it as like Chinese girls in a shipping container, sex trafficking is just like that man act that you're talking about where it's really simply you just taking somebody across state lines to to do sexual misconduct <laughs> or transporting an individual from a to z to do sexual misconduct so yeah the whole diddy thing is very interesting um i think lord uh, it all started with cat williams should he said 2024 was the year of truth of revelation yeah yeah cat yeah. did say that but here's the thing and i think uh tyreek might have missed this he didn't he, he probably had it on his mind but didn't say it i want to see if they're going to start talking about Clive Davis, Leo Cohen, and all them guys, them big wigs like that. You understand? Because Puff is Puff, Puff is not in this by himself, by not yeah. by a long yeah. shot. Mm -hmm. You understand? So that's that's maybe where brother was coming from, and I get that part. And, and, and also playing devil's advocate, Tariq is saying some conspiracy that, you know, since he sued some white trillionaires, this is payback. Okay, let's say that's true. You telling me Diddy's a billionaire and he can't speak the right counsel to tell him, hey, brother, nah, you know, there's going to be some pushback if you sue blase, 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 and blase, blase, blase. I mean, come on. How do you, just for terminology's sake, how do you join the Illuminati, know how they get down, and then break the rules and think that you're not going to get stung up? Like, it don't make no damn sense. Well, the, the, the way I see it, 
uh, him, Kanye, and these dudes are so arrogant. They get so big that they start believing their own uh, BS. Nobody, you know, I'm untouchable, ba da 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 Now, he did piss off a lot of big people with that, with that Di, uh, Di, Diago um, lawsuit. He did. And uh, there's a lot of big people that are behind those companies. They're, they're, they're lobbyists. They, they give a lot of money to politicians and shit. It's a big thing with them. Now, and, it's not, and it's not beneath some powerful people to lobby some New York City legislators to say, hey, you should start a Survivors Act where for 12 months people can bring up any case they want. Yeah, I, no, I feel you. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you know, um, I don't put that now. Um, once you start thinking when you're not uh, uh, self-made or whatever and you relying on these people giving you big bags of money like that and then you turn around and bite the hand that feeds you, when Kanye started talking about those those certain group of people, Oh, they said, oh, okay, we got you, and, and now we're we going to break you in half. And, that's and speaking of Tariq, I've also noticed how he refuses to talk about dim folks. And whenever a white person calls in and brings up dim folks, he says, oh, no, no, y'all just trying to blame it all on dim folks, and it's all white supremacists and stuff. I mean, um, I thought it was strange how everybody was talking about the New York uh, tunnels, and people damn near had to beg Tariq for like a week, a week and a half to, to finally address it, and I mean, it makes sense when you understand you know, people's allegiances, you know, his wife is Jewish, uh, by blood, not by faith, so, you know, just like how, you know, he was explaining a little bit for Diddy, and they've got past business dealings, I mean, we have to accept, at bare minimum, no matter how much you love Tariq, or how much you hate him, at bare minimum, if we just find a common ground, we can say, Tariq has gone Hollywood, and you can take that with a positive or a negative connotation. You, you think so, Mike? You think so? He literally lives in Hollywood. He's in all the videos and stuff with the celebrities. They pay in for the Hidden History Museum. They coming out to the rap battles and the events. Uh, he spoke on the Monique uh, Club Shay Shay interview. But when DL Hughley was brought up, he specifically said DL has donated to the Hidden History Museum. So I'm not really going to speak on that. Blase. So so yes, he clearly is fitting in with the Hollywood bourgeoisie, if you will. And when you become a part of that pact you can't say certain things. You have to, you know, be very political in everything that you do. So again, we're not going to demonize the man. We're not going to exalt him. I mean, we can't exalt him for his past works, but right now, modern day, we have to acknowledge that the reason why some people are kind of on ease with him and they're like, what's going on? I don't feel so something's wrong here. This is the first time we've seen consciousness commercialized and gone Hollywood. Yeah, well, you know what I did notice on that on that on that broadcast that he did, there was a lot of young brothers. There was a few young brothers that called up, and they were going back and forth with him, and it got a little contemptuous. And I noticed that they they were young. They were like you know twenty years old and like that. You know, I'm an old head. I'm up there with Tariq and them, but yep. uh, I I I noticed that. Um, you, you know, I just. Uh, See, to, the reason why maybe it might be a, a family thing with, with, you know, with his in-laws and stuff like that, I don't know. I do know that, that his his thing came from the grassroots, man. You know, the museum and all the projects that he did, that mm -hmm. was from, that he didn't have to go to those folks for nothing. Yeah, yeah, no facts. He, he, he crowdfunded that from the community. He actually right. delivered on those works and produced what he's going to result. Um, you know, unlike Umar Johnson, who's 12 years in no schools. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh sure. boy. Now, wait, wait, wait. Uh, he says the school's going to open later this year, though, so don't hold your breath, but... <laughs> Yeah, well, you know, where's the speaking faculty? Of which, got, speaking of which, my good brother, did you see the stream I did yesterday with Umar Johnson and the white woman? Yes, I, 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 I actually, I listened before I left out this morning. I, I, I watched it. You, Mike, you, you, you are funny. You are funny. <laughs> um, bro, you had. I'm like, yo, it's too early in the morning for me to be laughing like this. <laughs> and the whole thing, it, the whole thing was a prank. And I'm like, wow. Here's here's the thing with that brother. He's 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 a he's a good orator. He's an educated brother. But he doesn't, this is why when him and Tariq fell out, why Tariq dusted him so bad. Because you don't have street wit. You have no kind of street wit. Yeah, not and, at all. Like, right, you can this, smell a setup, like, come on. <laughs> come on. Yo, listen, man. 
those people, when somebody calls you in to do an interview, they've done some research on you. They know where you stand at. How you not recognize that when, when, when you see the play? How you not recognize that? And then also, okay, it's a prank, but he entertained it for so long, for one. For two, you're basically a hoe that just gets paid to do meet and greets. And for three, you couldn't be using your time better, maybe towards building that institution for boys. I mean, you out here getting played in Atlanta by tethers and white folks. I mean, all right, all right. Anything yeah, to build, that's cool. Right, because if I'm in his position with his credentials, or uh, so-called credentials, I ain't got time to be going on no young kid uh, podcast like that. Mm -hmm. Um you know, I maybe th maybe through a phone interview or something, but me personally, physically going there, and sitting with you, because it's too easy to hang up a phone or you know what, or, or cut the video off or whatever the case might be. Yeah. Uh, That's why I don't I, collab I don't with I, nobody. I get email requests every week. Oh, let me interview you, Mike. Come over here on this podcast, Mike. I don't really, I don't really know you like that. I don't know where your allegiances lie. I don't know if it's a setup. So I'd rather just do my own thing. But someone like Umar, I mean, hey, if if we crowdfund, if I throw a GoFundMe for five thousand dollars, which I think is probably his booking fee, and I book this nigga, his dumb ass will fly out to me, and I'll get him in a conference wow. room and lock that door on him with the cameras on live. So Umar Johnson, let's finish. Our, you don't remember me, do you? Do, do the freckles look a little familiar? Oh, it's coming back to you. Now. It's coming oh, back to you. Okay. Man. <laughs> don't, don't, don't do it, Mike. Because I'll do it. it. I'm not ready. I will do it. I will. Oh, hey, 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 fuck that. Um, or I can do a, a smaller GoFundMe. I can do a GoFundMe for like a thousand because I'm sure for like a thousand I can get a round trip out there to uh to Maryland, wherever that school is, and you'll see Mike TV live streaming in front of the school. Like, uh, yeah, family, it don't look like it's it's open yet, family. Uh, it looks like that he got to keep pushing, family. Is a it's still boarded up windows, family. Now, <laughs> Mike, you had me laughing early this morning, man. I'm I'm you know I'm up getting ready to leave out to run my errands, and I'm like. This this can't be happening. I'm looking at the I'm looking at my phone. I'm saying this can't be happening. Yo, you it, it was crazy, man. Early in the morning, I'm laughing, but don't don't do it to him, man. He's not that witty, man. He's <laughs> he's a very educated brother, but he's not that witty. Yeah. You know, this he's this why Tyreek, right? That, that's why Tyreek was able to to, to slam it, slam him around like like he did, man, and, and it was pitiful, you know. But but yeah, anyway, man, you know. Uh, yeah, man, I, I'll tune in tomorrow, man, to your live. And, um, you know, I don't know, I don't know what the topic's going to be, but whatever it is, man, I'm, you know, I'm there for the support, man. You know, I got to trigger you know? the folks. So it's going to be some sensational thumbnail entitled to trigger Africans into a discussion because when I trigger them into a discussion, although it's few and far in between, we do reprogram some tethers. We got this tether Raza man who's up here confessing right before you came about how he used to bleach his skin. He had self-hatred. He hated his fellow Africans. I mean, Lord, I've, I've got to burn down the diaspora before we start building bridges again. Well, the thing is with them, the, even with the them between them and the Latino community, they're becoming obsolete to us because they see we're, we're, we're standing on our square with this with this lineage thing. And they're not even in our focus no more like that. Let me tell you something, man. With that microphone check uh, documentary coming out, the movie coming out, they're, they're really shaking right now. They, that really has them upset. Now, with the Africans, they don't, they're not on our, really on our, you're really not on our radar like that. You understand? And, and this is why uh, when the brother was talking about having the, another rally out in Washington, D.C., these people hold big uh, those um, spaces where they they do marathons because they do enough with venting because this is how upset they are because you're concentrating on us we're not concentrating on you like that you're not in our focus like that so you know my thing to them I don't get into it with them like that because you're not important to me you understand Thanks. my Thanks. my focus is on is on my people. So I don't have, you know, I, you know, I, I, I enjoy the content because it's entertaining, and you between you, Tariq and and um, uh, uh, Jason Black and them guys, y'all guys are nuts with it. Y'all <laughs> sick with it. Y'all are sick with it. I gotta give it to you. Y'all are sick with it, and y'all keep them dudes. This 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 evil man. They they just 
I, I, I guess when they when they hear y'all around, man, they just start pulling out their hair and running because y'all be y'all be giving them that work, man. I, I don't have it. I don't have that energy for them like that because they, you know, they're not important to me like that. I'm focusing on my, link, you know, my people. You well, know see, I've got the energy because not only do I like standing on lineage, not only do I, I love a good debate, but I'm like killing so many birds with one stone because it's like. We're educating Black Americans on deeper Black American history while learning more about history across the diaspora and educating those folks abroad. So, so it's like so many different things are going on, and we're roasting them, but it's entertaining and educational. So, you know, it's just so much of a combination of things where um, I'm, I'm just glad that we can, you know, kind of learn about history in a, in a cool, funny, fun, exciting way and also challenge a lot of these you know, Africans who've been saying some some fuck shit online for quite some time. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. The last the last couple of years, y'all been burying them. They, so they, 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 there's no, there's really no, uh, feasible argument for them on any corner anymore. Y'all, y'all have done that, man. Between all of y'all doing this, y'all have y'all have really taken them out of the game like that. And hey. you know. I be killing them with my thumbnails alone. <laughs> the thumbnails yeah. alone. <laughs> yeah, when I saw that this afternoon, I'm like, let me let me check out what they talking about, man, because I'm like, y'all are sick with it, man. But you know, my anyway, man, I'm a, we we've been on here, you know, and I don't want to hog up the time or whatever, but it's great talking to you, man. You know, um, I'm trying to, you know, I'm trying my best to do my part, and um, I, I think I'm getting a little better at it. And you know, let you know, let them know, man. Come see me, man. Come see me, and I'm gonna do my best, man, to, to put yeah. it out there. You know, whatever I got, man, I put it out there. Yeah. Well, I'll make sure to drive some traffic your way, and 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 yeah, shoot me an email. My email's in the chat, and we can definitely get you started in that channel sooner than later. Okay. So, so y'all are y'all meeting this Tuesday? This Tuesday? Coming? Yeah. 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 So, so we meet every uh, Tuesday and Thursday. Okay. So I, I'll try to come in Tuesday because Wednesday I'm going in for the surgery. So. I'll try to get up with y'all Tuesday. All right, for sure. All right. Well, thanks for calling in, brother. I'll talk to you soon. All right. Take care, man. All right. Peace. Yeah, shout out to all the old heads, y'all. They, they be putting us up on game. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Uh, next person we got coming from the back to the front is Chief Jonesy. Chief Jonesy, where are you calling in from? KC. What was that? Kansas City. Kansas City. All right. And what's on your mind? I was gonna go back to the last point, but the dude kind of, you know, what I'm saying he kind of covered it. But my, I was gonna go deeper, you know, what I'm saying on the situation. I'm like, Tariq is only thing, the only explanation that I can give for what he's just kind of been trying to say. He's protecting his little interests or his check that he's getting with whatever association that he's got with Revolt, and that's probably one of the last thing they got some financial breath. In the little Diddy dynasty, per se. I'm like, that'd be the only thing that, you know what I'm saying? He's not trying to get on the, you know what I'm saying, bottom line and stuff that they can, you know what I'm saying, dissolve. You see what I'm saying? So, but that'd be the only, because I mean, there is no really defense, if you're going to be honest. But he'll be trying to say that for his best interest. That'd be my only excuse he could have. That's really my only comment, too. But yeah. Okay, for sure. For sure. Yeah, yeah. And, and it was very interesting right before I did that broadcast on. Him defending Diddy. Um, right before I did that, I learned that he was on Revolt TV many a times and has business dealings with him. So, yeah, yeah, it was definitely interesting to say the least. Um, but you know, we've also got Curtis in the building. Curtis, let the folks know where you're calling in from and what's on your mind. What's up? This is Curtis calling in from Louisville. Um, the caller before, I agree with pretty much 80% of what he was saying. The only thing that I didn't agree with is how he was claiming that the South doesn't have as much unity as the North. I don't agree with that. You know what? I don't think he was saying that the South didn't have as much unity. I think he was saying that because of the lax gun laws, like the, the gun violence is really crazy in the South. Correct. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah. And so if you're from the South, uh, then your response yeah. was correct. Mm -hmm. Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be watching them videos and them white boys on YouTube with the, <laughs> with the 60 round drum mags. And shit. You, you, but it allows all of South. us to be strapped. <laughs> it does, but also it is kind of like a heightened level of violence. Like I'll see all the time in the South, like road rage incidents end in gunfire, whereas 
in some of these more liberal places that doesn't necessarily happen. But me personally, I, I love to exercise the right to bear arms. I mean, you know, I, I had a firearm, I used it, you know, and, and I'll be buying another one here shortly. So, um, yeah, I, th that's why I, I asked him straight up. I was like, are you saying that when we try to reclaim the South, we have to be more militarized? And I think that is kind of where uh, we need to be with it in the sense that we should all be, you know, uh, getting our concealed carry permit, learning yes. the laws, practicing at the range, because this is just like, like life skills, like just like, you know, calculus and writing and algebra you should know firearms training and firearm safety of course you should definitely know firearm training i think everybody any fba should definitely uh get your license whether you have to get it or not go ahead and just get your license because yeah, they give you some very informative points basically when you're shooting the gun how to shoot it the target practicing and also just to not go in and just think that oh i have a gun i can just go out here and point it at anybody they give you common sense to go yeah. along with it Facts, facts. Hey, if anything, me carrying has saved me with a lot of encounters with the police. There's been times where, like, my, my girlfriend chasing me in her car and we damn near drag racing through the streets. I get pulled over and shit. And as soon as I let them know I got a firearm, I mean, yes, I was speeding. Yes, I was doing traffic infractions. <laughs> but now all they care about is where's your firearm? Is it secured properly? Is this a legal firearm? And as soon as they see it's legal and I'm carrying it right, they just let me go. <laughs> I'm like, damn, if anything, kind of having a gun for me was like a get out of jail free card or at least get out of some tickets. Because as soon as a black man in Kelly says he got a gun, they're assuming the worst. And when they see I got it properly stored away and the magazine's out and it's locked up and I got my paperwork and my permit, they're like, oh, shit, a black dude who's carrying appropriately. OK, go ahead with your day. Right. So let me ask you this, Mike, real quick. So he was also on discussion of leaving New York, which which I kind of agree with because African-Americans just not only just African-Americans, most people and uh, most people in New York are being priced out. So yeah. it, it, I don't it, see the allure. I like to visit New York and like feel the bustling city, but I would never live there. Like, bro, like I'm too more, much of an outdoorsman, like people stacked on stacked on stacked on top of each other. Like and like you said, super high price. Like, yeah, if I was a billionaire, I'd have a residency in New York or something. But for the average person, nah, nah. So let me ask you this. Is, if he's if we're talking about are we being priced out and we're going to move now, we're always getting on the tethers for leaving their homeland and whatnot to come over here. So if we was going to leave from one state to go to another state, wouldn't that be considered running? Not really. I think that's considered migrating. I mean, we're going from one state to the neighboring state. We're not moving from Nigeria True. across the transatlantic to the UK to be different citizens of a different <laughs> nation. Like, bro, there's levels to this shit. But, but you know what? We uh, we have Chuck Wu backstage, and Chuck Wu's gonna say, "No, you FBAs are fleeing." <laughs> <laughs> Chuck Wu, we haven't heard from you for for a while. Let us know where you're calling in from and what's on your mind. Salute, salute. Uh, calling in from uh, Florida. Um, I actually had a question or two questions. The first one is, have you heard what happened at, with the office of uh, the OMB report regarding um, delineation? The OMB said that um, uh, there. Hey, hold on, hold, hold, hold on. So what's the OMB? The office of 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 budget of of management. Management and budget. And budget. Right. And Office that like of Management a, and Budget. That's like a national organization? It's a federal um, organization. They deal with, you know, like the different racial categories and uh, some um, budgetary issues. So, like, okay. you know. So they, they kind of handle the census. Correct. Okay. And All right. Go ahead. You know, as you well know, over the past few years, there's been a push by Black Americans to delineate, you know, uh, foundational Black Americans or American descendants of slaves, uh, apart from you know other Black groups, but they handed down the decision yesterday that that's not going to happen. So I just wondered if you heard that and, and what your opinions that you know all Black people there you know we're all Black. Caribbeans are Black, the you know uh, Africans are Black, and Black Americans are Black. They're they're we're all in the same category. Who's saying oh, of course, of course, of course, of course, but that, that comes from somebody that probably can't give us two generations of names on the land. Of All right, hold on, slow down, slow down. I'll respond first since he posted to me. Um, first and foremost, 
I didn't know. Um, is this like a situation where like Avery so and so years they're about to change people's labels on the census and they just like did their next rendition or? Well, no, there was a push for. Um, well, another group got it. The the Middle Eastern and North Africans they were able to delineate from Europeans because prior they were uh, categorized as white people. Yeah, but. They were delineated, so they have their own group. Now they are a, a, a racial minority, and they are eligible to get different minority set asides. And you know, they're, they're uh, well. Okay, okay. Here's the answer. Um, on I was asking at first whether this was like some annual thing where they like see if people want their status change or whatever, whatever. Um, I'm not sure if it is, but um, for one, I don't really care. And when I say I don't really care. I mean, the government, since they formed here in my ancestors' native homeland, have reclassified people and wrongly right. named them and done a whole bunch of trickery. So, I mean, I identify what I identify with regardless of what, you know, is on some census, for one. Um, mm -hmm. For two, I was asking if it was like some annual thing or if they look at changing it periodically because... Well, no, them respond. Oh, hold on, hold on. Because what was going to come to mind is that Black Americans must have not properly advocated whoever. I don't even know who they would have to advocate towards. I'm not sure if that's like something where you call your local congressman. I don't even know where the uh, the correct political channels are to advocate for that delineation on the census. So on the one hand, I think we probably uh, we didn't properly access that political. Uh, uh, avenue, but on the other hand, since you say that the North Africans successfully delineated, and I know damn well they didn't galvanize like some force to make that happen, so you see, like, it's just kind of they're doing what they want to do, regardless of what the people are talking about. Um, what this really brings up for me is well, they were um, for 30 oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, <laughs> yeah, yeah hold, hold, hold on a second, let me finish fleshing out my response. Um, <laughs> what this really means for me, and again, I'm in a unique situation. When I mark down things on a census, I don't put black. When my son is marked in medical records and stuff, he's not put down as black. He's put down as a Native American because mm -hmm. I traced my lineage and got my citizenship and tackled my tribe. And I am recognized federally as a sovereign citizen, i.e. a Native American. And when we know that 96% of African slaves went to Brazil and the Caribbean and only 4% went to North America, I advise most people, Black Americans, to do their lineage research because they will find, just like they've heard through their family, that they are actually Native. And if you can gain your Native American citizenship, then bam, I've already defeated that whole census narrative, we're all Black right there because I'm listed as Native American. And when you look at me and you see someone who looks kind of like a Black man, well, I guess you can call me a Black Indian a native black, but there's no way that I'm identifying as simply the crayon colored black because I got my lineage in tech and I'm Native American. So, you know, all people I urge you do your lineage. You can probably delineate sooner than you think and also get some tangible benefits that federal tribal citizenship has to offer. But on the other hand, um, for those folks who don't have an Aboriginal claim, I think they've got to figure out whatever that political process is to get recognized properly on the census. And if we advocate for it enough and properly, I think it'll happen. Well, the reason why this ruling is significant is because the whole purpose of these groups forming ADOS and FBA is, you know, to fight for reparations for American descendants of slaves and foundational black Americans. But ruling that they're all the same group pretty much says that, you know, uh, it's not likely that reparations will be paid or if they are paid, it's going to be paid to everybody. So do you know that's that's absolutely false. Just because they're labeling most people as black doesn't mean if we successfully push reparations for descendants of slaves, they're going to give black immigrants reparate. That makes absolutely no sense. Well, if, any, if anything, the proper deline if anything, the proper delineation would happen when we get reparations on the table, because when we get reparations on the table legislatively, we have to be delineated in the eyes of the law so that foreigners don't lay claim to our reparations. So, no, that absolutely would. Wait, wait. So, so, so you think that what this means is reparations is never going to happen, or if it does happen, you, you African immigrants are going to get a check too? All right, 
All right, hold on. I gotta, I gotta take it in for a moment. Hold on, <laughs> Chuck. I know every time you call in, you got a new plan to take over our lineage and get you some reparations. But goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> With a fresh idea, he said, Mike, I've been waiting. I've been waiting until the census designation came out. And look, everybody's black, so we're gonna get our reparations too. <laughs> Shit. Hey, you know, um, we've got Millie on the line. Millie, go ahead and unmute yourself, let the folks know where you're calling in from, and what do you think about the, the brief exchange we had with Chuck Will? Uh, um, so I'm Millie Hendricks, I'm calling from the UK. I'm so glad I managed to catch Chuck Will, um, because like, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what you guys, I think you were saying that how he's trying to get, trying to steal a payday. Obviously, you know, my opinion on the reparations, it's not even about whether I believe it's true. It's just what's right and wrong. And you guys definitely deserve your payday because everyone else has gotten a payout. And I don't even like the idea of, of them even having some sort of committee to discuss it. It's like they didn't discuss it when they were chucking money at the Ukrainians. They didn't discuss it when they were chucking money here and there. And uh, so this is like something that America did. They, they can give reparations to people who went through hardships overseas. So why can't they give reparations to the people who went through before? And also, and also tying this back, where, and also tying this back your own to your home lineage. Your lineage. It just doesn't make sense to me. But yeah, I've got any, I wouldn't get any benefit from it, but it's just what I believe is right and what I believe. Hold on a second, Millie. Your audio was was going a little bit in and out there. Um, all I was going to interject and say, tying this back into tracing your lineage, um, if you trace your lineage and you are indeed an Aboriginal, then you will get some form of reparations to an extent. Our tribes do get billions of dollars in federal um, USD earmarked for us yearly for distribution. I mean, I'm not saying that Native Americans got the best reparations package out there, but you will get something. And I think it will at least be a blueprint when you try to work off um, getting reparations for Black Americans by and large, because when you see that the Native Americans really still got the short end of the stick, I think that we can kind of sidestep some of the pitfalls that they fell into when they made some of their concessions that landed them on reservations. Um, and you know what? Millie just totally dropped off. Hold on. Let me see if I can get Millie back. Um, <laughs> Millie, are Isn't you still with us? Millie? A question isn't it like less than a hundred thousand? Hold on, his, his audio is super terrible. Um, yeah, yeah, you have a question, Chuck. Will go ahead. Yeah, isn't it like less than a hundred thousand uh black Americans who have native lineage like that? Like, it's a very small number, no? 99% of black Americans have not traced their lineage. So, yes, if you're speaking right now, it's probably a small number of people that have actually traced their lineage, like I. I mean. You know, for anybody that's into black power or black history or whatever, you guys have come across hundreds of pro-black people. You come across thousands of black YouTubers and shit. And I'm the only one who like has Native American citizenship. So you can see that it's few and far in between us even taking the steps to trace our lineage. So, you know, of course, the numbers are low. Um, we've also got Snap in the building. Snap, let the people know where you're calling in from and what do you think about the topic at end? I'm calling from Florida. And, um, oh, shoot. But I forgot the dang topic. <laughs> well, Chuck was basically saying place. because the Census Bureau just classified hey, everybody as black regardless of immigration I, status, I, I, he's I, saying I, that I, that means I, that we're not going to get reparations, or if we do get reparations, um, the black immigrants are going to be able to get a check, too. No, nah, that ain't true. He, he keep coming in here making us stuff. I owe him a scolding. But he done fled for so long because we haven't seen him in so long. <laughs> in months. God, he was waiting. He was waiting until the census passed this new black thing so he could come up here and say, listen, I got a new scheme. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but yeah, he, 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 you can make all that up all you want. And once everybody to get checked out, once reparations is on the table, like Mike said, that's where we'll go from. We won't go from how you say it. So, well, I, I didn't make that up. The OMB really did say that there is no delineation of black people. Oh, so oh, what that means in practice is that they don't recognize FBA or ADOS. We're okay, all, well, then they made it up too. Guess right. what? They hear and, us and, talking. And, and, no one's they see, and no one's expecting them to overnight acknowledge. They, these are all super new terms. And then us FBAs or ADOS folks are now here holding our breath, waiting for the government to acknowledge us as FBAs or ADOS. I mean, just like us Black Americans aren't holding our breath, waiting for reparations. We going out and getting ours regardless. 
Well, it's yeah. a government going to pay reparations. Well, you're going to wait and let Snap finish out fleshing his thoughts, and then you can interject, Chuck Wu. Hold on a second. Go ahead, Snap. And and I hear what you're saying, Chuck Wu, but you, you have to be – you have to understand something. Everything that FBA – had to get in the past it was called just black people or whatever they called it negro or whatever every time we had to talk about it we had to fight for it we had to march for it we had to do all that just because we saying this and then they say oh we're not gonna do it because we don't know who they are okay they will soon and they will once they hear the conversation and that's what we're doing so now no matter how much you come back and report what you heard from them to us we still right. gonna say what we're saying Period. Oh, I'm sorry. Can I just, can you hear me now? Yes. Yep. Now we can hear you, Millie. Oh, Go yeah. Ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So, can I just interject something that just really, really grinds my gears? Just because white people refuse to acknowledge it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. I just have to put that out there. So, just because they refuse to acknowledge that you were, that you, you were in America before even the Red Indians came in, doesn't necessarily mean it's not true because obviously they do have a tendency of telling false testimonies and making false claims and stuff like that. I, I mean, I live in, I live right in the heart of like, of falsehood, of them telling falsehoods. I live in the UK, but they, they can't tell a word of truth out of their blood now. But yeah, that's just one thing. It just really irritates me when people, it's like, for example, when they talk about how black people don't do anything when people are killed in Chicago, there's a litany of, of groups that are trying to reduce the climate in, in that black people try to do, reduce the crime. But because they think that as long as they don't acknowledge it, it doesn't exist, then it's really, really boils my blood. Like I'm even feel like punching a wall right now just thinking about it. It just really gets me upset because I do a lot of mentorship work in the UK trying to stop kids from making being turned in the wrong way. So when people refuse to acknowledge it, I literally want to punch them through their face. But okay, I won't. I'll, I'll stop with the violence. Right. And with that said, well, Mike TV right. does not endorse violence or hate speech against any particular <laughs> class, including sexual orientation, gender, religion, creed, nationality, or immigration status. The thoughts and opinions of panel members do not represent the thoughts and opinions of Mike TV, nor Google, YouTube, or any of its subsidiaries. Viewer discretion is advised. Can I can I say this real quick, Mike? Uh, okay. I don't. Um, and this is for educational purposes only. Now go ahead. <laughs> I just want to say this. It, it's not a thing about as far as what uh what 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 you're saying. You're saying the talking point that you're coming from is what white people are saying. They they have never gave us our props. They have never acknowledged anything that we have done for this culture, music wise or anything. So the, the information that you get is always gonna. You have to realize that we are behind enemy lines. So anything that we do that's uh, productive or that's positive, they're always going to try to put a negative light on it. And, and it speaks to his white confirmation bias. I don't know right. if it's the African in him, but he's like literally like, unless white folks acknowledge it, it can't be real, it can't happen. Right. You, you guys can't delineate and have your own culture unless the census says your FBA is like, bro, chill, chill. Exactly. No, um, one is this, um, the same people who are going to pay reparations say that there is no such thing as FBA. So it's not OBM. Who does cares? Not control who gets reparations? He, he did not OMB hear nothing we just said. OMB did. does not decide who gets reparations. Thank you, Gary. A white man is not talking, so he's not going to acknowledge it. Yeah. It, it's All right. Like, okay, Chuck Wu. Hold on. Hold on. Mm. I know. And, 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 wait, wait, and also, real quick, Chuck Wu, why are you so obsessed over us getting reparations? We haven't even mentioned reparations in like a month of doing these weekend <laughs> FBA powwows. And every time you come up, you've got some issue about reparations or how you should be entitled to reparations. I mean, can you not earn money on your own without a government handout? No, no. I just think this this the whole reason why FBA exists is because of reparations. FBA and ADOS only exist oh because of reparations. Sir, I am not a chairman of FBAs no. nor ADOS. I am a black Native American. Go talk to Tariq or Yvette Carnell if you want to gripe about <laughs> FBAs or ADOS. You're talking to the wrong person. Okay. But and, I, and, I, and I just had one other question. All right. So like in California. Well, right? before you give us your one other question, we've got to let Uncle Ruckus come back to the stage. Uncle Ruckus, um, I know uh, you've been backstage for some while after that candid confession. Go ahead and uh, let us know what's on your mind. You've been hearing some things. Well, I need to clarify what, what, what the main points were because I was, I was away from it. 
His main point so far <laughs> is that since the U.S. Census does not have a FBA category, they view all Africans or African Americans or Black Americans, anybody with Black skin, whether you're an immigrant or not, they label you as Black in the eyes of the U.S. Census. He said because of that, that means we're not going to get reparations. And if we do get reparations, Black immigrants, i.e. people like you, are going to be able to get checks as well. Yes, that, that is true. That's why I feel like it's important for, obviously, FBAs and Black Americans to trace their lineage, have proof of it, and delineate to become a different group so they have a credible claim, if you know what I'm saying. Mm. Well, Chuck, we'll go ahead and unmute yourself and chop it up with your fellow Tether. Actually, he, he's halfway not a Tether no more. He, he's halfway an FBA by association, okay? He's halfway there. But but Chuck, you're talking to an African man who believes we should delineate, who believes we should get reparations, and you think that, what, delineating is futile because regardless, you Africans are going to get our checks? No, no, I don't think that at all. I'm just telling you what the OMB said. The OMB said that we're all one big Negro. I just wanted your opinion on that, and I've already heard it. So I'm already past that point. Hey, can, can, I say, can I say one thing? Go ahead. Obviously, I feel, I feel like a lot of Black Americans are claiming to be FBA, but they've not traced their lineage, and they have not done a DNA test. So if you've not done a DNA, DNA test and not traced your lineage, then how could you claim to something when there's no proof about it? You know what I'm saying? Obviously, Mike TV, he's traced his own lineage, and he knows where he's from. So Hold on, man. I, 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 I think you have FBA confused with a Native American. For somebody to claim they're a Native American, yes, you've got to trace your lineage, you've got to apply, you've got to get citizenship. For someone to claim they're an FBA, they're just claiming that their lineage is foundational. They're claiming that their great, 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 great grandparents were born and raised in the USA. And you don't necessarily have to trace your lineage like that to know that unless you're like Chuck Wu, where your mom's from Africa, your dad's from Africa or something. And, you know, I, I, but I'm born in America. Am I really from America or am I from abroad? In a case like that, you have to trace your lineage. But the average Black American who's not a first generation, second generation, or third generation immigrant, we know we're foundational. But when it comes to Native American identity, that's something you definitely have to trace trace your lineage for and apply I, for if that I makes understand, sense. but but there needs to be some sort of proof because obviously there's nothing stopping from going to America and claiming that I've been there for generations. There's nothing stopping that. That's well that's proof, that's proof. why we're not only delineating but we're going out of our way to make known the differences between black Americans and others. You're right to a degree. If you don't have a crazy tether hairline and if you don't look super Nigerian or Sudanese or something that's obviously foreign, and if you get rid of the accent and adopt a black American accent, you could pass for an FBA and claim you're an FBA and nobody would, would know any other wiser. That's why over time we do want to be recognized on the US census as a distinct ethnic group so that we don't have people like Chuck Wu trying to cosplay among us. But that's yeah. my point to begin with. You cannot delineate without the OMB saying, yes, you are a separate group. That has not happened. That's what I'm and, saying. And no FBA person is running around like Chicken Little because the OMB has not added a new racial designation yet. But right, you but are that's... for some reason. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. But I'm just saying that you you're you have been de declined it's not a thing so f you it's right. just your well we got an era in the building as well new era what's on your mind chuck who came back with a new nigerian scam to get a check from us mm, you the paper back in the bat says i'm rolling up a couple ones all right, all right well, we'll bring everybody back to the forefront what do you guys think i mean did, did chuck Wu not wait three months two three months until he could come back with a new scheme <laughs> yeah he did can I, can I say something, can I, can I say something? Yeah, oh, go for it. obviously, if the white man, if the white man looks at this and says, "Oh, black people are claiming to be oh, something okay. they're not," they make look stupid because they want to see proof. If you know what I'm saying, they would no. Who who proof. cares? You you're basing that off the comment that I just made. We I'm, don't. I'm we're not what? waiting for the white man proof. The white man has never. The white man has always lied. So well, he'll, he'll look, he'll why look do we need to provide him with any proof? Because he's the one paying the reparations. <laughs> Come on, uh, here we go. The UK. Uh, for what like. reparations is owed to us? Agreed? I, I, obviously, obviously it's owed to you, but you need to, we need to show on proof. That? Hold on, show proof a, hold on. I'm asking another guy. Are we agreed that reparations is owed to us? I, I, I yes. agree. Yes. Black people I didn't ask you. 
So you're I'm right. saying, my mom is a black American, so if, mm-hmm. if, if if reparations is paid out, I collect it too. So I do. That's all you oh, worried about. Hold on, that's hold on. Oh, don't that's, do that. I, don't no, do I that. need, I need, I need my no, reparations. Your that's mom. What, see, he's piggybacking off of us. Does. He's piggybacking. Keeping it real. I'm just keeping nah, it up. Hold on, Chuck. Check this out, Chuck. Check this out. Chucky, little Chucky D, you're not keeping it real. Your mother would give a check, and if mommy wanted to give you a handout, then mommy can give you a handout. You're not entitled to a check. Your mama is. And really, word on the street is your mama's an anchor baby. She's bohemian. So we're really just taking your word for it that your mother's a black American. Exactly. And Chuck Wu, anyway, I just want to tell you this. Since you going out and spent the whole month getting some information, why don't you go back and give them some information? Go to the OMB and tell them, look, there's a whole bunch of FBAs over there saying they this, that, and this. Just like you run back to us and telling us that, you know, they say y'all not don't exist. Run I back over there. Chicken I, read, I read a news article. That's it. That I, I don't do research. It's like, okay, that's interesting. No delineation. Boom. So I just, I thought you guys would care, but my bad. And don't, you're wrong. We don't <laughs> care because <laughs> us you. delineating, us delineating has nothing to do with whether or not the government recognizes it. Of course, we would like that to happen in the eyes of the law, but we're delineating regardless. What are you talking about? We've delineated in more ways than one. I know you think you're real slick, but if I was in a room and you were in that same room and we asked some random Americans who was who, they they would know which one is a Black American and which one is a Tether Baby. Come on. I know you guys have been cosplaying as us for a while and you think that you can do a really good FBA impression, but you, you're really not fooling nobody. Well, unless the no one who recognizes the liberation, it's not a thing. It's chocolate light skin. <laughs> what? It's chocolate light skin. It just they like haven't been recognizing me. reparations. Actually, the point that where they started rep- uh, recognizing reparations and we started to speak on it as FBAs, then they started right. to recognize it. True right. or false? Say it. Say that again. Unless they did what now? No, no. We as FBAs, we're the ones that put reparations on the map. We're the ones that brought it back up every before my, uh, Martin Luther King's assassination. We brought back reparations to the forefront. Now that we've been talking about it, they're finally recognizing it or starting to recognize it. No, it seems like they're making moves to replace Black Americans with Hispanics. Ever since the they've all, they have always done that. No, no, but it's like in double time. Now, if you notice that, you know, in sanctuary cities, especially in California, it's filling up with Hispanics and Blacks. We you can blame it on you Hispanics. The second largest group coming through the border is African bush babies. The first largest group is Chinese. We've been dealing with Hispanics for a long time. The Africans and Chinese are coming, and it's not to replace P- uh, Black people. It's to replace all low-income earners so they can be the yep. new low income class earner there's white poor low income americans there's mexican poor low income americans there's african poor low income americans and everything in between so don't make it seem like this is some government psyops to just replace black americans no if you are poor and if you stayed poor instead of transitioning into the next tax bracket over the last 10 years well there's a new class of poor slave labor to replace you that's it that's all but go ahead snap yeah, Chuck Wu, I see what you do. You you try to come in and make in fear monger and, okay, and, and try to it. make us fall for it. But you don't understand. Every time you do that, we push you away. Can I can I say something? I'm just speaking the truth, folks. That's all I'm doing. Wait, t- t- today, today I was on today I was on Twitter and I saw a group of black American workers who worked at Waffle House and they said they were going on strike oh. unless they get twenty five dollars an hour. Okay. So do you not think do you not think it's obscene to ask twenty five dollars an hour as a minimum wage worker when they can just get immigrants to replace you? If you know what I'm saying, they're already replacing you. But go ahead. So obviously, so, as uh, a, go ahead. Sorry. As a low income worker, are you really worth twenty five dollars when there's going to be an like African immigrant or a uh, Hispanic immigrant who'll come in and do it for even ten dollars an hour? If so is that saying. supposed to be a flex? Is that supposed to be a good thing for you to come over I'm, here I'm, and make less I'm not, money I'm not, than I'm everybody else? This, I'm not seeing no, hold on, no, hold on, because you're bringing it up. It's like y'all want to talk from a white man's perspective, and you're not white. I'm not talking. What's wrong with y'all? I'm, I'm, I'm talking it's, about it's, the his bullshit. Go ahead. Are it's, unre- it's unreasonable from a minimum wage worker perspective to ask for twenty five dollars an hour. That's fifty two k. Says year. you. That's fifty two k year. 
That's uh-huh. like working at McDonald's fifty two k a year. Hey, Rosman, let me ask you this. I just got about three questions to ask you. You say it was an IHOP that you Waffle went in? House. Waffle, Waffle House. Waffle House. Waffle House. House. Okay. Um, did you go in the 250 other stores and hear the same thing? Or was it that just that one? Yeah, but it's obscene in the first piece. starts to slip out those now. Did you go into the other 250 Waffle no. Houses? No. Yes or no? No, but it's a clip I've seen. Okay, it. shut up. Next person. Next person. Okay, one ever been in the Waffle House? I know I've never been in Waffle House, but I've seen I've seen on the internet though, and it was mainly black women. Hey, come on, man. You <laughs> said you just walked in one and you heard them talking. I no. just said, did you go in all two hundred and fifty? No. Okay, so shut up. Next time. But it's it's called it's called an example. It's called an example. I'll point out an example. Oh, it's called a lie. Of why they want to replace? Of why? Of why they want to replace minimum wage workers? It's called a lie you just made up. How is it? How is it lie? I can literally okay. post it right now. And you said it's Because you just said it wasn't. I can post the video. I'm, I'm I telling. I can post the video. I'm telling you. You saying that it was an example. But an here's example what I'm saying. Here's is what I'm someone saying. makes something up. The, the yeah. give an example. Okay, Los uh, Angeles. This your video I've seen. So how, how is it? I'm San Francisco, uh, Chicago, Detroit, New York City. It's all filling up with illegal immigrants, and the government has jobs to give. They're going to give them jobs. Right. So that means it's going to depress wages and it's going to de- uh, displace the black people who are living there. So it's the government. It's the government. The government. The government. The government. It's the government. It's the- so Chuck. Say, oh, oh, Chuck. Oh, Chuck. 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 Will, with all due respect, shut the fuck up. I'm and I say it. and I say shut the fuck up. Because you are saying that not to look out for the black community and to warn us. You're saying that because you think you're like slam dunking on us or cooking by saying all oh, the immigrants are going to replace. You're not saying that to be an ally. You weren't trying to be a fucking Paul Revere type figure. The British are coming. The, the Mexicans <laughs> are coming. You're up here trying to shame us with your false statistics. It's not specifically black people that are going to be affected. It's all low income wage earners so what are you talking about i got nothing but love for Didn't my you, black- hold on real quick did you come That's in here all. telling us something that we don't already know but go ahead Okay, but you, I'm, I'm being told that I'm lying when I'm just telling you. And that's what them tethers always do. They come saying some shit we already know to try to slam dunk on us and be like, oh, oh see, you guys not going to get reparations. Oh, see, now even if you get reparations, us immigrants going to get reparations. Like, just stop. It's so disingenuous. It's so cowardly. He ain't calling into no white folks saying, hey, white people, guess what? The Mexicans are going to take over because white people don't give a fuck about you, Bush baby. He ain't calling into the poor Mexicans and Mexican Americans saying, "Hey guys, watch out! The illegal Mexicans are gonna come to me." No, but you over here with us because you're obsessed with Black Americans specifically. Just, just confess. Stop the cap. He fled again. Stop the God cap. damn it! Did he, he drop out fled. yet? Yeah, he dropped out. Uh, you can click the link and call in. I know I was heavy on the mute button because I just couldn't take the disingenuousness. But you know what, Chuck? Well, if you call in again, I won't mute you. I'll be nice. Honestly, I'm about to um, get picked up and go in for a two-hour deep tissue massage. So I'm I'm, I'm going to be real civil now. I'm going to be real civil, okay? I've got to release this tension, these built-up knots from roasting you fucking tether babies. I won't. And then it's like, <laughs> that's what I'll be saying. They don't listen because my TV just told them. It's the low income people. It's all of them. It's not just specifically black people. And he still got right up there and said, Yeah, the black people is like you said. And mostly white people, people are going to be affected. M- mostly poor white people are going to be affected. But if we bring that yeah. up, he's going to say, Well, yeah, but poor white people only make up the majority because, but, but per capita, but, but per capita. Like, come on, shut up. Stop. We didn't ask you for advice. Go take another three months off and call back in when you have some new conspiracy about how you're going to get a check from us. Yeah, Big Hank, I know that they got me shadow banned. They don't be giving the notifications or nothing. Make sure your notifications are selected and turn to all, though. Sometimes people have them on, but they don't have it selected to all. But um, but either way, as soon as I hit 20K, I'm going to start a new crowdfunding project to... um build my own streaming site miketv.com because a lot of you guys don't get the notifications and shit so you know i'm gonna have my own site where even if i get banned from youtube or something in the future we can still uh still keep pumping out the content yeah big hank says it's already selected on all yet and they just hating on the boy i I speak about things that are oh too controversial what can i say 
I get all my alerts. Yeah. And and honestly, um, as much as us content creators like to, you know, project um, a conspiracy about us being shadow banned, I think YouTube just kind of doesn't have all their shit together. You know, I think they just kind of got some bugs because, yeah, a lot of people say they do get notifications. A lot of people say they don't. You know, some people say they get unsubscribed. Some people don't get unsubscribed. YouTube's just yeah. a little finicky in general. That's why I want to know you might. Um, I know they are to a degree because they demonetized me. Um, what they demonetized me for... I guess it was a just reason. And they also like gave me a little slap on the wrist, a little warning. And I had to do like three months probation. And now like in 30 days, and I get management be monetizing. Nah, but <laughs> they you. definitely <laughs> made, made me read some articles about hate speech. And, and, and I had to take a pop quiz about what's hate speech and what's not hate speech. <laughs> See, I'm telling you what happened was I was playing a replay. And it wasn't even about the Africans saying they're going to sell us. It was some other grimy thing they were saying, like, we're stupid monks. Just some crazy hate speech about us. And YouTube just registered that or somebody was being a hater and flagged it as hate speech. And, you know, now I've got a warning for hate speech. So YouTube told me, you know, what you got to do in the future is make sure you've got disclaimers either visibly on the screen or in the description. So if you notice all my live streams in the descriptions have disclaimers, and, you know, if anything sounds a little bit too contentious, I make sure to say, hey, educational purposes, no hate speech. But, you know, I just got to stay on my P's and Q's. And it makes total sense because even though I may not say hate speech, we do react to a lot of content that is viewed as hate speech. So, true. you know, I don't think they're hating on the boy in particular. But, you know, you know, I'm definitely not their favorite darling child in the algorithm <laughs> you know that this isn't the most popular subject for them to be pushing i mean if i was a sellout making prank videos with fake lamborghinis or talking about how women are gold digging sluts and da da da, da then i'd have a million subscribers by now but it's well, all like good umar sitting next to white women yeah yeah hey can you believe people are getting at me in my comment section talking about how dare you mike this is such clickbait you photoshopped that photo like Nigga, I just made her a little closer on the couch. Like, okay, the, the most crazy clickbait Photoshop Mike does is making the white girl appear a little closer on the couch than she actually was to Umar. Like, all right, I'm, I'm so crazy, y'all. Don't watch and Mike so, TV no more. And so if it's clickbait, you come in here and you learn some stuff. Don't Ooh, matter. Go. What up, family? Chuck Wu don't like me. Back with him. Nah, sure Chuck Wu ran off. Is Chuck Wu in the private chat? Like man? Yeah, he fled. Nah. Oh. No, he fired. Uncle Ruckus. Hey, something real quick before we Raza Man's still here. Oh, hold up for first uh first snap and then we'll let Raza Man chop it up with new era. Um I I can't remember the reason what it, exactly what you were saying when you said FBA is like the Martin KKK. I didn't understand what you were saying by that. So can you let us know what you meant? Yeah, Raza Man, what was that shit? Oh, that's my cousin. He don't know what I came in here for. <laughs> Raza Man, unmute yourself and let us know how um, FBA or the new KKK. The first of all, what, what's it called? I feel like there's a lot of hatred. That you, obviously, not all FBA is like this, but there's a lot of hatred from FBA to Africans. And it becomes more of like a racial, racial type of thing. Like, obviously, I saw a video or a tweet on Twitter basically of this black boy huh? he was from liberia and was killed what no what's it called was shot by a, a white man for knocking on the wrong door so obviously the fba's went in the comments saying oh it's none of our business he's african it's none of our business but then obviously all the fba's are supporting that but then when Tariq tweeted out saying it was wrong and that oh uh, what's it called these white people are racist because doing that to him and that he, he should get some support then they all switched their tune. I started following him. And also like a lot of FBAs on Twitter, on YouTube, they're like harassing people. They love harassing Africans. I saw some one tweet about, which was good, which was harassing some British actor saying he's stealing black Americans jobs. Wait, hold on, hold on. I have a quick question for you, Raza. Do you hear Africans talking greasy about us online and saying just the same amount of bad things or if not worse things about Wait, us? It's, 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 not, it's not the same though, it's not the same. So you think Africans aren't 
degrading us to the same degree. You, you don't even recognize that what you see is just the person who's throwing the second shot. The Africans have been talking greasy about us online for years. And now that we finally stand up for ourselves, we're the KKK. All right, Raza. I'm talking, but you're not even trying to listen to what I'm trying to say. Because obviously, I've never seen an African, say an African American play the role of an African. I would never see you African get angry. I've never seen African get angry about it. Never seen Because we don't do that shit. And the name yes, one yes, yes, black American that played. Wait, hold on, hold on, right? Yes, right. We don't yes, yes. right now. Oh. So you ain't never playing in the clip about seven hundred Africans. Do that real quick. What? So what? Since, you, since you never seen no Africans talk shit about us. And I, I never said that. I said I said obviously it goes both ways. And like that saying, you ain't never seen you no Africans talk shit about us. Stop lying. You about to see that show. I'm, 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 I'm not even finished my point yet, it's already attacking me. I'm not even finished my point yet. I'm not attacking you, bro. I can't even finish. I, I just thought you said you ain't never seen an African attacking us. I just want you to see I'm, some evidence. I'm, I love their back and forth, by the way. I'm, I'm not, I've not finished my point. He's already attacking. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even finished. All right, all right, all right. Well, here, I'll mute everybody and hurry up and finish your point, and let's hear if it's really something thought-provoking. So, Go first ahead. of all, there was a, a British actor called Idris Elba. He played a role in, in an African-American Hollywood movie, and then he received a lot of hatred on FBA Twitter. Tweets saying, oh, why is he playing a role? He's stealing our jobs. Hollywood needs to do this, do that, do that. But they were attacking him in the, in the comments. The FAs were attacking him personally. They were, instead of attacking Hollywood, the producers who actually cast him for the role, they were attacking the, the man himself personally, going into him, saying, oh, he's this, he's that, and attacking him. And also, top of that, that black child who got killed by the white man, who the FAs are saying, oh, it's none of our business. He's not an FBA, so we don't care. And then they all supported that tweet of that black woman who was saying that, who was in the situation FBA. But when Tariq tweeted out the opposite, they all decided to try and follow him. So do you, do you understand that? So do, you, do you understand what I'm saying? And I feel like a lot of it is like hate mobs, just going and attacking black people. That's what, that's why I said that, because obviously the way how the KKK, they, they, the way they function is they, they have hate mobs where they attack black people. And Africans commit genocide, femicide, butcher, genital mutilation, and you've never compared them to their oppressors. You've never called them colonizers or KKK, right? I've always, I've always called out Africans for their bullshit. I always have called out them not for the bullshit. Have you, ever, have you ever, have you ever, um, have you ever equated them to the KKK or to colonizers? Well, I would say they are not colonizers. So are, they are have Africans. you ever told them that to their faces? Yes. Do you think I want to get killed? Okay. So you're, 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 so, so so you're so afraid of your fellow African, you won't tell them what's really up. I said, but you're African gonna elite. make false African equivalencies. Elite. But you're gonna make false equivalencies and try to compare us to the KKK because what you you don't fear bodily threat from a. Uh, all right, it don't make no sense. Uh, panel members, go ahead and unmute yourselves. Jump in. I don't know where he's coming from. I just want to ask him real quick before New Era get him, because I know New Era want him real bad. Cuz going to get him. But uh, Raza, I mean, Uncle Ruckus, have you ever studied the history of what the KKK did here in America? The KKK is a hate group. No, no. Like bruh, bruh. Come on now. Have you ever studied of this motherfucker KKK thinks the history. KKK is like the Proud Boys, y'all? Yes. <laughs> he thinks the KKK yes. is like the Proud Boys. No, the, sir. K the KKK is a hate group. It's a hate group. It's deeper they than that. Bro, they hung numerous numbers of black people and burned their bodies to the tree and cut their pieces off of their bodies to take home to keep for keepsakes. Now, if you show me the FBAs that did that, then we can have a conversation. But if you can't, you need to stop saying that. And this is going to okay. be my only time warning you about that. Okay, okay. Go okay, ahead. I, I, let, me, let me say this. Let me say this. I apologize for using the word KKK, but I did that to obviously trigger you into discussion. That was it. Like, 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 say, trigger into discussion. Whatever you you not but my TV, nigga. You, you do not have the talent nor finesse to attempt such a elite tactic as that. Try again, sir. Try again. Oh, Lord. He want to be like us. He want to be like Mike, y'all. He want to be like Mike. <laughs> all right. All right. Go ahead, y'all. Um, Before I get started, Mike, you mind playing that video for me? I don't have the video queued up, and I'm about to dip, so no, I can't really play any videos uh, right. right now. But I, but I do have some other videos. Um, I was gonna do a stream on Friday, but I was feeling sick, 
So I canceled it. I pushed it till Monday. I was going to do a stream about them Africans talking real greasy about us on TikTok. So although I don't have that specific clip you're referencing, I do have some clips of them talking real, real greasy. If y'all want to get mad, I'll, I'll make you mad. Not all black American women. Some black American women need to get a grip. What do they because teach them in school? I don't know what they teach them in school, but do you know what I think it is? The concept that yeah. African women or women from the UK who know their heritage and are from African descent mm -hmm. are not black is crazy to me. Mm -hmm. Because the thing is that Americans are using the concept of black as a nationality rather than an ethnicity. Okay, like to be black is to be African American. Yeah, being black is phenotypical. Mm -hmm. It's not to do with your nationality. I don't think they understand the concept that if, okay, let me close my mouth and no one can hear my accent. Me and an American girl sit next to each other, they're gonna treat us the same, we're black. Mm -hmm. So like take, taking away the black identity from, from Africans and from people from the UK who are black is just really, I think that's a really uh, like a problem. Mm -hmm. uh, stop doing that please, uh, thank you. I feel like part for me of my issue with black americans feeling that they can police the idea of being black yeah. is that you lot associate blackness with slavery yeah yeah i also do feel like as well policing a label that we didn't create is so boring yeah Part it's a it social like construct that they made wanting to have power that you so never boring. Have. yeah that's what it is and it's just for like yeah. shut up actually that's just yeah ultimately okay. is the was the aim of that sentence well what do you guys think they told us to shut up. They told us to shut up. We can't police who's black and who's not. If anybody got dark skin, they can identify as black. Black doesn't have nothing to do with slavery in America. All right. All right. Uh, can, right I, man. can I say something? Can I wait? Can I say something for real quick? Go ahead. You can only say something if it's a reaction to what you just heard the woman say. Okay, first of all, the what they some of what they said was correct, but some of it was wrong. I want you to know that I know he's lying right now. <laughs> oh, you got the new Margiela? <laughs> that's what's up, that's what's up, I see you. That's your BMW? Mmm, that's nice. Mm. That's your girl? Golly. Okay, I see you. But um, I just want to know one thing. Mm. You ready? Why the fuck you lying? Can I, can I elaborate or what? Sure so thing, first of all, they said, she, she, she said that black Americans associate blackness with slavery. That's what they associate with as a whole. That's that's what she was saying. That's what she was referencing reference to. And is that right or wrong in your opinion? No, whole, black, being black is not wholly about slavery. There's other, there's other aspects to it. Obviously, being black is about being in a black American, is it not? Well, obviously, you say you have culture, so that, that means that not open to black Americans and slavery is. Being black, the label black, is a label given specifically to black Americans, correct? Yes. Were Africans on the continent of Africa ever labeled as black collectively? Well, in the UK, I'm labeled as black African. I didn't say in the UK, I said Africa. Nope. Okay. No, 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 no. So just because some of you UK Africans want to call yourself Black Brits, that does not mean you're colloquially viewed as Black globally. Globally, when someone says a Black person, they're referring to an American. Globally, when someone refers to an African, they refer to you by your tribe, or they call you an African, or whatever country you come from. No white person, Asian person, or Indian person sees an African, hears an African, and calls them Black or thinks of them as black. Black is synonymous with Americans. Africans are synonymous with Africa. You're just ashamed to be synonymous with Africa, which is why you're trying to be grouped in with us black Americans. Just like Chuck Wu, bragging about the fact that the, the OMB or whatever says that you African immigrants get to be labeled as black. Sir, you guys are just obsessed. Well, me, me Not only that, I'm, make up, hold on I, real quick, Reza. Make up your mind. Do you either- I've never, I've never- Go ahead. Okay. I've Go never ahead. labeled myself as, as a black British. I've never I've never labeled myself as that. Never ever ever. I've always referred myself as African. Always. Even even on my even on my certificates, whatnot. I write I'm black African. Even when you were bleaching your skin, you were still identifying as African. <laughs> 
I don't have to don't lie to you guys, guys. I'm being serious. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have to sign the forms, then. I don't have to sign the forms. Well, hey, hey, and also, one thing I forgot to ask you about that. How old were you when you first started bleaching? I was around 10 years old. How was you even allowed to bleach your skin at 10 years old? Hey, I knew it is. That's him. That's when my pops passed away. Amen, Lord. His mama was looking for the bleach. She was going to mop the floors, and the bleach bottle is gone because he's in the bathtub with the bleach. Oh, my God. All right. All well, right. No, hold on, Mike, real quick. I thought he said that he was taking uh, bleach lightning uh, uh, cream, and also he was digesting bleach pills. No, no, no. He said new, multiple new, things. New, new. He, he said in the morning he'd rub mm -hmm. on the skin bleach. Wait. Then once he got home from school, he'd take a bleach bath, and then he'd take a regular bath, and then at the end of the day, he'd rub on more skin bleach cream. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So right. at 10 years old, your parents, you would have to say that they didn't know about this? And they didn't notice that you were getting yeah. progressively lighter. I think they did. No, so I, I told them it was the cream, though. Maybe not because obviously I was medic I was medicated some cream for my eczema. Oh so yeah, speaking of eczema, I got asthma too, and I ain't never heard. And I went to a doctor for my shit. The doctor ain't never tell me to bleach my skin and will help for hey, fucking asthma. I've got no, super you know, bad eczema on my shoulders and my backs. It's like word, skin blotches and stuff. If I'm in the sun and stuff, I've never been prescribed bleach. Word. Let me, see, let me see. It, was, it wasn't really bleach, but obviously it lightened the skin, lightened the cream that was prescribed. It lightened your skin. We wasn't like, never. I, hey, yo, I, Mike. I, I, uh, hold on, hold on. I mean to cut you off. I'm going to ask Mike a question real quick. Yeah, Mike, when you went to the doctor, did they prescribe you some um, skin lightening cream? Nah. Nah, not at all. I don't uh, remember that either. I remember getting some pills and some shampoo. Yeah, yeah. Some uh, sell some blue or something, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's to rub some sell some blue on it. Yeah, yeah. My, uh, daughter, I, my daughter, um, medically has it too, and I had to buy shampoo, lotion, and mm -hmm. um, cream. Yeah, it be so like um, shampoo be pink and shit sometimes. Well, real quick, yeah. Raza, somebody wants to know if the uh, bleach burned your nuts. <laughs> We know it did. Did it burn I'm, 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 when you were taking a bleach bath? I mixed it water though, so it wasn't just a whole bath full of bleach. So you diluted it enough so that you didn't have a, a burning crotch. Yeah. yeah. And did you learn that through trial and error? Kind of. So at one point in time, your uh, bleach bath was too highly concentrated with bleach and, and your private parts were, were irritated, so that's how you learned to, to add more water. Yeah. Man, Mike, stop making oh, fun Lord. of him. He's going to be like Michael. Oh, Lord. Mike, yep, so. Oh, Lord. Deliver us. Deliver us. White supremacy in the UK got him bleaching his balls till they ache. White Did supremacy. Like so? White supremacy got a dark skinned African with some Chris Brown ball sacks. But we gotta ask, was it successful, Raza? Did did you lighten up like a few shades or anything? Yeah, yeah, I did. So are you like as yellow as Mike TV? Nope. Still darker than me. Damn, you still couldn't get to the level of Mike. Damn, 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 damn. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I pushed the wrong button, brother. My bad. My bad. This is a dire situation. Ain't nothing funny about this. Well, all right, panel members, uh, let me know what you think. I know there's a lot of new viewers who didn't hear Raza's candid confession earlier about bleaching his skin. Um, Raza, if you want to give us a quick recap about how you overcame systematic white supremacist programming and you were bleaching and then you stopped bleaching once you saw the suffrage of your brothers in Africa. I mean, if you want to give us a recap, go for it, because there's a lot of folks in the chat confused who did not hear you tell the story originally. Well, basically, when I was a child, I suffered from self-hatred as my identity as a black person and I wanted to be white. I aspired to be white. I aspired for my kids to be somewhat white or to somewhat become white through breeding or whatnot. Oh. But then, but then when, obviously, I, re I 
educating myself when I realised obviously the suffering that black people went through and I saw what was going on in Africa, especially to people in Ghana, to people across Africa as a whole, I saw that it was wrong. And then there was, when I learned more about the history, I realised there's no, there's no need for me to be ashamed of myself for being black. And on top of that also, I thought obviously as what I saw around me, obviously how black people behave, they were violent, killing each other, committing crimes. I used to think that, oh, why would I want to be like them when the white people didn't do that sort of stuff? So obviously when I got older, I learned that I was like... Remember, that's the thing that I got to be last time, man. Lord, he used to bleach the skin multiple times per day, Lord. Oh, Father God, he used to want to breed into whiteness. He used to want to be a white man. Lord, these Africans want to be white sometimes. Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. We haven't yeah. asked this question yet, Mike. What yeah. complexion is he now? I don't know. He said he's lighter, but he's still not as light as Mike. I don't know. Mm. Reza? Go. Mm -mm -mm. I stopped bleaching four years ago. So I've, I've regained some of my melanin, but it's not what I was before. So you can regain your melanin back? Yep. Every, every time when you stop bleaching, it comes back bit by bit. He was bleaching at 10 years old, y'all. At 10 years old, y'all. Lord. Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord. Mm -mm -mm. And he said, he, stopped four he years said, ago. hey, y'all, he said, he said, I'm gonna bleach my skin regardless of the danger. I will never find another lover sweeter than you, sweeter than you. He was making love to that bottle of bleach once he got home from school. And I will never find another lover more precious than you, more precious than you, the girl you are. Damn, y'all, he wanted to be a white man. Damn, he wanted he wanted his mama to be a white woman. He wanted his daddy to be a white woman. He wanted his sister to be a white girl. He wanted his brother to be a white boy. Close to me, you like my mother. Close to me, you like my father. Close to me, you like my sister. Close to me, you like my brother. You are the only one. You're my everything. And for you, the song I Damn, he seen them them ugly, scraggly ass white folks from the UK, and he said, "All my life, I pray to be white like you." He bleached multiple times a day, and still couldn't get white like you. Damn, I can picture it. I can picture it. You know they love that FBA music, right? He got home, 10 years old. He put on some KC and JoJo. He lit a candle. He grabbed that big old Costco-sized bottle of bleach, and he started talking to the bleach bottle like that was his woman. He said, bleach, baby, you all I need. Oh, Lord. I, I pray for someone like you, and I hope that you feel the same way. So if you started at 10, what age did you stop bleaching your skin? 14. So for four years, for four years, he was in love with the bleach? Yes, I pray that you do love me too. Oh, Lord, this is a crazy candid confession, y'all. For four years, he was bleaching his skin. Mm -mm. And, you know, I, I never knew this. I didn't know that. Bleaching isn't permanent. I thought bleaching was permanent, but you're saying if you stop bleaching for a few years, your melanin will like return naturally or something? It comes back bit by bit. Obviously, not as what it was before, but obviously mm -hmm. you'll start you'll start getting more melanated as your skin cells die and they regrow. Obviously, you start getting more melanin. Damn. So are you telling Damn. me you look like a Dalmatian? He looks like Michael Jackson when he was still in the middle of his transition. 
Nah, I'm, 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 said this nigga just smelled clean, but he wasn't clean. <laughs> Yo, mama never said, sir. Why, why do you smell like bleach? No, because I used to wash afterwards. Oh yeah, you took two baths. Damn, damn. Wait, and then did you Wait. stop four years ago, or did you bleach for four years? I stopped four years ago. So, wait, wait, you told yeah, us you're 18. I am 18. I okay, so, 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 so you also bleached for four years and you stopped four yeah. years ago. Okay, yeah. okay. And and did you maybe have a medical scare with an overdose that prompted you to quit? No, because I don't, I don't overdo it. When I found the name, I don't overdo it. But but you did say earlier that you were overdosing, right? It's not really overdosing. I'm talking about the cream, that, the medical He's cream. He was trying to get white quick. Then basically, the, med the medical cream went to the I point know, where I know. they said that there's some of the side effects that the skin will lighten. So I heard that. I was like, ding, ding. And I, was, I started using more than I was supposed to. Damn, my high ass. I be up here giving y'all this great content all the damn time. I ain't even ate no breakfast. Let me get a bowl of cereal real quick or something. Y'all keep talking it up, okay? I'm, I'm going to pour me some pretty pebbles. That bleach must have been weak because what bleach you know you can rinse off and not smell it? <laughs> we got Idris in the building. We got Idris in the building. Idris, did you know that your brother from the UK was bleaching his skin from age 10 to age 14? What up, Izzy? We can't hear you. How you doing, man? What up? Idris, did you know your good brother from the UK was bleaching his skin? Yeah, I was hearing the fact that he was bleaching his skin, yeah. And what do you think about that, Idris? Is that something that you come across often with the Black Brits in the UK or no? Well, um, I come across that um, in, in, in Africa um, among Black people and even among like Asians and Chinese people, I see a lot of people bleaching their skin. It happens quite a lot in India as well. And this is due fundamentally to uh, white supremacy. They want to be more closer more they want to have a close they want to have close adjacency to whiteness they want to be more affi affiliated with whiteness and as a result of that they believe that um by lightening their skin by getting closer to whiteness they'll be better looking they'll be superior in status and in clout that's just generally what people believe so it's a huge problem in the black community yeah so low self-esteem. Yeah, hey, Rise Man. Of... Oh, my bad, Izzy. You don't um, continue. I just want to say, Rise Man, I didn't know you was young, bug. I didn't know you was 18. You're still going to get this rape, but I'm going to take it a little bit easier on you. Continue, um, Izzy. Yeah, so this is what it is. It's, it's just, it's ever since colonialism, I mean, you know, the lighter you are, the better. So you'll see the um, uh, lighter skinned people even in the United States of America, lighter skinned people have more privileges, incidentally, the darker skinned people in the judicial system, in employment, in business opportunities for some reason, because, you know, the white man obviously prefers lighter skinned people to darker skinned people, right. you know, because he considers you closer, isn't it? And it's like, you also have like a racial hierarchy. The white man's on the top, black people on the bottom, and everybody in between, um, you know, is given more privileges based upon their uh, skin tone. So you see, like in the United States of America, the lighter skinned immigrants are given preferential treatment over black people because they're closer to uh, whiteness. So we do have a lot of problems where people want to bleach their skin to look better, to um, uh, have better business opportunities, have you know, increase their social standing. You know, th this is this is a problem across the board, unfortunately. You think they get mad at uh, some of us that won't even take those um, conditions? <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> still eating. Wait a you got a comment. <laughs> like, I'm going to keep hey, randomly. Hold on. Like... No, no. Hey, I'm not even <laughs> laughing at anything you guys are saying. I'm laughing because I keep seeing Red Sky Winter in the chat. And Red Sky Winter just periodically chimes in with a comment, just shading the fuck out of these. I'm just roasting them. I don't know if you mean to roast them. Red Sky Winter says, I worked as a cashier and the Haiti people get health savings account cards. They try to use it for food and it's not eligible. <laughs> 
<laughs> Red Sky Winter, are you purposefully trying to roast the members of the diaspora or not? Are you just being candid with your experiences? <laughs> oh, shit. Go ahead, guys. Continue. Yeah, because I don't think I'm ever, I, I never bleach my skin. I, I don't do nothing to my hair to make it fit in with if they ever told me that. I, I never, I never thought to do it. Yeah, I, I would never do that. What is your, how did your parents oh, raise you? Riz- wait, wait, no, I got a question for them, Curtis. What was going through your head um, eight years ago when you did that? You said you did it when you was 10, right? Yeah. All right, so what was going through your head eight years ago? I would explain this before. No, I'm saying Go ahead, Curtis. Yo, well, 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 my, my thing, hold on, resume. What was your parents like? What, what uh, how was you brought up exactly? Could you tell us the, how you had self hatred and whatnot? But you're talking as when you were a kid, 14 and 10. So, what, what influence did your parents have on you, on your upbringing? My mom always used to work. My dad wasn't in the country. I, used, I was raised with my grandma, mainly. He was huge. She does not speak English. She doesn't even know the day she was, the day she was born. She doesn't know the year she was born. She was born Hold on, wait a minute. Time the fuck out. Time the fuck out. We've kind of used that as a running joke with Africans because we understand that some of them really don't know that they were the day they were born. They don't know their birthday. They just claim it's January 1st. But I've never actually ran into an African who had members of this his family that fall into that category. So Rosaman, please educate us. Um, what circumstances were your grandmother brought up in to where she doesn't know the day that she was born? My grandmother was never educated. She never went to school. But the way how do the way how it works in Africa is such uh, back in the day, basically when it comes to birthdays and whatnot, people you never used to know when they're born. So what they used to do is that say some say say you're born uh, around the same time as New Era, you would say to yourself, you would say to people, oh, I'm born around the same time as him. If you know what I'm saying. But you Look, I was born in 91, baby. I know when yeah, I was born. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So, so, so when you say she didn't grow up with education, so is it not an African custom to track birthdays and celebrate birthdays? No, what what did you do? They have names which represent different days of the week. So one name means you're born on this day. Another name means, another name means you're born on this day. So that's how they differentiate it. So, so yeah, but but, but 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 traditionally Africans still had some way of knowing yeah. the roundabout of your age. They just don't yeah. know the exact day, but they the, uh, at least know yeah. the month or something. Yeah, they just don't know, don't know the exact day. That's it. Interesting. All right. Yeah, so my, my, my dad never wanted to educate her, she never went to school or not. But my mom was one of the first in her family to get educated. So does your disdain for black people come from your upbringing? It comes from my life experiences and what I've seen from around me as such. Okay, um, I got a question for you then. Have you ever been to America and chill with some black Americans? Never, but I've had black American friends. All right. Okay. But he told me the black American friend he did business with was basically a coon Sambo who was yeah, also I, anti-black. I, he was black American, but he was an anti-black American. <laughs> right? Yeah, I remember. By the way, there aren't many black Americans living in the UK. Incidentally, I don't run into them very often at all. All right. The point I was trying to make, um, you know how you say you wanted to be a white man until you seen the fucked up shit that went on in your country and shit? Um, uh, since you say you're a grown man, some motherfucker that claims he's been learning so much about us. I don't understand, understand why... Uh, you got so much to say for um black Americans and you talk so much shit about us. I've and already, another I've point this, I've, I've already said this today already. I've already mentioned it. I've already told Mike TV why I thought this the same way. I thought I've already explained it already. No, no, you don't get my point, young man. That's why I'm calling you young, but you seen how you changed your mind when you went to Africa? The reason why I asked did you ever come to America and fuck with us? Because you never did, so shut the fuck up. The same way how you was talking shit about Africa until you went to Africa, shut the fuck up until you come to America and come fuck with us. I'll beat I'll beat that person on the challenge, bro. So I don't I don't I don't even really know. But you still don't get the point, young man. Your story was I wanted to be white until I came to Africa, right? You yeah, said you seen the fucked up shit that was going on in Africa, so you changed your mind. Until I educate you got so much. It, okay, so you, you went to Africa and educate yourself, so you stopped talking no, I, shit. I don't go. 
I don't. I didn't go to Africa to educate myself. Okay, motherfucker. I, I, I don't know what the fuck you said earlier. You said you changed your mind when you went to Africa when you were younger, motherfucker. No, right I never said that. You can read so the, why did you change your mind? So why why did you become? You all right, all right, calm down, calm down, calm down. He never said when he went to Africa. He said that he saw media and how um, Europeans were doing Africans dirty in Africa, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, so so okay. it wasn't him going to Africa. He just saw on the news once he got a little bit older. You know, when he went from ten to fourteen, he sees hold up, my British countrymen are doing the Africans real greasy like. Okay, so let me rephrase my question there. You see him in the media. He's, new era. he's a young pup. Okay? He's a teenager. No, nah, nah, he said he was down. a man. He's a teenager. This is me being calm, buddy. <laughs> um. <laughs> Although he thinks he's a grown man, he's just 18 years of age. Okay. Yeah. But um, let me we're all young and headstrong then. at some point in time. Yeah. But um, let me rephrase it then. Um, have you ever seen the front? You said you watched the shit, um, you know, about Black Wall Street for some strange reason. We all know this why you said you know about the picture K though. So you see all the fucked up shit they did to us. Why you still talked up shit? I mean, why you still talk shit about us when we went to basically the same shit after? Let me, let me, like let me you just decided to talk shit about us. Let me just say one thing straight. When I was a child, up until when I was 11 years old, I lived in London, which was predominantly black. But then from there, I moved to a white area. Hey, hey can you uh, answer my question? You to make your point after you answer my question. You've seen the media how they fucked us over, but you decided to still talk shit. But you've seen the media how they fucked over the Africans and you decided to ride with them. I'm talking, but you've seen them fucked up shit they did with Armenia, but you still. All right, well, maybe I can fill everybody in in a shorter amount of time. Raza said earlier that because he had personal encounters with Africans or black Brits where they beat him up. And a family member of his was a, a victim of game violence. Because of that, he garnered a negative thoughts about black people in general. And his negative thoughts about black Americans were reinforced by his one token black American friend he had, who was also anti-black American. So, you know, that's why even though he knew about black Wall Street, he still disliked black folks. You know, one of his family got, you know, killed by a black British person and... You know, he just always saw bad things about black Americans, right? So, Mike, don't you see why we're so confused? No, because I, yeah, there's, 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 <laughs> come on, man. There, there, there's gang violence in America as well. So that, that's that's why I oh, predict here the same we go. thing. But here's the difference. No black American is a victim of gang violence and goes, oh, now I hate all black Americans. Right. Yeah, no, 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 no. Oh, oh Africa, because remember some of these motherfuckers. We got to hate all black people because we live in America. We all supposed I, to be all black. I never said to all, but towards some, towards some, some. No, I said if we if we went through that, we would have had to decide to hate all black people, not you. Like if you if you told me that you're a gangster, I'd fuck you and all them, and I think about the same the same way I think about them. I think I'd project the same thing on you as well because I see. Do you do you know, know the real definition of a gangster? I'm talking about now. I'm not talking about back then when they're fighting for equality. I'm talking about now. Hey, the now, words matter. So a gangster is a gangster. Um, I'd say I'm a gangster, and I'd be a little sissy. But if you if you kill anybody, say anything. I'm about to relocate, and I'm not going to be able to, um, you know, swap out the panel members and stuff. So if anybody would like to call in, now's the last chance to do so. A um, little bit of housekeeping: smash that like button on the way in, hit the cash app or the PayPal if you support the mission. We've heard a very candid confession today. I'm sure you guys never heard from an African who confessed to previous skin bleaching and confessed that a lot of these Africans don't know their birthdays. I mean, we're, Lord, uh, Mike TV is a place for the truth above all else. Um, I want to give Curtis a one-on-one -on -one with Raza real quick because I know Curtis had some questions of Raza, and then we'll rotate the panel a bit before I dip out. Go ahead, Curtis. Did you have some questions for Raza? I thought you were seeking some clarification. Are you still there, Curtis? Curtis going once, Curtis. Okay, well, we'll give Snap some time with Raza. Go ahead, Snap. Get him right, OG. Get him right. <laughs> All right, Raza. Okay, as many as times that you done came on here and heard us talk to you, explain to you, tell you things, and you turn around and still say the same thing when you first started. Now, what I'm saying is what you need to do you can't generalize everyone because of your 
small experiences because they are small. You ain't only 18. You're practically still a little baby. So until you come to America and actually meet some FBAs, Americans, or whatever, and, and, and be truthful and honest and deal with them, you can't say that we're a search with um a type of way and we do type of things. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, but can I say, can I say one thing, Joe? Can you at least admit that some black Americans do that? Yes or no? You know that's in every race, right, Riza? You know I'm every saying, race. Is has it simple that yes problem. or no? I know. Yes hold or on, no. hold on. Let me let me say it to you like this here. I should not have to answer that question if you already know that every race does that. If you got to ask yes one no. race, now hold on, Riza. If you have to uh, ask one race to answer a question like that, that means you're singling out that race. If you already know that every race has that same problem, that's where there's no such thing as black on black crime. It's just a crime of convenience. You're going to do crime to people that you live around. And that's all that is. If you come up with those talking points and all that stuff that you've been told, and then you ask a certain race and say, just answer the question. That means you're singling them out. You don't have to do that. I said some. I don't say all. I said some. Uh, you still didn't hear what I said. You don't have to ask that question to no race because every race has that problem. Every race. Do you understand okay. what I'm saying now? Okay, I'm, I'm just saying. But as a result of gang violence, gang violence. Yes or no? Um, well, I, since I'm not in a gang, I really can't answer that either. But obviously, you've seen the news, you've seen all around you. Yes or no? Can you can you? And the news is glorified the, the angle to make a certain race look bad, and which is not fair either. You know, we have white gangs here in America too, right? Yeah, I do. I do you ever that. heard of the Hell's Angels? You know, I they even know fight that. in front of the police and kill yeah, other people in front of the police. I do know that. Okay, that's why I'm saying there's no reason to ask that question to a, a certain race because it happens in every race. You know Nipsey Hussle? Have you heard of yeah. him? Yeah. He used to be in a gang. And he's, um. I, I don't know exactly what part of Africa he's from because I forgot. But um, he got out of the gang. And somebody that was either on the come up and was jealous and didn't like how he talked and they just killed him. That wasn't even practically game violence because I don't think the young man was in a game. He just wanted to do something wild and crazy. That's why I'm saying all that singling out stuff, all that saying this game, this, that game, that you don't need to do it because crime is everywhere. Crime okay. goes in every can, race and crime happens with every situation. Can, can, every, can, I, can I say one thing? Yeah, go ahead. 40% of gang members in America are black. Forty percent of gang members as a whole in America are black. Wait to see what Okay, you're gonna keep going by these statistics. Let me tell you something about these statistics. People lie that do those statistics. Sometimes they lie. Sometimes they lie. Hold on, hold on. And he wanted to talk about stats. Why is it that forty percent of quote unquote gangsters are black? But 99% of organized crime figures are not black. Yeah, did you you even look up that stat about the organized crime and then the um what do they call it? White collar crime. And yeah, they're organized. Why, I why, you want up. You're singling out black people saying they're 40%, but look at the crime that hurts the most. The people that's up there dealing with millions and billions of dollars. And decide somebody getting to run their mouth, and that person just disappear. That's okay, white collar crime. Are you saying that millions and billions of dollars are worth more than human lives? Say that again. Are you saying that millions and billions of dollars are worth more than human lives? No one would ever say that. A life is priceless, but exactly. some people don't see it that way. But what I'm telling you is the single out crime against a race of people just to try to get them to admit to something that you want them to admit to, that's not good. That's not a good thing. Every race okay. goes through this. Every race. They got over in Asia. Do you you heard about those uh, gang yeah, members over there? Yeah, I have, I have. Oh, okay. That's what I'm saying. So if you heard of it and you know of those, why would you ask that question 
to FBAs, and and then you're talking to FBAs that are not in games, and and yeah, some of us could say that and could be in a game, but you don't know that because you don't know us. You haven't met us. You're only talking to us over the internet. And what I'm saying is, you can't just keep judging people just by looking at statistics and saying, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and say this what y'all are and go ahead and admit it. Can you answer that question for me? Can you just admit it? You're not doing that to every race. If you call up some white people, go over there to the white people and ask them to admit to something like that. That's why I'm saying, Rosalie, you got you got to get your life in a certain trajectory and, and go in a positive way. Not in a negative way. Cause All right. And real quick, real quick, a little bit of housekeeping. Um, we had some cash apps come through damn near an hour ago. I'm sorry, guys. I get notifications late on this phone. Um, Big Hank, thank you for the contribution. Brother. Yep. Thank you for the contribution, darling. If you guys want an encore, you know what to do. Hit the cash app, hit the PayPal. We're going on four hours now. I'll keep the show going as long as you guys want. I'm about to relocate, start heading to the spa, but I'm going to keep the show up. Uh, we're going to bring up everybody from, from the back to the front um, in just a minute after Uncle Ruckus is done getting some straightening from Snap. But, uh, but yeah, I'll keep the show going as long as y'all are here. Let's go. Continue. All right, so do you understand what I'm saying, Rosa? You just have to be more positive. Go down some positive roads. That's why we have aliases like Idris. I mean, you hear him speak. He done spoke to you plenty of times, and it's not seeking in. It, you keep coming up with the same questions. You want people to admit stuff instead of trying to figure out how to be positive about things, how to say, okay, FBAs, tell me some stuff that I don't know, because you said you only have a limited amount of experiences. FBAs can tell you a lot of stuff. They can give you some information. All you have to do is be willing to listen and then listen and um and and yeah sometimes we might exaggerate something but most of the time we be telling the truth. That's why you hear us up here when we be laughing and giggling and roasting people. That's what we do. That is part of our culture. And I mean we good at it because look how many people copy it. You see all the comedians out there? I mean they coming from every kind of race now. And they, they know they have to do something similar because they get up there on that stage and they not funny. Oh, they hear it. But they learned that from FBA. I can tell you that. All right, we're bringing anybody else up because I think Roz is done kind of, unless you got more questions for me. No, that's it, Vicky. Okay. Go on, Chipper. But what's it called? Cool? In, in terms of change, you have to acknowledge that something exists. In order to it change, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, every morning you wake up, something changed. Every morning you get up out your bed, something changed. All you have to do is look in the mirror and decide if you need to change something. But if, if, if you if you're denying that it's happening and instead you're just saying, oh, every, it happens to everyone else as well, so it means it's okay. I can just ignore it. How is that a good thing? No, no, no. I didn't say ignore anything and deny anything. When you hear stuff that happens, what I'm telling you, okay, you can broad brush anything and say gangs are doing this and that, but you don't know the specific of it because every crime has a specific. It's not the same crime. Nobody goes to a house and just rob the TV and then everybody else that go rob a house just rob the TV. No, everything is different. That's why it's specific. Can I can I say my thing though? A lot yeah. if you look at like if you look at a lot of other races in terms of their crimes and murders and whatnot, it's more directed for a specific reason. In terms of when it comes to more Asian, I've watched your pictures, when it comes to more Asian gangs, they tend to get more aggravated over money, which is when they'll kill someone. But in terms of black people, you can post a tweet or say you are oh, dissing him or I fucked your baby mom, and then they're gonna want to kill you right now. If you know what I'm saying oh, it's, okay, it's over the little it's it's over the littlest things ever. It's over, over petty things. It's not related to money. Like, you can sit online and say, oh, fuck you, Raza, and I'll come in there and just shoot you because you said that. You know what I'm saying? When you've not actually done anything wrong about opening your mouth. You know what I'm saying? It's not about money. It's not about something big. It's just because of my ego that I did it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I got you. Um, Yeah, you're watching a lot of movies. That's some rap songs. That's the movies that they be saying that in. In real life, Raza, if you um was to actually investigate it 
it's because someone needs money or it's just like every every other race but yeah with the rap that's out there the any kind of music any kind of movie because that's what sells because they keep using fba to make more money they can love I, can I, can I, can I see hold on let me finish they love to see feas in movies just doing stuff talking about dissing other people killing robbing all that stuff that when that's in a movie oh they love it that movie will make some money but if they had it in there where it's a love story and it's fba um uh, it might make a little bit of something but it ain't gonna make much when it's in that's, there that's, they talking about being doctors all that kind of stuff it don't make that much money there's there's a correlation between rap songs and gang violence there's a correlation between the two no 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 let me tell you why it's not because that's what they want you to believe it's not because if you have a song that um okay you got those same rap songs out there but you still got um kids and adults that's out here being doctors and lawyers and judges and everything being smart so what happened they saw the same movie so why they not out there doing the gun and the robbing and stuff that's not okay. true. that's okay. something okay, let me, they bring let me, you wash you with okay let me ask you, if you're if you're a gang member and you're sitting at home and obviously you're up in someone like Mike TV and you hear that Mike TV is releasing a new song where he's disrespecting you in the song and then you'll feel a type of way about it and then you'll go and kill Mike TV. Do you, understand? Do you, do you understand an example? Yeah, it's a weak example. Let me tell you why. Because most people, we're not that weak-minded. You have to have, when you have sense about yourself, you know better than that. You're not going to go, people have kids. They have lies. They want to do stuff in life. They're not just gonna go and react on a song. No, no, and, no, and no. I think about that. Let, let me just say one thing. Look at okay. King, look at King Bond. King Bond, that famous rapper, died for what? He died of a, a verbal disagreement where he decided that he's gonna go and beat someone up, and then the person reacted by shooting him. So yeah. if he, if he, if he, if he wasn't emotionally having an ego that he, oh, he has to go to talk to this guy and beat him up for saying this online, then he wouldn't, he wouldn't ever died. He wouldn't be alive today. Okay, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's all right. Hold on, guys. Hold on, guys. Hold on, guys. We're gonna switch it up just a little bit. Um, we've got Christopher backstage. Let's see if Christopher wants a one on one with Raza. What's up, Christopher? What's up, man? I, I no, actually, I was just enjoying the conversation they were just having, bro. So, like, uh, I mean, I can jump in later, but <laughs> I was listening, yeah, yeah, it's you all know, good. It's all I, good. I, I, I was. Like you say, I, I like the way this guy was dancing just now. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way you dance, boy. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, Raza, keep tap dancing. So, right, Raza. I'm going to just finish that one on with it he just brought up. Okay, that guy that went and tried to fight somebody, do you know a lot of people fear when they get in a certain situation? And a lot of people like saying we're not like the old days where we used to just fist fight and then both still live. Yeah, that was the old days. When new days come up, what you going to do? You're just going to go with what's going on. So one of them had a gun and one didn't. That happens. That's what I'm saying. Well, Every crime is different. No, it's nothing personal that those two did. He went and fought somebody. That means he disrespected that guy or he wanted to do something to him. The guy said, I don't want to die and I'm going to just shoot him because I either can't fight or I don't want to fight. Or I just want to kill him anyway. That happens sometimes. Those that was those two people. You still can't say all of FBA is like that. That's I'm all I'm talking about. To black, I'm talking about black gangsters. I'm talking about the gangsters. The gangsters. Were they gangsters? Right, we, we understand. I yeah, got yes, you. Yes, yes, yeah, Raza. Right. Go ahead. Raza. Uh, 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 real quick, guys. Real quick. Uh, Big Hank wants to ask Raza what he feels about the Montgomery brawl. He don't know nothing about that. That chair. I don't know nothing about that. that a chair. black man created a black yeah. man created that folding chair. All right, I, 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 <laughs> damn, I, 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 I didn't even know that. <laughs> Go ahead, so Rosa, you have the floor. Go ahead. I've heard about a uh, cracker for a competition in America. Yeah, that's all, that's what I'm what? Say hi to everybody. What? He heard about what? Cracker what? Barrel? He said, yeah. What? Yeah, what? Yeah, what? Like, what the cracker crack. barrel? All right, I'm about to make Rosa. Wait, wait, wait. Hey, can it's I say something here first? Wait, hold on, hold on. Hey, hey, everybody no. go on mute. Everybody go on mute except for Raza. Raza, what what are you saying? Repeat yourself clear. I said I've heard of the crackhead throwing competition. You said crackhead throwing competition. Is this oh, a yeah. South Park episode I'm unaware of? 
Oh. No, it's just some African American. No. There's there's a video of it, Mike. It, it and he's just deflecting. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Is, is that his attempt at UK I mean, humor? Is, is that what yeah. just happens? Basically, Mike. Like, Raza, yeah, is that uh, supposed uh, to be a joke? Yeah, um, yeah, it was. Uh you brothers in the UK got to work on your delivery, man. That's uh bollocks, man. It's taking a piss, isn't it? Hey, Mike. Look who want to say hi. Who is it? Hello. Oh, smiles. Is that hi. you, smiles? Yes. I'm on my phone right now, so you're like extremely tiny. <laughs> but I'm nice to see you, Smiles. Work, so it's okay. Nice to see you, darling. Hey, uh, let us know. Have you been making any progress with that website? Have you secured a domain name? Not yet. I'm working on it, though. I've been focusing more on orders instead. <laughs> I'm getting here. Uh, well, hey, uh, in your spare time, go on GoDaddy.com and see if you got some domain names that are available. Okay. You know, an average domain name, if it's not super popular, it'd be like 10 bucks or something. Maybe okay. in total, you'll pay like 50 bucks with all the fees and everything. But yeah. I appreciate Lock down that domain. Absolutely. Got some more orders coming. Yes. <laughs> all right. Y'all go ahead but, and um, just want well, to well, hear well, the same Hold on, hold on. Uh, Smiles, is there anything that you would like to say to Razaman? Razaman gave a very candid confession about how his self-hatred had him bleaching his skin out there in the UK. I mean, he, he really stepped into the the uh, confessional and <laughs> gave us <laughs> some insight into the making of a tether. I did get, I did hear a bit of that earlier um, while I was doing some cleaning in the background and it was kind of surprising to actually hear that. But at the same time, um, I, I, I learned over the years that, you know, this is apparently what people do. And I, I, I did have a question that I told <laughs> um, Snap to ask, you know, with all the bleaching and whatever that took place, while it was something that was being done, I don't know if it's something that's still being done or not. Did you achieve what you wanted as far as, I don't know, complexion, skin tone? What was, I mean, in doing all of that, you know, did it make you a happier person with you know what you were trying to get towards. I, I'm not. I'm not sure how any of that made sense. Uh, but, great, um, great question, Smiles. Uh, Raza, did you fill the void in your heart that you were seeking to fill? Um, <laughs> did you reach the certain pigmentation you were aiming for? Uh, what were the results? No. no. Well, first, first okay. of all, me personally, I felt like, I felt like I would never find half until I was actually right. That was that was what it was. Oh damn! Wow. Wait, what did he say? I didn't repeat that. Say it again, Raza. Yeah, Say it again, loud and clear, Raza. I would have never found happiness until I was actually white. True. And there you have it. Damn. Only on my TV, y'all. Only yeah. on my TV. Let's go ahead and drop a bomb for that one, y'all. Cat Williams sold us 2024. <laughs> All things come to light. All right, y'all. All right. You know what? We got a new era backstage. Let me bring new era up. I had, a, I had a quick question real quick um to snap uh i remember earlier we was talking about you the mike the guy you had on earlier that was from new york that was talking about how going down south would be dangerous for him because we don't have mm -hmm. unity i don't agree with that and i think the i think unity if, if you look at hip-hop in general it shows how much the south had unity compared to the to north to the new yorkers and i don't think he was saying historically there was no unity in the south i think he just means modern day with the violence and the access to firearms it's just a very dangerous environment like you just really have to be on your piece of cues no new york is way more dangerous than, than <laughs> down south come on now mm, down south you'll get shot in a road rage in, in, in new york you might get pushed in front they of they just can't train. drive I in guess, yeah. <laughs> I, guess. I mean come on man like, hey, it's every other boat. week i hear some I story about this truck truck in new york and pushing dangerous. somebody into the train let track. Me ask i'm from new york and i live in south carolina they both fucked up and dangerous so that conversation i have to get shot in new york i gotta get stabbed in new york i gotta get a buck 50 in new york and the motherfucking this racist ass cracker to be shooting me just by walking down the motherfucking street. So exactly. the South is dangerous more. Exactly. Which is, with which is with everywhere. that being said, it's like no matter what state you go to, I don't know why he felt like just down south that right. you know, this is that in the south it's the only place that you're gonna there's violence, there's crime, there's no hospitality. That's everywhere you go. And there is hospitality down here in the south Major. anywhere you go it's anywhere you go it's a matter of if you're looking for it or not if what you're looking for is violence and crime and lack of hospitality that's what you're going to see and that's no matter where you go there's suburbs suburbs everywhere you go there's hoods everywhere you go 
there's you know there's everything everywhere you go hospitality that, lack of hospitality customer service no, lack of customer service so for him to simply say you know in the south you know yeah. what he saw and felt is only in the south dude bye like bye especially when he right. said the culture is not there right we Why? got a lot of culture Why? we got a lot ton of it a ton of it yeah, Absolutely. we yeah. got a Dr. Martin Luther King Street in almost every city in the hood. Exactly. I mean, hood, almost everywhere. Yep. You know, so, we even yeah. got um, what's the lady name that played in on uh, Good Times? Esther Florida Rowe. Esther Rowe. We got an Esther Rowe Avenue. <laughs> oh, good. And just real realize, even through slavery, sla slavery, the South mm -hmm. was always the one that uh, facilitated towards the North. We always freed the slaves to come to the North, anyways. So don't just hate on the South. The South yeah. is where it all came from in the first place. So when you talk like that, you talk disingenuous. Yeah, I missed his point. He wasn't hating on the South. I'm not no, saying he, that he was. I'm just saying nah. that there was some correction that needed to be applied to that comment. Yeah, it, it, we know he wasn't hating, but the few little things he said, like when he said we don't have culture anymore, and we do. Or we, hospitality. And we I don't, don't think have he, hospitality. I don't think he was talking about black people. I think he was talking about the white people. Mm. Okay, well, if he was saying why that, why would he be talking about the white people? Even, even white people everywhere. Because he was talking honestly. about the um feathers and all that shit, how this fucked up. Oh, okay. And he was saying some shit. He was like, "We need to come back down here." And he was like, "Um," he said some shit. He was like, "They still fucked up." Now he do some shit. But I ain't feel like he's talking about. It. I feel like he's talking about. That's Other his people. fault for looking for hospitality from white people. <laughs> there you go. There yeah. you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> And we do have some of them that got some good hospitality too. Absolutely. And all I mean, they sound like they ride horses and still in the country somewhere sometimes too. <laughs> so, but that's all. Yeah, I just wanted to put that out there. You know what I'm saying? Like we yeah, the, I got I've, even do hip hop. I feel like the north the north as far as new york has always been like yeah we we, we invented rap and y'all just our sons and everything else but i feel like when it came down south we actually showed everybody how to unite with hip-hop and come together with it to make money for everybody and each other and i feel like that's what the north has taken from us as down south people hmm. especially you, know, you do you where laugh half the people in the in the north got family in the south right Right. We so, we have family all over. It's America. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't agree with that statement because I ain't meet a lot of people. When I was growing up, mm -hmm. we was fucking with Ludacris and all that and old T.I. And we Outcast. You, you, and you I, I think that? you that's reading the shit on the media and you think all New Yorkers or all another is talking shit about Southern music. No, that's I'm just going off that uh what's that uh the source awards where they were booing Outcast? Media, like I just said. <laughs> it's the source. Yeah. Media, yeah. <laughs> well, like I said, you ain't coming to hood this year. You go to New York, they like, oh, oh y'all niggas feel like this way. Y'all listen to little. Y'all listen to no you you DK. Y'all listen to Outcast. <laughs> Nigga, I wish you would have came to a motherfucking block party in New York and shit. <laughs> you would have heard a whole lot of Outcast, motherfucker. But y'all have to continue. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I agree. That's just an impression that I got just watching that. I'm just like, why is everybody hating? Because at the point when Outcast first came out, I'm just like, how is this not dope? And then from everybody booing them in the audience or whatever. And it was actually, it was other rap artists. Let me let this on say this real quick. So we all mm -hmm. know that we got family in the South. So you think the niggas in the York that know we got Southern ties, seeing Southern coming up, and we're just like, oh, fuck the niggas in the South. Did that make sense to you? Knowing that we got family in the South? No, so the nigga that was growing up, yeah, exactly. So, all right, that's all I wanted to say. If it don't make sense to you, that's good. But I did appreciate AA Ron because he did have a lot of good information. <laughs> he did. Yeah, AA Ron. It was just that, it was just that yeah. one point that I didn't yeah, that, that I disagree thing. with. But that I was felt the it. same way. I thought I was the only one for a second until I saw you say something. Yeah, like I said, it ain't uh, me being my feelings. It's something that I just caught on to because I feel like the South. I just I, I feel like yeah, I, I'm a hybrid. Yeah, I see both sides. Mm -hmm. Hey, y'all want to know something funny? What's up? I live down. I live down. I live down. One week before my 12th birthday and shit, so I moved to Florida when I was 10 and shit. 
What about that guy down in the decade of shit? I was like, yo, fuck Florida. Mm. Fuck the South. All oh, these motherfuckers with skills out, came out of the motherfuckers. I was like, God damn, I miss Florida. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that shit's funny. Did everybody see when Luther Campbell uh, got uh, all put in jail by the dog on mail down there in Miami because of certain what? songs? No, we got Desmond in the back, too. Unless he up here already. Mike might already live. He might be gone already. Is Rizzo still here? Yeah, he up top. He up oh, there. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, I finished our conversation. Let me know when I talk to Rizzo. Uh, unless he got a question for me, I think I'm done. Yeah, Rizzo hasn't even really been speaking. Um, Riza. Is, that, is, is that Christopher above you, Snap? Yeah. Christopher, it's been a minute. You got anything you want to chime in or ask or anything? We got Mike Mike still here. All right. Somebody in the back, Mike, I think. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's the last chance. Y'all better click the link and call in because I'm going yeah, in for a massage. Y'all ain't going to see me in two hours. There ain't going to be no moderation. Y'all better be on your best behavior. I got you, Mike. We got Desmond <laughs> in the building. What's good, Desmond? Uh, not much, but I was going to say keep me in the back, but that's fine. Bring me up in the front then. Yeah. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey, Ling Ling and them ain't heard about my Diane Yap expose yet, so I can still go to the spa. Oh, okay. You want to get the feet washed, Mike? No, I'm just kidding with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, nigga, I got knots on my back, okay? She, she need to walk on that motherfucker. She, she, she gonna spend the first half hour walking on that motherfucker. Then she gonna spend the next 45 minutes loosening that motherfucker up. And then it's time to go. Ah, you know it. I just chill around here and see what you guys are up to. I got off my game, so I heard Roz is in there spitting out some jab or whatever. You know what? Good, good thing people are answering yeah. the call. We got Lemanuel in the building. We got Idris in the building. I told you, it's the last chance to get on the panel before yeah. Mike goes away for a couple hours. Yeah. Go ahead, D. You can ask the questions first. Hey, what, what up, what up Snap? What up, New Air? What's up, Jealous what's up, Sam? Hello, everybody. How are you all doing? Up, Glad you yeah. been back, but go ahead, Desmond. Oh, oh. I'm rolling up real quick before I get to talking to Rizzo. Oh, no, no, Uncle no, Rizzo. Go, go ahead, do your thing, New Era. Go ahead. I, I'm just chilling back here, enjoying my spaghetti. <laughs> oh, I'm rolling up a blunt real quick. So let me ask, let me ask this. Let me ask this. What do y'all think about the the Umar Johnson defending the Puff Daddy in the last post that we had yesterday that Mike had yesterday? Oh, I did um go first. Um, I really don't give a fuck because I'm not watching it. It's Tariq Nasheed. Tariq Nasheed. Yes, but I do, re I do remember um saying, um, uh, because everybody kept talking about Tariq. When I was um, when the fuck I was going to adult school, I think I kicked out of high school and shit. To, um, finished getting my diploma, and motherfucking, that's when I started hearing about that Ado shit. And I do remember motherfucking getting mad and shit about saying was like, I ain't invite me some shit. Was like, I'm about to make FBA and shit. And that's that. Um, okay, oh, that's Tyreek who got mad all them years ago. Was like, I'm about to create FBA, and I was just motherfucker had that shit last night. So I really don't give a fuck. Yo, me if y'all niggas ain't doing that, and when y'all getting money, yeah, as soon as y'all get a million dollars, ain't fixing no hoods and shit. Y'all do all this shit that y'all want, but as long as y'all niggas ain't fixing no hoods, I ain't. I really don't give a fuck. Actually, actually, I got one thing to say. Um, and Cat Williams actually talked about this. Uh. He was saying this about a lot of comedians and like a lot of people in Hollywood, how they would take the uh, what you would call the 50 mil deal. You know, the same one that Dave Chappelle turned down and so many other, and he turned down to, you know, right. wear dresses to buck, buck dance for the white man and all that stuff. Right. Uh, I'm starting to think that's kind of the same way with, uh, you know, Mr. P. Diddy, except for he didn't have to take the 50 mil because he was already doing dirty from the get go all the way back in 1990. So he, he's been doing that for decades and. I'm telling y'all, it's the last chance to click the link. It's the last chance. I'm I'm about to go away for a couple hours. I'm about to go away. Last chance. Click the link. Call in. <laughs> the, the weird thing about it, you know, hey. the white people, they got Jeffrey Ernestine, and now we got P. Diddy. That's wasn't that, point. The wasn't that on that list anyway? Yeah, he was. He was on that yeah. list. Mm -hmm. But where's the where's the we other got white somebody people? new here, uh, Mr. R. Mr. R, where are you calling in from? <laughs> Mr. R going once. Mr. Okay, R is on I'm mute. Unmute yourself. All right. Mr. R, see you next time. 
All right, see y'all in a couple hours. Be good. All right, good day. Hey, man. Hey, New Era. I just want to tell you that, P don't stop. Hey, New Era. What up, Big Hey, you know what? Hey, hey, Big Dog, you know what? All Hey, Pop was right about all them goofies, though, back in the day, bro. He was right, bro. Pop was right about all them goofies. Man, Puffy been on that goofy time, bro, like way before the Shug Knight got on his ass. Yep. He was doing, he was running and ducking and all that because he, it, 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 and, and, and they got in that fight in Atlanta, right? And mm-hmm. one of them um, bodyguards said, man, you know, some uh, somebody, one of them dudes had filed the tape with some derogatory shit on it, man, with, with, you know, Puffy that was involved in. So that was going yeah. back way back then. Uh-huh, he always thought some so, shit and thought somebody in front of the way. And he got tapes on other folks too. That's that, that's mm-hmm. the power. That's like that um shit. No, I still remember that shit like it was yesterday. Man. My motherfuckers shot and they gave the gun to um J uh J Lo or some shit. I think yeah. One of the yeah. motherfuckers shot and then they gave the gun to somebody and then they gave the gun to somebody and then nigga Sean was like, yo, y'all niggas some bitches. I'd go up for it. You know, it's always a real one in the yeah. group. Thinking they're gonna stand yeah. on business. They ain't so stand on shit for that nigga. Yeah. My thing is, is why to go out here and do all this crazy is that you know that may come back to haunt you and just think that, all right, I'm just going to blackmail everybody else. Especially thinking as a black man, you're going to blackmail other white people. Because they all learn from Takashi 69. Yeah, but it's not good. You can't do what they do. That young black learn from them. See, that's the problem. That young black learn from them. Right. But they don't give a fuck. You know, everything's been on the internet. So, you know, he put the shit on the internet. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, why am I... Why am I fit because I'm fishing? At least I'm telling you, you want fishing. What type of shit that is? No mm-hmm. honor among thieves, you know. Mm-hmm. That, that, that's the number one rule of all thieves, man. No honor among them. They they will rob each other. Yeah, no. They rob their own mm-hmm. mama. They could. Yeah, I think that nigga yeah. Chicago sounds like um young buck Uncle Records age or some shit. Eighteen or twenty one or some shit. That young ass motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, he eighteen. Rosie, you still there? Or he, he... Roz is bleaching. No, I'm, I'm, I'm fucking with you. I'm fucking with you. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> you Uncle Rickers? You said what? Ah, uh, you still here. I just check on the TV too. That nigga on the phone with some white man with his feet kicked in the air and shit. With the phone right <laughs> around his finger. <laughs> man, y'all gotta be serious. You tell all the dudes now fucking roast him and make fun of him. With no, um... What's that shit called? With... Um, okay, we throw the first stone first every time we roll through, so let's not throw the first stone. You know, all we do is talk shit about them with no receipts on them. They're the most goodiest motherfuckers on the earth. But Roger, man, while I'm, um, got shit on my mind, do you know, it do say in the Bible when you say America don't even be picking up people or some shit for somebody talking shit? You do know it says in the book about your tongue being the mightiest thing, and if you don't hold it, they can't get you killed. Um, that's the statement I wanted to make. And a uh, question I wanted to ask you, what's the percentage of gang, black gang members in um, UK over there where you at? Since you know that we got 40%. Yeah. And that's crazy because I didn't know um, it was 40% over here. So can you tell me the percentage for the UK? Right, Crown? Most of the gangs in the UK are black. Yeah. Most of the gangs in the UK are black. Is he bull- yeah, I want another yeah, the background. Yo, someone in the bathtub or something? Right, That's he's bull in a goat. <laughs> he bleaches. Bull in a goat. <laughs> Leaking that lizard. <laughs> yeah. But you said you said most of the gang. Up too. Well, yeah, y'all be calm. I'm trying to I'm trying to be serious with Roger real quick. You said um all the you said all, <laughs> you said all the mostly all the black games in UK is is black, right? Yep. All right, so what's the percentage? I'm getting it now. No All right, let me know when you get He said he's getting it now. Oh, okay. 89%. 89%. Wow, you talking down yeah. on us? That's blacks. Yeah. In the UK, right? Yes, 89% of gangs in America. And we're 40%, in and you're speaking on us? Mm. 13% of the population? So seventy eight percent of Black African Caribbean, and the rest of them are other Blacks. See, he wish he didn't even look it up at this point. Yeah, I know that's <laughs> I, 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 I was new. I was new. I was new. I was new. I was This I was be saying. I was new. I'm not. I'm not trying to defend. I'm saying. I'm saying it's a bad thing. I need to be. It needs to be solved. 
All right, so my point that. still stands, bro. If you got love for, if you don't look up all the information for, on y'all and other motherfuckers, you got love for them. Why the fuck you look up some bullshit statistics on us? Because everybody in America mostly know that they lie on the statistics, the fuzz, the numbers. And you still be talking shit about us, bro. That's not like, um, your new name about to be um, Mel Cat, bro, because you starting to sound like that drunk bitch that used to come on here. Y'all niggas kill each other just because somebody stepped on y'all shoes. Yeah. Do you know how that's a cat? Yep. That's what he kept. That's But that shit don't even make sense. But I'm trying to be nice because you're 18 and shit. Because I remember when I was 18, I done did, I done did a whole bunch of dumb ass shit. Yeah, well, I wanted to make sense in the game because I was doing dumb ass shit by myself. You know what, I'm New Era? You know, What's you know what? Yeah. Um, you see, a lot of us people in the UK, um, they'll look at America and they'll think um, crime is, there's a perception that crime is worse in America because you have guns and in the UK, um, it's illegal to carry firearms. That's that's the uh, perception. That's the reason why they think uh, the issue I there is a lot worse. Before you go on, though, but don't y'all still got guns over there and still be killing niggas with guns? Well, no, but, you are, that's they got guns. Like, they each other. No, 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 they got guns. They be sneaking guns over there. Don't let, don't oh, let them niggas lie to you. I know for no, a no, fact some niggas be sneaking guns over there. Yes, they that's correct. So, so, you know, like, on um, gangsters. Uh, you know, like, right, like, so, that's all I wanted to confirm. Yeah, they got yeah, guns so, over there, too. I mean, there are guns um, uh, coming into the country, and there are gangs that have guns, but usually, I mean, it's rare to find guns in the UK. You'd have to sneak it really un under the radar, you know? But it's not that easy. Even the police officers don't carry guns in the UK as they're walking the streets. Do you know that? Mm -hmm. yeah. I just want. I just want to. Uh, I'm gonna hey, tell Idris, you my perception. Idris, Idris. I'm gonna give you a random, per a random person from perception um, that don't be thinking. But go ahead, continue, Izzy. And then whoever we're talking to, go ahead after Izzy done talking. Hey, yeah, yeah, that's, so, yeah. Hey, Idris, yeah. hey, do 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 you guys use more knives out there than or, or guns? For, uh, for I mean, it's knives. It's more. It's more to do with knives. Um, uh, cautious. Yeah, yeah, but I'm just. I don't know that they got guns over there too. Like yeah, I, I mean, I knew one. I knew one gangster who uh, used to carry a gun in in my neighborhood, but that was about it. Now he used to conceal it. I never used to see it, but people word was that yes, this man definitely has a gun and he's carrying, and he just enforces his order, like you know, shooting people in the like the foot. Only the top UK gangsters have guns. It's not obvious. That's correct. Only the top. I know, but um, finish your thought on why um you yeah believe that um America is worse than the UK on the game side. Uh, me. Yeah. How you how you explain it for um? I want to. No, basically, because, yeah. because yeah. the reason the the reason the the perception is there. I mean, we, we you don't know about the reality unless you've actually lived there. But the perception is there because guns are like. Um, legal in America. They're a Second Amendment right in America. Whereas if you're caught carrying a gun here, it's a prison sentence. You're not even allowed to be carrying, period, in the UK. And that's why y'all got them undergrounds over there. I, I know about the UK because I was over there. Y'all have a lot of underground stuff, like the underground clubs, underground gangster fights, underground, uh, underground uh, was it those, uh, what do you call the uh, cock fights, like how the Mexicans be doing? Y'all literally be going over there, and that's where y'all be pulling out your guns in the underground. So I, I definitely know y'all got them over there, and it is illegal over there because you can get a death penalty for actually carrying one. It, no, we, get, uh, we get arrested too if we don't got no um license to carry a gun, and most black hey, people don't depending choose on the state. Yeah. Not no more. In, yeah, hey, who, who in, you can carry without a yeah. license? In, in, yep. In the UK, not, in, not, in, not, in, not in, in Cali. In, in, the UK, in the UK, you can't get a license. It, there's just no guns, period. That's the that's always been the tradition in the UK. I got you. Okay. So, wait, all right, hold on, y'all. I got this. Um, so you see how y'all say the perception is worse for y'all because we allow that's our first amendment, right? So, Second American, amendment. yeah, yeah, Second so amendment. American. Looking over there, yeah, y'all reverse because y'all still got guns and y'all niggas ain't even supposed to have guns, bro. So how can y'all say we reverse and y'all niggas still got the guns and y'all niggas ain't supposed to have the guns? What do y'all but, but, but the point is with with like like Rosaman said, 
it's only top gangsters that usually have them. I mean, th most most gangsters on the street can't carry guns. Most people in, in the UK can't carry guns, period. I mean, I've never seen anyone carry a gun except um, some of the specialist police units known as SO19. They can carry guns, but even police, I rarely see guns in the UK. But in America, it's a Second Amendment right where you have the constitutional right to bear arms in the USA. So right. there's a perception. I, mean, I don't know the reality. At the end of the day, I don't know the reality of the United States of America. But the perception is when you listen to the NWA record and you and you know, you're the, oh, you know about the police? Think, yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. When hey, you do you know why they made that song? Though? Huh? Like, no, yeah. to y'all, I think it's a gangster song. But if y'all know the history yeah. behind it. That's when the riots and all that shit was going on when the police was fucking us up. So we made a song that said, fuck the police, bro. Y'all want to keep on yeah, killing yeah. us? So yeah, fuck the police. Y'all gonna hear about it. it. We use, we hey, use our music. Right Hold on. I want Izzy to hear me. We use our music to put our message out. And then that's when the world was like, oh, the police is actually fucking up niggas? The police is actually taking young girls and killing young girls and doing strange things, rest in peace to them, and claiming this shit on other innocent black people? That was the 80s and 90s music. Yeah, so yeah. fuck the police was our anthem. Hey, yeah, so yeah. Was, yeah. Was, was talking about that. Understand, <laughs> is, 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 you gotta understand is that, and you see, they, you, the rides go all the way back. They have rides all across the United States in different Detroit, New York, down south. And it, but it, they had rides in the 60s and watch. And way back before the 62. Yeah, I, way back. I it's think always been rides. I think Brothers. it's talking about something else no what what it is is like i'm not saying that the americans are worse by any means but it's just i'm telling you how the british actually perceive the united states so when they oh, look, I understand. Uh, well, when, I understand. when they when, yeah when they when they when they see a place like when they hear about inglewood and south central los angeles the south side of chicago when they hear about the bronx brooklyn and harlem when they hear about this they think, damn, how would I ever um, live in a place like that when they've got gunfights out there? That's that's the perception. Right. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Can we from a person that was born in Brooklyn? I'm from Besta. Hold on. Hey, hold on. As long as you're a cool guys. guy, as long as you're a cool guy, same way everywhere, bro. It's not like we just go fuck people up. If you cool, you cool. If you be acting like fucking Uncle Ruckus, somebody gonna check your ass. Right, and also, go, yeah. also, also, no, my apologies hey, for hold on, hold on, my hey, 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 just real quick. Oh, real you quick, quick. Quick. Hold on, we hold on, hold on, real quick. I, I yeah, think the same way you feel when you see the gun violence in America is the same way I feel when I see people throwing acid in other people's face in the UK. Yeah, yeah. that's some wild oh, ass shit. Yeah. Right, I rather yeah. be shot than yeah. somebody throw acid yeah. in my face. Yeah, I need you to explain that shit to me, Izzy and Uncle Ruckus. Uncle Ruckus, Jr. Yeah. I mean, it has happened um, a few times where a few times, um, yeah. Quite a lot of times. times, quite a lot of times, quite a lot of times. In fact, it, I mean that's a fair, a fair amount of times it has happened. Definitely, yeah. So you know, I mean, there are acid attacks in the UK. There's like knife attacks in the UK. Um, you know, we do have these issues and these problems. I'm not going to lie about it. We've got a lot of issues here in 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 the UK where you know teenagers just knife each other up over the most stupidest things. We we get that, but, and that's the point we were trying to get the uncle. That's the point we were trying to get the uncle Ruckers. Oh, because we're trying to get the uncle Ruckers. If we know shit is going on, just don't point this bad shit out of shit because we're gonna be focused on. Like nigga, we know everybody got some fucked up shit going on that we need to fix. But uncle Ruckers, do you understand this conversation that's going on, young man? Like, it's no need to. Hey, I know you're right. Um, Lord Snap, but um, can you just admit about the game violence? Like if you understand, you understand, bro. Don't be condescending and be going back and forth. If you want to learn something, learn something. But go ahead, they don't continue. understand the way that, that the police started a lot of the game violence. Okay, can, can, hey, can, he, can, he, can he, he he's still learning. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit more in the UK. A lot of train attacks. A lot of female uh, UK women up in the trains getting stabbed. Literally right there. They they have like videos all over TikTok, literally showing that stuff like just happening. Women just yeah, but the difference between and, and people just walk right up to her and start stabbing her like some kind of movie or something. Yeah, the yeah. difference between us and <laughs> other uh, <laughs> Go ahead, Izzy. I, I say after yeah. on you. 
yeah, basically that's that's very correct. I mean, we do have a lot of um, uh, uh, violence. Games or something like that. I can't remember what they have to call, but like. Yeah, let is it, um, let is it so he gets thrown out. Go ahead. Yes, yeah, so generally what you're saying is um, more or less correct. You have a yeah, lot hold on. of... Anybody who ain't talking, go on milk, because I'm hearing like a static or echo in the background of somebody. Yeah, so basically you, you do get a lot of um, uh, far, far too much of like acid attacks, knife attacks, and people being beaten up with coshes. You know, you get that quite often in the United Kingdom of Great Britain. But what it is, is like us in, in Britain, I'm, I mean... If I've caused any offense, you have my deepest apologies. That's not the intent here. I'm just telling you, this is how we, this is how the people in the UK. Get that out your head. Head. We know you ain't mean no disrespect. That's it. I was using an example for Uncle Ruckus. So yeah. my apologies yeah. to you, my brother, for using you as an nope. example. Yeah, yeah, I don't so, really think that we got you know, the intention to. I'll just use so, you as an example for Uncle Ruckus. Right. So, therefore, can I ask you a question? If I tomorrow go to the United States of America and I come down to say, south central los angeles or inglewood or if i go to like the south side of chicago i, I mean i have nothing to wor really worry about is that correct yeah, as long as you're doing <laughs> <that>. <laughs> don't tell him that no 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 i'm gonna explain it real life real life yeah i'm gonna tell him here's, real life here's a serious life. answer yeah, yeah i know i'm about to yeah don't make it seem like as soon as you any money yeah, hey, don't don't make a team if he go to South Central. He about to, that's just not true, bro. It's just like area, bro. I'm not about to go to Africa thinking everything is all good, right. wearing big ass chains and yeah. shit. Right. Be, you know yeah, you were right. you were raised to be observant and be aware, and you be a man and shit. You yeah. feel me? Cool. Don't be, be looking at me, if you know there be, be some gangster ass be, niggas be, and shit be, that be, be looking, looking at you and shit, looking like they're trying to fuck you up. Don't go in that Meek Mill was Africa wearing diamond chains. I'm not going to be in California and I'm going to go to Atlanta and I'm, and I'm iced out and, and, and go anywhere I want to go. No, no, I just can't go. I, I'm going to be peeping the scene and paying attention to what's going on in another what's climate, it? in another area. Well, well that's that's how you got to be. in all red, you know, a blood neighborhood. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Exactly. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, they, 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 they don't trip on colors like that no more. They don't trip because you got Crips wear oh. blue and you got Bloods wear red. It's not a color thing. It's a different type of thing now. Crips supposed it, to wear blue. About, <laughs> yeah, 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 I know, no, but it used to be. Hey, look, hey, look, I know he's saying vice versa, vice versa. I know he's talking yeah, about. Yeah, no, no, they they banging on what side? You got the trays in the neighborhoods now. Oh, I got you. You know what I'm saying? You got trays in neighborhoods, and then you know you got Eaglewood, you got Bloods and Crips. That, yeah, that, like that, the, the power rules and, and all them. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, uh -uh. yeah. It, ain't, it ain't more color banging no more like that. It's more your, your, your sex. Hold on, Snap trying to say something. Smiles want to say something. So I want to say something to Idris or ask a question rather um, in regards no, to his question, if he came to Los Angeles, would he have something to worry about? I found that kind of entertaining, but at the same time, it's a real question. But... It just if you went to Not any really. country other than the United States, your mindset should always be, you know, have your head on a swivel because you're not walking into your homeland at this yeah. point and you don't know where you are. It should be no different with the United States. Just unfortunately, because the media has made the United States look Hello. like a big ball of just gangsters and a shit show, you know, we're no different yeah. than any other country that you've not been to. Once you get there. Yeah. Keep your head on a swizzle. Swizzle. Yeah. Basically, it's like that's going to happen. Because yeah. at the end of the day, because when I look at like hey, hey, television, hey, Andrews, hey, Andrews, can, hey, Andrews, can I go to the UK and don't have to worry about nothing? Exactly. Right. Well, basically, it depends you know, where you go. Obviously, you have to, you have to go. You have to look around and see what's happening because, in because I know what areas to travel to and what areas to avoid. Same thing. I don't. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You in the UK or in the United States? No, I'm talking no. about UK. Can I go London. Exactly. UK. Exactly. No areas in the UK. That's why I said in any other country that you've not been to, that should be the same mindset for the United well, States well, as well. well can, can I say something? In the UK, <laughs> if you just if you just avoid black areas, you'll be safe. Wow! <laughs> you know, that's that's who said that? Of course, guys. Let me stop. Like, that's, that's I got, I got a real simple point, Izzy. Look, you know how you just said Brooklyn was dangerous, right? 
You're fucking right. It's your lens. And every time I go back home, I got my fucking hand on the civil and I only fuck with my family and the niggas I grew up with. I don't trust no new niggas when I go back home. Niggas might stab me. Right. No, who just made that comment Real though, dude? Who just Rise made that? Uh, uh, okay, okay. Wh- no, which comment? Right. The about oh. Rise man, make that comment again that you just said. I Real said quick. in the UK, you'll be safe if you stay away from black people. <laughs> no, I, I, I disagree with that. Hey, Rise man, Rise man, Rise man. Hey, Rise man. Can I go to the UK? Can I go to the UK? Can I go to the UK in a in a predominantly white area where that you you know for sure that they don't they don't give a damn about blacks. Can I go there freely and and and, and uh you know walk around and go buy stuff from the store? Get me on to that. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. Can, can I go inside? Yes, you can. Can I go inside? No, no, no. Go ahead, Just stop lying, yeah. man. So basically, so basically, if you go to a place like Chingford Mount in uh, the deep east end of London. Right, you shouldn't go there as a black person. It's it's a national, it's a racist area, and you'll probably be killed or something. Don't ever go to that wow. area. Right? right, you know if you go to a place, like, can I can I just say, if you go to a no, place I like game, I, hear you, I ain't say, you yeah. say what area it was. I'm trying to be safe, my right. time. Right, so basically, if you go to Brixton or if you go to Stockwell, oh, these are predominantly black areas. They're beautiful areas. You can go down there. It's please, not a problem please, at all. Please stop. Please stop. Please yeah, you're stop. talking about Christian um, Yahoo. If you go hack me. Yeah, good. Good. Yeah. And that's crazy, isn't it? Because I would have grew up with what some people would have considered a hood back in the day and shit. And how you feel like not safe when I go to UK and shit, I feel comfortable because I know how people, they think it's just, I'm like, oh, okay, I know how to, how to all work. Because yeah, I know how to be safe. Can I, I want to go to the hood. Can I know what Go ahead. I, I lived in a I lived in a most a majority white area. I moved from a oh, majority a black area. Listen, I'm a, I moved from majority black area to majority white area. Majority black area. Huh. Is that what Go, ahead. Go ahead. I moved from majority black area to majority black. white area. He came he he for the white he, folks he, in the UK. Hey, let him go. He Go ahead. Doing that. That. He stays doing that. Hey, let, let him go. The thing finish, yo. There was practice. There was much less crime. There was no robberies. There was no. There was no murders. There was none of that. They don't do that okay. there. They didn't. They okay, don't do um, gang murders. There was no gang murders. After, after Rosamond, I got. Okay. I got that in the same. No, no, yeah, I got this. Go ahead, Rosamond. Continue. There, there was no gang murders there because in, in, even if there was like obviously there's gangs everywhere you go. Obviously these white okay. gangs, they weren't. They're not. They're not made of anything. They were basically pussies. If you get know what I'm saying. So when when they were going there, even even if they did try and stab someone, it would be a slash. It wouldn't all be right, a look, thing like they're trying to kill. Look, them, all right, you can stop real quick, um, Rosamond. I don't want to cut you off. But hey, no offense. You talking that shit about white kings and shit? Where the fuck y'all niggas think y'all getting y'all acid from? The acid bomb motherfuckers. That's and my girl. Mm. But, um, that's, 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 that's not what that's I wanted to say. Question. Um, you talking about there's no white kings in the server? How I just said I grew up, mm. which I would have called a hood. When I moved out the hood and shit, I moved to a fucking server. And guess what? That shit was way more crime, and they was way more sneaky. That just means you was lame and yeah. you was around it. Oh, they were doing that shit right in front of you. You ain't noticed shit. Because I done seen so much yeah. wild ass shit in the servers, bro. You talk about They tell way more drugs in the servers than they do in the hood, bro. Yeah, and they get away. Hey, 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 be quiet. Because I grew up in the servers. And motherfucking, the only reason why they get away with it because police choose to ride around in the hood way more than they do in the motherfucking suburbs. I'm talking about murders. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about murders. You act like every yeah. murder is 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 reported or solved. Yeah. And Listen. then you want to know where most of the unsolved murders come from? From a motherfucking killing a chick or killing a motherfucking dude in the street in the suburbs and make his dad disappear. Listen. Because if a nigga disappear in the hood, somebody gonna know about it. Hey, y'all niggas see that nigga Tyrone? Yeah. I've what happened to the friends that died in Louisville, and that uh, we never seen it on the news. We just knew Likewise. about it just through the, just through the community. Mm-hmm. So, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, and I thought we always gotta hear some fucked up shit. Hey, when people stop missing, hey, the police ain't doing nothing about. It. Hey, all right, we got. Yeah, some, got... you hear black people come up hung and missing from uh, missing out in the woods and all types of shit that don't even. Yeah, after a few times too. That's when we got yeah, our hands on. Yeah. Oh, we got a crazy one out here. All right, who don't belong in our shit? Yep, yeah, but go ahead, continue. Yourself, so, we go right to yeah, the top. You don't know. Hey, look, it's so many unsolved murders that that people uh, mm-hmm. that people black families are looking for their relatives, and 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 the police covering this shit up, and the uh, mm-hmm. the, the white community covering this shit up, 
and, mm. and, and even the mayor of that city covering that shit up and, and don't nobody don't do nothing i see i see mm. this on the crime channel on id identification channel all the time black that's folks just disappear all the time i want to know why oh Man. something that happen right because some of the motherfuckers that do the dirt be connected to the police and shit and when they yeah. be connected like, hey don't do this again and shit. i'm gonna i'm gonna help you this one time i'm gonna put my career on the line yeah. for you don't let this shit happen no more Either they connect to the police, the happen. lawyer, the judge. They, they, it's like some rich white kid who's like dad is a lawyer or a judge or he knows the judge and they be out there golfing and stuff. It, it, like I said, yep. most of mm. the crimes come from these rich kids, man. Yeah. It, ain't, it ain't the hood kids. It's the rich ones. Really yeah. Not. yeah, I done killed somebody um, driving home, daddy. Hey, right, you about to go to Canada. We about to make an alibi. I'm about to call the family lawyer type shit. You know how many times that shit happened? Bro? And got off, did all types of things. You know what I'm saying? That's just. And, and then years later, we find an identified body that nobody can identify. All on the take. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Judge, DA on the take. Yep. Hey, look, you want to know something crazy about um American law system? Since you, since um Uncle Ruckus Jr. probably don't know, and I know you love to learn knowledge. Do you think the lawyers in America, like, say, if uh, me and Cuz got in trouble, right? Oh, I did some fucked up shit to Cuz, right? And mm-hmm. what's that shit called? I have, I'll be the defendant, right? If I'm on the opposite right, and that'd be the plaintiff, mm-hmm. Cuz be the plaintiff, right? Now, the lawyer on his side is supposed to be on his side, and the lawyer, they say mm-hmm. it's supposed to be on my side. Do you know the lawyers really don't give a fuck about me or Cuz and shit? They just give a fuck about yeah, women and kids. And especially yeah. for me and shit, the lawyers, and that's in the rule, but the number one thing, how they say, Lawyer, pri- um, lawyer, client privileges or whatever the fuck. The number one thing is um some shit about going to the law, or some shit the government or whatever the the system going around. Not the that we come second. Mm-hmm. Well, you gotta right. understand something. A lot of times, of person. it's called the three fifths law. Yeah, a lot of times when we get arrested, wow. we don't we're not represented by our own people. We don't even see our own people. Even when we go to stand nope. trial, it'll be majority white people. You know what I'm saying? So you try to put yourself in our shoes. All right. And well, a lot of times we can get arrested and we don't even know what we've even been charged for because we didn't do anything. What? Yo, Roger, man, you like to look up videos of this shit. You, you look up all the game videos. Look up at how many times black people done got up. I know why it's a video of a black man sitting on the porch chilling. You know, we in the cell. Hey, we know we got some racist ass cops out here. This racist ass cop pulled up man. on the. Um, oh, wait, go ahead, cuz. You to go. Um, no, nah, I think we didn't let Idris cook oh, Raza Man because right, I think he was trying to get at him about lying about the black neighborhoods in the UK. So yeah, I, I know that. Oh. I kept on trying to get Idris to get in. Oh, I kept on trying to get Idris to go. Yeah. Everybody kept on yeah. interrupting. Everybody go on mute for a second. Let Idris go ahead and get Raza Man. Mm, I said I said earlier. Go ahead, everybody. Go ahead, Idris. Well, well previously, um, in Brixton. And in Stockwell, these were predominantly um, Caribbean. The, the Caribbean community probably predominantly lived in those two areas. They used to be pretty bad. Then there's been a lot of renovations. And so basically, those areas are relatively safe. Hackney, a lot of um, uh, middle class whites have moved into the area of Hackney. So, so that area is predominantly safe as well. So there's also a lot of um, gangsters in the East End of London. That are also um, stabbing each other up, beating each other down. So, you know, and 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 within the Bangladeshi community in the East End of London, there's also a lot of crime amongst them. Mm-hmm. So there's crime in all communities. Yes, in the black community, it's slightly more because they have um, a higher le- a higher rate of poverty. But generally speaking, it's just across all communities. You know, I wouldn't say, oh, it's just confined predominantly to the uh, Afro Caribbean community. And then after that, everyone else just seems to be okay. I wouldn't agree with that analysis at all, in the least in the UK, based upon my experience. Hey, Idris, can I ask you a question? Do they do they report the crimes uh, more of the uh, black communities than they do the white ones in the UK? Um, basically, uh, the police, the, the the black community doesn't really trust the police as much as say the uh, white community for obvious reasons so basically the blacks just um, uh, tend to you know deal with with they take the law into their own hands and deal with matters and take matters into their own hands that's why they tend to uh, observe so just listen to what he just said real quick 
We all are yeah. experiencing the same type of discrimination and racism against white supremacy. Why are you guys so much against us? Not you directly, Idris. I'm just saying, just just speaking in general. It makes Uncle no Ruckus. sense. We go through the same. We're talking to you, shit. Uncle Ruckus. Go ahead, Rosaman. We try to change your mind for the better. Wait, can you say again, please? Oh my, this Negro. Let me, let me just say, can I just come in here? Can I come in here? Go ahead. It's it's to do with the issue of Hold on, you know, Andy, um, I think Desmond wanted to say something. No, Desmond, okay, here we go. No, 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 uh, no let, him go you... let him go first. All right, go, go ahead, Andy. Go ahead, Andy. You need to increase education and awareness. So, me previously, I used to have a lot of um, negative conceptions about the Black American community because of what I was taught about on the mass media. But, you know, the more I learn about what's happening, the more I actually interact with um, uh, black, the few black Americans that live in the UK, they teach me everything. And as a result of that, my perceptions, my understanding change. And when they tell me, for example, about the uh, history of Black Wall Street at the height of um, Jim Crow, I begin to think, wow, what an amazing and an outstanding community. So it's about education. You've got to, you know, enlighten those that just do not know. Ignorance is the problem here and the perceptions are just all wrong. Okay. Like right now, for example, you know, me, my perception about South Central Los Angeles was one of, oh, my goodness, this area is so dangerous. But you guys have just set me straight and said, look, it's just like any other area in the world. You've got to know your way around. And once you do, you'll know what part of town to uh, visit and what part of town to stay away from. So I'm like, oh, thank you very much for that. Not just that, it ain't yeah. just Inglewood and it's not just south side of Chicago. You have Nashville, you got Louisville, you got Atlanta, you got Florida, you got, you got Alabama. You got all, yeah, you got you can name it. We got 50 states here, man. It ain't just those yeah, two, it, it ain't just what you see in the news. West Go Tampa, Brandon, Riverview. You gotta watch yourself. You gotta watch yourself in those states. In those, in those states that's predominantly white. Uh, 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 right in Seattle and all that stuff, Seattle, uh, uh North Dakota, and all those oh, states like that. They have their own, they have their own, yep, they got laughing. I, I heard know, they got some racist ass white people out in Canada, too. No, you're right. Go ahead, cuz man. Um, I had, yeah, I, it ran off the top of my head. I can't remember where uh, Aubrey got shot in the chest with a shotgun when he Joe, was in that was neighborhood. That was Georgia. That was we're running through a okay. suburb yes okay wow so um that's why i say certain crimes certain murders and roger man up here talk about it's no crime in in suburbs rest in peace i'm glad you made that point rest in peace um gentlemen right. yeah rest in peace man yeah what's yeah. up all berry yeah basically um, i remember watching the film mississippi burning starring gene hackman and william defoe and i was Good thinking movie. my goodness I am never going to go to a state like Mississippi ever. Because I was just thinking about Rosewood. I was terrified. I was hey, thinking, it, how did you live there? Hey, it, just check it out, though. When I saw that movie, I said the same thing myself. I think hey, Rosewood man. scared me. That movie, man. Yeah. Rosewood was good to me. Man. And coming up in, the, in New York, hearing all that range. shit about slavery shit, we was like, ooh, I'm glad I'm in New York, nigga. Them niggas in the top got that shit fucked up. How my grandma lived through that shit? Why there, there, you go, there you go, new. There you go, new. There you go, new. Rosewood. That's the thing, Charlie. Larry, Larry Fishburne. Hold on, y'all. One at a time. One at a time. Larry Fishburne stars in Rosewood, isn't it? No. No, no, no. no, no. A, that's Ving Rang. Ving Rang. Yeah, Ving Rang. Ving Rang. Ving Rang. Right. Okay, yeah. And uh, yo, yo, it was a Black Wall Street film, isn't it? So, yeah, I remember watching that film as well. Um, Can I say uh, something real it? quick? Um, You do know, uh, what was it, uh, Arkansas, uh, the state? They just got, uh, what was it? I think it was uh, 2000, 2002, something like that. They just got rid of, uh, was it lynching? Because you could literally get lynched there legally. <laughs> they just Damn. got rid of that law, and they just caught up to what Abraham Lincoln was uh, doing with the freedom of slavery because they were still having slaves in that state up to 2002. So that, yeah. that, Which state is that? Uh, Arkansas. So I remember I remember. I thought they, I thought they vindicated that. 
it, and it, the state my mom was in was Macon, Georgia. Yeah, uh, Dreamland and Pat. Shout out to Big Henry. They just got rid of it. So that was wow. just recently. They've been doing it the Man. whole time. Hey, fuck that. We still got Black Town. Oh, what that shit called? Sundown Towns yeah. or shit? Yeah, yeah, sun, yeah, that's yeah we do. Sundown yeah. Town, yep. Yeah, I mean, because they, they um, that down, you can walk in there and you would actually see people hanging straight off the power lines being lynched. Black yep. people. Damn. And we still got things that won't motherfucking cash a check and call the police on us because the money supposed to be too big and shit. It'd be two thousand dollars. They're like, "Hey, will you get the check from for my job?" Nah, it's a fake check. The police come and still arrest your ass most of the time. Hey, just calm down, man. Hey, Idris, let me ask you a question, Idris. Do you yeah. believe that the white folk? Do you believe the white folks in America is more degenerate than than black folks in America, and they just don't get publicized uh, much as we do? Do you believe that? Because I believe. All the stuff you just heard right now, like all the stuff you just heard, like they get they you, they can kill a black man with immunity and, 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 and don't Look get the prosecuted for it like that. They can do it in UK. Right That's literally one example. Seventeen year old walked over and busted three dudes up in the head. White and now guys, by the way. Hero. White George guys. Zipperman murdered murdered the uh, the black dude. Take my And the jury and the jury let him out and the jury let him go. You right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Hey, you, know, you know something crazy about that shit? You go to, to a white person, I hear, they go, "Why y'all even mad? It was white people they shot. It wasn't even no white black you, people that he shot." White you, right? Does it fucking matter? Yeah. Well, basically, That's how deep white supremacy is. Um, in, in, the yeah. in, the man, in the past. In the past. In the past. Look, it's just the man who's called state lines. Let Izzy talk his shit. Go ahead, Izzy. Yeah. So in the past, my perception was once again. Black Americans are just, you know, not a good bunch of people. But then now, I mean, with the likes of Professor Black Truth um, giving me about the, the talking about the crime, tr the crime report for a long time, um, a lot of um, Black Americans exposing a lot of the shenanigans and a lot of the going ons in the in the white areas of uh, America, I began to um, uh, alter my perception. So yeah, now I know that there's a lot of craziness. Um, going on, unfortunately, within the white community, and generally, the black community is just like any other community. You've got your good, you got the good, the bad, the ugly. So, you know, the, the perceptions change once you start getting educated. Once those who are in the know, those who are on the ground, once they start telling you about what's happening, then you know, ultimately, your the way you perceive people uh, begins to improve. And so, you know, once you, once you have the you, Chris, you know, it's, it's, it's just real quick. So, yeah. what you're saying is, if you you take the good, you take the bad, you wrap them up, and there you have the facts of life. No, what I'm saying is, like, my perception of white people has altered extensively to the point where now I know that there's a lot of you know craziness going on in, in that community, a lot of really sick things going on, and you know, I know that. Among the black community, they're just like any other normal, other uh, like any other community, isn't it? No, they're no. Hold on, hold on, Israel. They're not like any other normal community. They are very sick, disgusting community. You have the, the yeah. cool people, but it's it, they're a very jealous, undermining, sick, dominating community. You know what I'm saying? They are. They, they don't. Gi they don't even. They don't give us our just dues. But they don't. Not only do they not give us our just dues, they don't give any other race their just dues. After he done talking, yeah, to you go. No, no, as, as a I don't it's because I want to say something. Um, and with everything we done said so far, Izzy, check this part out. You have never heard of a white man jogging through a black neighborhood and got shot in the chest with a shotgun, stabbed, or nothing like that. Like and Chad tried to make it seem the other day, right? When a white man come in the hood, uh, he gonna get fucked up. God damn, it's a whole lot of mixed race in the hood. So why the Asian people don't get fucked up when they come and shit? We got a whole bunch of Chinese restaurants in the hood. We got a whole bunch of all the immigrants are in the hood. Yeah. yeah. Hey, oh, 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 right, can I say something what? real quick? Yeah, go ahead. And then Asia, you to go ahead after everybody done talking. So I, I've lived in in Cleveland. I'm, I was I was born in Cleveland. I lived in Atlanta. I lived in Tampa. I lived in Chicago. Um, I've li I live in L.A. now. I've, I've lived West all Tampa. over. And I will say that. That the most, from my experience, besides Tennessee and Mississippi, Detroit, Chicago, and Cleveland are extraordinarily unsafe. To say that L.A. or Inglewood or Watts or any black neighborhoods in Los Angeles are dangerous 
in my opinion, is absurd. You know, it's I mean, I think that's that, that, that's a stereotype created by the media that it, black neighborhoods, no matter what neighborhoods you're in, is dangerous. I mean, there, there's mm-hmm. very affluent neighborhoods in some of these cities like you have Southfield, Michigan. You know, you got Shaker Heights, Ohio, you know, neighborhoods where black people live that are that are lavish. You know what I'm saying? You know, Prince George, you know, Prince County, what is it? Whatever in Maryland or whatever. You know, you got all these places where black people live that are extraordinarily nice, but the white media wants people like Idris and this clown ass monkey over there to believe that if it's black, <laughs> it's going to be something negative. And it's hey, not. You just, it's you not just gotta fit that. Like, they just not all immigrants, bro. It's not just them. Two. They want anybody yeah. who ain't from America to believe that shit. Yeah, right. They want Americans to right. believe that shit. Right, right. It's all it's all programming. It's all just programming from the media. And you you and just like what Idris was just saying, he was saying that he was programmed by the media until he listened to uh, Professor Black Truth, and then mm-hmm. he got that information. So it's like a lot of us have been programmed, and then we had to get that knowledge to become woke that what yeah. we are. And, and with Rizzo Man, I up. believe that he What's cannot. I, I believe that Rizzo Man is or Uncle Ruckus is. I, I believe that he's woke. Uncle he Ruckus Junior. No, 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 being woke is a disease. Being woke is a disease. What a disease? Yes. So no one. Why would you, why would you say something? Why would you say? Yeah, hold on, wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Let, let Izzy get a one on one. Yeah, yeah Izzy to understand better. Izzy, did you, unmute yourself. Everybody go on mute and let Izzy and Razor Man talk. You just heard what he said, right, Izzy? No, no, no. Hold on, hold on. Why? No, no, no. Real quick. Why is he saying that it's a disease? Why is woke a disease? Because being woke is just the whole garbage that comes with it. You know, what, what, what is being woke? Well, hey, I'm 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 yeah, old, yeah. but yeah, I'm old, but can you explain what being woke is? Being woke means you're ultra sensitive and you like to bitch about everything. That's what it means. Dude, you know how easily no, it that's what it means. As he's being it's ultra sensitive. There you video. go. Be, be, uh, no, listen, listen. Hey, people are just being woke. Who dropped? People, people who be woke. Let me see. Let me see some. People are woke. They defend LGBTQ. They defend transgenders. They do all that nonsense. That's what work is. Raza, be, look. No, nah, being woke don't have nothing to do with it. Hold on, no, let me no, get no, him. No, no, no. Let me Rainbow, get him. Go, go, go get him, cuz. I got I to gotta do snap. I got to do snap. Go ahead. Okay. Raza, you're saying a lot of things, and you're not actually listening to yourself because you're being soft and you're being bitch made. Now, some shit that you just said, right. you're accusing other people of being that when you were being that because you're not listening. We're giving you some education here, and you're not taking it. And let me tell you something else. So I'm a, I want to take a couple of minutes, y'all. Just to let him know. Go, go yeah. ahead, because I don't even subscribe to the word woke. That's why I said that dumb shit. Yeah, yeah, that, that's some made up shit. But uh, he talking about gangs here, gangs there. Black gangs are more dangerous. Let me tell you about the biggest gang in the fucking world, really, and how dangerous they really are. And they have a badge and a gun and the right to kill any fucking body because they fear for their life. They fear for their life and they mm. always say he was reaching in his waist. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on, because I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah. Tell them how they hey, do the military wait, man, me... the motherfucker who serve for their own country. Tell oh, them yeah. how they treat you, how you black too. Yeah, yeah, when yeah. The police... and, wow. and they don't care nothing about will... that's, the, that's the biggest game in the world. Because. And then they got a whole union that protect them also. Mm. They'll go to court if they if they even get to that point, because most of the time they just throw that shit out and say the person was um doing wrong. qualified immunity. Yeah, qualified immunity. Hey. All that shit. That is a game. That's what a game is. So when you keep bringing up that stuff, you need to kind of like uh throw that shit out the window and talk about the real game that's out here killing people. Legal. We're in the black and blue. In well, the, well, well, the, the main yeah. thing is, Uncle he, uh, Uncle oh, Ruckus needs to get out his feelings for real. And yeah. Back to you, Snap. Yeah, real quick. Hey, hey, hey. Hold on, real quick. Hey, hey, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, 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 on. I had a, I had the snap. I had the snap. Yeah, yeah. He was at the snap. Okay, go ahead. But, um, before you go, hey, Roger Man, go read the back chat. Go ahead, um, because Desmond put the definition up for you for woke. But go ahead, cuz. Yeah, Roger Man, woke don't have anything to do with no LGBTQ. No, no, no women's rights and, and none of that, man. The, the definition of back chat for him, if I read the back chat. No, let him tell it. Dude, him well, it. Dude no, because he's starting to sound like an op. He sound like an op. Oh, okay. I want to get it. Let me, let me see, let me see like, something. Me, me personally, I associate being work with transgenders and gays. And no, nah, don't, def- no, nah, don't do that. Don't wait, wait, no, 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 no. I can't agree with him because he's a young, but wait, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. He is like, because y'all forget he's young. 
And every time I go watch the news or go walk by the news where mommy watching, that's all they be talking about woke and they do equivalent that shit with the um. Come on, they, dude, Earl, we just discussed about the media, the white media. We already discussed that. It's like yeah, I know, but he's not yeah, he's listening. Watch. And that's what yeah. I wanted to get. Yeah, right. That's why I want to get through with Snap. Snap can, 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 can I can I explain first? Can I explain why first? He doesn't want to listen. Let me explain why first. Go ahead, get him. I want you to let know me explain why first. Let me explain why first. It's wait, wait, no, you, you just be quiet and let, let him finish his statement. No, I'm, yeah, I'm no Snap is, no, see, that's the problem. He don't want to listen, just like with Because I'm trying to finish my statement first. You can there actually you have a You did finish your statement. That's what I'm saying. And now I'm, 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 I'm going to be church. I'm, 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 I'm not even talking to him at this point. I'm just trying to get through the Snap. Like, he just, he's not worth trying to educate because he's not trying to listen. All right, well, you're going to have your conversation. I'll be tether time. Hey, hey, my bro, he's on that tether time. That's what he's on, bro. He heard Basically. all the education New Era gave him, Snap gave him, all right. the rest of y'all gave him, right? He's still reluctant to, to, to say the hell with all that and still on, on the white supremacist talking mm -hmm. points. He, he on that 410 shit. Yeah, that's he the same shit like, I'm talking about earlier. You, you call you call the Nazi exactly. Kids, exactly. From, from why it's true. Andrew, you got something to say? Yeah, basically, the concept of woke um, initially, um, going back uh, a few years, was it's in the background, y'all. Desmond, Desmond yeah. did the handiwork for us and put it in the back chat. So if everyone ain't yeah. the motherfucking definition. Previously, it's been hijacked. Previously, it's been hijacked. Yeah, previously, mm -hmm. previously, what it was was just, it was all about, um, you know, sh shedding light onto anti-racism work. And it's been extended over to defending, like, um, you know, LGBTQ and gays and lesbians as well. Mm -hmm. However... But the point is, at the end of the day, I don't use the word woke because, you know, because it's been it's it's, it's turned into trash, unfortunately, exactly. thanks to the white premise. So therefore, yeah. I, I mean, you know, you just got to use direct words like racism and um, white supremacy. And, and real quick, not to cut you off, but who used the word woke? By the way? Nobody brought up woke. <laughs> young, 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 said it. I said, so I said it. Yeah, first of all, from what I've seen personally, I've never seen it associated with race. No, I've no, who said woke? Gays. Who said woke real quick? Who said I want to say brought it up? Because you you got triggered. You thought Rizzo, you heard woke. Rizzo and brought it up. Somebody else brought it up. But Rizzo, so, that's woke. what I'm so, saying. He thought that he heard woke and just went off the handles. That's why I said he's easily triggered, man. The the, the slightest thing will set him off. It's associated with gays, yeah, transgenders, other, feminism, all that nonsense. That's what associated with. But who brought it up? Because I that's what I thought was said. Obviously, that was the whole thing. Someone said the word. Nope, sure didn't. He just brought it up. Someone did get us mad. Because he did say the other day, he said, I just like to say, it's triggered. Yeah, he paid the street. Yeah. He thinks he's smarter than the room. He thinks he's smarter than the audience. Nah, I'm paying attention. Nobody mm -hmm. brought that up. Hey, well, look, we all know because he's trying to piss me off. I said I'm gonna be easy, but we all know Africans lying and shit. I'm starting to believe this nigga ain't 18 and shit. I'm starting to believe this nigga like 45. I agree. I agree. I agree on that. Right. Yeah, yeah, I agree on that. Here. Too, you caught Nora. that. Here. You caught I that. I said that, and I caught that too. I've been back because there. ain't no way you 18. I want to yeah, stop that. I don't believe that. Not yeah. one second. I didn't believe it the first yeah, time you brought it up. Because you want to know something? Because um, I didn't answer your question from the other day how we know so much shit about Africa. Because when I was 18 and I stopped wanting to um, learn some history and know the truth, guess what I read, motherfucker? The African Bible and shit and stopped learning about the Haitians and everybody else that had melanated to see how we was all connected. Hey, but y'all you know dumbass supposed to be 18. Like, <laughs> what he sound like? like he, 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 uh, uh, RZA. He sound like he got a problem with uh, with us fighting back against anti-blackness and uh, white supremacy, bro. Because every time y'all give him valid points and y'all tell him about discrimination with brothers in the military, y'all tell him about uh, uh, anti-racism uh, when you're dealing with the police officers and you dealing when you go when when you, when you walking through mm -hmm. white communities and and all that. Y'all didn't y'all yeah, don't forget the about the bank. All yeah. that, right. Mm -hmm. He go back to he has come up with some other four chin uh, 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 bozo shit. Right. Oh, 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 being woke is uh, uh, uh is, is nonsense, and, and this and, and, and woke being woke ain't got nothing to do with women's rights or or, or, or rainbow community or none of that. Right. They hijacked they, they they hijacked our struggle and what we was letting the public know what, what, what anti black racism is. 
Yeah, oh, that picky big... though, Fat Dude. I think I know why these niggas so mad mm. now and shit, y'all. Yeah. Uh, because they can't take it back mm. off the arm. Right, 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 <laughs> right. Yeah. right. Just to piggyback yep. that, he's not. He the, the thing with him is his little. I'm starting to see Uncle Ruckus for who he, the character he's trying to be, and the character he's trying to be that you're portraying eventually will get old if you don't evolve it. So the, this little shenanigans and these acts and these lies that you try to do eventually is gonna get old, and we just gonna kick you off the the platform for good. That's okay. Mm-hmm. Hey, yeah, by the way, guys. Um, real quick. Know? So in the in the in the background in the chat, Uncle Ruckus just said, "Snap said woke." He said he replayed the stream. What time did? What time was that at that point at that stream where Snap? Yeah, hey, I'll said be right back, y'all. Continue the conversation. Hey, uh, I didn't say woke. What the None heck? of us did. No, we didn't. Desmond I showed it here. And he replayed it I, back. Thought, I thought that Raza Man was the first man to talk about woke. That's what I actually thought. I heard, that's what I, I thought. That's what he did. That's what he yeah. exactly. No, you that's got it correct. Did. That was yeah. correct. He tried to say that he said somebody said it was woke, and he was implying that I said it. And I'm like, mm-hmm. hold on, I already I, I know the words that come out of my mouth, fool. Mm-hmm. So that, I never that never came up, and then he he just went on a tangent. Yeah, we're yeah. gonna have to go ahead and label um Uncle Ruckus Uh-oh. a little bit better and mm-hmm. um say that whenever education is being given and when it sounds you know true and it's it's getting rid of his talking points, that's when he tried to throw a monkey wrench in because there he you the go. One who said woke. So Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I, I got recorded right here. I got recorded right here. So go hold on two seconds. Yeah, hold on. Okay. okay, okay, okay. Let's see. Mm-hmm. Six. No, we're taking over because being woke is just easy. Like what? Programmed by the media until he listened to uh, Professor Black Truth, and then oh. he got that information. So it's like a lot of no, us go have back. been programmed, go back. and then we had to get that knowledge to become woke that we yeah. are. What was that word? Rizzo, man, I believe that he's not. I, I believe that. Rizzo. What was the, what was that word? He said woke. Woke to where we are. I didn't say. I, I, that's what. That's what. That's what. That's what you go out. Go ahead. He said it first lie. at the beginning. Yeah. He said when, when, when. or some shit. Yeah, I, I was, that's what I was trying to say. I'm like, did I say? It, go, could you play it from the beginning again, real quick? <clears throat> just was just saying. He was saying that he was programmed by the media until he listened to uh, Professor Black Truth. And then he got that information. So it's like a lot of us have been programmed, and then we had to get that knowledge to become woke that what yeah. we are. And with Reza, man, I... Yeah, right, yeah. right. Uh, yeah, you heard right. that. I used, you heard that. Yeah. He, he said it first, and I responded to that. But you used it. I never said the word woke. No, you use it. You, you flipped it. You flipped it. You show me. Okay, go go on right now. Show go back farther, bro. I heard the go first back, time you hit that report, but you, you said it first. I, 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 can, I know when you said it, bro. So I went, I went back yeah, and showed you people, and you said it first. Ain't that all. Who's the? You said it first. Is that simple? Go back. I don't know. Why, I don't know why I saw it so hard to admit. I don't know why I saw it so hard to admit. Did you say Snap said it first? In the first. I don't. I don't, I don't know. Who, I don't know whose name. His name is Zeus. But whoever said whoever said that said it. Is that simple? No, that was that was me. That was me talking. And I said yeah, I was woke to the fact. So when you was talking in mid conversation, I said I was woke to the fact. I didn't to say the I fact. Was... Yeah, but the, the word yeah. woke has been associated with anything like it. it just be, it's, but it's not what, what did you? Okay, what you hey, 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 ask with? him. Ask him what the word woke mean to him. <sighs> me personally, what, work, what, what, what does woke yeah, mean? He don't to like you? no gay people. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, hey, they always trying to hijack uh, us, right? With. It's been associated well, with gays, yeah, to transgenders, with, with the, feminism, with all of that. All that We're not a part of the rainbow community. We're not a part of women's rights and all that type of stuff, man. You know they what? They try to hijack it means to be aware, to be aware of something that's going on. To be aware of anti-black racism. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I, I never knew that. The only cause I see this is gay, lesbian, transgender. So why are you going to take a word that actually started as being aware of something that's going on that shouldn't be? And then try to just throw it on to some other stuff because you, you that's because that's what it is. That's what it is. That's what it is. That's what it is. People talk. Please people me. talk more about lesbians, gays, and whatnot more Please more than they talk about racism. Yeah, but that's not woke. You know what I'm that is? Saying. That's talking about the lesbian, gays, and the gay people. That's yeah, they call it woke. Don't put another word to right. throw all that in one bucket, Raza man. If you t- if you, t- t- if you type in YouTube, if, if you type in YouTube, say woke people get owned, you'll see lesbians, gays, transgenders, and feminists. You won't see any black people about racism. 
it's did the, you hear what been, I just said? The word has been hijacked. The word has been so, hijacked. Okay, okay, you just said you. It, you said the word has been hijacked. So what did the who who came up with the term woke, in your opinion? Black people. So you saying the FBA did? Yeah. Hmm. But I, I didn't know that until just now. Because obviously, on me personally, what I've seen so far, it's been associated to that sort of stuff. So that's what I thought it meant, if you know what I'm saying. I mean, you're low-key slick. I'll give you that. Yeah, he, he a flip-flopper he's very real slick. quick. Yeah, he's very slick. But I'm going to tell you this. Don't bring up that gang shit no more, because I don't explain to you the biggest gang in America and what they do. They get away with murder daily, not weekly, daily. So let me let me let me ask more questions. So, so say say there's like a black person, they attack a police officer. If the police officer kills them, is that are they right or are they wrong? Which one? You need to go in more detail than that. Oh, also, also the question: Are they right or are they wrong? Say they attack the black person, attack the police officer first. Are they right or are they wrong? Say if he. Look, we got a law here called the self-defense law. If someone attacks you, you can defend yourself with the same okay. amount of force that they attack you with. So okay. if the black man is attacking the police, they should have be under that same law. If the man go up there trying to punch him or pull him or whatever, and he pull a gun out and shoot and kill him, that's not the same force. So that's why I said you need to be more specific. No. So, yeah. so what's it called? In terms of in terms of police officers, lots of police officers die because they get killed by criminals or suspects. It not happens. a lot. That's how many people talk about Google. Class of civilians is rare. Dude, Sir, that's not yeah, how, many how, many is, how many police officers killed unarmed black men? Right. Do you know the statistics? You know, you know, that doesn't matter, dude. That doesn't matter. Listen, that doesn't matter. matter. Wait, 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 the hell it don't. Hey, man, this dude. Boy. See, Rosa, <laughs> man, that's why, that's why I'm down. That's what I'm saying, man. That's why I'm saying, man. That's why I'm saying, man. He's going to make me go off on him like New Era. Come in there. Rosa, man, he's going to make me go off on you. You're going to make me choke the bitch. Literally, this is can't hear what's going on right now. Let it just let it just go. Yeah. Rosa, man. All right. Yeah. If police officers are killed, hurt, or injured on the job, it's in the job description. Seriously. There's gonna be a certain level of of danger and certain level of okay. risk when going into the police. Likewise, if you go into the armed forces and you are in war, you know, there's a likelihood you'll get killed or injured. So at the end of the day, you know, that's the risk. That's the job they have, have, they've signed up to that particular risk and danger. Okay, and it, so it, they it, have to be trained. Yeah. Okay. It, it, it just, let, me, let me ask a question. So how many UK officers get killed on average? How many? I'm not sure. No idea. Well, let, let him hold on real quick. We're gonna let you get your point off, but I agree with chat, man. Talking to you is pointless at this point, and we're not getting nowhere going back and forth with you. So, you're gonna, gonna let make, you get this gonna off, and we're gonna change the conversation. But go ahead, yeah. Okay, I'll make it. I make obviously, in, ter in terms of I've seen footage on Twitter of whatnot of black people trying to shoot police officers, trying to take their guns, trying to uh, obviously, I've even seen white people trying to rush police officers with, with knives and whatnot. So if you're telling me that a police officer can't shoot someone who's physically trying to attack them or say he's trying to shoot, shoot at them, what does that to do? You know right. Let me what ask you a question then. Oh, oh, let, let me, me ask you one thing. Obviously, oh, in, in the case of George Floyd, that was totally wrong. Uh, he should not have been doing that. He's wrong. What about he all not have been cases? doing that whatsoever? What about all those other? Now nah, let him get it off. So he. But was it But, but that, I, I, there, was, there was another case where there was this black woman who was it called? She was. She was. Now nah, you going all over the place. Hold no, on, man. Let, let me. Let me talk. She was. She was. She was getting arrested. Floyd, she refused. Now another woman she refused. All over the place. She refused to get. She refused to get the car. Instead, she shot at the man. The man shot back at her. Mm -hmm. She drove away and died. And then they protested for her. When she shot the police officer first, I refused uh -huh. to get the car, which is get arrested. So if you're saying the police officer can't kill them because they're the trying point. to kill, get killed first. What, 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 what do you want then? What do you want? That's not the point. What, my, my what friend, do you want? Listen, you're not making a point. Listen, I'm gonna make listen. a point, obviously, because you're saying listen, that no, it's just like killing someone. No, listen to listen. him. He's not making any type of sense. Mm -hmm. Okay, let, let me see. Okay. Police officers can be can be justified in some cases. Yeah, that's man. man. That's that's man. Hey, I can talk to you. I'm not going back now. What is what the man is talking about? Talking about what the man said. Yeah, he does. You don't say about five things. Now let Idris say what he's gonna say and just listen, Raza. Raza, man, nobody here is saying that police should be killed. No one's no one's advocating that. 
what they're advocating, what they're saying is that the rate at which black people are dying at the hands of police officers in the USA, in the UK, is extremely high. And it's unjustifiable. So the number, when you compare the number of police officers dying and you compare the number of black people dying, the number of black people dying is way higher. The number of police dying is is minuscule in comparison. So, yep. it's so you know, basically no one is, they don't ever assume that because people are fighting for their rights as FBA, that they hate the police, that they want to have the police killed, or that they want that. No, no one is saying that. I mean, I don't know where you're getting that from. That police are justified in defending themselves if they're in den genuine danger. No one is... I got something to say after this is done. Okay, that's the last one. Right. Right. Anyway, that's after till I have something to Shut up. I got something to say. Um, your new name is not Uncle Ruckus. Um, it's a show called Dexter's Laboratory. He was like a little kid. He was a scientist. And they used to be a little egghead motherfucker that used to hate on for no reason. They man, man, yeah, man, yeah, that's your new name. That's your new name, man. That's your name, man dog. Every time somebody gives you some fucking knowledge, you steady hating. Like you steady laughing about them. It's a fucking joke, man dog. No, so I yeah, you, you know what, Uncle Ricky? Because I've been it telling cool what day. point you make it? Because I was gone, my phone was in here, and I was. Dead. Tell her that you done said some dumb shit the way that okay, the chat okay. and the panel okay, was getting at your ass. Okay, let, let me just finalize my point. No. I don't want to one with you real quick. I want to one with you real quick because I, 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 I missed your point. Tell me your point. As a police officer. Rise, right, man. You, yeah, okay, let me say this. As a police officer, if you have been attacked by somebody, you have the right to kill them. It's that simple. It's not hard. If they don't attack but you, you, you want to know something? Policemen be walking up to people and just blowing their brains away. Okay. Just it, it, they above they the don't, law. They don't, they don't do they that. Do yeah, let them, let them okay. finish because I want to hear his point. Okay. Okay. We, we all know the truth. We all know it gets us angry. Let's say this tether. Let's say man our point. Okay. If you've been attacked, you have the right to shoot them. Is that simple? But if you've not been attacked, the police officer has no right to shoot them. Is that simple? Is that is it's not hard. If if you have if you have no right to kill them if they've not attacked you if they've attacked you first you have the right to kill them is that simple that's my that's my whole point that's my whole all point. right cool I, I agree with you um yeah. tell me what you um think about this did you ever hear about a dude named George Floyd yep he was not to be killed okay so why did he die uh, hey, we both agree on the same point why did he die I let, no I want to hear this I I, I I don't know but me personally how did he die? no 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 answer this answer this question how did he die. Uh, mm. died from answer it. A drug, drug overdose. See, I knew it. I knew he was gonna say that. I knew he was gonna say that. That's incorrect. He was. It was mm -hmm. a knee to the damn neck. It was a knee yeah. to the neck. A nine and a half. Look, look, look. A new a new autopsy report for George Floyd has been released in 2023, revealing he died from a drug overdose. That's that's all I say. Uh, no, that's a lie. Lie Let me ask you this. Um, say I got a back problem, right? This that is, say, um, they prescribe me what's the shit they prescribe, motherfucker? Some perks, right? They tell me to take like two perks and say, Don't drive the car, I tell them to walk to the store, right? So I pop my two perks, walk to the store because I'm thirsty and shit, right? And I get killed just like Joyce Floyd, rest in peace. And since they want to cover up some shit, they say it was a drug overdose. And stupid motherfuckers like you believe in it, so <laughs> it's just kind of drug overdose. Okay, if I was okay. prescribed, right? No, let me finish my point. Is this still a drug overdose? If I was prescribed some pills, and I took my medicine, okay, and when was... and when they do the autopsy, I got some drugs in my system. So now, I'm, now I overdose on drugs. Okay, how could I ask question? How would you feel if say, say I... you left the towel? No, say, okay, see, no, no, say, no, 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 no. You gotta answer my question and don't answer my question with a question. Answer my question. We got hold on real quick. We we're gonna have yeah. to get off the topic of this dude. He's just okay. He's can we really just let's just talk. Nah, you know, you know, we need to just focus on a new conversation because he's yeah, just yeah, dude. Uh, he I, I, he I, I, wants to run with his narrative of black Americans being being evil and under the white man. He just has this negative. Hey, hey, where, we just gotta we gotta accept the fact and realize the fact that he's a straight up oppie teller. Yeah, yeah, I, know. To, I think uh, don't, don't worry about it, guy. I think he's about to have a vacation for like three weeks. I think we ain't gonna be seeing or hearing from him for like three weeks. Yeah. I think he needs um time to do some research to like the rest. But go ahead, cuz or, or just let him spectate. You know what I'm saying? But he yeah, he's gonna spectate. You know the same way we did cat. 
Send on a two week vacation. Because I make I'm making points to you. I make you I'm making valid points, but you're just dismissing them. Why you having points on the point? That, that, you that, that, my point wasn't wait, hold on y'all, hold on y'all, hold on y'all. So my point wasn't why would I just made to you? If I got prescribed some pills from a doctor and I happen to get killed by police and the doctor say, Oh, he had drugs in the system. He's a uh, he overdosed. What did you prescribe fentanyl yesterday? What what you prescribe fentanyl yesterday? Let's say we agree. Let, 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 hold on, y'all. Hold on, y'all. Let, let, let's play um, duck, duck, goose. Let's say we agree, right? Um, Manda, and um, he died of an overdose. Okay. What was the point of that knee on his neck for nine minutes then? I, I said it's wrong. I've already said it's wrong before. I've already said it's wrong. I said he should have done, done that. He should have called the ambulance and helped him. That's what he should have done. No, 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 no. no. If he died of an overdose. Did that mean he had any part to do with his death? He was, he, yes, he was already, he was already in handcuffs. All right, so, the so the answer to my question is yes, then he had something to do with his death, right? Yes, yes. All right, so why the fuck did, wait, wait, so why the fuck did the words, he died of an overdose come out your mouth? And me on his fucking no, neck, help, real killed him. Kill him. Hold on, hold on, no, real quick. No, no, real quick. Wait, wait, hold on, y'all, because I ain't done with this whole stupid ass, dumb ass, tell the name of motherfucking man now. Because do you realize that you like to real, know some shit? Do you realize it was paramedics and fucking nurses and doctors on scene and right. after police? Hey, hey, you fucking up. You about to kill him. Let me help him. And do you know the police said, shut the fuck up before I shoot you too? Hmm. Wait, wait, where's the page? Where's the page? Wait, 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 wait. Oh, you ain't know that part, huh? Uh, hold on. When, wait, when wait, motherfuckers wait. try to help Joyce Bug when they knew he was about to die. Mm -hmm. Nurses. I, 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 shut I, I, up. Professional, certified motherfuckers try to help him. And the so-called police that you say got the right to do what the fuck they want. Say, shut the fuck up, you nurse. Shut the fuck up, you fire department. Shut the fuck up, you doctor. And back the fuck up. This police business. I will shoot you, too. You would get wow. tased, I would shoot you. Was it, man? Was it, man? Can I come in here, please? Of putting his knee on his neck in the fucking first place. I said he's wrong. I'm going to say he's wrong. Right. Right. So, so don't say no dumb ass shit. Like, he's a judge over dumb. That he didn't die from that. You're saying that he, you're basically what New Era just said. So you're saying when he got lifted into the helicopter, he didn't die until they until it, the drugs kicked in. So he didn't just get killed well, from having his knee on his neck for nine there's minutes. There's a simple way to wait, wait, no, no, no. He said both things are true, yeah? Yeah, he, he said that me there had something to do with his death. I'm telling this. I know what it is. So when did he no, no, no. The difference between him and Idris is that he's a straight jealous tether. Idris, Idris, want, he, 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 he want to be educated by us, right? But this dude, this really, is a man. he got, he, he, he got, really got victory all and jealous of us, bro. He really jealous, jealous of jealous, jealous of what? Jealous, jealous of what? You, cause what, Let me come in there, please. You talk, like you, you, talk, you talk you talk jealous, bro. Move in, please. You, every jealous time we give you yeah, go ahead. Hey, uh, hold on, hold on, y'all. Hey, uh, Eddie, go ahead. Talk, talk your shit. Cut. Right. Now, at the trial of the George um, of George Floyd for, versus um, Derek Chauvin, the police officer, the coroner's report under oath clearly stated that George Floyd did not die from any illegal drugs. That was inside of him. He didn't die from that at all. It said he died primarily from asphyxiation for through yeah. a knee on his neck. Yes, that is yes, at the yes. trial. Now yes. accept it or reject it. That is the reality. He mm. did not die from any illegal substances within the body. It was the knee to the neck, nine and a half minutes. This is the coroner's report, and this has been accepted in a court of law. And this is yeah. one of the except for um, hey, look, Izzy, except it's that it's for everybody except for white supremacists, motherfuckers. Izzy just said nine and a half minutes. No, it's yeah. a long goddamn no, uh, time. Let, let yeah. go quick, real quick. Okay, okay. Go, go ahead, let's, 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 let's change the subject because we're not going to answer. No, no, no. Go ahead, finish Izzy. Yeah, Izzy, go ahead. And then after Izzy, snap, one of them. You don't control the conversation, nigga. Yeah, fuck on with you, man, though. Yeah, Izzy, finish talking your shit, huh? Yeah, so basically, at the end of the day, if a court of law has convicted Derek Chauvin based upon the fact that he had his knee on his neck for nine and a half minutes... Wait, wait, hold on, yo, hold, pause real quick, Izzy. I just thought something funny. Hey, I noticed how is it when we told this nigga some truth, he thought shit to us, but when the fellow UK got some truth for his ass that he can't refute, hey, y'all, let's change the subject. Now, nah, fuck that. You about to learn the thing yeah. you fuck each other. Go ahead, continue, yeah, Izzy. Yeah, I, I caught that. Yeah, Go ahead, my brother, so, at the end of the day, I don't know where he got his information from because there have been a lot of right wing posts that have uh, that have put out their illegal sorry, 
they put out their fake news. But in reality, it's on the court transcripts. He's he's been convicted on the basis of putting his neck on George Floyd. Nine and a half minutes, no substance, no illegal substance in George Floyd um, killed him. This is the coroner's report and has been accepted in a court of law. Now you can either reject those findings or accept those findings. Many people on the right wing, for some reason, want to, you know, ignore those findings for political reasons because they're just being racist. And we as black people, regardless of where we are, we shouldn't be accepting that kind of nonsense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't even think Mando is fucking black. Uh, so hold on. For I think second. he's African. Yeah, can we, hold on. Can we? Can? Well, no, uh, you go after cuz because snap, snap wanted to say something. Good. All right. I just want to say like this here. This is how we do it. Thank you, Izzy, because that's what an ally does. He learned right. and he right. speak the truth. Now, I was going to go in that situation also because, you know, being a paralegal, you know the smart way to go. Um, but what I'm going to say to uh, Rosamond is this. Hey, because the new name is Manda. After all this education we just gave you and you still doing what you're doing and talking reckless and all that, we're going to start um, saying your conversation part is over and we're going to move on from you because this is just ridiculous. Right. Everything you brought up, everything you said was just ridiculous. And then you didn't want to hear the truth. All right, now, Mulera, before, go to the next topic. And before you interrupt, can we just put, we just ask chat, do y'all agree or disagree with what we just said? Vanguard. Well, I, I never yeah, thumbs up if y'all agree and thumbs up if y'all don't agree right. in the chat. So we'll just see what's going on. on. First of all, oh. I said that obviously you had to trust me. I think he's, up, man, he's gonna, he's gonna up, go on a vacation. I don't want to hear you anymore. Yeah, he's going on a vacation for like two weeks, three weeks. Well, Izzy, what do you think about this? Do you think my aunt suspicions is right? Do you think he's a white man playing as a black man? Do you think he's an African, is he? Uh, he sounds like he's um, black. So basically, maybe he is black. I'm not sure. But I mean, a lot of his ideas about black people is deeply worrying. And I'm thinking, you know, he shouldn't have that mm -hmm. much um, hatred for he sounds like a house cat. I'm going to put it right out there. I'm sorry. I'm going to say it exactly how it is. Yeah, he's black, but he sounds like a damn house cat. Sounds like Jingle. Sounds Speaking like his parents might be some clues and chase him around. Don't ever believe that. He wasn't even a good person, was he? He beat uh, him. Go ahead. Continue, What you saying, Eddie? Yeah, so basically, you know, at the end of the day, um, it, you know, obviously, now, in fairness, there is going to be um, a high rate of crime in certain areas. So, for example, you know, like um, uh, there's crimes of poverty in the black community and it's at a high rate and, and it's due to poverty. It's not because people are black. It's just because under the system of white supremacy, black people, unfortunately, are at the bottom economically. And so, you know, there's, there's crimes of poverty. <laughs> One second. But in other and but in other areas of crime, white people lead. So you know, crimes of abuse, crimes of racial, um, uh, you know, bigotry. Other in other areas, you know, white people lead in in that regard. So no, there's no difference. Hold on for a second. There's no difference. It's just the fact that it's not being reported. The the mm -hmm. police are not looking for white on white crime like that. They know no. it goes on. They know it occurs, and it's it, it's by white supremacy is covered yeah, up. Yeah. Does it work? Yeah, I give you an example. Y'all talking to a person that went through that shit, motherfucker. Every time a black person, fight, you know, cops want to come arrest us. As soon as I beat up a fucking white dude and shit who tried to fucking stab me and shit, hey, we go look for. Him. They ain't never gonna get that motherfucker. Cracker. They know where that motherfucking white dude stay at. They know everything about the white dude, but they ain't never gonna arrest him. Well, my just the, the police was Here's created in America uh, as beforehand it was slave catchers, and yeah. then mm -hmm. slavery was free, it became they formed the police. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so it was always it put in place to come get us, just like the prison yeah. industrial complex. So you have to understand the system. You can't compare our situation to white people's situation. It mm -hmm. is totally different thing. situations. Yeah, yeah. And that's I'm another part of that uh, NWA that she was talking about earlier. Fuck the police. There's yeah. so much behind that song, 
Can I just say that? Yeah, so can I also We're say, that, you know, like the police are more likely to stop black people. They're more likely to detain black people. Right. They're more likely to imprison them. They're more likely to uh, convict them in, in the court of law. They're more likely to send them to jail. Can so I, as a result, as, as a result, you would think, you would think that the crime level among uh, blacks would be higher. But in reality, the crime level among whites is, is even higher than than, than black people. I mean, if you look at the I, FBI well, they, stats, they have a higher look at the FBI stats. It's higher among yeah. white people. Yeah, yeah, but they have a higher population, so it would make sense. No, no, no. Listen, listen. Wait, one second. One second. Right? You know, like the FBI, they take that into consideration, and they've already factored in the and in the fact that white people yeah. are more than black. So what they do is they measure crime per one hundred thousand. They they okay. bring it down let to me, a percentage, say, and as a percentage, wait, hold on. I, I got to um, ask that little sample for me real quick. Yeah, oh. Desmond. I forget the um percentage. Can you look up the um percentage for black people in the um jail system and our population? I was just about to ask you that because the white people are the majority within the country. Yeah, that's gonna do it for me in the back end. We're the most incarcerated. Make it make sense. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. So how is the how is the crime just based on just oh well, white people here do this uh, and they're just it, it it's systematic. This was by design. They just yes. once they yeah. freed us from slavery, it wasn't over. We not about to leave y'all alone. Y'all got too much potential. We are. Yeah, um, and, uh, hold on, hold on, I want them to um, realize this since we're on the police subject. Do you realize they used to um, throw black people in jail for so called stealing? Like, a certain, like say I stole five cents from you way back in the day. They would have put me in jail for like the rest of my life. Or if I would have looked at a y'all love the white people, if I would have looked so called at a white girl or a white dude, I would have been locked up or fucking dead. Bullshit law. Yep. Yeah, but I'm um, continue. I just find myself so funny that all oh, this shit, but continue. You know what? You know why the body cam was uh pulled out, right? Why? You know why they started adding body cams to these cops here in America? Because a lot of these cops were just uh planting stuff, like literally just going up to black people and planting stuff and then Plant shooting drugs. them and saying they were doing it. So they yep. now brought out this new law where they have to wear body cams, not only the car cams, because they used to manipulate the car cams and the uh, cop cars to yep. actually make it uh, cut out like little pieces of footage yep. to do it. So now they have to invent body cams in order to counteract those cop car cams because there was a lot of black people that they would be pulling over. And you would exactly. And, they, and like, the crazy thing about that, I'm gonna let you finish. And the crazy thing about the body cam, they still got the ability to turn that shit off when there was law that said it was supposed to be able to turn that shit off. When black people stopped dying and shit, they updated the motherfucking body cam to be able to turn that bitch off when they want to. And every time you see some fucked up shit, why is it every time the body cam go off right when some fucked up shit happens? But go ahead, continue, cuz. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> keep, keep going, keep going. I already posted in the uh, back chat. Mm -hmm. Hey, hey, no, new era, do, new era, do these fools, do these fools, do these fools understand the dynamic of all the people that die from the uh, police uh, departments all across America for, 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 since this last hundred years? Do he understand Bruh, I, I think he's glad it happened. Yeah, no, no, I'm telling y'all, bro, y'all, y'all know my, um, I got a couple nicknames, y'all know one of them bitches in Austin Diamonds. I'm telling you, bro. Ain't no way. I remember being 18, bro. When we was 18, and we all remember 18. Wasn't we also eager to learn some shit about the world? Since we know the school system lied to us, and everybody was lying to us. Of course, the world. I'm gonna fuck. I'm gonna fuck the country well when you. Yeah, but look, this nigga is like fucking 45, lying about being 18 and shit. Goddamn. Yeah, and he's a fucking white supremacist, bro. Yeah, and he's a white fucking white supremacist, bro. So he's oh, hey, he, hey, he go he he the type we gotta we we we, we gotta eliminate his type. Because yeah, that's why I said he's he gonna be coming, coming, even if he's he black. Coming, listen, he gotta eliminate his type. But listen, even if he's black, it shows you how deep white supremacy goes. Just psychologically. Damn. You know what I'm I saying? Mean, they, they, they didn't they didn't brainwash these man. motherfuckers, man. And yo, but look, we gotta think man. about it though, bro. Look, they took they they, soul off I agree. They got they got some mean ass white supremacy conflicts because think about it. They use them to sell so close. Well, we know they sell. They tribes and shit, you feel me? They sold black people to them. 
And then the white people turned right back around and was like, yeah, you know what? We ain't done for me. We need some more slaves. They was like, hey, we just sell some more. They was like, nah, nigga, you are the slaves now. You remember that uh, Boondocks uh, show where they were doing the uh, the uh, slaves and stuff? And you had mm-hmm. the, one, uh, the white master. He was coming. He was uh, there was the people running away from him in the white master. Instead of getting his dove mints, he pulled out some black dude that had like a chain and everything. And he's like, yep. go get him. Go get him. Uh-huh. That's what Roger Man reminds me of. That black dude on that on that dog chain being held. Well, I'm not glad you brought that shit up because you know, because you know that shit was true, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. 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 Yeah, but I'm on the time to put his ass on a um he ain't a vacation. Oh, well, he he didn't get to my side for like two weeks in a hot sun. Guess mine, right? Hey, New New you can give him a thousand facts, bro. Straight up facts, bro. He's still gonna try to find a way to undermine them facts and come with some backdoor Santa Claus shit. And, 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 and some and narratives, a, and, 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 and that's and the reason that. why I know for a fact he ain't no fucking eighteen. He like fucking forty five. Yeah. Well, see, that's the that's what Ca- that's what caught Ca- my Ca- ear because I've seen Snap literally just talk to this man for like 10, 15 minutes and tried to school him and just go in reverse and do and say the same thing that he just schooled him on the last time. So this guy's obviously not paying attention and not trying to pay attention. His whole stick is going to disrespect hey, hey, us. Hey, hey. And we've Let's been, finish. hold on for a second. Let me finish. And his whole stick is yeah, just, you know, to his ass. yeah, to disrespect us. And we just been letting this just go on. Like, nah, you, you got to get some discipline after this. Yeah. Like, we didn't, we Man, every, every time you know, he, he, he yeah, say, oh, I'm, I'm just he's trying to learn. Hey, yo, hey, who was on here with me the other time and shit when I was in the back chat? When I was like, hey, motherfucker, do you know when, James, was it you? When, um, uh, James in the motherfucking chat. I forget who the fuck was out here. When he was talking mad shit. And I was in the back chat waiting to get up. I was like, "Hey, motherfucker, do you know um, when they was talking about the White House?" I said, "You know, it was, um, two White Houses." And I forget who was on this bitch with me, but we heard the motherfucking type and shit. Everything I said and shit, the research shit, like real time. Yeah, I know it's. I know it was on um, two White Houses. That we. I forget who the fuck was on because we both forgot the ass. I think about it, Chris. I forget who the fuck was on here. Uh, it could have been Desmond too. She was like, "Hey, we didn't hear your ass typing, motherfucker." That shit was so funny. It's like you supposed to know all of this fucking fuck shit, but every time somebody brings up some history, he gotta look it up. Oh, I've been to that. Nigga forgot his mic wasn't on. Oh, fucking music. You heard that nigga? <laughs> oh, that shit was so funny. So yeah, that's how I know that nigga ain't eighteen and shit. That nigga like forty five, bro. And it's gonna act like he wanna fucking. Oh, I'm just here to learn. Basically, he wanted the motherfuckers that's trying to make us look stupid. Nah, he's just here to undermine. And he can't do it. Right. Even though yeah. he can't right. do it. Hey, mm-hmm. I'm going to try to show y'all a picture. Hold on, let me see if I can get it. Mm-hmm. That is um one of the Central Park Five. And now he's um, a con- uh, congressman. New York. Yeah, he's in New York. He won his election. I met him back in 2015. Oh, yeah, that's what's up. This story about when you know they got them 15 year olds and then lied to them and wouldn't let the parents come in and talk to them. Police just treated them so bad, got them to admit to something that they wrote up and uh, admit to a lie, and they um, find out. I think it was almost like a year later they find out the truth. Hey, that, hey snap! Hey, snap! Is that yeah. which one is which one is? Uh, uh, Yusuf Salam. You saw one, okay, that, that's not the Puerto Rican cat, right? No, that's not the Puerto no. Rican. Okay, all right. Yeah, that's the Muslim guy, and um, okay. he, he even um he talked on the news two days ago, and um and they asked him about how he felt about Trump not getting, you know, the full extent of how they keep saying law and order, but you know, but he said I want him to go through know the system and get his due process i don't want anything bad to happen to him and that's how it shows that we're better than most white supremacists that you know you know they treat us bad in the law in the justice system we want them to have a fair yeah day. i mean to cut you off because but my nigga that's very is the motherfucking ninja this thing if we both talk to us like a motherfucker we said we got another sticker he said nah, i still go cut the sticker with flat this nigga Motherfucker man night here still talking shit. My nigga Desmond the best still playing the shit with his ass with facts. I fucking love you, Desmond. <laughs> hey, hey Snap, hey Snap, remember remember yeah. remember, remember Just brought up the uh, autopsy report. Hey Snap, remember that murder? Uh, yeah. and, uh, I got time for that, Desmond. 
Remember that murder that happened in Boston Snap? Where where uh, uh, yeah. white dude killed his, he killed his pregnant uh, uh wife. Yeah. And then he said he blamed it on the black dude and the, and the whole and the whole police force and, and, the, and the FBI was going through the black neighborhoods, jacking up everybody, beating everybody upside the head, put, uh, taking in everybody and all that. Remember that happened like in, in ninety in 1990 or something like that? You remember that happened? Yeah. yeah. What about yeah, that, that, that time? That, that should happen every other time. Shit, hey, when the person what about the mom that drove her kids into the damn ocean or river or whatever? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I forgot about that. Hijacked her car. Yeah, but they, they kind of say, oh, the black man or oh, black man did it. You know, yeah. they always use that black man did it. They always used to blame that. And, and, and the media just ran with it. You come to find out their husband and did it. Or or, or, or their mom and killed their kids and drowned their kids in the tub. All kinds yeah, of shit, some, bro. Some, something happened like that in Texas where yeah. some like, white mother like drove her kids into the lake and they said it was a black dude that did it. Yep. Great lie. Well, it goes to with that, TV with crying that, uh, at with the crocodile tears and stuff. So with that yeah. said, it just goes to show you that even the white people understand the game. They know oh, just yeah. to throw it on us they and then they'll just... Yeah, right. Yeah. So, you, you know what I'm saying? So you can't deny it. And that's the thing that's true to me with Raza man is he understands it too and he's just using it as a way. No, to exactly. well, that's the reason why they don't want us to win it. Right. Yeah. They don't want us to come together for nothing. They've always tried to keep us divided. Yeah. Always. <laughs> and they've always used our pain to, to leverage themselves. Like mm -hmm. X-Men, Magneto, and uh, Professor Xavier. Yeah. Nah, don't get on that shit, bro. We know X-Men is specifically our fucking civil rights um, shit. That's specifically what X-Men was made of. Right. Our 1950 shit. And for a month, and I like to do some research. Rise, I mean, man, I bet you ask you to go look that shit up since you love Ethne. If you love shit that white man created, they took our pain and made niggas love that shit. Yeah. And then there's some more fucked up shit. And look, not only that, you know, the characters like on um, Stone, on um, Black Panther, if you read the comments, shit, you know, it's a whole lot of Ethne shit. They took our guys and shit like all melanin people from not just Africa, all America, but all around the world and made them niggas. Little ring was an Indian um dude with a sword. Um, I'm just I don't I'm, just about Batman and Superman. I'm just I'm just tired of this as a black man in this nation just being undermined and just looked to as man a crash of society when that's really not the case. We all are, bro. Look at the information. It, we yeah. all get yeah, right. We all we were the first people here on this planet. Everything, everything, and everybody has came up under us. And guess who was last? Raza, man, tell me who was last. See, even you know, so quit trying to play. No, nah, no, nah, you know he capped out. You know he capped out. He wanted yeah. to say the black man. You are. Yeah, that's the first thing they like to say. Why y'all want to talk this shit? Y'all are the bottom of the class in America. Blah, 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 blah. Right. You know, go get right. your ass back in the motherfucker. Because he think the white man is God in his mm -hmm. mind, bro. <laughs> right. That's mm -hmm. And that's yeah, right. I'm all into your game, man, man dog, shit. Because that's the same thing he did last time. He told some shit, got some straight in it, then tried to act like he was on our side. Fuck you, just... you motherfucking man, dog. What You're going on a vacation. Just... Hold on real quick. What did Putin just put out? He, what did he just put out about Black Jesus? He already revealed yeah. it. We already knew yeah. it all along. Yeah, we did. Did, <laughs> I was just about to say that shit. That's the only reason why he put that shit out. Because so he was talking out. about it. Too. Look, they only put shit out when too much evidence get out. And motherfucking, um, they can't respect it. That's like how we always talk about a car that won the water. Uh, it was 10 patents. It was patented 10 times. And every 10 times, the person that patented that shit died. Um, for the Africans that always like to talk shit about us, and every time we talk shit, like, hey, tell us something about Africa, here comes some more now from a stupid American to us. I mean, a stupid American encounter to an African. Um, Y'all had one of them too and shit. I forget about the name and shit. He was a real one. He came over in um, America. Motherfucker tried to kill his ass um, seven times, but he made it back to Africa. Um, I wonder what happened to him. I forget his name. Mm. But every time we ask Africa to say something dope they do, they can't never name him or they can't never name. I forget how you pronounce the name, but homie name was um AJ, you didn't tell me if I'm saying this I right. It's, it's W I G W E. Oh, is it now? I think so. I think he timed up. Wait a minute, man. Unless he came All right. Back. Um Manda, I guess you back on deck now. Um what is I forget I don't know how you pronounce the name, but can you tell me um, how do you pronounce W I G W E? And who's that person? 
Don't go back and sleep. Even, I don't even think he's still. He can't comprehend anything. He might be nah, nah, that was that was just Nah, I know what it was. And shit, he think I ain't know who that person was. And shit, he, he don't want to talk about it. Too busy going on in the chat. That's why he got timed out. Mike told him about that stuff before he left, and he still what doing that? it. What that? So all, that all that that's why I timed him out. Sitting there fighting back and doing all that crazy stuff and saying stuff. Oh, he's gonna chat to yeah, he was, he was attacking the chat. Hold on, I didn't even hold any. No, I don't stop him. I already timed him out. Oh, okay. Man, I want I to see what the fuck he was saying. Yeah. Oh, this is a sad thing, man, with these. With these oh, so he want to tell me who Wally is? Yeah, because he, he wants things to talk about the middle, good. but then he yeah. goes on the chat and he starts talking that crap. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but he, it, it, no, it, ain't he still up here on the panel? He'd take his ass on me. Yeah, I think it. Reza, man, are you still here? Yeah, he about his cousin. Yeah. I mean, speak, speak, Reza. All right, all right, all right, yeah. So, can you, can you tell me who uh, Wally is? W I G W E. And what has he done? Wiki. Yeah. What was he about? I knew that. Is. You don't know who that is? No. Oh, my goodness. That was an African man who, um, yeah, I do remember. Do you know it was a bank that was like 27th? I forget the name of the bank at the moment. But in 2024 or recently, yeah, 2024 or some shit, um, he put that bank to number four. If you know the number four bank in Africa, you know who I'm talking about. And on his way to come watch the Super Bowl, the helicopter crashed. And the day after he crashed, a lady had a spot. But I know you're lying because all the shit that she be talking about. Damn, Africa got some dope ass shit. Every African should know who that person is because he's gonna do some dope ass great shit for Africa and not just for Africa, for the whole diaspora. They always lie. They always lie. I would right. see it, but no. So look him up then. I'm gonna tell you his name. Wait, give me, give me a spelling. Look him up and look up the thing. See, why we don't want to talk about Africa now? Why we don't want to talk about nothing good in Africa? Because you, 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 were saying, me, you were saying that y'all allowed him to get killed yeah, when he went back there? Huh? Can we, can we ask this? Why does we? Why does he always gotta like Google everything? Why can't he just just take? Because he's a dumb. Because he's a liar. Oh, he's forty five years old. I don't know. Because you. I don't know why we talk about. That's why I brought him up. Yeah, he's what always gotta argue everything. Must he said. That's why. What's his name? What I'm, I'm trying to know, but he don't want to let me know. You see, see there you go. You want to research? I'm trying to learn. Go along with it. You're not trying to learn shit. Shut the fuck up. Shut the okay. fuck up, man. You, I had okay. enough of this yeah. nigga, man. Hey, hey, let it go back on me that quick. Yeah. I, I don't want to talk. To, I don't want to talk to you if you don't know that about your own um, home country, bro. Because I'm trying to. I'm trying to ask a little bit. He's just there uh, shouting. He's trying what to argue. You? I'll, 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 all right, all right, hold on, hold on. Let me answer. Let me answer, What, what you want to answer, please? I asked for a name so I can Google it so I can learn more about him, and I'm just getting shouted at for what reason? When I'm trying to learn, you get just shouted because I asked for a name. Oh, okay. Well, go ahead. I already know you were gonna Google later. Yeah, tell me what you sign up. Yeah, yeah I did tell him. Yeah, don't get mad. I told him to Google it. Yeah. I could have spent a piece. We told him that we are moving on. Yeah, I'm the person yeah. I told you to Google it. I already know you ain't no nothing about him. I, I, I could have spent a piece. I timed him out for 30 minutes. Oh, nice. uh, yeah. I, 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 I could have spent a name. Yeah, 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 I could have spent a name. Thank you, baby. Herbert Wigley. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it. Man, I already said we need to talk to him no more. But that's a damn. Uh, damn stuff. I forgot what his name is. Yeah, because Izzy dropped the shit. Yeah, and I don't want to make a point yeah, when I mean, say it. Like, you say he, how the fuck you after you know about that dude? Because he already knew he's like the CEO of some kind of bank, and he's like a Nigerian or something. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he was. He got killed. Oh, uh, allegedly. His plane crashed on his way to watch the Super Bowl this year. Mm. Or last year, whatever the fuck. Just whatever the fuck the last Super Bowl was. Yeah. So let's let's switch gears real quick. Let me ask y'all this. So what do y'all think about as far as the whole Puff Daddy case? And yeah. uh, just what's your opinions about that? I think it's no case nah, yet. Go ahead. Wait, can you no case that? Yet. Me me. Uh, okay, my, so what do you my, think my, about my, the whole quick, wait, them raiding wait, the wait, house? Wait, wait. Real quick, okay, okay, this, 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 what I think, this is what I think. Real quick, I'm gonna make my mm -hmm. kind of quick. I think that they raided that house 
to see if they can find any evidence or any uh, 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 tapes or any uh, documents or anything that was pertaining to those blackmails that he got on the other folks that he deal with in the industry that but, that, do, that be doing degenerate shit. You I'm, know I'm what I'm saying? Hold on, let me get somehow, off he mm-hmm. somehow got rid of them blackmails that he had, whether they be documents or videos. <laughs> before yeah, I'm gonna go before they can use that as leverage to, to indict him on anything. That's what I think. Then why did he flee to Ar- Argentina? And they've been and CIA has been watching yes, him for the past 20 man. years already. They no, he's still in America. All around this man's house. They were coming in. I thought he was down. I thought he was in Miami. Not yeah, he's in Miami. He left in Cape Bac. Yeah, but he, left the he hasn't Puffy hasn't been arrested for anything. He yeah, he left left the okay, okay, okay. Whatever he put on that plane went to Argentina or, or wherever it went, but that's he wasn't a, on that's but he hasn't been arrested for anything. He went he went at on a plane point, and he came back to the investigation no, at this point. He never point. was on the plane. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't just an investigation at this point, just to clarify. Yeah, that was the search. He took a picture of the He took a picture of the paper he was flying to. He did go to the plane and he came back a day later for some reason. Why are you talking? Oh, it could be business. Um, you, you acting like Puff Daddy. Yeah, right, right man. Put your ass back on mute. Nobody want to hear. So, All right. would you travel for just a day or what? Is that what you're telling me? Put your ass back on mute. Nobody ain't talking to you. You make you no sense, bro. Let me put on my let me put on my paralegal hat for y'all real quick. Go ahead, man. Yeah. All right. Good. They raided the house because they're looking for information off a tip they got. Mm-hmm. I don't know what it's about. I don't know what it is, but. A.A. Ron gave us a little bit of information today. You can surmise from that. But um, uh, most of the time when they're building a case, they're not going to arrest anyone. They usually get search warrant off of a tip, and then they go get the evidence, and then they got to build a case. So you probably won't see anything happen for the next two, three months maybe. Yeah. But, um, mm-hmm. unless, yeah. unless they got everything they want, and then you might see it sooner. Right. So what do you think that what do you think that this is gonna go in the future? Like, how do you think this is gonna affect Diddy's career and money and his and his outlook on the black community with all these allegations? I'm talking to Snap. (laughs) If Suge Knight gets a hold of him, it's gonna affect him really nice. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you think he's getting out? That's the thing. If Suge Knight gets a hold of him, he ain't going nowhere. That's okay. Should Knight literally waiting for him? Is Should Knight in jail? Isn't he? Is he back? Yeah. Yeah. He's still yeah, in jail. Yeah. 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 Go ahead. Go ahead. Snap. Okay. That's the thing. Um, the black community, we because we're not like um a broad brush thing. You're gonna get people on both sides of it. So they're gonna be supporting them. They're gonna be against them. That's gonna happen. That mostly happens with everyone. So that's not a surprise, and that's not not expected. So that's what we're going to see. That's nothing to worry about. As far as him putting out music again or something like that, that might even still happen. It depends on what investigation that they have going on and what more they're going to do. And we mm-hmm. don't know until it happens. So it's nothing for us to really like get at each other about like some people are doing because mm-hmm. that's we're not the ones that's in it. Now, I could see if we were you know, being investigated too, and then we would be in it. But that's a rich person thing. They get special treatment sometimes, and sometimes they don't because of the melanin in their skin. So, hey, I just want to say this. I know yeah. we got the same blood because you took words right out of my motherfucking mouth. <laughs> I ain't been here and I ain't in it. Yep. <laughs> no, uh, and, and to piggyback off that shit, look at fucking Will Smith. Oh, he snapped the shit out of our um, homie. Oh, <laughs> oh we gonna um, we gonna yeah. blackball him for ten years. Ain't no more movies on this shit. But at the same time, he smacked him a week later. He was like, "Yeah, bad boys fall coming out next summer." Mm-hmm. Come on. Well, you look. Can we Get be honest? Can we be honest? Can we be honest? Can we be honest? I want to say that? something real quick on that. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Because he smacked another black man. That's why. Yeah. It, it, I was gonna yeah. dig into that. But Go ahead. Here it is. Um, a lot of people got away from the white woman that got caught. I forgot who was it. That TV star guy. He, he was a he was an actor. He was a caught on film running away from the uh, uh, white chick, and she had uh, actually started it. Uh, and he's uh, still Majors, John, John Majors, Majors, yeah, Majors. Yeah, Majors. yeah, Jonathan Majors. Yeah. 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 Okay. And then when the police came and shit, 
they ain't know who the fuck he was and shit. And then when he found out he was black, man, they was like, oh, this is a nice house. She was like, oh, he ain't doing that. It was a mistake. And the police was like, oh, you showed that. Like, they coached shit to make a um, police report all the time. She's suing yeah. him now, right? She's suing him. Yeah. Hell yeah. All right. Ain't that, ain't that a bitch? Yeah. Mm. And so I'm getting to the lawyer um, to get that own evidence about the police um corruption that bitch to make a fucking false statement. He did. I, I just yeah, that's the first thing I heard. Them niggas had evidence. And the next thing I heard, this nigga was getting in trouble. I was like, how the fuck when I'm like, ain't that? Yeah, that's a crazy. They had no, they had no camera. Him running away from the chick. The chick was actually punching on him, and they literally showed him running on camera, running away from the white girl, and he still got arrested for it. He, yeah, he still, he and still charged got assault. He got evicted for it. He got evicted. Yeah, he got charged assault uh, for it. Actually, that's crazy. Now she's trying yeah. to sue him. So that's crazy. White supremacy, boy. And it's on video. Uh, same thing that happened yeah. to him. And, and, and they got like three videos uh, right? after that. Stop, stop. People who got beat up. She in a club dancing with the same fucking race, right? And yeah. before that, you know the video that she said that he was running. And before that, you just did the um, move on tattoo without the fuck she was in. The bitch was beating on him, and he asked the motherfucker to stop. And um, what's I said, witness the taxi witness. He's out of sit on court. Say, nah, the bitch was beating up on home in the taxi. He was straining and stuff. He has to stop, and as soon as it's a stoplight or whatever, he just got out the fucking car and stopped running. That's the shit that you've seen when he was running away from the white bitch. Wow. Mm-hmm. Like, that's why I'm like, uh, how the fuck are you getting in trouble for all this evidence and shit? Rich, problem, rich people problem? My name been in it. I ain't in it. I just know that shit fucked up, and my nigga shit went. But I, I just, I just, I kind of want everybody to realize how much. I just think that he shouldn't have been fucking with the snow bunny. No, 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 not just that. No, no, not just that. Just us in general, us, our celebrity, our popularity, everything that they juice off of us is what they use to exploit us and to break us down. Mm-hmm. All this, every celebrity, everything that they're doing, they do it to us and they do it in an extravagant, big way. And they, yeah. they use everything, all our resources to turn against each other. And I'm oh, not, I don't, I don't recognize that shit, yeah, mm-hmm. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not even saying the puff day is somebody worth defending. It's just that they're y- y'all not going. Y'all not raiding Vicks man, Vicks McMahon's crib. Well, look not. at all the shit that he got. Where, where, why ain't they raided his shit? You know yeah, what I'm saying? Got, got white supremacy. That's why. Head. Exactly. So I he mean, got, why like, are we making so- like animals and all sorts of shit up in his house? Can I answer and that and question real quick? Go ahead, Sam. Answer that. Why they're not raiding Vince McMahon or? Um, any any rich white person mm-hmm. because they didn't get a tip that something's there. You, oh yeah, they, hey, have snap. To, they have to get what a tip. What about the dude from the New York uh, Knicks? I don't know the Knicks. They, they get call. tips. They just kind of ignore it. Yeah, sometimes they, they get paid off. They get paid sometimes off. the judge won't sign it. Sometimes the judge won't sign that warrant. Well, look yeah, at all the women that came against enough. him though. So the white women that came against him made statements against Vic McMahon. Their their words don't mean nothing. Mm-hmm. Their statements don't have no. Hold on, I don't answer that shit. Pretty. They do matter, but hey, different type of money you playing with, bro. Yeah. And yeah, you got to remember, Vince McMahon is yeah. way older. Hey, and we got to remember, it's a whole lot of other dirty jerseys and all do that we, shit. Do we know? And we think, and we think, oh, Puff got evidence on motherfuckers. We talk about yeah. Vince McMahon. You know, they Vince got no fucking evidence on a whole bunch of billionaires. Yeah. Of course. And billionaires, bro. Of course. Yeah. That's a whole different level, bro. Whole different type of ball game right there. Yeah, but ain't ain't that the same reason Puff Daddy's going? Wasn't he trying to sue some people that uh, for uh, the, the time, rock? Uh, so wasn't yeah, no, isn't it was the same called, scenario? Uh, it was called uh, I forgot that, that liquor company. Yes, but yes, it, a, it, a certain it, brand, a liquor brand or whatever. Yeah, I don't think Victor Man was trying to sue nobody though. I think motherfuckers just came out and and motherfuckers like, hey, he did this shit to me. Yeah, but I mean, allegations are allegations at the end of the day. Yeah, you know hey, yeah. hey, when you got money and when you ain't. When you've been in the motherfucking TV for how long? Over 50, I've been watching fucking Raw since like, I'm 33. So you've been on TV for goddamn 50 years. Yeah. And you're a billionaire, multi billionaire. Yeah, that's a whole different level, bro. Puppy, that's gotten in this game in the 90s. This man been playing that shit since he was at, since he was at his daddy nuts. Since the 80s. Yeah. Yeah. And plus, when you got to have in your motion that, yeah, I was off it. Two hundred fifty thousand dollars a month, no, a year, to be whatever he wanted me to be, and then I did it, and then after a year and a half, he decided he didn't want to pay me anymore. That kind of make prosecutors look weird, and they be like, I don't know if we should do this. Yeah. So oh, the other hand, I changed my mind. Wait, wait, wait. I agreed in the beginning, but I changed my mind. Uh, son is a, I think, son-in-law is Triple H. 
Yeah. And didn't Triple H yeah. come out and say something about that? And they were like, oh, oh, now we got to listen because it's his son-in-law. But then I had like over, I think it was about 40 or 50 different people literally say something. And most of the time, the judge has written it off. Yeah, no. That's why they take him off TV and shit. They protect him, bro. Like, that's what I was trying to say. It's a whole different type of level. Triple, triple he, he ain't no um, Yeah, they uh, gave they gave um the rock to take over the um the business now because the USC and the WWE has converged, and now they call it takeover. So every time you watch an octagon, that's now you watch the entertainment now. But um, but like Vince Man in the backstage, but in the public, he don't got no um owners and shit. He done shared all his shares away. You feel me? But I think, I don't know if he's still on TKO. I think TKO that took him off. But the shit that you were talking about, when I saw the allegation got up when he tried to sell it the first time, I think he sold it to the wrong people. And it was like, oh, you're a dirty motherfucker for real? So now it's like the battle of the billionaires. And I think they trying to take this man, that man down and he just trying to protect himself. Mm-hmm. But that's, that's billionaires um, chess moves right there. Puffy was probably well, fucking with me. Really. Ben had somebody on him. He been having, you know, yeah. he been had lawsuits on him for years. Yeah, and then when he, he sold it, they just got popular. I'm not. Yeah, I'm because not. because he thought TKO was gonna um do you know she put him on rugged. Nah, homie, got the yeah. same child. Like, he sold this shit to get away with this shit. Like a couple of months later, this shit. I was like, oh, more allegations. Oh, you ain't with TKO no more. Yeah, so I think he sold it to the wrong one. They was like, nah, we want you out of here, homie. I'm not saying anything against it. I'm just putting it on display for what it is. You know what I'm saying? Like with them, it's just don't worry about what we do. But when it comes to y'all, we putting it on display to everybody. That's all I'm saying. I don't even think got to do with Kyle. There's niggas money game, like I said. Well, fuck that. He ruined his own name. He, he where he messed up was he don't have black support in general. He's yeah, in he no too many no black people. Support. Yeah, yeah, he has no grassroots support. He done did too many African Americans wrong or FBAs yeah. in general. My bad. I so say pull out to more. That's nobody a can. Book. Nobody. Uh, go ahead. Hey, Mallory, that shit. He don't got a fucking trillion dollar um company, bro. People, people fuck with Tupac. That's why they don't like P Diddy. When, P. Diddy, P. Diddy, P. Diddy, P. Diddy. when you got a um, this dude when you got so a business, basic, man. when you got a business that's worth yeah, trillions man. of dollars, bro. Basically, I'm just saying that says power corrupts and absolute power corrupts. Absolutely. What do you think Donald Trump's going through now? Donald Trump has to win the election in order to stay out of jail at this point. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm gonna put about nothing no more like they talking about cutting checks and letting the world know where the fuck we from. But yet the whole state of New York went against them. <laughs> What's it called? A lot of black people don't realize that Joe Biden's a racist. Hey, Ru- yeah, Uncle Rucker, take your nigga. Well, then we take you on time out, nigga. We do not want to hear your voice. This nigga yeah, is easy. We don't want to hear about that. Take your shit on motherfucking minutes. And it's nobody up here listening it's to you. The one go. time I gave you a chance, motherfucker, you fell. You can't tell me shit about Africa, nigga. You fell. You have been disqualified. So that's the, that's the, the thing, words man. of motherfucking um, Yo Gotti. Yeah, he might be a you kid. Disqualified, shorty. Listen, he can't wait to he can't wait to chime in. You oh, know what I'm saying? Like, uh, and then he chimed, yeah. Hey, hey, we we ignoring that motherfucker. We don't know who the fuck you talking about. We just know a dumbass motherfucker like to jump in with some dumbass shit when we talk about some real ass shit. Go ahead, go. Yeah, he wants to he wants to throw us off our game. You know what I'm saying? Just switch the conversation. But uh, back to. Well, hold on. Stop, 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 stop. All right. I, I just wanted to go back to Will Smith slapping on Chris Rock. Um, at first, some people <laughs> thought it was some people thought it was staged, and and then. Yeah, but nah, I see that broken. Yeah, I see that broken fire inside. Nigga, if I wasn't on camera, I'd fuck you. I was yeah. like, oh yeah, that shit was real. Yeah, uh, <laughs> started yelling. You ever heard of a blessing in disguise? Or however they say that. I think. Uh huh. Blessing in disguise. Yeah. They that that went viral. Uh, Chris Rock. He set up. He did little quick little stops, and then he set up his main uh comedy show. He got a mm. lot of money. He sold out all the way, and then. Yep. Uh, Will Smith got Bad Boys coming out, and yep. uh, even though that the next movie that was already made that uh, Emancipation movie, but it was on Apple TV, so it wasn't supposed. Now to that Emancipation was been out. That's why I think that's why he's on that. I think that's like the movie that bombed and shit. Yeah, it, it bombed. Mm-hmm. It. But yeah, that movie out. He got, got the contract to do Bad Boys Four, so yeah, that's what I was saying earlier. Shit, all that movie is shit, yeah. You ain't allowed to do no movies for ten years, and you black boy. But who's they decided? Who, 
But who's two, three years later, they get back doing movies. Everybody making money from that. Mm -hmm. That's all it that is, bro. If you can make motherfuckers money, you useful. So, oh wait, hold up. If you can make motherfuckers yeah. money and keep your mouth shut, you useful. So let me ask you yeah. this: Do you think that Will Smith have rec has recovered publicly from the smack? Exactly. Hold on, halfway. Not be half and half. Halfway. Is, is halfway? Kind of the ghost? I heard they were separated now. They were they separated. Yeah, they were separated. Yeah, I think we can't take being a cop no more and shit. Smith hasn't claimed claim that though. Yeah, Jada mm -hmm. Smith set up Will Smith. Literally, straight up. They they had yeah. been divorced since 2016. That smack wasn't even over. That's the thing about it. It wasn't even over her. It was because mm -hmm. of the nah, that was up in. anger. And Will Smith being a dumbass going up trying to defend him. <laughs> yeah, build up, and up anger. And jealousy build and up anger. Why you he lost his mind going up on that stage. And, and slept with your son, uh, <laughs> producer. Right hey, yo, bro, I don't know what be fucked up. If that shit was fucking playing and shit, but Will Smith just smacked his ass too hard. That's why he got back. <laughs> yeah, that would be. But, but I told you to attack me, not stop me. <laughs> <laughs> but when Will Smith screamed back, keep my wife's name out of your fucking mouth. <laughs> Boy, them tags went up. That was a hurry back, nigga. That red room went up so quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cause you know my fucking shit. Everybody love me and shit. She slept with the son's friend up in Will Smith's bed. Yep. August Alcina. Still crying over Tupac. Yep. Turn that boy. Man, that boy put size and shit. And and one of one of those documentaries with Tupac said they were nothing more but but friends. Yeah. Just yeah, because I think, I think because she just, because I was messing up uh, with chilling with each other. I think Most she people don't know that. Fox name to try to stay rev uh, uh, relevant at this point. You know what yeah. I'm saying? She's just using anything she can grab onto. With Will Smith, and then she tried to say that Chris Rock tried to sleep with her. She's just saying all types of crazy shit. She's throwing anything out there. That's how desperate she is. She's relevant. trying to make a. She's trying to create her own lane within Hollywood that she just can't obtain because you just she's just too disgusting as a person. In my opinion. Hey, I got a question for you. I don't like talking about me because all that shit fake. Let's talk so about some real shit. How can we um identify uh, the enemies quicker and get them out of the way like um Chuck Wu and Man I aka Uncle Record Stringy and all the other tubs that Corbin and Corbin? Hold on, what was that? I said how can we get I said how can we identify these motherfuckers? And get them out of the way quicker. We like Uncle did. Records. We just did this whole this whole live. We just exposed this nigga. Like this, we. Oh, I know, but I'm. I'm just saying this shit. It took us like three weeks to so, say, you know, <laughs> I had my suspicion. <laughs> yeah, right. but I I didn't want to seem like the eyeball. Like, nah, this nigga. I I was like, I'm on the way and shit. You feel me? But I already know what was coming. Hey, you know, but, ain't nowhere. You know what I think, bro? With like with the IP tellers you just named, it's a mm -hmm. lot of jealousy, bro. Uh, and undermining going on, bro. That's that's what it be like. A lot of them don't really be really caring about our our, our business like that, but they feel right. like okay, uh, NBA is talking about what, what they're talking about. Uh, and, and let's go troll them or let's go spike them. That's what type of time they be on nowhere. Yeah, I, jealous, I know because straight hate. Okay, because I'm gonna ask y'all, when do the fuck did any of y'all ever like hop on a African YouTube like when they be talking shit? About, well, not even talking shit about us. Like when it just was my name, Ben is talking about Africa, how to fix Africa, and how to do this shit about Africa. Like, have any one of y'all came in and was like, hey, yo, Africans ain't shit. And blase, blase. Like, they nah, do the I don't even be thinking about them like that, bro. I'm going to keep it real. Yeah. Like, then they come in like, hey, y'all always talk shit about us. Like, no. Like, I don't get it. You're busy playing video games. Now you got time for them. Yeah. I'm going to just look at the, the negative of everything just within black society. You don't want to give no props, no credit, no influence towards your community. You're just looking for anything negative you can say based on what white people have told you. That just says a lot about you. Mm -hmm. Hey, bro. Hey, big bro. They think, no, no. They, 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 Shut the fuck up, Uncle Rutgers. Ain't nobody talking to you. You're 45 year old acting like you motherfucking 18. Shut the fuck up, man, dog. Listen, to where, hey, to my hey, think if we can suck, man, if we can suck the white man, ass, if we can suck massage. the skin off the white man, if we can suck the skin off the white man, oh, he'll give us more opportunities than, than the uh, black Americans. Let me suck the skin off the white man. 
Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. Let me tell you something. Hey, um, uh, man, dark. Why don't you go look up some information about what the white man did? Look up trailer parks. Look up trailer park murders. Look up uh, urban mm. urban murders. Look hey, he know all that shit. Remember? He know all this shit. Like all the guys take some shit up. Yeah, go go look that up. Cause you're so busy looking us up. Why don't you go study the people? Why don't you go study the people you sucking up on, man? Right. You, you <laughs> find out some truth to that too. <laughs> You, you ain't even got to come to us. Just just go over there. Go to their go to their YouTube and go they listen to what they all say. The off they, off yeah, their go side. hang out with them and see how they'll treat you. Yeah. You got so much animosity towards us. Go hang out with them. See how yeah. they do you. Because you're going to have a whole oh, knife in your back. Yeah. I'll give you a, a couple of YouTube knife. people to go to instantly. That's straight up white who will just beat the shit out of you. Straight off. <laughs> yeah, he finally dropped. He's good. Yeah, he dropped. Yeah, because like I said, he, he's so busy. So busy studying FBA and so busy quoting quoting white man media. Why don't you just go and <laughs> look that shit up? Why don't you go and Google that crap up? Go, go over there to their YouTube. Go over there and, and talk and talk bad about us over there to them. And and they yeah. will still rip you. Because yeah. there's actually some white people who's on our side. <laughs> That's the thing. So you go over there talking crap about FBA and stuff over there, one of them white men podcasts or something, they, they would still say something against you. You'd be like, you black oh, too? Man. What the hell's wrong with you? Hey, <laughs> like, they, they, talk so bad about, you? they talk so bad about the tethers, dog. It's a, it's a damn shame. Yeah, like, yeah. It, it, really? ain't even, it ain't even yeah, about even the racist, Even the racist yeah. white people be on our shit. They be like, hey, you talk shit about black Americans? Yeah, hey, wait, hold on. Wait. They, they put the mic to me. Hey, they you, have the, you have the Confederate <laughs> white men up there. It, go and talk to one of them about immigrants. Talk to them about the tethers, and, uh, yep. and and they're on the same side we are, on the exact same side. They hate them just as much as we do, man. <laughs> Literally. Really, they, they, they can't stand, stand them. They faith. can't stand them more than they, they can't stand us and keep away uh, uh, a buck with you. Mm -hmm. They just ain't gonna publicize it like that though, because they need them to buffer us. Uh, you know, they need them to get they put they put a battery in they, in their asshole for us. Yeah, and we got to realize just every day living and going to work and everything else, working around these tethers, you have to understand that a lot of these people have this mind uh, set within them. Yeah. And even though they try to play it off and smile and act like they cool, they are undermining us behind our back and getting us fired on these jobs because they yeah. really want to replace us. So right. just I just throw that out there just for everybody to keep in mind. Oh, yeah, because I, I kind of been aware of that because that happened to me when I was 18, 19 years old when I first started working the job. And that was like, man, years ago. Yep. Hold on for a second. I'll be right back. Hold on. All right. Yeah, okay. That's how it was fucking crazy, ain't it? Yeah. Hey, what, wait, put it back up. What, you, what, what the mug was? Did you see what was in the private chat? He's a, he's no, he's a, yeah, yeah. yeah. My they name. Two American nicknames. Come on, man. Yeah. They got fishes run by white people, man. That don't even like them. Fuck that Chinese. They, they, actually, they actually have gates over there in Ghana actually separating, literally. And if any of them step over that gate, they're instantly shot. Instantly. Instantly. They like, they like is... white people over there be hunting them. <laughs> like animals. Man, wait, man gate? What did you... What? Man... What's up? I knew her. that tripped me out when I see oh, the Asian man beating them, at, beating them but, okay. African dudes with a pole. Yeah, them Chinese oh, okay. people be yeah. beating them too. Yeah, that's crazy. That, that, that tripped me out when I seen that. I'm like, damn. That was that one video where he, he yeah. had to run and get that nigga stick after he got kicked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he had that nigga stick in the back. And that's what's sad about it, how much that's they're subjugated. Crazy. Like, they're so subjugated and disrespected within their own, like, continent. But yet they yeah. have so much animosity towards us. Like, And that's crazy. Remember, remember the Asian lady said, you can't come to Jamaica unless you have this passport and this, and this document. Yeah, like, yeah, telling that Jamaicans that they can't come. No, 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 you forget. Right. No, you, you got it wrong. You say you're not a real Jamaican if you got a high type of passport. If you don't got one of these, you will be getting a round trip at that to where the fuck you come from. Is what she said. Mm -hmm. because there was a damn eight was an Asian lady who said that. Uh, Asian lady. Yep. Yeah. Out, man. Yeah, Jamaica is not a black country. Mm -hmm. We are a diverse country all in Jamaica. In, all in Jamaica. She way from Asia telling the Jamaicans how to how, how, how to program and coming back and forth with their country. That's crazy. 
and he just let her do it. They didn't say nothing. He bent the knee to it. Quick. But the but the moment one of us say something about it, man, it's like they all up in arms, man. Oh, man. man, hey, look, bro, bro, they so they get so charged up and have so much smoke for us, bro. They it's like they be scared. They tuck their tail and they come to the Asian lady and and and. and, and. And the rest of them folks and coming to their country, the uh, uh, downgrading them and, and mistreating them. That's crazy. Well, they don't have not only that they just don't they don't have any type of. If you really pay attention, they don't have any criticism of them. They don't have any critique in any type of way. They have no judgment. <laughs> hey, we got you, Big Tank. Yo, Big Tank, put it in the comment. You tell us to chill out and so get back killed at the motherfucking spot. <laughs> uh, was it uh, Snap, Lord Snap? Come on, man. You know how the agents treat us, uh, black military men. You know they love them some black military men. Yeah, I know. You know I, I, mean? I mean, it's so much stuff I could tell. That oh, I man, went through a lot of racism men. when I was in there. Oh my goodness, the military. Yeah, the racism, yeah. What, yeah. What, was, what was it that's like? On your door at night. That that's why I didn't want to join the team. My family talk about yeah, join the military. It's still racism. And, Nigga, I fight, I fight racism at home. What? Right. Nah, yeah, I took the topic too. I appreciate you. So what was the racism like in the military? Um, it was like you couldn't do nothing about it because most of them was in charge and you couldn't really control. complain. You couldn't report it. You just had to live with it. As long as they didn't get true personal hold of you privately and then end up killing you. It didn't come to that part. But it was like you get mistreated, you get called names or whatever. But um, the the people that's in charge, they really didn't do anything about it because they they disrespected all of us all together. That's why we said we became brothers in arms, and you know, if we die, they're on the battlefield. We're gonna die as brothers and all that kind of stuff. But you get to meet all kinds of people from all over the world, and um, <clears throat> either you get along or you don't. And at first, I didn't get along with it, like. Mm -hmm. four five hundred of them and then um i got friends with like five of them and then it was nice. one, oh there's one dude i had to tell him off oh my goodness oh my hey, goodness. snap it, hey snap they they, yeah. they, they they be using that n-word heavy in, in the military because i was thinking about it back oh yeah day. oh yeah yes. oh I, yeah and you oh, can't do nothing yeah, about it do. you can't whoop that no. you can't do that you can't no man. you can try but it's just gonna get covered up you're gonna find yourself getting getting this duty story. Or yeah. uh, kind of extreme, they 15. do something they call the Article 15, yep, but they, they take half of your 15. money for the month, and or either they just put you out the military. For, 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 you, for, you, for, for you, for you, for you, for you, because they see you as a, a, a um. But a you, but you disrespecting soldier. me, and you calling me all on my name, calling me all kind of niggas. Can I yeah, but they will cover it up. Yeah, yeah. Cover it up and redneck motherfuckers. It was, they were covered up with. They put a, a genuine. Yeah. Uh, allegedly. No, no, ain't no allegedly. Because motherfucker, the same motherfuckers that guy's talking about, they, when they come back home, they become police officers. And that's why we got a fucking long yeah. police problem right now. Ain't no allegedly. Yeah. We got to stop. We got to stop all that allegedly. Too. That's the same shit when we used to be in the I don't see any. No, 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 you, you own the something, bro. You own the something. You, you goddamn right. Show is. That, that's why they yeah. send them young, little, that, them young little white boys to the military because they already. <laughs> Uh, extremists already as a team, so they be they be eager to go to the military to get some more training, and they come back out, come back out and get a job to, to exercise. The exercise. Yeah, I forget the exercise the, um, they study, but they did a study on that shit, bro. Yeah, exercise but um, they did it. I forget who did the study and shit, but they let they let that the crime shit how we was talking about it. You know, after they start, after we got a scream and they phrase, y'all niggas be fucking us up. They start looking at the crime, and they realize that. It was the motherfucker that was in the army and like the military that was like mad at stream shit just came in it was like yeah stream force that's why every time we was like hey police reform that's why they were screaming out fuck that we need more we need more reinforcements we need more guns man this this ain't no fucking wall field on your home man oh let me say it let me oh. say it like mike said we do not condone hate speech or any racial any kind of slur here this is for educational purposes only i, I can't put the thing up there like he can but i'll go ahead and say it <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there thank you. you. Disclaimer. I forgot my bad. All right, now check this part out though, because it is always a monkey wrench that can be thrown in. You know when who's gonna try to stab you in the back. You know how they look, and you know their mannerisms. You know when they're coming around you. But when you have black people that's willing to stab you in the back so they can either move up or stay up, 
or just to be treating mistreating you and i had that too i that. had that happen to me and it wasn't a good it wasn't a good thing and it wasn't a good sight but you know we we all came out alive because it could have been a whole lot different if my car I'm wasn't wrong. in the shop that weekend I'm sorry, that's good. Fucked up. I'm sorry, I have to. Mm -hmm. I, 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 that, I understand so, you very well. I've been stabbed from that while I was in the act of duty. So I, I definitely know. And it was by another black person who was trying to come up. Yeah. Hey, I ain't never been in the military. I've been stabbed when I was like in third grade, though, by a black kid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I and I didn't know I've been stabbed. I thought he hit me like a little bitch to the came up to the class like, hey, somebody's bleeding. When they used to try to uh, set me up, I take them right down to a trip there down in Mexico. And uh, mm -hmm. I let it get about eight or nine o'clock. And I go up to my hotel room and I lock the door and I leave their ass outside and let the Mexicans take care of them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, 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 they tell you in the military, you're supposed to, uh, was it have a wingman? You, you yep. travel with that? Yeah. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll be your wingman. You know, you stab me in the back. I'll be your wingman. Let's, let's go to, uh, let's go to hey. Cancun. Let's go to Mexico. Let, let, let's go to I'll be your yeah, wingman yeah. at 8 p.m. and I'm locking you out. <laughs> <laughs> Right I do the right same shit because I ain't gonna lie. I, I, I could tell so many stories, but I'm gonna tell one like right after I um finish um AIT, which is the military job that I get. Um, and then they let they said we could go home on leave. And I um this other soldier went with me. He was from California, white dude, must bound, everything. So we down, we came down, my cousin, he said, come on, let's go to the beach. We out on the beach. Now this Fort Lauderdale beach before they got the sidewalk and the, right. the, the little signs, all that stuff. It was just, it was road, then sand. So <laughs> we walking on the sand and uh, me and my cousin, we further into the sand away from the road. So we tell the white boy, we say, oh, what, don't stand so close to the road. But before we could, he said, why? And he had his shirt off. And a car with a Corvette with riding by a girl hanging all the way out and slapped him on his back. And, uh, yeah. and, and then they spun around and came back and spun at him. <laughs> and it was young girl, so they had like they was gonna hit him, but he was just standing there looking. They stopped and they was like, What's your name? What's your name? So yeah, it, it's all kind of wild stuff. But that joker was crazy because when we got back before they shipped us out, he um decided he wanted to take his knife out and stab the guy in the chest in his sternum. Uh, because he didn't like the way he said buddy and and then took the knife out and licked it so yeah they put him out on this discharge yeah yeah we get all yeah. kinds of crazy did, did, yeah. did, did the person yeah. Stab yeah, because that be the same nigga that come over here and be a fucking police yeah mm -hmm. yeah because mm -hmm. he must he was muscle bound and everything he was ready so he probably got out got dishonorable discharge but they probably covered it up so he can go to california and be a police you got damn right. But I was like, God dang. Yeah, he looked, he looked, he looked the goddamn knife. He looked the yeah. goddamn knife. Yeah, that's disturbing. That mm -hmm. Yeah. He did it. it. That's, that's, the, that's the white degeneracy that they don't talk yeah. about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They had yeah, a lot of stuff. It's easier to cover it up in the military than anything else. It's so much easier for them to cover it up. Yeah. Because yeah, they have that policy, don't ask, don't tell. They, they have that uh that hit was it is that hidden law that's in the military that's supposed to cover cover your superiorities or something like that but they won't cover nothing up for black folks in the military actually that's they crazy. say you have a mental problem but that's, 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 that's how they do you but isn't that's that how they any, do you in the military they say you have a mental problem and they kick you out on the dishonorable discharge or some uh some mental some mental shit or something like that to where you can't even be seen by doctors out here or you have like a straight up charge Wow. Like mm. Damn, it goes they deep. Man. Foul, I was just about boy. to say, I'm like, is it any different between actually having a job? And yeah, you just explained it right there with that. Just like in the police department, they cover up for the white for the white officers. They cover all that. They they dirt up that they do on the force. Yeah, they, they're, good, the they're good at throwing that mental issue. They are so good at throwing that that you got a mental issue or yeah. or you got a yeah. mental disability or 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 something something's wrong with you unstably. Uh you, you need to be seen by a psychic ward or or they they put you in a military prison and they'll be like 
oh, uh, he's been diagnosed with schizophrenia or some, some, some crap like that to, to kind of, you know, slide you out of there. So right. it makes them look good and makes you look bad at the end. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, 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 that, it, and that stuff that stuff carries on your record even once you get out the military. So you yeah, gotta, it, well, that's always been the name of the game. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah, and with the us. with the black police, y'all got to remember this: as long as it's like a Candace Owens thing, as long as yeah. you're yeah. helping them go against your own people, mm-hmm. you're good. But as soon as you step out, oh, they they got to get rid of you, come at you, or What's whatever. That movie with Denzel Washington. Hey. Wait, hold on, y'all. That shit remind me. That shit is funny because um, when I use the word character, I don't describe white people. I'll be talking about the police. That one is racist ass black dude cop trying to come stop me one day when I'm walking. And I, I, I cursed his ass out. I was like, hey, you stupid ass cracker, please stop me. For I just got off my road. He was like, I seen you walking for miles. So, like, you already know me once you lie to me. I'm about to snap up. I don't give a fuck who you is. I was like, oh, nigga, you like. I was like, you stupid ass cracker, blah, blah, blah. And he laughed. He was like, "Excuse me, I'm black." I was like, "Excuse me, motherfucker, I ain't racist." I was like, "When I use that word, I use that shit to describe cops." I was like, "What do you want to use? Pick a plus bottle, shit bag." I was like, "Don't be lying to me, his shit." But that black cop looked like he was mad surprised. Like, "I'm, I'm not a crack. I'm motherfucker. I'm from the hood. I'm not racist. A crackhead is police. Five o fives, squale twelve, the man, whatever you want to call him." <laughs> hey, hey, y'all see that? Yeah. What was that movie? What was that movie Ice Cube was in where, where uh, the uh, the police department was crooked, right? And it was a black police officer working in, uh, uh, it was based on the true story, working in uh, a department full of uh, the racist ass cops, right? And uh, mm-hmm. they tried to, they tried to uh, uh, frame Ice Cube that he, that, that, you know, that he had shot at the police or, or, he, or, he, or he killed the officer or whatever, right? It, 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 but, but, but then they all tried to jump and try to kill a black officer all in the police department. What was the name of that movie again, man? It was Ice Cube was in that movie. Y'all remember that? What about, like, I I, I kind of remember it, but what about that movie? Yeah. With, I, I thought you was going in the direction with Ice-T where they the, the white people made him think that he was cool, and they threw him out there in the woods, and they was hunting him. Mm-hmm. Y'all okay. remember that? Uh, where they I all ganged that. up on him. They had that dude yeah. that used to play The Rock or that show The Rock, and they was hunting Ice-T. Oh yeah, that dude. Oh, that, 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 I remember, dude. You took yeah. the same dude that was in Menace of Society that played the Rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you. I, yeah, I, yeah. I, the I, teacher. I, he played the teacher in the uh, Menace yeah. of Society. Yeah, I can't remember the title of that, but that was that was a good one. Yeah. I think yeah, really, man, I think with a lot of these movies, I think they, I think they get a lot of their inspiration or a lot of their so-called fiction from actual reality and what they've done yeah. to us in the yeah. past. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like they pretend like they thought it up, but really, this is just history and news reports that we didn't even yeah. know about. Yeah, and they just fiction a little bit, and then now you got your fiction. Now you thought I said fake. All you got to do is change the fiction around. You hear me? They took a brother to jail that that had a scholarship. Uh, 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 to go to college, right? And he was getting ready to get drafted, so they took the dude to jail on, on a trial that happened in the 70s. And they took him to jail. I think it was like Long Beach, California, Signal Hill, uh, the police department. And they hung the dude in, in, in the cell and they t- and they said and lied and said that he killed himself. So they did the autopsy report and everything. And they said it wasn't his fingerprints on the rope, it was it was somebody else's. Yeah, I ain't see that one. I seen um, yeah. a video when it was like five crooked ass black cop. So, um, jumped on homie and shit, and like cool. threw his ass in the shell and the shit, and he was in a wheelchair, and he lied about the shit, and that shit was on the thing. That's the only reason why they got caught, and they didn't even get up like real justice. I think they got fired like only a couple of years or some shit. Well, that, they don't well, know the me. black cop is just as just as just as dangerous as the white cop. Oh, yeah. Does, yeah. Well, definitely. Yeah. They always trying to show out. Yeah. You gotta be on. Yeah. You, you gotta have your head on the swivel, regardless who you get pulled over by. And yeah, that's why I said that shit earlier. You know, yeah, you know, I'm discriminating. You can't just mm. you, know, you gotta look at them white like I said, white supremacy is global. You gotta look at everybody that pulls you over with with that mentality. Yeah. So imagine if they try to make tethers police officers. They, they, they yeah, they're they they that. Yeah. 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 yeah, they're giving them they guns and black everything black else. Guns. It's about oh, the they already got them over there in Africa. So they, they got them already here in Florida. Literally, I, I would say it instantly. They they're already on the police squad. There's some tethers already on the police. They, they're already on it. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah, they, they, they're they're, hey, hey, look, look, I'm gonna tell you, they do something to my one of my child's man. I, I, I'm, I, hey, they, they just gonna have to uh and, and give me the chair, bro, because I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it my my life business to bury that motherfucker. 
Facts. I don't care Allegedly. about no money, bro. I don't care about no money, no parade. Y'all ain't got a march, none of that. I'm gonna have that myself. Fact. For yeah, no, no, like, I'm gonna hurt his family just like he hurt mine. For educational purposes only. <laughs> yeah, we do not condone violence or yeah, hate the world, no, any no, no. race, gender, or any potential <laughs> orientation you want to be called. This is for entertainment and educational purpose only. Please and thank you. Okay, so let me uh, ask you by Mike TV. <laughs> <laughs> let me ask y'all this real quick. So what do y'all see? Because it's already 2024 right now. So in 20, we got the elections going to be in 2025. Wait, how, how about Cuz? Go ahead. 30 minutes been up. I see people um talk uh trying to talk to Roger now. I'm looking on the TV. His time out been up already? That nigga means some more time if you talk to shit in the chat. But go ahead, continue. I was even looking at the chat. Can you even get back yep. in? Election is twenty twenty four. This November coming up. Oh, okay. So what do, okay, so what do y'all I think it's obvious at that point at this point that Trump's gonna win by a landslide. No. What do you think? You say no? Yeah, I say no. Why do you say that? Yeah, it's a lot of old people that's um still really? fucked up. Hey, point? you wanna know something crazy? Yeah, bro. Did you know something crazy? Me and my grandma, like my whole family, know we in there, right? So I'm like, hey, your mom, you know, we ain't really um. I'm telling some shit. She's like, oh, I ain't know it's black people here before Chris Columbus. I was like, y'all go, why the fuck do we call ourselves Jimmy and it's a black for? And then she was like, oh, huh. I was like, what are you? Then she was like, I'm African American. I'm like, your mama. Okay, how the hell are we ask? Af- oh, you African American? I'm like, I don't claim being African American. She was like, you claim whatever the fuck you want. Okay, how are you African American? Even when your, how do your mama don't even claim? Like, none of us claim to be African American except for you. I was like, can you explain it? She was like, oh, because the culture changed. And I had to break it down. They're like, no, why is it we the only people that get our culture changed? And you, the Europeans ain't never get reclassified. But I was like, that's a crazy. But yeah, I agree. Like, don't think it's so easy for Trump to get in. Because there's going to be a whole lot of motherfuckers still voting for Democrats. For no reason at all, just because they're Democrat. Well, I mean, if you really, if you look at just the immigrant situation, just the crime reports, like, you you notice that they're targeting a lot of just elderly people or single mothers. You know what I'm saying? Moms and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? Just vulnerable people. So th- this has to be the same demographic that voted for Democrat in the first place, you would think. So yeah, well, I, I think I, that I, would change the like, vote tremendously. Like, yeah. I didn't been around and I, I didn't ask a, I didn't ask about at least a good fifty different black people, man, and they all said they ain't rocking with the Democrats. And I don't know about like everybody else or, or, or you know statewide mm-hmm. or statewide, but I just know like man, everybody I'm I'm surprised. I, this is the first time in my life I, I black folks really ain't really rocking with the with the Democrats. Yeah, it's a lot of us that ain't, but it's, it's still a few years. I think it might be like a 50 50 split. Like, half of us ain't fuck with the Democrats no more, and the other half still fuck with them. So, where do y'all land on it? It might, it might, it might be 64. Oh, I'm an independent, baby. This conversation don't concern me. I've been an independent ever since the month for the coming about. I said, Oh, what? I said, Do we have a Republican? That want me? Oh, no, I'm an independent, baby. So, yeah, I'm proud of myself on that one. <laughs> Anybody else? <clears throat> I mean, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm just, I'm, I'm conservative with it. I have I'm not the I'm not the insane conservative with it where I'm just I go full fledged because I understand like the thing about Trump, I feel like he did a lot of good things for the economy, but I also think that he put fuel in the back of a lot of these white supremacists to act the way they do. I think yeah, that, I agree. Uh, yeah, I think the climate had changed more hostile towards Trump being president. You know what I'm saying? But I don't think Joe Biden did anything to try to sever those ties or Obama. Yeah. So, that's just how I feel about it. But I still yeah, I don't from the window. I I mean to keep it to, to be real. Hey, he got he got in check first. I want him just to get these migrants out of the country. That's just, that, that's what I need him to do at this point. Oh, uh, you think you think he's gonna do that shit if he want? I, I honestly, if, at this point, with as many as this in this country, at this point, I don't see that happening just he's automatically or anytime soon. He, he, sure. he, yeah, he, he might not vote. at this point because those are his votes. Those, well, those it might be vote. the plan I mean, all along. I mean, they can't they can't vote now, but come next election, after this, all those migrants that don't came up in here, they will now be able to vote. So he's pulling them up in here to not only replace us, but to also get the votes from the minority from them. So, so you think it was Trump who did that shit when he was trying to niggas about the law? That's exactly what yes. I think it was. So you think that shit was all popular? He was like, I'm gonna get the Mexicans to build a wall. 
And he was like, I, I ain't gonna be president no more. And he was I mean, like, oh. I mean, it did happen when, you know, Biden and all of them came up, and when Obama pulled that crap, I mean, they, they all been doing it. All of them. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, and, and, and Trump was the only one who was like, yo, fuck them migrants. It's part of my language. It's part of my friends. But right. Trump was like, yo, fuck yeah, them right motherfuckers. Literally, that, that, yeah, that, 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 I'm, that's what I was trying to pull. I know, but you, I forget. Was that you who said more black people is fucking with um, Republicans? There's a lot of motherfucking black people that's going to be voting for Trump. So Trump fucking realized, yeah. like, oh, black people fuck with me now? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Like I got no, this in the bag. Yeah. Yeah, uh, it's it. some black people. It's a, it's a bunch of black people I didn't met. They uh they yeah, rocking with Trump. They need us right they now. Not they not rocking with Trump because, because the racist the racist uh motherfuckers rocking with them. They rocking with Trump for their own reason. Yeah. Now, I'm like, look, I don't like, even oh, tell okay. motherfuckers to me. Mom and sister be having this conversation. I was like, y'all, I don't be voting like that. But I be telling my friends yeah. if I were to vote, I tell mom, I say I would want um Trump it off. She go why? I go um it's just like these all everybody else. At least I know what the motherfucker talking about, and I can see the shit coming. I don't want no president that's gonna be talking shit behind my back. But at least yeah. Trump had the buzz like, yeah, fuck, fuck you niggas. Yeah, um, yeah. anyway, blase, blase, blase. All right, cool. I know what you're saying. Yeah, he was saying all that shit where he was like, shithole countries, all these motherfuckers come over here trying to, you know, uh, penny pinch off of uh, off America's, that, America's that's already here and all kind of shit. Like, Trump was. Yeah, that's why all the, yeah, yeah, that's why all the white racist white people like, yeah, our country, yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So you really think Trump playing all this sh- like that? I'm not the smartest thing in the room or in the world or shit, but that shit don't make sense to me. Trump didn't want these niggas in it, but he said, yo, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to act like I won the world just so I had to wait eight years to get back in presidency and to get migrants. I don't think I don't think that was the plan. I think he I think he's not paying to stay in office for fucking eight years like he wanted to. I think he think he was this shit. And that's what he told the white people, hey, go fuck. All right, the election was fake. Um, January 6th action, baby. And that's why that happened, because he thought he had the juice. I don't, I don't think he planned for that shit to happen, bro. I think he wasn't no fucking world builder. And that's like, mm, nah, nigga, we ain't building a wall for you. If you want to wall build it yourself. And... How we having this conversation now? Trump was saying all that racist shit, and us as black people are loving shit. Everybody, we like, nah, nigga, that shit sound racist. We ain't fucking with you, Trump. Let our people live here. Let our people in here, Trump. You crazy, Trump. That shit sound racist. Now nah, you racist, Trump. Now, now let that what happened four years later. Goddamn, Trump. Was you right, Trump? Why the fuck all these motherfuckers coming and talking shit about it, us? It, it, it do sound like he was right though. Even though I ain't caping for him or nothing like that, but I'm just saying, saying yeah, yeah, fuck all that. Yeah, I ain't caping for him either, but can I say it sounds like a plan, but like, nah, I think his way got fucked up, bro. Yeah. I think that nigga, who under the wall, he, that shit ain't happen. And that's yeah. why Biden yeah. fucked up, was like, yeah, yeah black he people, you think. Look at the Democrats, bro. They don't got no fucking, um, this political season. They don't got no shit to say or defend for shit. They don't, they don't got nothing to say for. Um, yeah, no, don't vote no, Trump. No, yeah, don't vote Trump. Arguing with because, people. Yeah, because they want to use us to get all because they know we love each other, so we're gonna them. get all come here. Yeah, oh, fuck that, bro. Nigga, I'm too smart for all that shit. I, I look, I don't watch no media. I look from the outside in when it's cold outside. But I was born in the cold, I'm used to the cold, and all this shit look funny. Nigga, Trump ain't, I don't know who said that shit, but that shit sounded like some dumb ass shit. Trump planned it. For a while, not to get bills, so he could get the migrants. And when he was talking shit about the migrants, my nigga, that shit always sound right, nigga. You gotta be a dumbass nigga to talk some shit about somebody, like full force, and then let them in your shit. Like a nigga won't come and smoke your ass. Hey, you know, hey, yo, Pat, you know what they talk hey, about? Yo, Pat, I done talk, yo, yo, cuz I done talk shit about you and your whole family for goddamn four years, eight years straight. Hey, fuck up for my plan is so you to come into my house to make it easier for your ass to come kill me. That's that's just sound smart to you, cuz you on milk, snap. That's crazy. Oh, yeah, but no, I was trying to make a point and shit when he was like, Jump playing. I said, Do this make sense to you, cuz I talk shit to you for, for fucking four years. Like, yeah, fuck you, cuz you ain't my family no more. Blah, 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 blah. For four years, that's so I'd bring you to my home. And everybody, I talk shit to make it for easier for you to fuck me up if y'all wanted to. Yeah, do that shit sound right? On real stuff, Trump. Yeah. 
is a uh, white riser man. He a flip flopper, and he he go with oh, yeah. the wind blows. Where you know he'll get most adoration. So right, he, he, he kind of dangerous, and um, <laughs> it, it's somebody I wouldn't trust. But um, you he, know, Biden did his dirt too. But yeah. and and I know everybody. It's hard to see it, but um, more policies have been under Biden, but still don't trust that joker. Like, no. like I said, one thing. That mm-hmm. Hey, look, because I'm gonna say like this: I don't even give a fuck if Trump was racist. I just know I ain't trusting an old ass white dude who no, is no. pictures with KKK and also said you're not black if you vote for me. Like I'm a fucking yeah. child, motherfucker. Yeah. You the second date. I don't even give a fuck if I love you or not. You ain't 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 gonna tell my ass be like we back in the slave town, motherfucker. I don't give a fuck who you is. But go ahead. Yeah, I'm talking about before he before he became president. New era, they got video footage of him talking down on black folks. Yeah, that's the thing. They got pictures of him with the Klan and the Grand Wizards and all that shit. Yeah, yeah both sides. It's both they sides. They keep blaming him for that. Um, one's telling you not to, uh, to be black, not to vote for him, and the other one's like, man, I I I still rock with Hitler. I mean, yeah. it's like who 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 we gonna vote for? Because you know you got one stabbing you in the back and the other one stabbing you right in your face. <laughs> Look, <laughs> I will yeah, say this: yeah. that's why I don't watch me and shit because I don't watch everybody's shit and take the good parts. And even if you're a fucked up in the I can yeah, still listen to what the fuck you say. The lesser evil, the lesser of two evils. Yeah, so, but I mean, we do, we do, uh, It's a third option that shit. Um, Tariq said, "Tell shit." He said, um, well, I don't even think he said, I think I heard it said for somebody else. He said, vote for somebody who on the bed. But I think I heard somebody say, fuck that. I don't give a fuck if they cutting a the check or not. Nigga, we ain't voting that all. Hey, voting for that. anybody. That's what I'm yeah. That's what people Let do. the white that's, that's people that's fight for point. themselves. That's yeah. the point that you bring up. You don't even have to participate. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm not saying anything tangible to black people. They, neither one, neither party has offered us anything. At this point. Mm-hmm. And that's how we make a statement. We ain't gonna fuck if you're conservative or left ring, right ring, or middle ass nigga like me and shit. You know? Yeah. And wait, none of us motherfuckers voting and shit. They're like, oh, what's going on in the black vote? What's going on in black America? They ain't voting for nobody. And once we all tell them now, we want our reparations and delineations, that shit will happen overnight. Uh, yeah. And listen to Russell Donald, is, but it's hard as fuck to get everybody on cone and do that shit for you. Oh, what y'all talking about? Oh, this whole light skin nigga oh, back. Yeah, how was the angel? Yeah. How was the angel football, my name? All right, it was good. It was good. I was actually listening most of the time. My phone just died when you guys started talking about Diddy and then Trump. Oh, oh yeah. Um, somebody asked. We're gonna leave. Yeah, um, what kind of punishment on um, Raza man gonna get for his? Oh no, nah, yeah. Yeah, I think he's on vacation for about um. Oh, wait, I got so much hope for Raza, but every time he takes a step forward, he takes a thousand steps back. I'm like, damn. Hey, yo, Mike, I'm, he I'm, lied to hey, I'm over here just trying to enjoy my massage, and in hey. one breath he's saying George Floyd died from a drug overdose, and then he's like, never mind, he died from the knee on his neck. I'm like, this motherfucker can't make up his mind. <laughs> yeah, you see how I did, um play duck duck goose with that nigga? Like, all right, let's play. I, I agree with you. Mind. So, what what was the point of the knee then? Oh, 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 it has something to do with nigga. Both shit can't be true at the same time. Yeah, that made no sense at all. Poor little Raza, man. He's still confused. He's still fighting the programming. <laughs> no, bro. I, I think I know what it's. Oh, yeah. His new name. What'd you hear when I gave her his new nickname? Oh, man, I thought that's a little poetry because every time we try to get that nigga some information, he stay hating on us. Let that little nigga Destin from, uh, I mean, man off of Destin Laboratory mm-hmm. from back in the day. Real quick, uh, shout out to Big Hank. Shout out to Big Hank coming through with the cash apps. Big Hank said that, uh, Big Hank said New Era was moderating like a pro. Okay, yo. Appreciate you, baby. Yep, yep. He was doing it. He was doing it. And Big Hank says, I'm using nunchucks to feed ducks now. Y'all wild and y'all wild. <laughs> but hey, um, if you guys want an encore, you know what to do. Go ahead and throw five on it. I got to uh, dip out for like another 30 minutes or so. My phone's still only on like 8%. So I'll be back in a little bit. Can you bring anybody up? Yeah, if there's somebody backstage right now, I can bring him up real quick. Uh, but uh, there's nobody one. backstage. Yeah, Chris. Hey, bring Chris. Uh, if he's still up there. I know he... Um... Got dropped off for a minute. Well, y'all got two minutes to hurry up and click the link so I can um bring you up before I dip off again. Oh, so Dustin Doll back here. 
Mm-hmm. She don't know no, how to channel it. Oh, that was right 10 now. minutes ago. Yeah. She probably left. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was 10 minutes ago. Never mind. All right. Yeah, all but right. I think uh, I think that um fake young boy that's really 45 need to be on a vacation. Yeah. Yeah, probably. For like at least two probably. weeks. Yeah, I'm done. Well, all right, y'all. I'll be back in about 30. Keep the show going. Okay. All right. All right. Hey, Unless your motherfuckers ran out of stuff to talk about. <laughs> all right, we good. We good. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta. All right, all right. Keep up the good work. So, okay, she um, unless y'all want to stay on this, this voting topic or whatever, uh, what do y'all think about black media? I know, we've been about to the topic. No, y'all want to continue Trump, Trump and Biden? Uh, I don't know for I just thought that question was funny. We was like, oh, that nigga Trump mm-hmm. saying all this shit for the beginning. Oh, <laughs> thank uh, you. I think he's playing the ball. No. I always said I should be playing the ball yeah. for the combat, for the immigrants. Oh, if yeah, the immigrants the beating up, yeah, yeah. If, yeah. The, if the immigrants beating up the niggas and shit, that helping them and shit, I don't really think Trump's gonna even, even want them. Like, oh, you beating up police? Yeah, I think I made a mistake. I, I, Even if that shit was true. How long has immigration been an issue, though? Think about it. You know what I'm saying? It's always been kind of like an American thing, and especially just to put them in our type of neighborhoods. To under- yeah, but not, it's been a long time since we had a drove like this, though. You got to think about it. When the last time we had drove like this? In yeah, major cities? I ain't never heard of, heard of, heard I of this drove in my whole entire life. Yeah, this is... This is disturbing to me. I ain't never seen every time before. elections come around, something like this happens. It, it, yeah, it's it, a big ass distraction, yeah. Like yeah, but yeah, we never had um Texas sending them to other states and stuff like that. Yeah, every no. year is something different. They do something different. Like when what? Trump was in there, he said, Let's separate the damn kids from the parents. And then um Obama, when he was there, he was kept sending them back, he would catch them. He wouldn't right. arrest them. He'd just send them back across the thing. He deported yeah. more than any president in history. Hey. Well, back hey, in snap, the day, hey, snap, hey, snap. hey, look, hey, snap. I just never seen so many black people get smoked under uh, 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 Obama administration, though, bro. Yeah, I mean, they was getting man the Trayvon Martin, and it was like back to back, like every other month, like every other month, in the news it hit somebody black, a young, a youngster getting killed. I'm like, damn. By yeah, and police really or white supremacy. yeah, notice he really couldn't say nothing because we would have had another assassinated president. I'll tell you that. For real. Damn. Yeah, but back to immigration, like it, beforehand, when you had to apply to for citizenship in this country, you had to uh apply, actually apply. You know what I'm saying? Now it's just they've just letting these people just come in illegally with no identification. So no yeah. this has never happened. This is the first time this has happened in American history. So you telling me, right, I could be a tether or, or I could be a terrorist and I can come right on through with everybody else. And then yep. next thing you know, next thing you know, some, some big ass buildings is, is blown up again. Or some it, pla- hey, oh, bro. But I mean, oh, what? Yeah, I don't want to talk about some shit getting blown up. Y'all seen yeah. what happened to the bridge, right? Yeah. In Baltimore, right? Yeah. Yeah, tell me why I was watching the motherfucking video and shit. You know, I ain't a conspiracy theorist. I just see you real and shit. Yo, bro, tell me why I went to the motherfucking bridge. Um, go. Um, they got like an outside video. I don't know who fucking recorded this shit though. But um, there's some lights flashing on top of that shit. And as soon as the bridge hit it, somebody told somebody it was dynamite. And that shit dash up look like explosion. Like a, you know how you set lines and the explosion go one after another. That shit dash up look like that shit on top of the bridge and the way that shit collapsed. But I just find that shit funny. And hey, I thought that. What, what happened to home, homeland security for the uh, uh for the country? But they sure ran to uh, the boy Diddy house. But they sure ain't running to them borders doing no homeland security. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's crazy, right? They they pick homeland and security. want you to they pick and choose what they want you to focus on. Yeah, one of them videos of shit. Um, you do see that might be playing. You see the um homeland security and both of um patrol waving the motherfucking immigrants and shit like it's a line and shit like we on six flags. Come on, <laughs> come on. Like, damn, this how Border Patrol motherfuckers? And you just, but let the niggas be in a hood and shit. Oh, we got a call for you. Get on the ground. Uh, uh, yeah, make that shit make sense. So you, you telling me, ain't you telling me ain't no terrorists coming in through that little, the, that, that batch of infantry? Ain't no terrorists. Bullshit. Bro, they done thought about like um, 600 of them. They coming through. Uh, 
Yeah, they called 600 on my name and said, they said, we caught 600. What? Yeah, and that's what we, before me and Mike was making jokes about that shit, they actually caught 600 terrorists and shit. Yeah. And motherfucking, yeah. they got that shit on their military record. Yeah, yeah. Motherfucking 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 I'm seeing new faces. I'm talking, nah, nigga. So that ain't making sense, homie. Your Chinese food always been fucked up. Yeah, no, nah, I'm talking about the new people and shit. Like, like I'm gonna get a couple of shit. Like, I live in a small town. Everybody know me and shit. You feel me? Yeah. I, I learned my Chinese people and shit. And I'm fucking up the fuck. But goddamn, like three, um, uh, like the last three months, I'm, I'm about to stop eating it though. Every time I order some shit, they fuck my shit up. And every time I go in there, I seem like a new motherfucker cooking my food. I ain't never seen that motherfucker before. I don't. I, 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 that I, over, yeah. I'm, I'm big guy. Like that's how I know I'm feeling fat boy. Like if I ain't even racing, nigga. You fuck up my food. Yeah, I can't fuck with you no more, homie. Right. Let me know. Yeah, let me know. I don't trust no fast food places. Yeah. Like anybody would be dirty. Yeah, that's why I like the old good old, you know, hole in the wall restaurants where they take their time to cook. You got to wait an hour for your meal, nigga, for like 45 minutes. I cut this bitch on scratch. What do you think about all them people you see fighting in them drive throughs <laughs> Just over nothing. Yeah. Like, it'd be very rare for you to see me out of fast food. And that's a, and I only eat every fast food I eat at cookout. That should be busting because I think they real. Like, they made that shit from like scratch. I don't know if y'all got cook out in um front and where we are, but that should be busting. We'll be back in thirty minutes. Yeah. Yeah, but who the fuck was fighting over the um, fast food? I ain't see about that shit. I ain't see that. Yeah, I ain't. I ain't yeah, see it's that. a lot of videos. Most of them are staged, but sometimes somebody act crazy. And I'm gonna say the last thing I know about was that pot pie shit when niggas. But beat niggas up for a pot pie chicken sandwich. <laughs> yeah. Hey, look, we need to bring back Jason Pell because that would have been a perfect episode for a Saturday of Black History issue. Yeah. Niggas fighting over chicken sandwiches. But yeah, I'm on that. Yeah. on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's crazy, man. What y'all think about them, them documentaries? I think what they, they just put out one about the Nickelodeon mm-hmm. about the mess with them kids. I, uh, what was the title of that? Um, Predators at Nickelodeon. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, y'all, y'all, did y'all check out? Did y'all ever check out Quiet on Set? Yeah, Quiet on Set. Yeah. Man, that's crazy. I didn't know I, Nickelodeon and, 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 and doing them child stars like that, bro. That's crazy. You, they was molesting them. And, and, hey, let's let's hey. be fair. Let's not forget about Disney. I'm a yeah, 90s yeah, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Growing up as a kid, we heard all the stories as a kid. We was like, oh, you goddamn. Yeah. Yeah, Disney and Disney and Nickelodeon. Yeah, they were they were doing some unspeakable things to some kids and shit like that. Uh, that dude, that producer of uh, Nickelodeon, was um, that, Dan, uh, Dan Snyder. Yeah, Dan Snyder, that's those, the one that everybody uh, knows about. But it's a whole list of motherfuckers. Where, like show their feet and stuff, and like mm. sitting there taking pictures of them, like underage kids' feet and all that stuff. No, like, that's uh, crazy. What's it? That girl from uh, iCarly was saying something about that. Yeah, Sam. Yeah, that's why she got blackboard and shit. Yeah, and then and then heard about, uh, what's her name? Uh, Kathy Kennedy from the Walt Disney thing using uh, what was it? She was using the uh, racism stuff in order to uh, push the movies, the Walt Disney movies. Mm-hmm. Uh, hey, so y'all remember um that girl from Eva Stevens and shit? Um, her mama. I just found that shit out. When she was a 14, when we thought was like, oh, her boobies at his boobies, she was like, nah. Her mama made her get a best um, abduction when she was 14, when she was at Disney. So, yeah, they had girls doing fucking body construction when they're like 14, like, yeah. So, when we watching these kids and shit, I was like, oh, the kids, I remember this shit. Goddamn, these kids are looking older more. Yeah, it's the reason why, shit. I'm thinking, it's like, nah, mama, like, plastic surgery at 14, what the fuck? What kid need plastic surgery at 14? Let's just go down the list. You know what I'm saying? Orlando Brown, Amanda Bynes. You know what I'm saying? The, the Austin Twins. The Austin yeah. Twins. Talk about yeah. me and I shall appear. Now what? Let's talk up? about 30 minutes. What? 30 minutes? Who? <laughs> 30 minutes? <laughs> hey, Mike. Hey, Mike. Did you pull out your white side to get home quick? 
<laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. First of all, first of all, my phone is still on 4%. It's just I found a Mexican restaurant where I can charge up while I eat. So I'm sitting down to have some dinner. Oh, 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 okay. I, I thought you pulled out that European 25% side and got home quick through Uber. Damn. <laughs> Damn, fuck y'all. You know, I, you know I'm picking with nah. you, Mike. You I live in such a small town, there is no Uber. But you know what? We got Seduction Doll in the building. <laughs> seduction Doll, what's up? Oh, yeah. there you go. Seduction Doll. Hey, what is this? It's my C Day weekend. It's my C Day weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd come by and check it out, see what's going on. Um, hey, I'm about really, to go to Zuki. This right? bitch right? got me some Patron Silver. Deliver to the table. I'm not taking a couple shots of the patron here. Okay. okay. Hell yeah. What's popping? What's popping? No, hold on, really, hold on. It's, it's early over here in Denver. Is my camera facing forward or backwards? I can't see it. Forward. Mm, forward. Okay. Uh, Salud, uh, my nigga. Salud. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I might be in, in, in a few minutes. I may go in the cabinet. Find me a bottle. Yeah. Uh, it's early over here, but I'm just like, uh, I was just trying to see if the internet was working well because I could hear it clearly on the YouTube, but choppy in the in the stream yard. I was just did a little test because it's C Day weekend, man. Like, if everything could fail all at once, it failed. And I was kind of like piecing it all together because I just can't fail. So, yeah, I'm just checking in, say, see what y'all was on, what y'all was on. They ain't shit. What? Just to, they want to just drop yeah, random yeah. top person now and shit. How to get that? Um, yeah, we didn't hear you. It's the audio, huh? Oh, because it's choppy. Yeah. It's like I can hear you kind of weird, but I'm not sure. I'm on um. Everything kind of fell apart, so I'm all MacGyvered up right here. You know what I mean? I don't know if it's me or it's, or it's the it's the internet or whatever. No, that's what I was like. Let me just let me find out. Do a little test. You know what I mean? I got you. Y'all can hear me though, clearly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah what y'all? Like? Hey, I want to tell you about the uh, military, real quick, because I, I that's what I tried to get on the first time. Good. Um, I took a anger management course with the with the military. Right. I, I, at what point in life I had put a put a person in in the army, and so I had the benefits. I married him, so I reaped the benefits of the first wife right and it was really racist when you when you deal with the women in the military the wives in the military right they treat black women like shit like they don't exist like they're not important right and they have all these little events where you know the they bring the family out or whatever you bring all these kids your family you know whatever but all the black soldiers with the black wives right their wives were sitting separate as these motherfucking Karens, excuse me, I'm sorry, I didn't mean because uh, <laughs> Karens were out there uh, doing the most, wearing the worst shit. They didn't look like ladies at all. They was like like real ho, ho shit, right? The, where, the, where the black wives, you know, we kind of nice, nicely dressed because we rep, we have to represent every you know, soldier or whatever, right? And so I'd be over there sitting over with them and it would be like a whole different conversation. I mean, meandering around like th these brothers talk about nothing. The sisters barely talk to each other, and it's like that because the military make it like that. There would they? It's always on the on TV. It's like family first, right? But in reality, it's it's a soldier first. So, and, and I had a serious case where the hold on, the, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I know you didn't come up. Where is Rosamond? Is she French? She said we. She said us black women. You biracial, girl. Don't you know you're biracial? <laughs> nah, Roger Man ain't up in no more. He done ran. We made his ass ready. He got tired of his mouth. Calling me uh, biracials and half breeds and all kinds of shit last time. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, nah, he was on that oh, shit today. Right? So that would make me and Cuz get pissed. He was talking shit about um, seduction, though. I, earlier today. Yeah, I told him he had one more time. I don't know what he said. I was going to get him. He gave me a headache. What happened? I'm sorry. I'm so I apologize. Oh, no, you get it. That's a telecontain that she was half white. Oh, you know the usual. You half white, uh, sis. There. Uh, yeah, you know, that ain't on um, my body. That's on them. You know what I mean? 
I know who the fuck I am. I know where I belong. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have to check the way. I got yeah, we, you know we got your bed. We checked this ass earlier. Okay. Really certified for what? Uh, however, back to what I was saying. In the military, right? Um, I had a situation, a really ugly situation. When I came home, I was I was living up off the state. They was um the person was living on the on the base, and I was living. I was fighting the case in over in Colorado. Uh-oh. Oh, Wi Fi, Wi Fi. Yeah, she was kind of out. So was, was she was she Girl. in the military? Or well, back in. Now we know it's your it's on your side. It's your um connection, sis. But what you were saying, Desmond? Yeah, I think I think a Wi Fi dropped. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it could be because my shit on my TV fucking up too. Yeah, I seen him disappear. I seen his face there for a second. I seen him glowing. The the agents did some work on him. <laughs> you know I got a pick on him. I know you gonna come back at me. I know you listening. <laughs> oh, you know. Hey, hey, them agents, them agents put work in on him, boy. Hey, look, hey, you ain't supposed to joke about Mike and shit. We are supposed to be sister like the tethers and shit. Once you talk about Mike, he ain't supposed to like black people either. The dark skins is making fun of me, so you know. I don't like no dark skin people no more. Ain't that what on um, that other teller said we should be on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Hey, look. Uh, was it uh, dark skins don't like uh, light skins? Dark versus yeah. light skins? That's some bullshit. Right, that's a, who's saying that? Racist yeah, ass white people trying to jump in I, before. I, I, I what they have to. I feel for the white people. I got a cousin the same complexion as Mike. Mm-hmm. Shit, I got a few. It's just amazing the colorism games that they play. You know what I'm saying? Like they make everything based off color, not based off integrity. Not based hey, off Mike, get a text that damn right. You listening? We both native here. Shit, I got two sisters, and I had three brothers. That was the color of Mike. Yeah. Real tough. <laughs> and, and look, and a snap, and and his mama and daddy, right? My cousin, mama and daddy, they black. One is one is caramel skin, and one is dark skin. So I don't, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't hey, understand. Yeah, the dynamic. I'm gonna do a experiment with y'all one day and shit. I might show you a picture of my family when I was little, and I want to see if y'all to see where I was at. Cause I don't look the same when everybody be, hey, baby, I shit like New Yorkers. Cause every time I go back home, my family, and my friends roast me for getting dark. Yeah, but everybody's family has different shades of races. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Hey, hey, all, all our family is, is is shades, is different shades. Yeah, but it's funny how they come on like, like oh, you too. Hey, but I'm glad that motherfucker admitted that shit about bleaching and shit. Yeah, I swear to God, that nigga ain't no eighteen, bro. Do you believe that though? Yeah, like, I promise, bro. Like as much as he was bleaching, how's he still alive? If that was the case. Mm-hmm. See, I got a present for him and shit that to prove it, but I don't want to say it out loud because I know the motherfucker listening, and I don't want him to remember next month when he call in. Because niggas be dumb as fucking man. Yeah, he be using that against. Yeah, I'm an accountant, but I don't know no math. Welcome back, sis. Hey, snap! You, say, I mean, I mean, Welcome hey, Newer, you say you out of Brooklyn, right? Brooklyn or Bronx? Yeah, nah. Um, you said what now? I think I might lose. Yeah. No, I was saying you got. You said I think you, I might you lose. Say you, in, you, you say you was born in Brooklyn or, or, or the Bronx? Brooklyn, Brooklyn Hospital, oh, baby. Bet, bet. bet. Yeah. You still got. I can still hear. It, even though you you, you say you, you down south right now in, in Virginia, I can still South Carolina. Still, south Carolina. You still got. I can still hear your uh your, your Brooklyn accent. Yeah, you still got that, that accent a little bit. Mm-hmm. I hear that a lot. Until I go back home, then dude, that's why I love the young bro. Yeah, yeah, that's it for the shit. Yeah, but yeah, maybe I shouldn't like my family no more because they say I lost my ass and I ain't one of them no more. Yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> because, man, you ain't never come visit no more. Yeah, that's one thing about the young and shit. We roast the shit out your ass real quick. Yeah, they get on me too, new era. They they say I sound white. <laughs> oh yeah, you talk like my cousin Reen every. Rest in peace to my friend. Every time I hear you talk, bro, I get a flashback about my country and how we used to roast his ass for talking, bro. Yep. Sorry, I just, yeah, your ass out white as fuck, cuz. 
Hey, look, my, my, my people's down there in Alabama, right? When I talked to him on the phone, they said, uh, we, uh, uh, us on the West Coast, we sound like, we talk like we a uh, 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 white boy. We talk, we come on, we talk clear like a white boy, like, because we don't talk with the Southern accent. Yeah, and all proper like, like that, too. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. great. Oh, shit, I'm about to lose yeah. it again. Uh, I'll be right back. I'm about to lose it. I'll be right back. All right. Let's all right. Hold on. I guess. Hey, that shit remind me of shit. I used to be playing. You know how we get together, we be playing spades and shit. My sister all talking like she, you know, she, like she talking about family shit. Her work stop calling this shit. But you know, you know how we start roasting this shit. She like, shut the fuck up, bro. I gotta make a phone. You know that, big, you know, she start going on her so called white voice, bro. That shit was so funny. As soon as she hung up, everybody stopped busting. I was like, God damn! One second you hug, one second you pop. Yeah, that was a good night. Everybody yeah. got roasted that night. Yeah, Mike be talking like a surfer, bro, for real. Hey, if you really want to see him talk like that, um, you should watch one of his videos when he was called "Who Watches the White Man." The first video when I saw his ass, that's why I thought that nigga was like the college professor ass for real. My nigga was sitting in the camera was like, "Yes." I see my nigga say that, but I was like, "Oh, he's about to." I was like, "Oh, he's one of us." Hell yeah. But yeah. So snap, hey snap. So you think if if you go to the UK, say you you go to the UK for twenty years, will you develop their accent if you stay there for like for so long or no? You start picking it up. I don't know how many years it'll take, but oh shit, possibility. I <laughs> know nah, you pick it up because I, hey, because yeah. I do got a thing like whatever. Oh, somebody get on my nerves and shit. And when people know I'm from New York, I dare sure I start talking like I'm from fucking the South and shit. And motherfuckers be think I'll be serious. Like if you first meet me, I'm like yeah, like I'm like I'm from the South and motherfuckers be leaving. They like you from South? Like, I show up and the motherfuckers in the back be blasting out laughing. They're like yo, he's fucking yeah. with you. He's not from the South. Nah. I can't tell. But yeah, bro. Yeah. <laughs> if I smile next to with a big ass two legs smile, say it's going on. Yeah, but if you listen to New Era for so long, you can tell that he he got that New York, uh, Brooklyn shit accent. If you listen, man, especially in the beginning, I'm sorry, born and all that stuff out of him. <laughs> My bad. Yeah, you good. You are definitely good with that. That's what happened to me when I get mad too. I start I start speaking like I'm from up north. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it, 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 yeah, I'll be trying to hide yeah. it. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, the way we had to grow up, we don't want to bring out the hood back and shit. It was going, it was different growing up in the 90s in New York. It, we, had to, we had to do different shit. I remember still can't wear on um, blue on fucking Tuesdays. They had red blue on fucking Thursday on some real shit. Man, what? Well, yeah, we was built different. That's why I always say I was born in the old best star, not the new best star. Oh, it's a new best star now? No shit. Bro, I went there for my train funeral, bro. It's so many BBLs walking and so many white people walking around there. Like, I'm from fucking, um, I don't know what part of the style you from, but, um, if you know what Allah King is, I used to be on, um, Broadway where the homie got killed. Uh, 94. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they done changed that shit. It's not glass now. And, yeah, white people walking. It's clubs now where old villages to be and shit. Like, what the? Yeah, it's totally different now, bro. Hey, white hey, people hey, walking hey, around hey, like it's, yeah. it's hard. It's hard in the motherfucker. Hey, look, I tell you this. Yeah, yeah. Hey, bro, they selling soy milk out the fucking corner store now. Damn. Yeah. Now we used to go get the top cheese and shit, and the motherfucking butter and um jelly on the road. Yeah, sure. They getting the shit in for the white people now. That's how you know shit changing. Yeah. See, I know like the the, the old best star uh, and shit like now. That uh, that six nine nigga, whoever he is, his bitch ass wouldn't even he wouldn't even last a week, bro. Back then, I mean, oh hell I, no, I, 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 I'm already knowing the, the old New York, nigga, Brooklyn. No, they really don't play that shit. They know him for robbing motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah, I didn't hear what I said. I got stabbed in third grade. You want to take a guess of what state I was in when that happened? <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, it wasn't the south. Yeah. <laughs> And then right before I moved to Florida, shit, I got into another night fight with the same motherfucker who stabbed me. I didn't even know that shit. Yo, that shit's crazy as shit. I had to take the nigga down the block and shit. My auntie recipe, she was like, don't go down the block with the motherfuckers who be selling drugs. Yeah, yeah. I'm talking about my homies and shit. This motherfucker comes with a glass bottle. I recognize the bitch. I'm like, yeah, I'm about to dust this nigga off before I move to Florida. He got to run down the block and try to catch his ass. 
I dust his ass off. He go run back down the block to his grandma house, get a knife. I was like, oh, I just see the knife coming out. Yo, you know, crazy motherfuckers. Hey, somebody give me a knife. Nah, little Nicky, fuck you. You know, Grant, I ain't about to fuck me over. Nope. Oh, yo, yeah, ain't nobody want to go. Ain't nobody want to go. Yeah, ain't nobody want to go. Let me get a knife. I was like, hey, you ain't no OGs. Hey, if you want a knife, you better go in your own house and get it. Hey, don't worry about it. I go to my auntie house and shit. I'm like, hey, let me hold a knife. She about to give it to me and shit. She like, what well, for? I'm about to have a knife fight. She called my brother and my cousin and shit come out that shit. Man, as soon as that little nigga dropped the motherfucking knife, all I remember is coming flying off the fucking stoop with the foot to that nigga face and finish the job off. And yeah, his ass yeah, running. Yeah, yeah, yeah we yeah. was built way different. Yeah. <laughs> and homie talking about, oh, we all shoot. No, we actually used to have field ones back in the day. However you want yeah. to give it up, we ain't give a fuck. Uh, you want to have a shootout? We have a shootout. You want to have a knife fight? We have a knife fight. You want to fight? Fight. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. It's totally go go back home to Brooklyn and shit. You will see what I'm talking about. You're like, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> I remember um 2011, homie. Um I come we come from um South Carolina, we go back home. You know, it's like two o'clock and shit. I'm used to ain't nobody gonna be outside. And that then if we see a white person running down there, that's usually the fucking police. So I'm on the blend this shit. As soon as I see the um, white dude running like he jogging and shit, I thought the weed on one of my cousins. I'm like, yo, run niggas. Both of my cousins yeah. start laughing at me and shit. I'm like, yo, what the fuck going on? And they're like, yeah, shit changed. I go, white people running around here now? Yeah, nigga. Yeah, I was about to get light on my cousins and shit when I seen that white dude running down the block at 3 o'clock in the motherfucking morning. Yeah, yeah shit definitely changed, bro. Yeah, shit changed. That's what I'm saying. Like, like in yeah, L.A. back in the days, like all that shit, you know, walking oh, up in different, di- different niggas, liquor stores and shit, you was getting pressed, motherfucker. Mm. It was pressing you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but ain't that shit crazy? Yeah. I just was thinking yeah. about the shit. How I got scared when I seen a white dude in the hood, but this nigga Chad talk about when white people come in the hood. They yeah. gotta be scared? No, nigga. We gotta yeah, be scared bro, when we see white people in the hood. You know what I'm saying? When the white people, niggas, niggas don't say nothing to the white people. <laughs> yeah, but they say shit to the white people. Yeah, them white people they, be straight they, up they, informing. They, they, speak to the, they speak to the white people and, sit and, say, and say hi and how you doing, and they don't even get, don't even get looked at. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Hey, but I know, do know homie is raining shit because I went back there probably like five years ago. I should be going in a couple days because my cousin funeral was on like on the eighth and the ninth. But my uh, fucking, it's still, it's still a few of us still in the hood and shit. When I went back home, I was happy that I still seen a few people still there. But, but seven, like, seven, five, yeah, it's still like ten bucks. We only got like three blocks now and shit, and everybody else is different. Mm-hmm. The places white people were scared to live at, they lived there now and shit. Mm-hmm. I remember I was, yep. I wasn't allowed to go in that building because it was used to sell drugs out there. Now white people live in that building. Shit, they got so much justified. I don't remember what actually happened. Right when I moved to Florida too, that was a trade. They was like, "Hey, they about to move out of Florida shit because like half the motherfuckers working for the um, Chase Bank." Mm-hmm. And then right when they moved the motherfuckers out the hood, they was like, "Hey, you yeah, about to, you about to um, upgrade." What up? They got white people walking in, 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 through, through the hood now with their dogs and shit, and now I ain't, I ain't being worried about nothing. I'm like saying, yeah, through, through the barrels, through the barrels, bro. Like, yeah, different barrel. No. You ain't hear when I said that white nigga was jogging at three o'clock and I dropped my weed. Think he was the first? Yeah. Them niggas, yeah. yo, they walking like this fucking father. Yo, snap, know what I'm talking about? Ain't hey, niggas in the south with white people walking with their shirt off, bro? They walking like that in New York, bro. And the white girls is walking around and shit on their cell phones like they ain't give a fuck and shit. Like they always been in the star and shit. Like, yeah, fuck you. This mom's like, I put go here. Y'all just ain't never seen me outside. Mm, mm, mm. Mm-hmm. And they talking about white folks scared to come to black neighborhoods. Man, get the fuck out of here, man. Mm-hmm. So I remember when I went there in the, um, the one time when my friend died, a white bitch, uh, well, white, it was a group of white bitches and shit. A bitch shot the money and shit. Hey, you know, niggas in the hood and shit. We try to tell the bitch the money and shit. Oh, no, don't talk to me. Yeah, bitch looking and shit. Niggas ain't want to take her money and shit. I, my cousin was like, yo, take the money. Like, bitch, I ain't going to take no little hundred dollars. Like 15 minutes later, she come running back and shit looking around. She was all surprised she had the money. Yeah, bitch, ain't nobody broke around here. Nah, uh, bitch. Next time, pay attention and listen to when somebody trying to talk to your ass. Ain't nobody trying to talk to your ugly ass. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that time you go home and shit. <laughs> you see what the fuck I'm talking about? That yeah. shit be going on since 2011. Yeah. They came in, changed the fucking shit. Then they send niggas to Decatur, right? They're like, oh, this that's yeah. temporary home. After we fixed up and down the street, we're gonna let y'all niggas um, come back in. 
man, they built up, built up McDonald Street. They let a couple of people move in. And from Sacatoga all the way down the street, they've been putting new people in that motherfucker. Mm-hmm. Um, That's great. Hey, you, you know Bane Bitch, right? The street? Mm-hmm. You know the Grand Park on Bain Bridge, right? They done changed that shit up. That shit look different. White people begin to. Yeah. No shit. Yeah. Mm hmm. So I, I, these, these motherfucking uh, Teller, he don't even know what you're talking about, man. I be Teller. All that old fake shit he's talking about. Oh, yeah, man. You know, white folks scared to come to the projects. They're scared, man. They, man, they, they walk through there all the time, man. They don't know, say nothing to them, man. They be scared to even say something to them. Mm-hmm. They bothering them people. So all that shit is a smoke screen. Oh no, we too busy trying to worry about the NSA and shit, and worrying about not yeah. getting fucked up by the police. Yeah. Or worrying about the motherfucking young ass niggas trying to rob motherfuckers. Yeah. Because that, if motherfuckers want to be real, that's the, that's mostly real. Most of the crime come from with the young, it's the young bloods that be on uh, the That's crazy. <laughs> oh, I thought somebody wanted to say something. What topic you want to be on now, Snap? Oh, it's on me? Oh, shoot. Because uh, we need a topic. We need a topic. Oh, I, I was going to um, say, I remember one time my mom took me to school in the car. And little kids, you know, we had not little. I think I was in middle school. And I got out the car. Maybe elementary. I can't remember. But I know I got out the car. And they was like, ooh, who that lady is? I was like, that's my mama. They said, that ain't your mama. She a white lady. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, goodness. I said, no, my mama just light skin. What is light skin? <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. You got black folks look like they white. They, they creole. They, they, they creole mm-hmm. in the fuck. Yep. I know that shit, right? I don't know. I came down here. I remember I used to be yellow. I thought we were the lightest and shit. We came down. Um, see my auntie, motherfucking kids. Shit, we ain't seen Lisa in long guys town. Man, we had to do a double take, like, yo, Lisa, what the hell? Why the fuck you look like that, homie? I remember you being a little bit darker when I was a baby. Now, nah, I always been this shit. We'll talk about white passion. So I told all my cousins. Shoot, the sun made me dark. <laughs> hey, move to Florida. I was telling Mike, that shit, the sun in the motherfucking Korean pool, fuck around with the kids, playing football, jumping in the pool every day. Hmm, Doing that man. shit for goddamn 10 years, that Korean made the nigga dark as fuck. Yeah, I was up, but I was light as on the what before I even got here to Florida, and now I am darker than midnight because I've been, mm-hmm. been in the sun. He been in the sun. That's that, why. That, that sun yeah. messed you up quick. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. It's real talk. But you ain't you you, you don't need no sun. You you, you ain't got to put no 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 tan on you. Ain't you ain't got to bleach your skin. You ain't got to do none of that shit. That's the that's 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 thing about being. That's the good thing about being black. Now. Just some sun. Hey. <laughs> hey, that's fucked up and shit. We moved to Florida and shit, got dark and shit, and love that shit. That nigga was born dark and shit, trying to get light skin. This motherfucker got light fucked up. <laughs> nah. <laughs> I'm dark. I'm dark. And I remember the first time I got a suntan, and I thought I couldn't get darker. Uh uh-uh. uh. I was sunburned. I got sunburned. Wait, wait, hold, hold, hold on, guys. I want to add my other cut real quick. Hey, hey, homie. Why did you go to Florida and get darker? Why did you hate yourself? Why could you stay like? The malnation kicked in down here. Oh goodness! I just tried to sound. I tried my best to sound like a tether, y'all. I'm sorry. I'm not good at being a thing. I'm sorry. We can we can sit under the sun and don't have to worry about getting you know getting burnt up. That's not true. That's not true. No, we took the burn. What do you mean? What do you mean? I don't want to be sunburned like that ever again. No, oh, yeah, no, 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 Hey, that's it, man. If you out there long enough, no oh, yeah, the yeah. sun. I'll tell my homie EJ. I still remember that. He was the first kid we see yeah. hitting all the sunscreen. Yeah. He was like, happy nigga. You the darkest one out of all of us. Fuck you, bitch, sunscreen. Well, he was like, yo, sir, I get sorry, man. We was like, nigga, what the fuck? That, we were so confused. Like, yo, this nigga darker <laughs> than us. <laughs> you hey, sunscreen. 
I would tell you this. It's not racist, okay? Hey, <laughs> the, sun, like the sun is not racist. Oh, you right. Yeah. The sun is not racist. It will get everyone. <laughs> hey, the, hey, I'm gonna tell you that. Like the sun, yeah. when you, oh, even butter. if you dark, you go out there in that sun. The yeah. sun see it as a challenge and be like, challenge yourself and burn this little yeah. Christian nigga up. And turn that motherfucker to 5,000. 5, <laughs> you, you, you ever seen a black person turn purple? Oh, damn, man. Yeah, I see my boy yeah, I see my music. Like, damn. No. Like my Coyote. Coyote. Okay, okay. Oh, Me and God. Mike. Yep. Oh, my God. Got burned up. I was hurting for about two months. I was like, oh, what the heck? I didn't believe that. You were just laughing at me. I was light skinned when he first met me. Now I'm dark as hell. I'm lighter than you. Yeah, I know. You got me beat. You got me by a couple of shades. About four by the train in back. Oh, my God. Yeah, she got me beat. I, on the other hand, been in Florida all my damn near all my life and can't hold a tan for nothing. This one right here. This one right here. She does the same thing. Hi, everybody. She does it too. Oh, hello. Hey. Hi. Yeah. Hi. Well, she does that it too. is hey. like I lived outside when I was a kid. Lived outside, lived in the sun. Me and too. even now I hang out in the sun, take a shower, and it's like I've never been outside. It's like <laughs> I don't hold the tan for nothing. She be out in the sun all day and she don't even turn. I go out in the sun for about five minutes and I'm dark. <laughs> hey, we some X-Men, dog. Don't be telling nobody that shit. <laughs> Man. That's all right, though. Y'all don't like that California weather, though? I'm telling you, it's bomb back. That's hot. That's hot. That's hot. It's it's hot. hot. You crazy? I'm gonna Now, 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 Arizona. Nah, that's a different story. It's, that's a different story. Arizona is a place that dry heat. You know. Nah, I don't yeah, like that. Got that here's my brother. My brother out there. That humidity, that humidity, that humidity. Yeah, we need the humidity. Yeah, we can't have it. Yeah, yeah. Heat is abusive. It's like that's what you got. Hey, snap, you in Texas, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah. My auntie out there. Mon Monty out there. She right outside of Houston. She in Pearland, Texas. Yeah. Oh, that's what, that's what I was thinking at uh, Waco. Waco. You was in Waco? Waco, Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That was beautiful there too, man. But it was hot. What was it like 106 degrees out there most of the time? Oh hell no. And that's dry heat. That's dry heat. 106 degrees. Dry heat. They, they yeah. there, uh, put the thing up there where you had to wear uh, camel packs to go outside. You have to put the uh, the ice cubes in the camel pack because they tell you you can't even go up to the store without you have to see the steam coming off the streets and everything. Where's the camel pack? That, <laughs> that was up in uh, Waco, Texas. <laughs> so, I remember mean, what is a camel pack? What is it? Uh, camel pack is what they uh, have in the military. You put your uh, water and stuff in the back and you wear it on your back, and it has these little mm -hmm. tubes that come out of it. You can have it up to your mouth and you drink while you're walking. Oh, that's the one. Uh, that's what we had in our uh, branch of service uh, that we had to move around in when we was over there because it was so hot over there. You, uh, it was like again, it was dry heat, so you don't sweat. You would just pass out instantly, so you had to keep hydrated the whole time while you wow. were walking. Damn. Around. I'd rather be in. I'd rather be in Texas. Then. No, where? Oh, Waco. Oh, Waco. Okay. Oh, so you have hey, to uh, y'all niggas need to go Texas. outside more. Homeboy don't know what a camel pack is. What? <laughs> <laughs> you don't know uh -huh. what a camel pack is. Come on. Oh, dang, Mike. Mike let me, let me tell you about some heat. Snowboarding, sledding, hey, hey. snowshoeing, Mike, Mike, mountain biking. Mike, said, you gotta have a camel pack. Hey, Mike. They said they don't like this Cali weather, man. Oh, they crazy. Oh, y'all tripping. Y'all tripping. <laughs> tripping. I mean, I mean, it, it do be a little bit hot since I have been in Portland, Oregon the last four years. So now that I'm back in Cali for a bit, it is it is a little, little, little bit warm compared to the Pacific Northwest. But but no, it's just fine. This is fine. It's shorts and t-shirt weather most of the year. Yep. Well, tank tops. Well, we still wear hoodies. We still wear our hoodies and stuff like, you know, whatever we want. I just I just wish sometimes like 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 I tell uh Nuer, I want to wear them little puffy coats, man. You know what I'm saying? Them little, you know, they be they be, they be wearing in in, in winter time in New, in Brooklyn. Them little, them little yeah, puffy jackets. Uh -huh. I can't really. We can't. Hey, really I got. Hey, that's crazy. It's first time I got my puffy vest with on my 
I got my phone sitting on my puppy vest right now. <laughs> yeah. uh, the big old uh, geese jackets. Ah, mm. that's fucked up. I got charmed on. I just noticed my jacket. I mean, my fucking vest. Charmed on. That's funny shit. <laughs> my big old puppy vest. Speaking of New York vests, yeah, I love that shit with the cold, but with the goose yeah. feathers in it. <laughs> Hell yeah, you know the vibes. Damn, y'all niggas need to get outside more. I know I didn't just hear old boy call them puffy jackets. You talking about yeah. the Columbia jackets, the North Face, the down feather? It's called yeah, down feather. Fits, it's not called puffy jackets, they call <laughs> down feather, okay? It's, it's the same shit that the, uh, this, uh, the, um, hey, let's hear you, California, you know what I'm smacking me. <laughs> hey, 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 I, I got the down feather coats, and then I also got it, um, on my bed, it's called a. Uh, if it's on your bed, it's called something different, though. It's a comforter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got a yeah, no. comforter on the bed. Yeah. Uh, hey, 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 duvet. Yeah, yeah, duvet is another word for it. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, but I'm talking about my best. He was talking about that, and I would say my best. I like my duck feather. Okay, I keep my duck feather on deck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I should. Hey, we should have asked Mike what they call Tim's over there. Then. Oh, uh, hey, yeah. Kelly, hey, we wear we wear Tim's, but we don't really wear Tim's like that, man. You 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 see like Case Wiz, or you will see, you know what I'm saying? Well, I I can speak for like the the late the late nineties, early two thousand. You know what I'm saying? Damn. Yeah, so how do y'all so how do y'all step them out properly then? Huh? Yeah, that's like one of the main reasons why I wear the boots to step a step a motherfucker out properly. So like when I want to step a motherfucker out, how y'all step them out properly if y'all don't be wearing no Tims? What's y'all? Mean, yeah, what's y'all? What's y'all stepping the motherfucker out with? You can't step nobody out. Let's go military. I, I bring in those steel hey, toes. Hey, I come hey, in from the steel toes. Kicking the steel toes. So you telling me you can't step nobody out in Chuck Taylors? Break your feet. Yeah, you can. All tons ain't um, still toes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, tight, though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think you got some steel toes. You, you got your rubber one. Yeah, you, you got your um, you ever had lugs nowhere? No, nah, my sister did. Go to the they had to give them away. The, uh, the and they put the steel toe right up in the lugs. Right there. Oh, no. Okay. Damn, I ain't heard about that shit. Yeah, they're in the back. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, they, they do that was in there with the... Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because they have, they have the regular shoes down the front, and then you go in the back, and they have all the military versus shoes in the back with all the steel toes and the uh, different stuff. Yeah, I was fucking right back in there with the, oh, the um, Air Maxes and shit. What was my other ones? Oh, what the uh, fuck Air Maxes, yeah, a lot of the Air Maxes. I was with yeah. Yeah. Them Air Maxes. Yeah, and I was talking with New Balances too. I mean, they had those little bubbles in it. You well, you can't, you can't, oh. you know, that, 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 that new, the New Balances, oh. is, is, you know, that, 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 that's is part that, of a gang yeah, logo. Like, they got yeah. a gang logo. Oh, the, neighborhood, the neighborhoods, they were uh, New Balances. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. yeah. That was for the 80s. I did a lot of stupid shit when I was there. But that's how I bought them. I used them because that bitch was nice. Y'all were like talking that. about steel toe boots and shit. We need force multipliers. I pull out that K bar knife and it's a done job. <laughs> no, yeah, I don't even start with that K bar. You don't even start with that K bar <laughs> from the military surplus store. I, yeah, I still got my K bar. I, you I have, have my K bar for like eight years. Five and a half inches. <laughs> Yeah, you yep. up real good. Right, right, take right, that, right, right, take right, that, right. that, take that, take that, take <laughs> that. <laughs> hey, that's real shit. Sure. <laughs> you, hey, mm-hmm. hey, you fuck around and catch that little um, bitch. Um, <laughs> for real, for real. No, I got one in the car for my mama. Okay, she just did somebody else that stupid. When I'm out hunting or, or doing shit and I don't want to feel completely naked on me. I, I got to have a little something, something, okay? If I come across a mountain lion, I'm at least going to shank you a few times before you get me. <laughs> yeah, I got that in my mama car just for a nigga trying to say it's stupid. Don't worry about it, mama. That's what we need to see. <laughs> and I got on um, the butt trying to stick for her ass, too. Whatever she catch first, beat the nigga ass with it. Hey, 
Yeah, but my mom be seven this year. She don't look like she do no shit like that. It's just too late for y'all. Yeah, you get them airsofts. You, you get that, that cow bar and that airsoft, you good. You good. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, SWAT team trying to come. Uh, speaking of that, I gotta go find a good fucking paint ball uh, fight and join yeah. the group. The first one they were up at it. Them good old airsofts to do it. Mm. it. It used to be BB, now it's airsoft. What? I remember we used to fuck people so much yeah, up in Florida. Wait, that shit, that shit got a legal shit. They had to switch that shit to plastic. We can't shoot niggas with the metal no more. That shit's yeah. yeah. metal. Yeah. <laughs> that thing's gonna stuck in my fucking skin. Fucking the, the, uh, airsoft, uh, airsoft rifles. Oh, okay. Man, he used to shoot people in the neck and in the back of their head. <laughs> 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 yeah. Make it illegal. Mm-hmm. That shit used to be fun on the weekends. Oh, my God. But the kids get together. I right. still don't say, I right. don't worry about it. Who's on teams? <laughs> good at family years. Good, good for taking out the uncle at family years. <laughs> hey, that shit steam, bro. <laughs> What? Yeah, that was a lot about that drunk ass uncle, though. I, you gave me flashbacks. Hey, we're going to act like we shot him by mistake, but really, I'm going to stand right next to him and shoot him. Shoot, I'm going to dodge. You're going to shoot his ass. Shoot him right in the foot. Pop, 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 pop. The wall. What? <laughs> yeah, yeah, y'all talking about them BB guns. What y'all know about getting shot in the ass with a Red Rider BB gun? Oh, you don't know nothing about that pain, no. that suffrage. Hey, I don't know about getting shot in the ass. I don't know about doing the motherfucker with it, though. Go ahead. I don't know about that. that. You sit there pumping that thing up and you pop. And not even with a BB. He just put a rock in it and shot me right here. Man. My big brother. <laughs> Oh my oh, God. Like, I took all that shit. Yeah, I ever had somebody throw a Roman candle up in your motherfucking underwear when I was still little when we had whitey tighties. Yeah, it would be a bit. <laughs> hey, this is how Florida they don't play like we get some Roman candles on you. Sparkles. Yeah. Roman candles, firecrackers, The whole string of firecrackers. Yeah. Oh yeah, those those little yeah. mini those little mini yeah. uh, red crackers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Everything like funny it. down here to people when when those days come around. Mm-hmm. Four for John, all the time. Hold on, time out, time out, time out. Did this nigga say that someone threw fireworks in his underwear? You know. <laughs> you know. Oh man, if only it's CPS up, could up, time travel. Oh, if only CPS could time travel, <laughs> your mama would catch a case. <laughs> no, no, that was the hood back in the day. That was supposed to be a lot. Of Niggas run around, y'all niggas fuck that shit. Don't worry about it. Little red and besides, red. me and my niece got our revenge back anyway. Niggas thought it was sweet. Don't worry about it. We be Damn, back. And shout out to Big Hank. Oh. Big Hank says his uncles used to exploit them. Oh, yeah. Working on their crab boats and not paying them. Damn, that's grimy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's child that's labor. Like, There's that's laws that's against that. that. That was all kids when we were young. On the crab house. Kids, 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 man. Hey, check this out. Tell me about the story with my had the fireworks and you surprised them with the first aid kit. Check this. Check this shit out. Yeah. There's no story. Yeah, it is. (laughs) She had a Roman cat. She what it was, something she had, and she was lighting it. And um somehow her husband husband, down, not down. It was no. oh the other the other nephew yeah. he he held it too long so it burned his hand but and he like oh and she like oh are you okay this one here come out with the first aid kid at the car they all surprised and like oh my god we never see. they surprised more about the first aid kit than him this sitting over there with a burned up hand. <laughs> Yeah, we ain't know no better when it's going up this shit. For 30 plus years, okay? I know where there's people, where there's kids, there's just accidents. It just is. And nobody That's seems why had to the ba- think that way. The nigga sporing. <laughs> hey, y'all laughing. That's how the fuck I. Hey, that's how I pissed my finger when I cut cut myself. Get that motherfucker. My mom was like, "You going to a doctor? Your fucking finger hanging off." I was like, "Nah, I just need um band aid and a whole lot of DSP and um <laughs> so right side. I've been waiting two weeks." <laughs> that's why they had the big the big hand sporing. That's why they had was it was it every time I heard oh get a band-aid, rub some neosporin on it. And, oh yeah, take a sip of Robotus and go to bed. <laughs> well, I'm trying to tell you, bro, that's a remedy. 
Hey, that shit was funny. I took my own band off like two weeks later. My shit was still hanging. My mom was like, hey, nigga, your shit's still hanging. I think if your shit ain't fixing it, you need to go to the hospital. Yeah, y'all forgetting something, though. Y'all forgetting something. What that? Band aid, neosporin, and ginger ale. Yeah. True. Very true. Oh, my stomach. Yeah, drink this ginger ale. Yeah. <laughs> ginger ale cracker shit. <laughs> Yeah, hey, I laugh when I stay with a bottle of ginger every time I fill my stomach up. Let me get some ginger ale. We do that. We do that. We I definitely do, that. We do that now. We do it now. Mm -hmm. And we got the cod liver. Oh, goodness. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we're going to start wrapping up today's broadcast. We reached the eight hour mark. We'll see if we hit eight hours tomorrow. I know I started the stream a little bit late today, but. It takes about an hour or two of me being live for you mofos to show up anyway, so <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Um, let's start doing some uh, closing remarks. My phone screen is very dim. I can't see it very well. We will start with... Oh, damn, man. I ain't got my contacts in. Whoever wants to start first. Whoever wants to start first, closing remarks. Go for it. All right. I'll start first, Mike. Hey, this screen today we was good on topics, man. And we was fading off each other. Hey, hey, hey honestly, um, the That's stream was golden. The stream was golden just with the tether confession of the cake soap and the bleach baths. Man, <laughs> that shit was crazy. <laughs> hey, hey, to all, hey, to all the viewers in the chat, snap. Hey, New Year, night. Hey, I'm gonna holler at y'all next weekend. All right, brother. We'll see you next time. Thanks for calling in. Peace. All right, peace. All right, who's next? Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and get off here, man. I'm over here. So, so, nice talking with y'all, whatever. I'll be back on here tomorrow. Yeah. Yep, we'll see you then, brother. We'll see you then, brother. Yeah, Peace out. Peace out. Peace. Curtis is always the early bird. He's he the first one to click the link. Y'all be slacking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, be nobody, hey, Mike, you be ain't nobody but the, me and Curtis backstage for the first hour, hour and a half. <laughs> hey, my nigga, I've been wanting to call in and shit, but I'll be happy to roll up. I already know what time it is. So I got to come up with like 12, 35 and call in, try to get my mind right. Well, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow, Curtis. Thanks for calling in. Yes, it's my time. <laughs> well, I guess I'm going to go ahead and do my closing remarks. Thanks for, thanks for the chat. I appreciate it. A uh, lot of good stuff today. A lot of good stuff. Like I said, we got a W, ran the tether off. So, <laughs> uh, that, that, that pretty much happened. Uh, he's probably back there collecting information or Googling or whatever. <laughs> I know, right? Everything from the yeah. chat, yeah. <laughs> he had two weeks to motherfucking get some research. He'd be on vacation. Hey y'all, um, hey y'all. Um, I almost forgot we had Chuck Wu's Nigerian scamming ass call in with a new plot to take over our lineage. Mm. Oh, he's in the back stage. You can bring him up. No, no, no. I was oh, just talking about when he was up here earlier. Yeah. Oh yeah, that feels fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah. I ain't even hearing no motherfuckers. The OB what? Did you hear OBM or something? I'm like, damn, it's yeah. really yeah. Yeah. They don't So, yeah, yeah y'all one of us. <laughs> yeah, we the happy blacks and shit. Y'all the angry blacks. We ain't trying to be with the angry blacks. So, motherfucker, leave us alone. <laughs> facts, facts. You know, too busy giving. Glory Desmond, we'll talk to you soon, brother. Talk to you soon. Have a good one. Wait, guys. hold on, hold on. Um, yeah. Hey, Desmond, are, are you the one that I pranked by taking your wrench and giving it to Raza? Yeah, you did. Oh, Hey, I don't know if you left the stream or whatever, but you was mad. I could tell. I said, Desmond, are you still here? It was crickets. It was crickets. He said, fuck Mike. This nigga didn't give a tether my wrench. <laughs> no, I, I was like, what the fuck, Mike, man? I thought we were native brothers, man. What the hell? Like, hey, hey. Me, man. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I, thought, I thought these niggas were talking behind the stage. I was... I woke up, popped on this thing. I just seen Roger with a fucking wrench and shout that. Oh, did, did he take his wrench? What the fuck? What the fuck? Hold on, hold on, wait, wait, wait. So, uh, what the hell? but but Desmond, your wrench has been restored, right? 
Yep, it's back. Okay, back. okay, cool, 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 cool. Yeah. See, see, see what happened was it was part of a prank, <laughs> but it, it was also partially because you timed out Raza for damn near no reason. And it was also an experiment. And I let him out the rich for like a day or two. And once he got real comfortable, he just started saying a bunch of fuck shit. We the black KKK. He just started going off the deep end. The power went to his head. Set him up. You set him up. Like I said, yeah, it's that European up. in you, Mike. That's what it was. It was you know, European. Sometimes you got to give these Africans some rum and some guns and let them destroy themselves, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but all right, brother. I'll talk to you soon, Desmond. Talk to you soon, DC. All right, peace. All right, who's going next? Um, yeah, I go. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> well, yeah, we got a two for one special over here. What's good, smiles and snap? <laughs> I'm speaking for a snap as well. He had to step out for a moment, but you know, as always, he definitely, definitely enjoyed every moment of being here. And I myself uh, tonight was super entertaining. I had to step out to cook, but I had y'all in my ears. So it was, it was, it was good. It was good. Yeah. And like someone said earlier, Rosman, um, like lost a little bit more of his mind tonight, apparently. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so sad. He does so well, and I like exalt him as like my star tether pupil that we're gonna recondition, and then he goes off the deep end just every time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, uh, someone said earlier tonight that you know, I, I, as a matter of fact, I think it was you, near, New Era, that said you know it, it seems as though he just may be you know flawed, faking, and he's not he's not this eighteen year old that's trying. Oh yeah, to that was me. Thing. Yeah, that was me. And he's he's some he's some he's some aged as as hat who is here to just be that an ass hat. So and like, why does he perfect perfect perfectly? Damn, I can't talk. The shadow patrol is getting to me. Why does he perfectly um, fit the tether stereotypes? Like for the casual viewer, y'all would think I paid Rosaman to come up here and say all the stereotypical tether. I used to bleach my skin. My grandma don't know her birthday. I was like, damn. Okay. Um, Right, right, right. It's he, he. He comes off as the female Candace Owens for me. Oh, not the Candace. The uh, Jay Lauren, though. Sorry, the male Candace Owens. My apologies. Yeah, yeah, he was definitely giving Candace Owens vibes with that for George sure, Floyd rhetoric. Sure. So as soon as I don't know something, he gets to that point of saying something that's a little too far from what he's expected to say or being paid to say, whatever. Yeah, we won't see him or hear him anymore. He'll kick his ass to the curb as well. But, you know, but like uh, someone else said, you know what? It's good that he did have that wrench for a day or so or whatever to get to see and hear, you know, what's really going on. Pay attention. People reveal themselves. Real talk. Mm -hmm. uh, hey, speaking of which, do y'all remember the crazy auntie that was dissing our generation? She went by like cold like personalities or something. Yep. Oh wow. Tell me why this bro. Tell me why I woke up to an email from Cash App. On March 17th, she sent a $25 Cash App. This morning she disputed the payment with her bank to have it refunded. <laughs> what the fuck? Talk about Indian giving. <laughs> I said, what wow. in the pettiness is going on, Auntie? She went back to, to March 17th and said, hmm, I don't want him to have that $25 no more. Well, what the fuck you said on the St. Patrick Day? Yeah, I was just hella weird. I was like, I didn't even know that you can dispute a cash app payment and have it refunded. What the fuck? Um, oh, absolutely. You certainly okay. can. Yeah, that was well, super petty. About multiple personalities going at each other. That's that's entertaining. So one personality is an FBA and the other one is a tether? Is that what's going on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the other one is just straight up crazy. <laughs> that, that was somebody's crazy auntie talking about our genera uh, generations degenerate and shit. And then we pulled up the receipts of them old ass 1920s sexy red songs, and she got real pressed. My big old tan I said, damn, she is petty. She's the only person who, who got a refund off the cash app. I'm like, oh lord, my TV don't do refunds, but I, I had no option. Her bank disputed it, and they just refunded it off rip. I said, wow, she petty, petty. Wow, wow, that's crazy. 
Wow. Mm -mm. So with that well, said, you, y'all put five on it. <laughs> My account went negative twenty five because of that, bro. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's why I had an epiphany about that nigga on Riser Man because old niggas don't chase their mind. And I remember when I was eighteen and shit, when old people told me, so shout that. Oh, what? Yeah. Oh, you know that shit. I go back, but every time we tell Riser Man some shit, he's like, Nah, fuck that BA. And then you notice every time we get from the work. Oh, um, then he start agreeing. Nah, yeah, I just call up to the game. Yeah, he has a dispute yeah, right for, that for sure. But anywho, Mike, I won't take up too much more of you. Thank you again for this platform. It is. It has been fantastic. Fantastic. Yeah, well, thanks for tuning in. We'll see y'all next time. Absolutely. All right. Peace Bye. out. Later. And there was two. Where? Yeah, that old, that old ass oh, yeah. nigga. Uncle hey, hey, but, uh, but good job moderating and keeping everything in check. The only critique I do have, since I was listening to most of it while I was getting my massage, is um, there was somebody with some background noise. Later on, eventually, y'all caught on to it and was like, everybody mute up. But um, but yeah, the biggest thing is making sure folks don't have that background noise. People um, staying on mute when they're not talking, because you know, just from a audience listening perspective whoever somebody sounded like they was in a grocery store it was a female talking in the background with something going on and man i wanted to end my massage and get on the streamer and say nigga mute your mic but i couldn't i couldn't mm -hmm. but thank you for yeah, i thought everybody looked they might but every time rise of that said everybody kept them jumping back in and shit yeah he was triggering folks he was definitely triggering mm -hmm. folks and also i think that might be his ploy i think he's upset that I trigger people, including him, with my thumbnails and titles. So now he's like purposefully trying. Matter of fact, he, he confessed that earlier. He was like, Yeah, I want to trigger you just like you triggered me. Mm -hmm. And I think that's why he's an old ass nigga, bro. Like, he's not 18, bro. Old niggas don't change their moms. We already he know that. Dude. His age. Yeah, bro. It ain't no late because he know all this shit, right? I know this. I know this. I know this. I know this. But then, if you remember when we was listening, you know how he always says some shit, but then as soon as Izzy pays his ass or some shit, hey, let's let's change the top right now. Nah, nigga, you about to get this work by your fellow UK man, homie. Because that shit don't make no sense. But then, oh, uh, what was that last shit when I had to go run outside real quick? Uh, he said some shit about the police and all that old dumb ass shit. Like, yo, bro, you sound no dumb. That's what I got that perfectly, nigga. You like 45 or some shit. Ain't no way in hell. Because yeah, I always know her. Yeah, after you roast me, right, Mike? I tell you, yes, I'm, I'm gonna start agreeing with you, right? <laughs> Call it Mandark. Method. Yeah, he went to Dexter's laboratory with the shit. I said, word, not Mandark. Yeah, bro, that shit made sense. Because every time you remember, we all remember the show. We, yeah, we yeah, that big headed, uh, dark haired dude. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, with the glasses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I remember. Okay, oh, hating ass niggas. Yeah, but that's his new yeah, name. Wow. Because he came back in like two weeks. Yeah. Well, I know he ain't listening no more, but if Aaron's listening, Friedman's Network, y'all check out the brother. I got I got to drop a bomb again for Aaron. Uh, Aaron came through early on with the, in the stream with a $500 donation. Hey. He said, hold on, I ain't going to put five on it. I'm going to put 500 on it. I'm going to put 500 on it. Said, okay. Shout out to him. Appreciate it. Shoot, sometimes yeah. I'll be like, damn, do I even want to do these weekend streams? You know, they don't get as much views or traction as some of my stuff throughout the week. But, you know, I, I consider these my little uh, FBA powwows, and I like chopping it up with the family. And above all else, I like connecting you guys with one another and letting people call in from all over and shoot the shit. And two years ago, that was my goal. I wanted to do some kind of connecting the diaspora stream and then i learned that tethers was on some fuck shit so we started burning down the diaspora but once the smoke clears and the rebel burns i think we can rebuild i agree you know what i think it is i think they took our kind we got saying that Berkeley don't take our kindness or weakness i think that's what they did and shit because they know that we love the world and shit but for some strange reason they just want to talk shit about us like we want to go fight back facts facts and more facts well, all right, y'all. We'll see you later. Um, I think tomorrow I'm going to start the stream around noon. Typically, it takes like an hour or so for people to show up anyways when I started at 11. So I think I'm going to push it back a little bit and start it at noon Pacific Standard Time. So Nah, I'll be in the watch in the chat. I'll just be waiting that shit because I'll be thinking tell us ain't going to um, call it. I'll be like, I'm on the way and smoke a couple of shit. Let some tell us call it. I'm just going to be waiting in the background. Mm -hmm. hey, you notice sometimes I didn't come in the beginning like give you a fifth. 
and it's all saying shit. So, hey, also, um, I'm about to start a TikTok, and I gotta my YouTube community really needs to push me to a thousand uh, followers on TikTok ASAP because you gotta have a thousand followers on TikTok to live stream. So imagine when I start playing the replays of these streams and live streaming on TikTok. And TikTok's where all the tethers are at. All the tethers talking greasy about us are on TikTok. So as soon oh, as I get a thousand this crazy thing on going TikTok. Man. Yeah, yeah, and I do some disagreement and some shit over on TikTok. Yeah, that shit should blow up. Uh, yeah, let me know when you get that shit started. You're in the lobby, so crap. Yeah, I'm yeah, pretty yeah, sure I'm you get to, that shit uh, today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm about I to make a community post. I think yeah. I'm going to make a community post on it like tomorrow once I finish setting up the TikTok. But shit, I got 15,000 on YouTube, so I'm hoping overnight I can get 1,000 real quick on the TikTok, but we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, I know you can. And yes, the net, uh, noon my time. Yeah, noon Pacific Standard Time. So what that would be about like three months time. Yeah, yeah. If you're East Coast, then yeah. it'll be three year time. Yeah. All right. Yeah, boy, all right. brother. Thanks for chopping it up. Thanks for holding it down while I got my loma showers. Appreciate you. No doubt. Hope you have fun. All Peace, right. love, bro. Later. Talk to you soon, brother. And then there was one. Well, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I said that we were going to take these R&B breaks throughout the stream to calm everybody down because we discussed things that are so contentious, but God damn it, I abandoned y'all, and I went and got a massage, so let's go ahead and slow it down, wind down with a little R&B tunes, some sacrilegious tunes. They done resurrected Aaliyah's vocals the weekend and paid for him and made a song, oh Lord, but we we'll going in on a light note. Thank you to everybody that supported the broadcast with your viewership by hitting the like button, by hitting the cash app or the PayPal. We will be live tomorrow, noon Pacific Standard Time. I'll see you then. Peace. Oh, and real quick, Danette, uh, Danette's asking for my TikTok name. I don't have a TikTok created yet for this channel. I'm going to start a TikTok like tomorrow or something for the channel, and then I'll create a community tab to let you guys know what it is. Because, yeah, the sooner I get to 1,000 subs, the sooner I can roast them tethers on TikTok, y'all. It's about to get real heated. But I'll let you know as soon as I create the TikTok. This feeling, there's no drug that can compare You're so cold, I can see your breath, I swear and They told me not to fall in love Wondering where every door went wrong You were my poison all along Oh